Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 98 While it was a short news brief, its effect was enormous. If the witness testimonies and internet articles posted during the day were oil, then this news brief had pretty much set it on fire. The picture captured from the news brief was instantly sweeping through social media and large community forums. As there were more than one or two celebrities involved, the magnitude of how trendy it had become was also incredible. Because of this, the PR team office was noisiest it had been since Neptune's comeback. How are the reactions towards the four Neptune members? At team leader Park's question, the PR team employees focused on their tablets and answered. A huge hit. While the incident can't be bad for them, it's the first time people's reactions have been so heated since their comeback. Their performance in Sinchin was a divine move. The reactions to the fan cams are amazing. At this rate, the number of views for their performance will be higher than the views for their music video on their official channel. Their image can't be any better right now. The female employee, who had been stomping her feet from excitement, suddenly snorted. Neptune's Neptune, but team leader, Mr. Sunwoo has completely left an impression on the public. Here someone said, seriously, shouldn't W.U. Kowtow to manager Young Sunwoo? Here too. Doesn't the Celebrity Management Association give out Manager of the Month awards or anything? Give it here. Team leader Park stretched out her hand. The female employee, who had been tearing up from laughing so hard, handed over her tablet. A page from an entertainment community forum was open. Team leader Park, who had been clicking on related posts and scrolling through comments, paused her finger. You're constantly checking the music rankings, right? The employees nodded at Team Leader Park's question. We are checking it through an app every hour. They were third and fifth before. When Neptune's name first appeared on the five-minute prediction chart on a major music site, all the employees who worked on Neptune's mini-album, including the PR team and the management business department Team 3, stopped what they were doing and cheered. Lee Tehi's song Satellite was third. Pisces was fifth. It's almost time check again. I feel like it might have gone up. Yes, since it was on the news, maybe ITLL be second. They could have been first if it wasn't for the sugar cats. My words exactly. BYG fans are creating a fuss right now. Saying they need to work hard and stream the song so that they don't lose first place and to endure until they got first on a music broadcast. While our blackout fandom is hardcore, they aren't worse either. Oh my. It's first. Huh. What? The male employee asked and the female employee abruptly ended her sentence. Team leader Park, who had been only starting at her tablet screen, turned her gaze towards her. The female employee showed them her phone with wide eyes. Satellite is first. That moment, the phones in the PR team's office began to ring noisily. Having enjoyed this sound for a few seconds, team leader Park said in a big voice. Now, now. They'll face the reporters so you tell Chief Kim Hyunjo and you tell Mr. Sunwoo wait, are they done? I got a message saying that they had finished a while ago and were eating dinner with the cast. Then call and tell him the news. That the song he pushed is first right now. Your glass is empty. Have another glass of cola, Mr. Sunwoo. Ah, thank you. I'm the one who should be thankful. Even my CEO Hyung told me to give you his thanks. Lee Yunho filled my glass with cola. Since he asked that we should help each other out in case we need some personal connections, I readily exchanged phone numbers with him. With this, my phone contacts were filled with personal numbers of all the now we members. Move over, Hyung. Im Ju Won pushed Lee Yunho away and sat next to me. What is MS? Lee Song has next project? If it gets decided, let me know. So I can consider it. It hasn't been decided yet. Im Ju Won clicked his tongue and chugged the last of his beer. I need to pick a good next project. I'm suffering from insomnia these days, insomnia. Damn company, I should change to a better. That's why I told you to come to WU. I said jokingly while pouring beer when I'm Ju Won blinked. What? Are you proposing an exclusive contract? 
Why was he acting like this was his first time he, then I remembered. Damn it. That happened in a previous future. I quickly came up with a believable excuse and clicked my tongue. After seeing that future, which had no static nor was it far off into the future, I kept getting confused. The biggest problem was that I wasn't completely certain whether this current situation was real or not. After getting my future foresight ability, I had been worried that I might get a mental illness on multiple occasions, but I didn't have to worry about that any longer. To get reality and non-reality confused I was already amazingly mental. Ha! <laughs> I was laughing dispiritedly when my phone rang. After a few seconds, the thoughts that had filled my head were swept away. As soon as I hung up, I downed the cola in front of me. It felt like the carbonation had pierced through my veins and were spreading throughout my body. Of course, I did hold some hope since I heard that the song was going up in ranks. Maybe it might reach first. No, since it was trending this much, wasn't there a possibility? Even while thinking this, I had swallowed my expectations so that I wouldn't have to feel disappointed like the first day. Swallowing my dry saliva, I opened an app on my phone. It was there. First. Satellite was on the very top of the list. I tightly gripped my phone and looked beside me. The girls were chatting with other cast members while eating. Girls, one moment. First, put down your spoons and swallow what you have in your mouths. I have something to tell you, but am worried you might spit out what you're eating. At my words, the girls hesitantly put down their spoons. Li Tae took her hand off the beer glass she had been holding onto like a treasure. Even Li Songda quickly swallowed the mouthful of crab carapace bibimbap one that had been in her mouth. When the chatty girls quieted down, the other cast members looked in my direction. I'm Seo Young staggered over to me and asked. WH what is it, Appa? You're making me nervous. It is. Wait. If it's something bad, say that first. So that we can prepare our hearts. We are first on the music charts. I showed them my phone screen as I said this. It's not just here. Apparently, it's first on seven charts. While talking, I felt the tips of my lips curl upwards. The girls didn't react for a few seconds. Instead, it was the other celebrities who tapped their glasses with their chopsticks and said. Wow. Really? Are they really first? Is it some kind of day today? Oh my god. Congrats. Isn't this the same as climbing back up the charts? Let's have an after party. During this commotion, Im Seo Young snatched my phone. The girls pressed their heads together and looked at the screen. Soon, Lee Taehee's light brown eyes widened and alternated between the screen and me. Lee Sangha blinked her eyes twice before nodding. Soon, Im Seo Young let out an incredible scream. Uh, you, Appa. Is this real? This isn't photoshopped. No way, if it really is, I'm going to break this bottle. LJ added while grabbing a bottle. Don't worry since it's not photoshopped. Don't break that bottle either. When I said while laughing, only then did they cheer. Im Seo Young, who had the most severe mood swings, teared up already. She was biting her lips and enduring because there were other celebrities around her. If she was at home, she would have already burst into tears. Yua, screenshot. I'm going to screenshot it a million times. Why a million? The music charts are a war zone. Do you know how many songs don't last an hour? We might drop from first in an hour or two. Do you want it to go down? It hasn't been long since you told me not to say unlucky words. Surprised by LJ's scolding, Im Seo Young quickly held my arm and mumbled, Cancel. Cancel. When would she stop with this? Let's screenshot it first, then print it. Should we print it in the size of a wedding photo? So that we can frame it and put it up in the living room? Don't do that, dummy. I'm going to have nightmares. The members of Now We were chuckling as they passed around the bomb shot they had carefully created. Huang Jiehyun handed me one as well. I readily accepted it with both hands. I only drank cola until now because I had to drive, but now I felt I needed to drink a little. 
Since our recording today was a hit and Neptune's song is a hit, let's hit three consecutive home runs with the success of our broadcast. Let's do it. The glasses clinked loudly. Even the girls, who were partly happy and partly dazed, quickly joined in this cheerful mood. While successively downing glasses, I suddenly thought of something and took out my phone. In celebration of being first on the charts, let's take a group photo. Gather. M. C. O. Young in the middle. The girls gathered together in a familiar manner when the now we team members joined in around them. The spot next to Sangha is mine. Ah, damn. Are you senile? Don't bring up any ulterior motives and move aside. She's young enough to be your daughter, young. Want the people at the end be cut out? Get closer. I was about to press the shutter when I asked. This might go up on our official social media account, will that be okay? It's fine, it's fine. Since we ran around together for the entire day, we need to take a group photo. If there wasn't alcohol, we should have brought the kids as well. What a shame. Since everyone said they were fine with it, I was about to press the shutter when. But Mr. Sun Wu should join in too. Huang Jiehyun gestured to me while telling me to ask someone else to take the picture. I handed my phone to someone's manager and went over to the group. Li Sangha almost crumpled in order to make room for me. I was barely able to stick my head out, and the picture was taken. The girls took a few more photos before sending it to the PR team, and it immediately went up on their official social media account. My face was clearly in the photo. Below the photo were the words, Neptune's first song to reach first. Below that was I'm Seo Young's comment, The Happiest Night. Im Seo Young predicted that the song would only last for an hour, but Satellite didn't drop down after an hour. Not even the morning after the sleepless night. Not even the next day when the dark clouds had cleared and warm sunlight shined down. Even the day after that. It continued to be first. Neptune handled their schedule almost in a trance for the next few days. Interviews poured in from internet news and magazines, and they appeared on various entertainment and culture shows from public and cable networks. Ah, and they really hung the screenshot of the music chart in their living room. Im Seo Young was so moved that she cried every day looking at that picture. With LJ as a witness, apparently, Lee Taehee secretly looked at it too. Either way, that was how the team didn't tire out and handled their busy schedule like a runaway engine with the fuel known as first in the charts for the next few days. The day of TVL's K-pop concert live broadcast returned. For the first time since they debuted, Neptune was one of the first place candidates. The area behind the fences in the street corner leading from the parking lot to the broadcasting station was crowded with fans, who were waiting to see the singers appearing on the music broadcast, today as well. People with camcorders, phones, and even DSLRs with long lens shouted and pressed their shutters every time a celebrity passed by. It was the same scene I had seen since I started working as a manager. Of course, there were some changes. It's Neptune, Neptune. Please look over here for a moment. Uni, please give me your autograph. Mr. Manager. Since the day is good, it's okay to take a picture with Neptune, right? I remembered how there were no reactions on my first day, to the point it was almost embarrassing, but there were quite a few people looking and gesturing at us. Also, while they might not know each member's name, it seemed like everyone knew the name Neptune, seeing as other idol fans were looking at us and murmuring amongst each other. The problem was that they weren't only looking at Neptune, they were looking at me as well. We had stopped for a moment so they could give autographs and get their pictures taken when a familiar male fan asked. Mr. Manager, I heard that WU are gathering members for Neptune's first official fan club. Please give us some official information. News gets around fast. What's the name of their fandom? Everyone's worried about that. The male fan glanced at his surroundings before saying in a quiet voice. The Sugar Cats fandom has been confirmed, and it's Nyan Butlers. Nyan Butlers. It's not some sort of humiliation play, Think about dark-skinned male fans and uncles too going nyan, nyan. Wow, crap. That sent shivers down my spine. I bet even thousand-year hardcore fandoms will chill with that name. Please tell me it's not something like that. Yeah, it's not. 
the official fandom name we were planning on using was Triton. Something about it being Neptune's biggest satellite. I quickly glossed over it because it wasn't official yet, but the male fan asked another question. This time, he said it in a voice so quiet even the girls would hear it. But, ITLL be difficult to be first today, what if the girls are disappointed? While they shouldn't lose out much in broadcast, sales, or album portions, but that damn voting portion. They just had to be faced up against the sugar cats, no, BYG. The male fan glanced at the crowd of BYG fans. Compared to other fans, they were different in terms of numbers and spirit. Because of them, the company and Neptune weren't hoping for first today. Because real-time text voting would apply when choosing first place. We monitored internet reactions, and BYG fans were uniting, saying that, while they lost getting first place in the charts, they must get first on the music broadcast. They were so spirited that it seemed like they might borrow phones from distant relatives to vote. I was licking my lips when I heard a commotion behind us. Looking behind me, the sugar cats were waving at the excessive photo takers as they made their way towards us. Then, as if they discovered us, they stopped in their tracks. Perhaps it was because of the numerous cameras or because they were certain they were going to be first today, their expressions were bright. They were horrible every time I saw them. I glanced at Neptune, and their expressions weren't bad either. LJ put on a calm face and, like as though she was a ventriloquist, mumbled, we run into each other often even though I don't like seeing your faces. I patted the grumbling male fan's shoulder and said. Either way, give your vote when the voting starts later. Of course. But still. Still, you never know. Until you show your hand. Chapter, 99 Neptune's waiting room was in the middle of the hallway. When I opened the door, it was like a completely new world. It's so big. It's bigger than my room. Is this really our waiting room? Did they put the wrong name on the door? Im Seal Young chattered, saying how they could practice their choreography here to their heart's content, while Lee Tae and Lee Sangha looked satisfied as they sat down on the plush sofa. Without doubtful eyes, LJ went out to check if this really was our waiting room and returned. Compared to the chicken coop we used last year, this was a five-star hotel. Even the waiting room we used during their comeback was only half the size of this room. I always felt this, but in this damn entertainment industry, popularity was everything. Appa, are we really using this room all on our own? Has our level really increased this much? Well, while that might be part of it, it's also probably because you girls are first place candidates today. Immediately, the mood in the waiting room became strange. Im Seo Young, who was reading everyone's mood, fiddled with her flare skirt as she said. I, I really came here with no expectations. After being nervous that we might be disbanded during the two years we've debuted, just being one of the first place candidates already feels like I've been hit with luck. We even placed first on the music charts. My heart is peace itself right now, Appa. No, you seemed very agitated right now. Im Seo Young, who had been chatting on her own without being asked, suddenly turned her head. Tae you don't expect to place first too, right? Lee Tae replied with half-closed eyes. Lee Sangha, you don't expect to place first either, right? Nope. Lee Sangha, who had been rummaging through the snack basket, nodded her head. I occasionally thought this, but, overall, the members of this team were calm and composed, yet it felt balanced since I'm Seo Young made enough fuss for four people. Lastly, Im Seo Young stared at LJ, who was sitting on the chair in front of the dressing table and shaking her crossed leg. Before Im Seo Young could open her mouth, LJ said. The only one who's holding expectations here is you. And no. Ha. I heard you calling your parents and relatives to vote by text last night. You were even memorizing your speech if we place first. I could hear it all because the walls are thin, dummy. Im Seo Young's cheeks instantly reddened. Hey. If we really do place first, I won't be able to think of anything. It's a live broadcast. If you don't want to look foolish, you have to memorize everything you want to say. See, you are hoping for first. LJ's lips curled up into a smile. 
Im Seo Young, who opened and closed her mouth while flushed with anger, slumped down below the sofa and clung to my leg with an expression of holding on to a lifeline. It seemed her emotional anxiety had flared up. She did endure for a long while. Yua, Appa, what do I do? I, I really tried not to be so hopeful. Yeah, yeah. I already know that we have no hope with the text voting since it's a fight between fandoms, and I also know that if I get my hopes up for the hopeless, it'll be even more disappointed. But I keep thinking of the first place trophy. To be honest, last night, I dreamed of decorating our living room with the trophy. She buried her face in her hands and slammed her head against the sofa. If Appa wasn't next to me, I might have already lost it by now. More than now. Worried that she might call herself a stupid dummy again, I patted her round shoulders. What's wrong with getting your hopes up? I'm hopeful too. You are, Appa. I'm not saying this to pressure you, I'm saying it because there is a small possibility. I quickly added in case they felt more pressure from reading my mood like they did during the music chart ranking incident. I also told my brother and sister-in-law to vote. I even thought about buying the quadruplets phone so that we could get four more votes. Seriously. If you get your hopes up and we don't place first, then. Then he'll have a drink tonight. I said nonchalantly. Im Seo Young, who had been slumped over like a half-melted jelly, returned to her original state. Im Seo Young crawled over to the seat next to the sofa when Lee Sangha added as though it was no big deal. Honestly, I'm also a bit hopeful. You never know. You too. Im Seo Young quickly turned to look at her. Really? When your face seems like ITLL be fine if we don't place first. My face is always like this. That's true. So you got your hopes up too. It wasn't just me. She blinked while glancing at Lee Taehee. Lee Taehee, who had been leaning back and massaging her long neck, said. Me too a little. You did too. Since it's a song I created, it's a lie if I say I had no expectations. If we drop from the first place candidates, then I'll have a bottle of alcohol too. After saying this, Lee Taehee subtly smiled in my direction. I clearly said one drink. Now that she had heard the other girl's inner thoughts, Im Seo Young recovered her calm. While smiling, she looked at LJ. With her legs still crossed, LJ said. Do you also have your hope? Yeah, thought so. Im Seo Young grumbled with narrowed eyes. LJ looked back at us with her arms crossed and clicked her tongue. So. I'm the only one in this room who hasn't gotten ahead of herself. The mood tonight will be fantastic. Congratulations on being one of the first place candidates. Isn't this your first time in three years? Truly great talents mature late. Congrats, Neptune. Congratulations, Mr. Manager. People kept congratulating us in every waiting room we went to greet. Singers and cast members no longer treated Neptune as old rookies, and entertainment reporters asked us questions regarding the sugar cats like hyenas targeting their prey. If I let the girls answer every question, then their names would be plastered on the entertainment columns in a few hours with the added bonus of provocative headlines to increase their site traffic. Since the girls are too nervous today from being one of the first place candidates, I don't think they will be able to hold any interviews. Let us do it next time. When I said this while guiding the girls back, a reporter now asked me for comments. It seemed I also looked like a celebrity to reporters who were thirsty for anything newsworthy. We were on our way back to the waiting room after getting away from the reporters. Uh, Neptune. And their manager. Do you have a bit of time? A producer with a headset on his head waded through the crowd and approached us. The two first place candidates will be having a back and forth in the MC seats. I think we'll have to rehearse it because it's live and not a recording. Yes, that's fine. Though I wasn't fine seeing the faces of the sugar cats. Sugar BYG team has more members so well go to their waiting room. The producer smiled gently while guiding us there. When we opened the door with Sugar Cats and BYG written on it together, we entered a waiting room that was twice the size of our own waiting room. We also saw the Sugar Cats members, who sitting in front of the dressing tables and looking at their phones. Uh, where are the BYG members? 
When the producer asked while looking around, the chief of the sugar cats scratched the back of his head. Sorry, producer. They said that they were going to have an interview with a reporter for a bit. I told you that it'll be bringing Neptune and to wait where did they go? When the sugar cats chief and the producer went out to look for them, only the sugar cats and us remaining in this large room. Out of habit, I checked for any cameras. Fortunately, there were none. Since we weren't in a relationship where we would greet each other when nobody was around, I sat on the empty sofa with the girls. As though she had some sort of terminal illness if she didn't lash out at Neptune, no, Im Seo Young, Han Saitbile snorted as she said. Seo Young, I can't tell if you have good or bad luck, right? Me? I think this is the luckiest I've been in the 22 years I've lived, why? Im Seo Young shrugged her shoulders. What was interesting was that her atmosphere was quite different in front of the sugar cats. If she was like a fragile bowl in front of us, she was currently a strong stone pot. Han Saitbile blinked as she continued. No, what I mean is, you were really lucky to reach first place on the music charts, but you just had to have us as your competitor so you won't get first place on the music broadcast. So I can't tell whether you have good or bad. Even if your tongue is short, you need to speak properly. Leisurely leaning against the sofa, LJ joined in. Did I not tell you last time? Our competitor is BYG. Even on your door, BYG's name was above yours. That's because they are our seniors. But why do you constantly cut into our conversation? Oh, that was conversing. I thought you were just speaking nonsense. After saying that, LJ glanced between I'm CEO Young and me before adding. There are no people or cameras here. Yeah, I know. I nodded my head while opening a chocolate Lee Sangha handed me. If a uselessly famous manager said something, it could become an issue, but I wasn't worried about words exchanged between girl group members leaking out. LJ looked at each of the Sugar Cats members and said. Let me use this opportunity to ask you something. Why do you hate her so much? I've been with her for more than three years, but she's not the type to receive such resentment. Hearing her words, even I'm Seo Young looked like she was slightly interested. Breaking the silence, a member of the Sugar Cats with a provocative expression said. The way she acts is a bit, you know. So full of herself, doesn't pay attention to the mood. While we were nervous because our debut kept falling through, she alone was easygoing, as though she was confident in debuting at any time because she was different from us. Her words weren't simply thorny, her tongue was like a sword. I was about to stop this conversation because I didn't think this would end in a simple exchange of words, but Im Seo Young shook her head. Then she asked the Sugar Cats members. When was I like that? Since everyone was so anxious, I thought that I at least show. That's being full of yourself. You've always looked down at us because you were the center and better at singing and dancing than us. Ah, but now that I think about it, you're sort of in the same situation now. They say what comes around, goes around. The Sugar Cats member glanced at the girls as she said. There, the visual center is someone else, they have a lead vocalist who can write and compose her own songs, and a, well, slightly talented rapper. They are all members that are talented enough to succeed on their own, but, since you're in the middle, besides dancing, you don't have any. There's nothing more to hear from them, C.O. Young. ITLL only tire our ears. I clicked my tongue and got up since Im Seo Young's face became stiff. The Sugar Cats members, who had been chatting, flinched in surprise and shrunk away with expressions asking what I was going to do. While I had thought that they were hateful all this time, I really wanted to pour filthy water on them. Why are you all so interested in others? We were only saying that because we were worried for Seo Young. You don't have to. We are already looking after her here. Lee Tae Hee, who had been silent, said while frowning. Then she clicked her tongue and patted Im Seo Young's shoulder. You must have had it tough while you were on that team. I sincerely agreed with her. If I were amidst those girls, my heart might have become rotten and collapsed. It was so fortunate that Im Seo Young didn't debut with them and became a member of Neptune. Next to me, Lee Sangha also added. If it were me, I might have thrown something at them. 
With their eyes narrowed, the Sugar Cats members were about to speak noisily again when LJ kicked the table leg and said. You talk a lot about how you were jealous. What? No, that's not it. She. After shooting a glance at him Seo Young, Han Saitbile looked back at LJ and shot back. But people might think you're very close with him Seo Young, huh? Don't you understand what we're saying? You also don't like her much. LJ, who had been composed, widened her eyes at her words. Yeah, it's noticeable, you know. I can tell you don't like her at a glance. I'm hearing all sorts of nonsense today. Why don't you just screw on a new pair of eyes? You. Just then, it seemed the BYG members arrived as a loud, muffled commotion could be heard from outside the door. Before people could enter the waiting room, Han Saitbail changed into a smiling expression and said. Either way, since we are going to be first today, why don't you target IBC's music broadcast that doesn't have text voting? Oh, right. Don't they hold a vote beforehand? If you want to place first, ITLL be better if you wait until we end our performances on music broadcasts. Ear-shattering screams erupted from the audience. Neptune, the Sugar Cats, and BYG members were standing between the two MCs in the MC seating area to the left of the stage as they greeted the audience and said their predetermined speech. Damn, I couldn't even hear the girls' voices because the BYG fan screams were too loud. I approached the Neptune fans gathered at the edge of the fan seating area below the stage. While, in terms of scale, they were smaller than other boy group fans, they were still fans who had come all this way to support Neptune. Manager. Did you vote? The fans who discovered me murmured in surprise. I nodded at the words of the few whom I was quite familiar with. Of course, I did. How about you guys? We already did it before. Since it's their first time being a first place candidate, we are doing all that we can. We are encouraging others to vote on fan sites and the review sections on music chart sites. Just. Why? Don't male fans understand the importance of text voting? Whether they become first or not hands on that. The woman who I had seen so often that I even remembered the nickname she used, Song Eating, shouted while stomping her feet. Anyways, I gave her a thumbs up for doing well. My phone, which was in my pocket, rang. When I took it out, I was constantly getting text messages. They were messages from company employees, including Kim Hyunjo and the PR team, saying that they all voted. Even though they said they didn't get their hopes up, it seemed they were all watching the live broadcast. After a short remark from the MC seating area, Neptune's performance began. Because of the incident before, everyone's mood was serious, but it seemed they poured all their energy into their performance. They were especially passionate today. It wasn't just the fans in Neptune's fan seating area, other spectators cheered while waving their cheering items. By the time they came down from the stage, the girls all looked slightly refreshed. After peacefully waiting in our waiting for about 20 minutes, we returned to the stage while awaiting the first place announcement. The Sugar Cats and BYG were already on stage next to the MCs. Other solo artists and idol groups that performed today gathered behind them. Before they got up on stage, Lee Sangha said in a quiet voice. I wish we were first today. Lee Taehee nodded her head. In a quiet voice, so others couldn't hear, I said that, since the Sugar Cats would probably be sick in bed if we became first, we should give them our kind regards through a video call. Lastly, LJ, who said that she didn't hold any expectations, said passingly. If we're first, then I'm going to tap dance with the trophy in my hand in front of those jerks. The girls went up on stage. I stood amongst other related people and staff members and looked at the stage being shined on by the lights. A jib camera that was set up very high circled above the girls' heads. A close-up of the girls appeared on the LED screen behind the stage. It seemed they were low on time as the MC began reading his cue card without delay. Only the announcement for the first place on the live broadcast K-pop concert chart remains. Neptune and the Sugar Cats, please present the points to determine which team will return with the glory of being first place. The LED screen displaying the various singers changed into a computer graphic tallying up the points. It displayed rows for digital sales, album, 
broadcast, and live broadcast text voting points as well as the totals, displayed largely on the bottom row. Amidst the echoing cheers in the open hall, the row of points appeared one after another. I had planned to quickly add it up in my head, but I couldn't. The four-digit numbers scattered and wandered in my mind. In the end, I gave up and stared at the computer graphic. A few suffocating seconds later, the moment the final totals were displayed, the girls turned to look at me with widened eyes. Chapter, 100 The girls seemed to be asking me with their eyes. Is that real? I also wanted to confirm it if there was someone beside me. Focusing my eyes, I examined the totals again. While the difference was small, Neptune's points were undoubtedly higher. When I checked the fan seating area, that place had already broken out into celebration, rampant with cheers. Neptune, congratulations. With a bang, gold confetti poured down onto the stage. The LED screen was filled with their faces. Gold confetti stuck in their hair, they blinked with their widened eyes. If there was a mirror, I would probably be making the same expression. The male MC handed I'm CEO Young the trophy. That might have been the switch as tears began to drop from her teary eyes. While M. Seo Young was flustered and calming her tears, Lee Tae Hee held the mic first. While smoothly thanking the WU employees as well as CEO Beck Han Sung, she paused for a moment. After taking a breath, she opened her mouth once again. Also, to Sun Wu Appa, who has always been by our side, we can't express how thankful we are for everything you do for us. I am truly happy that I joined such a great team. I hope that we can continue to working as a team for a long, long time. There was a close-up of Lee Taehee's face on the screen. Seeing this, I felt like I was listening to her face to face. Below the blinding lights, Lee Taehee's eyes curved. The camera pulled back to show all four of the girls on the screen. They were all smiling brightly. Im Seo Young was smiling while crying. Finally, I let out the breath I had been holding in. Something heavy made its way up from my chest as though it would overflow at any moment. Damn. I hoped my eyes wouldn't tear up. Rubbing my face, I looked back at the stage. The memories of nervously running around and pushing Lee Taehee's song as a title track and tearing my hair out because the song didn't rank as high as I had expected when it was released flashed in my mind. I felt like I was getting rewarded for that right now. The edges of my lips curled upward slightly. I suddenly recalled the words Kim Hyunjo said a long time ago. The pleasant feeling from taking care of rookies. The increase of shows they appeared regularly on, the increase in fans who recognized them, and their rise in popularity the pleasant feeling that I created all these with my own efforts. How he said that, once I got addicted to this feeling, I wouldn't be able to quit this line of work. I finally completely understood those words. I would never be able to quit this job in my life since I had already become addicted to it a long time ago. While I was immersed in the wave of emotions, the MC urged I'm CEO Young to say something. He was obviously hoping to get a sobbing interview. Also, the probability he would get one was 100%. While hiccuping, I'm CEO Young held the mic. I, I also, I what do I do? You uh. I told you it was 100%. She sobbed while speaking an alien language. It seemed like all the hardships she had endured was flashing in her mind like a panorama. She was quite the sight as the gold confetti stuck to her tear-soaked cheeks. Beside her, LJ grinned as if she knew this would happen. Yua, Sun Wu Appa. Was she calling out my name? The moment I thought this, Im Seo Young was staring directly at me. What was she doing looking at me during a live broadcast? When I quickly gestured her to look at the camera, Im Seo Young ran about while holding the trophy in one hand and the mic in the other like a lost duckling. The MCs and other celebrities laughed noisily when they saw her like this. Just then, Im Seo Young suddenly handed LJ the trophy. Then she said to LJ, who seemed dumbfounded. You said if we get first, yo you're going to tap dance. Did Neptune have a pledge if they were first? Then we need to see it even though we are low on time. Immediately, LJ appeared on the LED screen. During the six months I knew her, I had never seen LJ make an expression like that as she held the trophy. 
It seemed that her absent mind had returned when she saw this, Im Seo Young staggered back. Her tears had already disappeared. She looked like she wanted to take back her words immediately, but it was too late. In the end, LJ's staggering high heels stomped on the gold confetti that had fallen on the stage. It was the scariest tap dance I had ever seen. They say that that wasn't a normal tap dance, but a warrior dance Spartans did before a battle. Apparently, they never knew that they would get a girl crush one from watching someone tap dance. When I told her the social media reactions, LJ stopped packing her stuff and looked at me. Should I lie up or down and do it on top of your body? No, I don't have a hobby of being stepped on. I don't want one in the future either. I said while smiling when I'm C.O. Young, who was carefully reading LJ's mood, approached her. Um, hey. When LJ answered her, her eyes, which were swollen from sobbing, shined. I'm re really sorry. I think I went crazy on top of the stage. Are you okay? Do you think you'd be fine if you did that the first time we placed first on a music broadcast, which we'll celebrate for a long time, dummy? You will regret what you did a million times while crying tears of blood. Im Seo Young's face became as white as paper when she heard those grim words. I left the waiting room with the girls a few minutes later. The hall was quiet. Since we were late due to their closing performance, the majority of other people had already left, only a few teams remaining. Fortunately for us, the Sugar Cats were one of them. The moment we discovered the Sugar Cats on our way to the parking lot, our footsteps became lighter. Not only did they become lighter, they seemed to bounce off the floor. The Sugar Cats were tapping their tears with tissues. Girls, don't do this here. Let's go to the van first. When the chief in charge of the Sugar Cats urged them, the members lashed out while sniffing. How can we go out like this when there are so many people outside? So embarrassing. We can't control our expression because of how pissed we are. What will we do if our pictures get taken by those camera addicts? Appa, can't you just bring the van here? The chief disappeared into the darkness while clicking his tongue. They seemed to have heard our footsteps as the Sugar Cats members turned their gazes towards our direction. Their eyeliner and mascara were smeared black, and their fake lashes were dangling off. I was scared their appearances would appear in my dreams. As if she wanted to let out her anger from tap dancing, LJ made a highly taunting remark. Why are you worried about the camera addicts? It's too late. Didn't you check the broadcast? Your inability to control your expressions has already been captured and is spreading on social media. It seemed that the sugar cats were confident that they would be first without a sliver of doubt. Right after the final totals were displayed, their brightly smiling faces crumbled in zero. One seconds. Their changes in expression were so obvious that their before and after expressions were edited next to each other and were being ridiculed as they spread on social media and community sites. People commented sarcastically. Saying how it should have been BYG who should have been more disappointed than the Sugar Cats and wondering why the Sugar Cats looked like they had lost their nation when all they did was put their spoon on the table too. Their insides would ache quite a bit when monitoring it later. Han Saitbail looked at us as though she was going to throw her high heels at us. And your weird tap dance isn't. LJ frowned, but suddenly Lee Songa stretched her hand out to him CO Young. Uni, that thing, give me the trophy. This? Why? Im Seo Young took out the trophy she had carefully placed in her bag. The looks that fixated on the trophy were in extreme contrast with each other. Our side was happy while the other side was clenching their jaws so tightly that it felt like we should at least let them bite the edges of our clothes. It'll be going to the parking first, Appa. Lee Sangha said while looking at me before walking. Still reluctant gazes followed the trophy. The next moment, the trophy began to wobble a lot. No, it wasn't only the trophy, Lee Sangha was waving it around. She wasn't just walking quickly, wait, was she tap dancing? She was clearly expressing that she was happy regardless of who was looking. Our gazes alternated between Lee Sangha, who was already a few meters ahead of us, and the sugar cats. Then we erupted into laughter at the same time. Han Saitbile screamed. She's out of her mind. After that heated yet refreshing discussion, we went downtown. 
since today was the monumental day when they got first in a music broadcast, we had to eat some beef. The girls cheered when they heard Kim Hyunjo was waiting for us with the company card. As soon as we entered the reserved restaurant, Kim Hyunjo stood up to meet us. Did our first places arrive? Let's see that trophy. Im Seo Young raised the trophy and laughed. Appa, you've already seen a ton of them because of blackout. Hey, this and that are completely different. If I knew you were going to be first, I would have cancelled my other schedules and went. It's a shame I couldn't witness Neptune's historic moment. While the girls were chatting loudly, Kim Hyunjo turned to me and asked. But why isn't Gun Young coming? Is he parking the van far away? Ah, uh, I was wondering why there wasn't a comfortable feeling, so the trader hadn't arrived yet. Did he say he would arrive at around the same time as us? There were still a lot of available parking spaces. I guess he didn't arrive yet. What are you talking about? Didn't you come together? No. Kim Hyunjo's expression became more confused. I also wanted to know what was going on. You didn't leave the broadcasting company together. No, I didn't see him all day today. Didn't he have something else to do? He said he would join up with you guys after finishing up before the live broadcast one second. It seemed Kim Hyunjo thought of something as he frowned and got up. Then he left the room after telling us that he would come back after a call and to go on and eat without him. The girls, who were excitedly cooking the beef, blinked. Appa, what is it? Did something happen to Gun Young Appa? I don't know. I shrugged my shoulders at him Seo Young's question. On the other side, LJ, while twirling her chopsticks, said. Well, his expression did seem a bit worse recently. Huh? No. He seems normal. That's because your eyes are for decoration, dummy. He was different for the past few days. And I thought his friendly expression only dimmed in front of me. There was only one reason for the crack in the trader's perfect fod. It was probably because Lee Tae-hee's song took first place on the music charts and even first place in today's music broadcast, jumping past Simon Lee's song. Well, did this mean that I completely won our bet? I slowly tapped on my glass while thinking about the trader. He was someone who set up roots in a corner of my mind and constantly made me feel uneasy. He was also someone who made me suffer from being unable to trust others. Since it had been half a year, I really did endure him for a long time. I only realized how great my patience was because of him. However, I felt that it was time for my awkward relationship with him to come to an end. While I was calmly letting my thoughts sink in, Kim Hyunjo returned after making his call. His expression was complicated, and I couldn't tell what kind of conversation they had. He simply shook his head when the girls asked if there was anything wrong. He said that he couldn't come today because a small problem came up. He's fine so don't worry about it and eat. It's a happy day. Waving his hand, Kim Hyunjo sat next to me. While flipping the slices of beef that were cooking deliciously on the grill, I asked. What kind of problem was it? It's not a big problem so don't worry about it. Also, I have something to tell you. Brushing off his uncomfortable expression, Kim Hyunjo changed the subject. The girls' schedules are going to be more packed and their personal schedules will get busier from now on, right? Songa will be busy promoting Cat Guardian Ghost in China for a while, and we're going to have to take care of that. It seemed she heard her name as Lee Sangha glanced in our direction before concentrating on the beef once again with an incredibly satisfied expression. So we decided to hire another manager. I had somewhat expected this since, as the girls' personal schedules became busier, there would be overlapping schedules. We needed at least three people to pro per law, but once I settle the trader problem, wouldn't there be another missing spot? While I was stuck in realistic concerns. Since the recruit will be starting work next week, teach him well. Of course, or do you think he'll deal with that again? Also, you well, there's going to be some good news for you before the recruit comes to work so wait for that. Good news? When I asked what it was, he simply grinned, indicating he had no thoughts of telling me now. What other good news was there for me besides a bonus or promotion? While I was racking my brains, Kim Hyunjo asked in a serious voice. Also, did you read all the projects that came in for Sangha? Of course. 
Of course, I read them all. I read them countless times. I read the projects that were handed over from Sun Chaiyang and even the scenarios and synopses that came directly for Li Sangha. I carried those that especially caught my eye amongst them and regularly read them. It would be a lie if I said I wasn't hoping to see the future during this time. However, I didn't see any future regarding Li Song has next project. There wasn't even the slightest hint of what project would be a success and what would fail. To be honest, there were a few projects I had hopes for. Scenarios and synopses that most rookie actors hoped that they would get. However, my heart hadn't yet decided on a single project. Since I wasn't certain it would succeed. Even PBS's Mermaid Out of Water and IBC's Time Slip, just from looking at their synopses, no one would have thought that they would be historical failures. There were also countless movies that failed despite receiving tens of billions of won as investment and having a cast of top actors. These cases were a frequent occurrence in this industry. I inwardly clicked my tongue when Kim Hyunjo continued to speak. We need to decide on Song has next project soon. I was going to pick out a few and bring them up during tomorrow's meeting, but which one do you like the best? Yeah, you. There's nothing more to say about Cat Guardian Ghost, and the same goes for how you pushed Lee Tehee's song, saying that you thought it would be a hit. I want to believe you're discerning I blindly now. Even the director told me to ask you first. Kim Hyunjo leaned towards me and asked. Which project do you think will do well? That is. Kim Hyunjo urged me with a strong look in his eyes as if telling me to quickly say it. Damn it. I felt like I had suddenly been hit on the back of my head. After hesitating for a moment, I licked my dry lips and said. I'm still undecided so I'll think about it a bit more before tomorrow's meeting. Chapter, 101. 8 in the morning. I was still uncertain of everything when morning arrived. After spending the whole night awake, all the remained were messily scattered coffee sticks and an empty energy drink. Piles of scenarios and synopses left their sticky mark on my suffocating heart. Nothing special happened, for example, seeing the future. Slumping against my chair, I clicked my tongue. I shouldn't be so reliant on my foresight ability. If I kept relying on it, I might become a fool that couldn't do anything on my own. In order to stay cautious, I brooded over it. It was a useless effort. I was already an addict. Mentally ill and now an addict, I really had fallen far. I downed my cold coffee in my stale mouth. Then I placed the three stacks of paper that had me pondering throughout the night into my bag. Unconcerned about whether my mind was muddled or not, a new day began outside my window. It was time for me to go to work. After parking the minivan, I waited for the elevator. The loud sound of wheels screeching rang out from my left. The male employee of the PR team was pushing a handcart loaded with packages towards me. Hello. Oh, Mr. Sun Wu. I saw yesterday's broadcast. The male employee, who was always energetic every time I met him, nudged my arm with his shoulder. Maybe it was because my mind was wrapped in concerns, but I was very envious of his bright, refreshed expression. Li Tehi's song. When you first brought it over and pushed for it, I didn't think it would do this well. Mr. Sun Wu's choice was a divine move for this album. I was wondering if it was Dej Vu, but they were the words the male employee had said in the future I saw before. That time, it was Mr. Gun Young's choice was a divine move. No, to be honest, our team was concerned for you. Even veterans aren't certain if a song will do well or not, but just what is that guy confident in to push for this song like a bulldozer? How is he going to handle it if it fails? The male employee was astonished as he scanned me with admiring eyes. They were useless worries. I consider your discerning eye and senses at the same level as Nostradamus. I'm really curious, but do you get some sort of feeling when you see a project that you think will do well? Do angels blow their bugles or something? I wish they did. Then I would buy stocks. I was the one who wished the angels would blow their bugles or vuvuzelas or something. The male employee's eyes glittered as they looked at me. His face overlapped with Kim Hyunjo's, who encouraged me to pick a project that I thought would do well for Lee Song has next project. I didn't eat anything this morning, yet I felt like I had indigestion. 
We both got on the elevator, and the male employee asked. If we knew that her song would do so well, we probably would have gone for a single title track. With no need to divide our promotion efforts. It was dragged down by Simon Lee's song. If they had gone with a single title track from the beginning, they could have also solidified their image as artist. The male employee swallowed a cough. The trader stood rigidly beyond the elevator doors after stopping on the first floor. Taken aback, the male employee opened and closed his mouth, and I stopped my finger from pressing the close button. The trader got on the elevator. Good morning. Ah, uh, yes. Hello, Mr. Gun Young. I thought that he would look even slightly upset, yet the smile on his face was so visible that you could see his dimples. The moment I saw this, the trader problem surpassed the other problems that piled on me like a tower, taking first place. It left a bad taste in my mouth. Suddenly, the trader said in a bitter voice. I begged Simon Lee because I wanted to see Neptune's album succeed, but it ended up dragging them down. Ah, uh, no. Who would have thought things would go like this? When you first brought Simon Lee's song over, everyone was surprised that a rookie did something the artist's repertoire team couldn't do. The male employee frantically shook his head. His gaze, as he looked at the trader, was sympathetic and apologetic. Until we got off on the fourth floor, the male employee was sweating profusely as he did his best to console the trader. With this, I realized how great the trader's image in the company was. I also saw how his slumped shoulders that looked like they were carrying all the suffering in the world straightened as soon as the elevator doors closed and how a dark displeasure flashed across his eyes. It seemed like I was the only one who noticed these things. With my eyes that constantly observed him. Lee Tehi's song become Neptune's hit song. That's great. The trader suddenly said on our way to the office. While I shouldn't be thinking this, to be honest, I'm a bit sad. I was quite confident this time, you know. I didn't go to the get-together yesterday because my mind was complicated. Fortunately, the chief understood. Then he looked at me with a polite, friendly face. I was at a loss for words because I was so dumbfounded. Just where did someone like him come from? I thought that his true nature that was hidden by his fake shell would reveal itself this time since he was clearly agitated these past few days. It was also an agitable situation. The way he looked at me while Simon Lee's song was ranked higher than Lee Tehi's song was more obvious. His gaze was filled with elation, wanting to tell me that he won and ask me how it felt. However, this was suddenly flipped. That was why I thought I could see his true self this time, but rather than his true nature, it felt like his fake shell became tougher. Looking at the traitor, I said. Do you remember the bet we made? Of course, we decided to do something the other person wanted, right? What should I do? Should I get the chief's permission to take over your schedule for the next few days so you can travel? I said those words to offend him, but his reply was ridiculous. Since I couldn't have a sour face when he was smiling, I stiffly raised the tips of my lips. We just had to be passing the lounge. There were two or three people who could hear our conversation. No, we're so busy. Do you think you'll be able to concentrate on having fun if I left now? Really? Then tell me whenever if you have something you want. At this point, it was almost disgusting. Living my life however I wanted until now let me see a good amount of weird people, but it was my first time seeing someone like him. What was he thinking by acting this way? Did he have some ulterior motives? I couldn't figure out his real intentions. Seeing as he told me he was thinking about changing teams or companies meant that he hated working with me. So why was he acting so spine-chillingly coy now? For what reason? While my hand was handing over a synopsis, my eyes kept fixating on the trader sitting next to me. Like normal, he was comparing the calendar on the table and his phone scheduler and organizing his schedule. I tried to be proper enemies with him. If it came to a situation where we could both call each other dog idiot or cow idiot, then it would be easier to end my abnormal relationship with him. My heart would finally find something similar to peace. Yet, if he acted like this, things became more difficult. If I messed up, I could be the person who wanted to chase out someone, who was hardworking and friendly, but unlucky, all the conditions for gaining others' sympathy, for no reason. Then I would be this area's weirdo. 
This wasn't some game of chicken where we were waiting to see who would be the first to spill their inner thoughts. Either way, I needed to settle this for my own mental safety, whether it was by forcefully dragging his true nature out or bluntly provoking him by asking if he also hated working with me. Clicking my tongue, I was thinking who would win in the end when. Young Sun Wu. I heard a dry voice behind me. When I turned around, my expression almost crumbled. I didn't know whether this place was a company or an abode of demons. I already had a headache just dealing with the traitor, but another unwelcome face stood in front of me. His attention-grabbing beard. His expression that showed he obviously didn't like me. It was the Team 2 leader. Why was he in the Team 3's office? To see me? About Sun Chai Young again. I was trying to deduce his motive while greeting him when an unexpected name came out of his mouth. I heard you talked about an exclusive contract with Im Juwon. Im Juwon? Yes, he seemed to want to change companies and the PR team seemed like they were on the watch for actors appearing on the free market. We got a call from him. He said he wanted to talk while seeing the contract. We talked to him on the phone a few times, but, for some reason, he seemed to think highly of you as the mood was quite positive. So come with me when we go meet him. He'll talk to the Team 3 leader myself so adjust your schedule. If things work out, Im Ju Won might join WU. Since it wasn't difficult to do, I nodded and replied, but the Team 2 leader glanced at the traitor behind me. The traitor, who didn't have time to greet him because the Team 2 leader went straight to the topic, bowed his head and greeted him. The Team 2 leader half-heartedly nodded his head. You look like you'll work hard. I heard that Neptune recruited another manager, is that you? The trader hesitated before asking. I was thinking what kind of nonsense the team leader was thinking before figuring it out. So he got mixed up. No, still, could there be someone who really couldn't recognize an employee who had been working in the same company for six months? Smacking his lips, it seemed the trader wanted to correct him, but the team two leader turned towards me and added. Having you alone as a troublemaker is enough so teach him moderately, but. In moderation. The trader's expression, which seemed to have been stamped with a smile, became stiff for the first time. Even though he spoke late, his voice was unnoticeably calm. Im Choi Gun Young. Im not a new rookie, but have worked here for six months now. What? Six months. Yes, I joined the same time as Sun Wu. Ah, right. There were two. Then you're the one who brought Simon Lee's song. The Team 2 leader's expression became strange. I didn't know what he was thinking as he scanned the traitor, but he clicked his tongue and said. You must also be frustrated. To be his colleague. If you want to change teams, let me know any time since we need someone to be Sun Chai Young's road manager. In the past few days, she crushed a few anyways, let me know if you're interested. The Team 2 leader looked at the traitor as though he was looking at a living sacrifice before leaving. It seemed the Sun Chai Young effect was great as his expression had yet to relax completely. Either way, they said that nothing in life was certain, for the Team 2 leader to be helpful. With a smiling face, I said. How's Sun Chai Young? How is she? Are you seriously asking me? While he might think he replied normally, my ears picked up on a faint trace of irritation. He didn't completely control his expression either. Seeing him like this, the smile on my face widened on its own. Be more annoyed and throw a tantrum. On the day he says something worse than swearing, I wanted to shake a tambourine and cheer him to hit me. I was ready to take a hit if I could face his true self after getting hit. I shrugged and continued. No, I just suddenly thought about how you said you could understand how Sun Chai Young felt before. Did I say that? However, despite my urging, the trader's expression quickly returned to normal. While he still clenched his jaws, even that was buried under his gentle smile. Still, I'm not really interested in being an actor's manager. How regretful. Truly regretful. Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader arrived at the company at around lunchtime. While telling about the conversation I had about him Ju Won with the Team 2 leader, I glanced at Kim Hyunjo. He seemed to be quite concerned with the traitor. Kim Hyunjo's gaze was similar to the male employee earlier today, sympathetic and awkward. 
my concerns naturally become more complicated. We sat around a lounge table before lunch. We were talking about what to do after Neptune's album activities when Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader, who were sitting in front of me, suddenly pushed their chairs out and stood up. The trader and I followed suit and stood up as well. When I turned around, I saw the director coming down the stairs with light steps. He was a welcome face. When he discovered us, he smiled and approached. Oh, all the people who are incredibly busy these days are gathered here. When I greeted him, the director gave me a meaningful look. He nudged my arm and said. Lucky charm, congratulations. Even the CEO sends his congratulations. Congratulation. Ah, for Neptune getting first on the music broadcast? Huh. No, while that's also worth congratulating, don't you usually think of personal matters when someone congratulates you? Personal matters. When I blinked my eyes, the director also blinked his. What? Why is he like this? As though it's his first time being congratulated? That's because it's his first time hearing about it. He doesn't know yet, director. The Team 3 leader said while laughing distractedly. Why didn't you tell him yet? The CEO has approved it and everything. Because of his lack of experience. There are the things he's done until now, and just him promoting Lee Taehee's song and bringing home the music broadcast trophy is enough. I also heard he brought over him Ju Won as well. That's not it. There are a few things we want to handle beforehand. We were planning on telling him this evening. When he said things to handle beforehand, his gaze momentarily fell on the traitor. The Team 3 leader scratched his disheveled hair as he asked Kim Hyunjo. Hyunjo, did it arrive yet? It came yesterday. After nodding, Kim Hyunjo went into the office and quickly returned. He was holding a plastic rectangular box in his hand. When I looked closer, it was a business card case. Kim Hyunjo stopped in front of me and handed me the case while smiling. I wanted to give it to you when the mood was right, but what can I do? Open it up and see. My eyes were fixated on the business card case the moment I spotted it. I opened the cover and took out a stiff business card. Beneath the WU logo was a familiar name and phone number. What was unfamiliar was the title next to my name. Chief Young Sun Woo. Chief. I blankly stared at the two characters one. Was this real? It didn't feel real. While the thought of a promotion brushed my mind when Kim Hyunjo told me there would be good news yesterday, I dismissed it because it had only been six months. Seeing my expression, the director laughed warmly. While I don't know about other places, just know that there has never been a similar case in our company. Lucky charm, you're the first one to ever join with no experience and become a chief after six months. Well, it's our first time dealing with a recruit like you. The Team 3 leader laughed cheerfully as he agreed with the director's words. Kim Hyunjo's worried gaze was directed next to me. I also looked beside me with a flustered gaze. The trader was staring at the business card in my hand. His gentle smile had split like a field experiencing a drought. Chapter, 102 The trader's agitation was visible to everyone. He quickly fixed his jarred expression, but his face had already lost its composure as though it was warning of a storm. While I didn't know if it was his true face or if he was acting, his poor excuse for a smile was worse than not smiling at all. The Team 3 leader sighed, breaking the troubled silence. Let's hold personal meetings. The two of you. I pierced a deliciously cooked piece of stir-fried chicken and cabbage with my fork. The warmly melted mozzarella cheese stretched out. I put it in my mouth and chewed. Hmm, maybe it was because I was in a daze, but I couldn't taste it. In front of me, Kim Hyunjo was mechanically eating with his fork. He was probably thinking about the traitor who disappeared with the Team 3 leader. We were going to tell you after resolving matters with Gun Young. Kim Hyunjo said while placing his fork down. We were thinking about moving him to another team. Pardon? Move? He seemed surprised by my immediate question as Kim Hyunjo replied a little late. Since you're a chief, you can't be working like you have been like now. No matter how close you are, there will be trouble eventually if your positions are different.
Because we can't move you right away, we need to move him. Was today my birthday? Would everything go right for me today? Should I buy a lottery ticket? While I didn't show it outwardly, my excited hormones were dancing inside me. This welcome news made my heart swell as much as the news of my promotion. I might make today a personal commemorative day. I put my fork in my mouth again to hide my curving lips. Oh my god. The moment I bit into the juicy piece of chicken, it felt like a chicken crowed in my mouth, and the sweet, crisp cabbage covered my tongue. Then the semi-sweet, tasty cheese left the finishing touch. While I was in bliss, Kim Hyunjo continued talking. It's either we send him back to Blackout's team or Team 1 or 2 but if he goes to Team 2, he'll definitely be in charge of Sun Chaeyoung. I can't put him there. It's not like we're exiling him. Kim Hyunjo clicked his tongue and shook his head. They're a mess over there. Because of Sun Chaeyoung. Ah, uh, I guess she hasn't changed. She's gone beyond not changing, apparently, she's uncontrollable. It seems like she's acting out, daring us to renew her contract when she's acting like this, but the innocent are the ones suffering in the meantime. I hear a few road managers have quit already. The last guy even took the van and fled, telling the company to eat. The new recruit joining our team would have gone there if he was unlucky. He came back from the dead. As expected, there no peaceful day for those around Sun Chaeyoung. She was a walking natural disaster. However, if the traitor went to that team, I might cheer for her hysteria since I wasn't the target of it. Just as I was thinking this, Kim Hyunjo added. Chief Joe gave up and is letting her be. Things are going well over there. I was listening to him when a shiver suddenly went down my spine. Wait. In the future where I was assigned to Sun Chai Young, I was a chief. An unfamiliar, handsome youth was following me while calling me Chief Young. Seeing as I was wearing a short sleeve shirt, it was probably summer. The uneasiness which rushed towards me like the tide rippled at my knees. But Chief. Yeah. What kind of person is the new recruit? Is he a guy? Kim Hyunjo smiled slightly as he said. Yeah, why? Did you see him before? Not yet. Well, I heard he easily passed the interview, so I guess he left a good impression. He wasn't, right? I hadn't been able to think about it because I was focused on Neptune's album for a while, but even though I rejected Sun Chai Young's proposal, I couldn't be certain that I changed the future I saw. I frowned at this unsettling feeling when Kim Hyunjo poured beer into my glass and continued. You'll only know for sure after working with him. When I first met you, I didn't think you would be like this. When you came, wearing a full suit, I wondered if you would even last a week, yet here you are, already promoted. It's all thanks to you, Chief. Thank you. Stop it. Go flatter someone else. Either way, I'm sorry about the mood when we should have had a party or something. No, I think ITLL take about a day for me to realize that this is real. I was serious. The first thing to do when I got off work today would be to examine the business cards properly. Don't make it so apparent to Gun Young. The topic returned to the trader. Kim Hyunjo let out a stifled sigh. He's enduring it now because he's mentally strong. How do you think he feels right now? He has a good personality and does a good job. If he was on any other team, he would be complimented constantly, yet no one showed him an interest during the six months you guys worked together. Since you've been promoted now, he must be upset. I silently drank my beer. Kim Hyunjo continued to speak with a complicated expression. The Simon Lee song he worked hard to get was tossed away because its performance was unexceptional. Honestly, I was surprised that you guys were so close. Do you know how many times I was worried that you two would start beating each other? I still wanted to fight him. If it was anyone else, they probably would have already quit from their insides twisting with a sense of inferiority. I think I would have been disturbed by you if I had less experienced, but Gun Young, he really has a great personality. He's responsible. It's a shame to send him to another team. Kim Hyunjo's gaze was filled with regret. I was frustrated, unable to tell him he was being fooled. It felt like I had stuffed a box of steamed sweet potatoes down my throat. 
While I downed a glass of beer, it only washed away the surface of my frustration. I blocked my throat with another piece of chicken and ordered another beer. Think positively. Anyways, this frustration would end now. I no longer needed to waste mental power worrying since the trader would be going far away. It would be the end of my six months of penance. Goodbye, trader. It was shitty for the past six months, and let's not see each other again. I couldn't say it because I was surprised before. Congrats on your promotion. Was this guy a zombie? Or a lover, no, an enemy from my past life. 1. The moment I saw the trader return with a bright smile on his face, I almost threw the box of donuts at him in front of Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader. I barely managed to place the box on the desk, and the trader casually asked if it was dessert and walked over. Oh my god. I felt like I was suffering from a never-ending nightmare. The Team 3 leader said with a distressed expression. Gun Young, you eat that, Luck, Sun Wu, I want to talk with you. Soon, the Team 3 leader, Kim Hyunjo, and I were sitting around a lounge table. What, Young? How did your talk with him go? I told him what we decided beforehand. Since the situation is like this, we should transfer you. Where do you want to go? We will do our best to cater to you, whether it's Team 1, Team 2, or Blackout. Then he. Then he. He said he wants to stay. I should have drunk soju instead of beer. The shock was too big for me to listen to this with a sound mind. Hyung, are you sure you explained to him properly? No, that means he'll be working under Sun Wu, and he's okay with that. He said he felt bad to leave Neptune when it's such an important time for them after they all they had been through for the past six months. He said he was fine with working with Lucky Charm. Damn it. I thought I was a squid that was finally going back to the sea after been stranded on dry land, yet this trader was trying to cook me up on a stove. I felt like I was on an emotional roller coaster all today. My stomach ached. Damn, if I was more delicate, there would be holes in my stomach and my mind would have melted. Since he said that, I recalled how Lucky Charm rejected Sun Dawan because he kept thinking of Neptune. I just didn't feel right. I did tell him to think over it since both of them will be uncomfortable, but lucky charm, what do you think? My thoughts. My thoughts were that there was no need to think about it any longer. Ill talk with him. The two of you. Yes, we never really had the chance to. Well, both of you were busy these days. You guys probably didn't have the time to talk frankly with each other. It wasn't these days, there wasn't an opportunity for the past six months. Kim Hyunjo looked a little worried, but the Team 3 leader willingly nodded his head. I returned to the office. The trader, who was eating a donut, glanced at me as if asking if we were done talking already. When I glanced behind me, the Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo turned around and acted as though they weren't looking. Let's talk. At my words, the trader, who was licking the sugar off his fingers, paused. Talk. Yeah, talk not act. We were in a small, sealed meeting room, a perfect location for us to talk. Rather than outside, where many people could hear us, the meeting room was probably better. The trader was satisfied with this location. Since the lights were so bright that they irritated me, I turned them off. The darkness was good. This darkness suited our relationship. I wet my throat with the coffee in my paper cup as I looked in front of me. The trader was looking around at the meeting room. His eyes were gently curved, making him look like he was smiling when he wasn't. A nice-looking nose and slightly curved lips. On top of that, he was nice, polite, and gentle. The summation of these things made Choi Gun Young, someone anyone would like. What was his true face? I was now suspicious if his mask even had the function of being taken off. His actions and speech, which flowed naturally like water, if all this was calculated then he was truly an incredible person in every sense of the word. Are you really okay with continuing to work like this? Even though you'll be working under me? I shot the first question. If he stubbornly kept his fod going until the end, then I might be branded as the bad guy, but I would take the risk rather than continuing to have him by my side. The trader smiled faintly as he replied. 
To be honest, I was thinking about changing teams. There has never been a time in my life when things went so badly for me. Before joining this team, I had a systematic plan prepared, but it was ruined. Because you were so good at your job. Then why did you suddenly change your mind? When you say that your plan was ruined because of me? From my intuition, I felt like he had a different reason than Neptune. The trader stared at me as if examining me. My expression was probably stiffer than normal since my voice was the same. He abruptly said. I don't think you're happy about continuing to work with me. Wouldn't you be uncomfortable? Heh, it'll endure it since you'll be more uncomfortable than me from now on. Are you impatient because you were happy that the guy who you were secretly wary of was going far away, but then he decided to stay? Still, you should control your expression. Your expression looks menacing. I needed two more seconds to completely comprehend the situation. When I blinked, the trader smiled as though he was enjoying this. I'm quick-witted. I knew way back that you were excessively wary of me. I wondered if it was because you were competitive or because you were wary of me due to our personalities being so different. But when I brought Simon Lee's song over and you hurriedly brought and pushed for Lee Tehi's song, I became certain. You can't stand me taking away the spotlight. At some point, the trader's smile changed into one of mockery. Now that you've been promoted, do you want to work with a junior who will listen to and revere you? But the more I thought about it, the more annoyed I became about leaving you rejoicing as though everything turned out well. I want to make you very uncomfortable. This is the time when you use your good reputation, you know. I continued to listen since I didn't have the slightest thought of wanting to stop him. However, the trader seemed to have interpreted my reaction for something else. Are you surprised? The Choi Gun Young you know isn't like this, right? This is me. I'm only telling you, but I have never seen anyone as unpleasant and hateful as Yo, why are you smiling? His expression stiffened slightly. Was I smiling? Ah, I was. At this rate, the tips of my lips would hang on my ears. I'm smiling because. I stopped answering and laughed loudly. I felt all ticklish inside that I couldn't endure it. I almost exploded in laughter. My laugh rang out noisily in the meeting room. For six months, he played the biggest role in making me a mental patient. Because of him, I was struggling with distrust of others. I also felt guilty because I thought I might have been too obsessive over the things I saw and heard in the future that I had branded someone who might not necessarily be a bad person as a traitor. Also, just now, I had thought that I might never see behind his mask. After barely managing to contain my laughter, I looked at the traitor. He was looking at me too. Perhaps it was because my reaction was so different from what he wanted, but his expression was utterly odd. I gulped down the rest of my cooled coffee and said. The reason why I'm smiling is because I felt so refreshed. No, should I say reinvigorated? I feel like I've finally washed my hair in six months, you son of a. Chapter, 103 Kim Hyunjo paced back and forth in front the meeting room with sunken eyes. How long had it been since the two had gone into the meeting room? The firmly shut door showed no signs of opening. There wasn't even any sound flowing out from within the room. The Team 3 leader tapped the back of Kim Hyunjo's knee with his foot while chuckling. Hey, why are you like that? Did you leave your babies by the shore? Did you give birth to them? Well, you did take care of them for six months. As expected, affection from nurture is stronger than nature. Ah, Hyung. Stop speaking nonsense. It's already hectic. What's hectic? It's not like they can't act their age and constantly make trouble. It's those two, do you think something will happen? That's true it's just my excessive concern. Kim Hyunjo scratched the back of his head. Excessive concern? Is Chief Kim worried about something? Team leader Park asked while approaching them. Her eyes were filled with doubt. You should be dancing since Neptune brought home a trophy, what worry do you have? Sun Wu and Gun Young. It's about sorting them out. Aha. Team leader Park nodded her head as though she knew what he was talking about. The three of them were discussing this matter when Kim Hyunjo, who had been constantly paying attention to the meeting room, paused. 
a strange sound was seeping from the room. He took two steps towards the meeting room door. The sound became much clearer. Although the sound was distorted because of the thick door, he didn't need to strain his ears to understand since it wasn't someone talking. Hyung, someone's laughing, right? I think so. Is what they have to talk about so funny? It's almost like he's laughing his heart out. I have no idea what they might be talking about. The three looked at each other with the same puzzled face. While they were looking at each other, the laughter, which came from one person, continued to ring outside the door. The faces of those who were listening turned strange. Team leader Park licked her lips and cautiously said. The meeting room next to it. This one. Her hand gestured towards the empty meeting room next to the meeting room. Since the meeting rooms are connected by a glass door on the wall with blackout blinds, if we open it a little, we can probably hear what they are saying I'm just letting you know. Still, to eavesdrop on someone else's conversation. It's probably nothing. The Team 3 leader, who waved his hand, soon glanced at the closed door. Someone was still laughing. Rather than stopping, it seemed to get louder. It was odd even under normal circumstances. The gazes of the three people met. It's probably nothing, but let's just check why. Soon, they quietly entered the meeting room next to Choi Gun Young and Young Sun Woo's. It was quite a sight. No, to be honest, it was a very worthwhile sight, seeing the trader's expression like that. He didn't expect this situation. His face showed he was taken aback and confused about the completely unexpected situation. I wanted to see his contemptible smile evaporate from his face for so long. What, what did you say? Son of a, you idiot. Son of a. Before he was stuttering, but now he was completely at a loss for words. A cheerful emotion suddenly surged within me. I smiled brightly before abruptly leaning towards him and saying. Hey, swear. It's not like I have that sort of preference but I feel like ITLL hit me with 200% force if you swear. The fact that you were a real son of A. So stop acting coy now that everything's been revealed and swear. The more I talked, the more the traitor's expression changed. Oh my god, his change of expressions was more impressionable than any word of art. It was a pity that I was the only spectator. There wouldn't only one or two people who would admire this with their mouths agape. I leisurely propped up my chin and said. What, you said you've never met a guy more unpleasant and hateful as me? I've never seen a guy whose outer appearance is so different from his insides in my life. You. Do you know how stressful it was to live every day while tense? I thought I would die from frustration. You were undoubtedly a guy who would backstab me if he had the opportunity, yet you didn't stop for fod. Well, you didn't have an opportunity, if you did, you would have done more than just backstab, isn't that right? The trader's expression stiffened. If I let you listen to Taehee's song and told you that I thought it would be a hit, you would have snatched the opportunity. Then you would have nonchalantly told me, while I'm sorry, I can't let an opportunity pass. Because you're that kind of guy, right? There was no friendly, disciplined Choi Gun Young. His face was splattered with displeasure and irritation. Wow. Someone was looking at me like I was a bug, but to think that his gaze would make me this excited. The trader asked in an investigative manner. Which high school did you go to? I burst into laughter at his sudden question. Probably not the same one as you. Why? Was your talent in acting coy not as good as it is now? Well, if you were like this before, then it would send chills down my spine. It's not like you were some promising sociopathic genius as a kid. When I said so while chuckling, the trader's gaze became even fiercer. He seemed like he would flip the table over if I provoked him a little more. Of course, I was hoping for that. Then what is it? Who did you hear about me from? Are you the only quick-witted person in the world? The trader revealed a twisted expression. I'm talented. My biggest hobby is, like you said, living with an outer appearance different from my inner self. But when the Neptune girls, the chief, team leader, and other company employees didn't notice, you're telling me that you figured it out. In such detail. He spoke about his black inner thoughts with his own mouth. The more he did so, 
the more enjoyable this conversation, if you could still call it that, became. The trader stared at me with narrowed eyes as though he was looking at my inner thoughts. Hmm, I don't believe it. Unless you heard it from someone. It seemed he had some sort of idea. I wanted to dig into his inner thoughts even further. Unlike other times, I felt like the shovel would go in deep this time around. While he nonchalantly said that he was talented and how his fod was his hobby, it was clear that he was agitated inside. The fact that his nervousness came out through his expression and voice was proof. Why is it important who I heard it from? Why? Are you worried that if your true nature was completely exposed, there would be difficulties in continuing your hobby in this industry? You should have hidden it better. Once secrets are shared between two people, ITLL quickly be shared to three, four. The moment he cut me off in irritation and asked, a name suddenly crossed my mind. A name that made me uncomfortable along with the trader for a while. I licked my dry lips. Should I throw out some bait? In this situation, I wouldn't lose anything by trying, but if it worked. Simon Lee. I could stumble across a big fish like this. The trader clenched his jaws. His momentarily wavering eyes became chaotic before he stared into empty space as though he would strangle Simon Lee immediately if he was there. So, let's see. Simon Lee knew his true nature. I did suspect that there might be some scheme in the process of him persuading Simon Lee and getting one of his songs. This was because, glossing over giving Neptune his song, he was too proactive when he said he would even help promote them on entertainment shows. That was why I carefully observed Simon Lee, but I didn't have any traces or evidence to back it up. Until now. He's much dumber than I thought. The trader said, his teeth clenched. He desperately clung to me, telling me not to tell anyone, so I protected his dirty secret, yet he couldn't control his own mouth, blabbering about me to others. At this point, I netted a whole boatful of fish. He desperately clung to him, telling him not to tell anyone protected his dirty secret. This meant the traitor blackmailed Simon Lee with his weakness. Even if I considered backstabbing me to be not so troublesome since I was his colleague, to blackmail someone like Simon Lee. This guy could go places. He wasn't at the level of promising genius, he was already a fully-fledged sociopath. The traitor stared at me with a twisted smile. You're so talented. Simon Lee was probably careful because he had a lot to lose, how did you get him to speak? Did you get him wasted? I am a little talented. But I guess you couldn't procure any evidence with your talent. His gleaming eyes narrowed like a snake's. Anyone would have told a higher up already if they had proper proof. Yet they didn't seem to know anything. Kim Hyunjo or the team leader. Hmm, they don't know yet. Simon Lee will shut his mouth with a single phone call from me, and ITLL be difficult for others to completely believe what we say. As you know, I don't look like someone who would do things like that. The trader deliberately smiled brightly. Right. You don't look like someone who would do things like that. Sooner or later, I will leave this team. Concocting dirty rumors about you during that time is simple for me. Something like how you snatched away an idea I originally had or that I was constantly disregarded by you. Rumors like these spread quickly for famous people like you. It's fun, isn't it? His lips curled as though he was happy just thinking about it. How astounding. He was unmatched in wicked childishness. He was someone who would drive me crazy if he worked under me or act like he was chased out by me and forced to separate from Neptune if he left with my opposition. During my stormy time in middle school, I didn't see anyone with such a huge flaw in their character, yet to think that I would meet one after becoming an adult. The world was large, and there were tons of imbeciles. You will purposely alienate me to screw me over. Do you think they'll just watch you? The trader shrugged his shoulders at my words. I'm a poor fellow whose colleague got a promotion before me. The PR team employee and even Kim Hyunjo, did you see the expressions they had when looking at me? I told you before, I'm skilled. With this advantage, I can definitely get others to listen to M. Ah, uh, an advantage? Like this? I fumbled through my pocket. The trader's gaze, which followed my hand, halted when he saw what I took out. I showed off, humming, while checking my phone. 
A microphone was on the screen. The recording time kept increasing. When I pressed stop, it automatically saved as an audio file. Let's see, did it record well? I clicked the file and moved the scroll bar to the end. The trader's unrivaled confession began to play. I pressed the share button and saved it to the cloud before saying. The audio's quite decent. Smartphones these days are quite useful. You. The trader jolted up from his seat. This time, I shrugged my shoulders. Why are you so surprised? Recording people is my hobby, didn't you know? You son of a. Why is it so exhilarating hearing you swear? But do you think calling me a son of a is enough? If I spread this audio file to the PR team, chief, team leader, or should I just send a group message to the company communication network? Why? I could do that by accident. Erase that right now. The trader slammed the table hard, approached me, and held me up by my collar. Unconcerned, I smiled coolly because I liked how his angry face was filled with urgency without a trace of composure. Am I crazy to erase this? I already felt like I had eaten a box of sweet potatoes because of how the chief and team leader all complimented you, saying how you were a nice guy. If they hear this, they'll probably fall holding the back of their necks. Do I need to prepare Chong Shim Huan one or something beforehand? You asshole, seeing you act like this. Stop looking and just hit me, you son of a. It might be nice to end this with a punk. Before I could finish, his fist smashed into me. I realized I was hit when my chin turned to the side. Damn it, I bit my tongue. I used my entire strength to kick the trader's stomach. He was pushed back along with the table. The chair that was also pushed aside crashed onto the floor. His fiery glare landed on me. You idiot. He menacingly rushed at me, grabbed my collar and raised his fist again. Just then, a weird knock, knock sound joined in. It was the sound of something being hit hard. Something like a wall. The edge of the blackout blinds that were covering a wall moved as though it was pushed out by something. Then a slender arm, which looked to be a woman's, suddenly appeared. The arm raised the blinds. The owner of the arm was Team Leader Park, who had a dumbfounded expression. Beyond the clear glass door, Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader were looking at me. The Team 3 leader forced a smile and said. What a mess. Chapter, 104. When were they there? Did they hear everything? My brain churned in thought for a few seconds, recalling whether I misspoke or not and how I currently looked in their eyes. Of course, they probably saw this as a mess. Still, it was fortunate. Because I was recording the conversation, I didn't think I made any mistake and the one grabbing the collar was the traitor, not me. There shouldn't anything bad for me. It seemed the traitor also finished comprehending the situation at the same time as he quickly let go of my collar. Then he mumbled, idiot, in a quiet voice. Seeing his face clearly showing he was screwed, my heart, which shook as though it was hit by a storm, calmed. So, to straighten the situation god damn it, it can't be straightened. After sitting me down next to the trader, the Team 3 leader rubbed his dry face. I experienced all sorts of things during my time in this industry, but it's my first time experiencing such a ridiculous situation. So while thinking something completely different inwardly, this whole time, the both of you worked and talked can we work with kids these days when they're so scary? Hey, look at him, huh? Look at how out of it he is. He gestured with his chin. Since Team Leader Park had excused herself already, only Kim Hyunjo was sitting next to him. For a while now, Kim Hyunjo had an expression that read, What did I just see? Is this real? As he stared at us. The Team 3 leader looked at the trader and asked. So, for the past six months, you intentionally and completely deceived us, right? The words you told me previously were all lies. Hoping to recuperate the situation, the trader licked his lips and replied. I didn't deceive you, I only tried my best to do well socially. I already heard everything so stop. You're sending shivers down my spine. The Team 3 leader cut the trader off. I didn't notice before because he was pretending to laugh, but his eyes were chilly. Because he was always a cheerful person, 
I thought of him as a comfortable next-door hyung than my company superior. However, the mood right now wasn't comfortable in the slightest. This time, the Team 3 leader looked in my direction. And you? You were observing him by yourself all this time? That is I couldn't recklessly tell you because I wasn't 100% certain. Hey, you said you heard it from Simon Lee. Then you should have told us then. Ah, that was a lie. The traitor turned his gaze towards me. The Team 3 leader and even Kim Hyunjo, who was out of it, looked at me with dumbfounded expressions. I glanced at the traitor, who was glaring at me, before saying. I only baited him just in case. He's the one who took the bait. You, idiot. The traitor, who shouted with bulging veins, faltered. His eyes were red with rage, yet it seemed he was still aware of the Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo as he suppressed his rage. If the two weren't here, a chair might actually be thrown this time. The Team 3 leader broke the bloody mood. This won't work. Sun Wu, you go out for now. No, you can take the rest of the day off. How can we talk with the two of you together? They'll contact you later so just go home and cool your head. During that time, well straighten this guy out, starting with what kind of deal he made with Simon Lee. The Team 3 leader waved his hand, telling me to go out. Kim Hyunjo also nodded his head. I glanced at the traitor, and it seemed he decided there was no point in keeping up his fod any longer as his face was surging with irritation. The way he was staring at me was filled with murderous intent. Not that I cared, I calmly stood up and left. While I didn't know what they would talk about, one thing was certain. The next time I came to work, the trader's spot would be empty. I would no longer have to see his face in the company. The morning of the next day. While spending a non-break-like break, the call I had been waiting for finally arrived. It ended with his resignation. You will no longer have to see that idiot. Kim Hyunjo's voice rang out from the other side of the phone. So he was fired. It was expected. Well, it was as expected as a happy ending in a fairy tale since the Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo couldn't let a person who threatened a songwriter keep working in the company. Chief, what about the thing with Simon Lee? Damned idiot, he kept his mouth shut until the very end. Young Hoon Hyung personally went out last night to meet with Simon Lee, but it was the same there. I don't know what kind of dirt Gun Young has on him, but he was adamant that there was no deal between them. He sounded depressed. It was to the point where I could tell just how dispirited he was by his voice. Well, he was the one most shocked about this incident. He had taken his junior around and trained him, a kind junior who he trusted to boot, yet that junior utterly backstabbed him. It would be fortunate if he wasn't doubting life. Did that guy call you? I waited, thinking he'd call me, but he's quiet. Seeing his murderous gaze, it wouldn't be shocking if he came looking for me with a knife, let alone calling me. That was why I prepared a sturdy baseball bat, though I hoped I wouldn't have to use it. I looked at the clock, which was indicating it was just past nine, as I asked. When should I start work again? The girls have a schedule early this morning. I'm taking care of that so don't worry. I have to talk to the girls about Gun Young anyways, though I don't know if they'll believe it when I, who personally saw it, am still dumbfounded. The girls would cause a commotion once they heard. I imagined the scene while clicking my tongue when Kim Hyunjo continued. I heard you're meeting Im Ju Won with Team 2. The Team 2 leader was itching to get at you, but use this opportunity and help him properly to get him to owe you a favor. You can come to work starting tomorrow. Yes, understood. After hanging up, I got up from my bed. There was a ton of time before my dinner with him Ju Won. Basically, I had leisure time. How could I spend this precious time, which I didn't know when I would have again, stuck in my apartment? Since I got great news that the trader was fired, I should celebrate by watching a movie. When I opened the movie theater app, it was filled with newly released movies. If I skipped lunch and moved quickly, I should be able to watch three movies. While thinking about which movies I should watch, I became happier. Then, an hour later, I was driving my minivan. Not to the theater, but to Payu, Jayongi-do. With a troublesome fellow in the passenger seat. Hey, society really is scary. For young Sun Wu to get beat up. 
the most decent person among the troublesome friends I had known since high school, Kim Tai Wung said while examining my face. When I lightly rubbed my lips, the slightly torn part still stung. Who got beat up? We hit each other. Your expression is scary right now. Did you sue him? I got a medical certificate. I guess this is considered an injury as they told me it would take two weeks to heal completely. Really? Are you going to sue? No, as a precaution in case that idiot sues me first. Taken aback, Kim Tai Wung shook his head. Then he paused before asking. Wait, but why are you wearing sunglasses? Is your eye also? No, if I don't wear sunglasses, people recognize me. While no one came up to me asking for a picture and autograph since I wasn't a celebrity, it concerned me enough with people murmuring at a distance. That was why it became a habit to wear sunglasses when I went out for personal reasons. Ah, right. You're famous now. A famous person who appeared on the evening news. The gigantic guy clasped his hands together and blinked his eyes like a fangirl. Damn it, shivers went down my neck. After constantly chirping about how I was a famous person without caring if I cursed or not, he suddenly became quiet. When I turned around, he was constantly glancing at me. Hey, you're not overdoing it, right? I'm not. I told you multiple times. Kim Tai Wung scratched his head at my words. No, to be honest, I didn't have much expectation when I called you, but I was taken aback when the guy, who's too busy to meet, readily agreed and came out. You didn't cancel an important meeting or something, right? I cancelled my movie tickets. Just know that I cried tears of blood. At my reply, Kim Tai Wung exaggeratedly placed his hand over his mouth. Not something else, but you gave up movies to come here. The guy who cares more about movies than food? For me. In your dreams. I came because it was your mother's request. How cold hearted. Our love has cooled. Stop speaking nonsense and tell me what's going on in detail. Kim Tai Wung, who had been chuckling and joking around, sighed before getting to the point. That is my second aunt has an idiotic youngest daughter. She dreams of becoming a celebrity. My aunt gave up and is letting her do whatever she wants so that she'll end up giving up, but she suddenly said she was going to sign with a company we've never heard of before. Because of that, my aunt clung to my mother, and my mother asked me, and I contacted you. Kim Tai Wung said while reading my mood again. Just listen and check if that company is legit. Also, you've probably seen a lot of celebrities while working. She's apparently filming an independent film right now so tell me if you think she won't make it. I got it so stop reading my mood, man. It's gross. It's because I'm sorry, idiot. You probably receive a ton of requests like this. Requests. A few crossed my mind. Like he said, after appearing on TV, I received a few calls. The content of the calls was similar. My daughter, younger sibling, nephew, or whoever aspires to be a celebrity so can you meet him or her once because he or she is a good person. I heard there were a million celebrity aspirants in the country, and my surroundings were overflowing with them. After listening to what I said, Kim Tai Woon blinked his eyes and asked. Hey, if you think someone's okay, then does that person immediately become a celebrity? How could it be so simple? The problem is how long the contract will be. Normally, there is a casting manager who specializes in finding rookies. The higher-ups discuss a ton when they bring over a few profiles. Even when recruiting so carefully, there were more cases where things ended in failure than success. It was the same even when they were promoted by a big company like WU. The path to becoming a renowned star from a nobody was as narrow as the eye of a needle. While talking about various things, the road had become unpaved at some point. We drove quite a bit down the unpaved road to find the independent film shooting site when we saw a group of people gathered in front of us. Two women and three men. A long-haired woman waved her hand when she saw us. Are they trying to hitchhike? In a place like this? I don't think they are greeting us. I stopped the van and lowered the window. Two women approached us with exhausted faces. I didn't know from where they started walking, but their foreheads and necks were soaked with sweat despite it being a cool spring day. 
Excuse me. Is this a staff van? We are actors for the shoot this afternoon, but if you are, please give us a ride. Hearing they were actors, Kim Taewoong stretched his neck out. I also closely examined the faces of the people standing there in case I saw someone I knew. I had seen quite a few independent films when I had the time back in the day. However, there were no faces I remembered. While we aren't staff members, we are going to the film shoot. Well give you a ride. Thank you. I thought my legs would break before I even got to act. The actors poured their thanks on me as they got in the van. Soon, I heard a grumbling voice from the back. Are they telling us to act or not? Why didn't they come when they said they'd pick us up? Maybe they went to pick up Lee Sung Hyun again. Is he the only actor? What are we? The background? Isn't the director too mean? What can he do even though he's the director? If Lee Sung Hyun leaves, saying he wants to go all in on a commercial film, he has to change the lead and reshoot. I held the steering wheel, ready to drive again. However, for some reason, my gaze kept heading towards the rearview mirror. It wasn't towards the pretty actresses, who were discussing the sorrows of being unknown, but to a man sitting at the very back even though I couldn't see his face clearly because of his tangled hair. Did I see him before? The moment I thought this, my gaze met the man's. Then I recalled where I saw him. Chapter 105 Weren't you in the movie Pet Shop? When I asked, the actor's gazes fell on me. Someone looked like he was recalling whether there was a similar title among the independent films he was cast in, and another person gave me an odd look, as though asking me what I was suddenly saying. Then there was the man sitting at the very back. The man who was slowly fanning himself with a wrinkled script paused. So he was. Even though it was a long time ago, I faintly remembered a scene. He gave a strong impression despite wearing a grey school uniform and having a tidy haircut that covered the tips of his ears. His arm barely managed to stretch out from a rusty grating. That's right. How interesting. Not a lot of people know that film because it flopped. The man said while resuming to fan himself. The wind tangled his messy hair even more. His long eyes were revealed through his hair. Like diluting water with water his eyes were dull and tepid. I was the one who was surprised. Should I say it was like I discovered a trace from the past? I was watching a ton of movies when it released because it was just before my mandatory military service. You have good eyes. Nam ji this guy, he didn't appear much in the film. A different man who wore a baseball cap joined in. So his name was Nam joy -un. He really didn't appear a lot. I remembered him as a supporting role. One who stood out more than the lead. He was to my liking. Ah, I respect your tastes. If he was to your liking, then I can see why you remember him. His atmosphere. His atmosphere as an actor was to my liking. The man wearing a baseball cap seemed to have a joking personality as he giggled. When I looked to my side because I felt an itch on my cheek, Kim Tai Woon, this guy, was looking at me while covering his mouth. I had an ominous premonition that respecting your tastes would be plastered in the group chat with my friends. Idiot, today, to learn about your hidden preferences. I like U-turns, should I do it? Don't, don't. Bill shut up. After shutting him up, I drove down the unpaved road again. When I looked in my rearview mirror, Nam joy -un, seemingly unsatisfied with fanning himself, had opened the window halfway and enjoyed the breeze. Maybe it was because I first saw him on the big screen, but it felt like I was seeing him through a screen rather than in reality. What sort of projects did he work on after Pet Shop? Seeing as I didn't see him in theaters since, it seemed he was only cast in independent films. He had a unique atmosphere and his looks and body weren't bad so why didn't he become popular? While I was immersed in my thoughts about Nam joy -un, the other actors were complaining about their companies and contracts. I was in a five-year contract, but the company did nothing for me. They didn't get me a good scenario or role. They just took a commission whenever I got a minor role after chasing down additions. Bastards. Big companies are absolutely better. They have a lot of connections and get a ton of scenarios. Who doesn't know they are good? I just don't get scouted by them even though I can work like a bull. 
Companies are companies, but you also need to get a good manager. Even though I was in a company, I had to hand out my own business cards because my manager wasn't good at business. Hearing what other people have told me, it seems like chiefs lobby to get roles for you. It felt like I was watching women chatting at the stream while doing laundry, though two of them were men. The only one who didn't join their conversation was Nam Joyun. It seemed he wasn't interested in talking about companies as he simply enjoyed the breeze. The actors were discussing a few companies. WU doesn't seem like they are interested in discovering rookie actors, right? I unconsciously let out a dry cough. They are probably busy looking at top stars and a rank actors on the free agent market. I think they are more focused on developing idols than actors these days since the profitability of developing idols is good relative to the investment. I don't like WU as much these days since it seems like they're getting greedy for money. Yeah, right. You're going to sign if they scout you. Hey, of course, I am. Still, WU is still virtuous. There are quite a few who they discovered and raised to a rank. Just look at Seo Jijun, who blew up recently, and they pretty much took care of Lee Songa as a rookie. Isn't her manager the one who took care of her, instead of the company? It seems that way when reading the articles. I had a feeling, but the actress with long hair brought me up in the end. Kim Taewoon, who was fully aware of the company I worked for, kept alternating his gaze between me and the back. Glossing over their gossip about companies, I had no intention of eavesdropping a conversation about me in real time. I was already tired of monitoring comments about me on the internet. Just as I was about to take off my sunglasses before the mood became weird. Is this your first time in this industry? That's totally media manipulation. WU keep bringing him up because he does well on entertainment shows. If they package it like that, it becomes a good story and Lee Song has image becomes better too. You have to give it to the WU PR team's media manipulation skills. It's certain that Lee Sangha became popular because of their manipulation than her acting. Her manager just got lucky because of them. He got to appear on shows and spread his name. Honestly speaking, what kind of amazing talent does a road manager have to make an unknown girl into a star in a few months? An actress with bobbing hair and a muscular man jeered. When I clicked my tongue and took off my sunglasses, Kim Taewoon calmly asked. I know, right? Idiot, how did you make an unknown celebrity into a star within a few months when you don't have any outstanding talent? I don't know. Maybe I have some other talent. You definitely have a talent in taking care of people. Your quadruplets are proof of that. We thought that it was a loss for the national child education industry when you became a manager. Still, I didn't think that your talent in taking care of kids could be useful in taking care of celebrities. They do have their similarities. I said while grinning. Kim Taewoon looked back with a sly face. The back was quiet for a while as though someone had pressed the mute button. My face itched while they stared at me with uncertain expressions. Kim Taewoon looked back at the woman with curly hair and the muscular man and said. Oh, right. I shrink when I don't say what's on my mind so I have to say it. Pa pardon? This idiot isn't lucky because of his company, it's the opposite. His nickname there is Lucky Charm. While it's funny, the minivan you're riding in right now and his gas bill are paid by his comp. Stop, damn it. It's embarrassing. At my words, Kim Taewoon shut his mouth while smiling. There was no doubt he said that to tease me, damn idiot. How did he know that my nickname was Lucky Charm? I definitely have never mentioned it before. Did some board reporter write an article about it after hearing it? While thinking I should hit him when the opportunity arises, I looked in the rearview mirror. Then I said to the two actors who became flustered because of Kim Taewoon. Lee Sangha didn't get popular due to media manipulation. You should know if you saw her drama. I, I didn't say that. Hey, you're the one who said it. That is I'm sorry. I didn't see the drama. Beside me, Kim Taewoon was astonished, saying, why would you saw it was certain she became popular due to media manipulation if you didn't see her drama? I also clicked my tongue. I had a real headache because of Lee Song has acting controversy that I was more sensitive to conversations like this than others. 
the two actors curled up and apologized. The other two, the actress with straight hair and the man with a baseball cap, looked like they were dying to ask questions. You're really Lee Song has, ah, uh, Neptune's manager, right? What brings you here? Don't tell me you came here to look for decent actors on the film set. No, it's for a personal reason. My friend's younger cousin is on the film set. My lips curled into an awkward smile on its own. However, the actors didn't show any signs of disappointment at my words as their eyes shined as though they knew it. Ah, then could I ask you a few questions? How do casting managers at WU obtain profiles? As expected, through agents. Can you give me your business card? I might need to call you one day. For the first time since I was promoted to a chief, I handed out my stiff, new business cards. I answered the pouring questions the best I could. Since I didn't have an opportunity to talk with actors like this since Cat Guardian Ghost ended, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Despite this, my eyes kept wandering to one person while talking. Towards Nam Joyun who was silently sitting in the back seat. He flipped through his wrinkled script, brushed his faded grey t-shirt, and even placed his small head against the headrest as if he enjoyed the plush seat. How strange. Why was I so concerned about him? The set of the independent film was a quiet resort with a small pond. It seemed they were finished with a shoot as the staff were bustling around quickly while carrying cameras, lights, and reflective panels. While the scale was incomparably smaller than Cat Guardian Ghost, their passion didn't lose out to them. I parked next to a truck. The woman with curly hair and the muscular man, who were uncomfortable the ride here, ran away towards the set. The other actors gave us their thanks as they got off. While Kim Taewoon was looking for his cousin, I approached Nam Joyun. Air, Mr. Nam Joyun. Nam Joyun, who was standing crookedly, turned to look at me. Did you only film independent films since Pet Shop? His voice was pleasant. But how old was he? Since he played a high schooler role in the movie I watched before I went to military service, he would be a few years younger than me if he actually was a high schooler then. Though when comparing appearances, he looked three to four years younger than me. I was looking for questions to ask while thinking this when the man wearing a baseball cap joined in. This guy barely managed to appear on a few independent films, Chief. I was surprised. Once because he called me Chief. Once more because he said that Nam Joyun barely managed to appear on a few independent films. Barely. After filming Pet Shop, he was caught by a truly trashy company full of trashy people. After wasting his life tied to an eight-year contract, he spent another few years with a contract cancellation lawsuit. He's 30 this year ha, huh? this guy's life is frustrating. Thanks for organizing my life story in 15 seconds. Nam Joyun said nonchalantly. Then he said goodbye and left. I watched his figure trudge away for a while. Maybe it was because I could visualize the wicked company he was tied to, he looked like he was wasting away, struggling with hardship. I could understand his dull, lukewarm atmosphere and easygoing attitude. Rather, it was sad. It really is a shame. Suddenly, the man wearing a baseball cap struck a conversation with me. I'm not saying this because I'm his friend. He really is someone who loves acting. And if he didn't love it so much, he wouldn't have endured all these years and appear on independent years after all that. Did he not join a different company afterward? A few tried to scout him since he's good at acting and has good looks, but they all backed off after saying they wanted to sign him. Well, his filmography only consists of independent films besides Pet Shop. He also has his age. They probably thought it wouldn't work out after plugging in the numbers. If they were going to turn their backs on him, then they shouldn't have shaken up the quiet tree in the first place. He clicked his tongue. Well, I'm only telling you this because you seem interested in Joyun, that guy. Ah, thank you. The man shrugged his shoulders and left. I looked around a few times and quickly found Nam Joyun. He was moving the luggage with the staff. Again, as though there was a filter, only Nam Joyun stood out. It was similar to when I first saw Lee Sangha. Why was this? Was I biased? If I had seen the future, one where Nam Joyun became a successful actor or where we were joined by fate, then I could understand being so concerned, 
but it wasn't like that. While chasing Nam Joyun with my gaze, I decided I needed to see him act. However, before I did, I needed to settle the reason I came all the way here. After briefly greeting the film director, I sat down on a bench next to the resort. In front of me were Kim Tai Wung and a woman, who introduced herself as his cousin and was staring at me. But are you really a chief from WU? Dumbfounded by his cousin's doubt, Kim Tai Wung said. Blockhead, don't you use the internet? His face is like his business card. Ah, I told you not to call me a blockhead. I hate you. It's not like you can call blockheads smart heads. His cousin ignored Kim Tai Wung's joking words and quickly checked her phone. It seemed she searched my name as her gaze alternated between my face and my picture on her screen before smiling. He is. Appa, if you had a friend like him, you should have introduced me to him earlier. Are you crazy? The staff and actors around us constantly glanced at us. Their gazes, which brushed past Kim Tai Wung and his cousin, landed on me. Nine times out of ten, they started murmuring to each other afterward. Should I have put my sunglasses back on? While regretting it, I asked Kim Tai Wung's cousin. So that CEO said that you should debut as a girl group first? Yes, it's easier to get auditions as an idol than as a rookie actor these days, you know. Well, they said it's more like a meeting than an audition. They already have four members, and I just go in as the fifth member in charge of looks. Are you perhaps exceptionally good at singing or dancing? No. I'm the member in charge of looks. The center of the group. The cousin said in a very proud manner. She was pretty, she was. While I was thinking about what to say first, my phone vibrated briefly in my pocket. Since I thought it was a text or a chat message, I continued talking. How old are you? 25. Why? What do you mean why? It was because I couldn't understand the CEO no matter how much I thought about it. There were more than a million celebrity aspirants in this age. The number one dream of young students was becoming a celebrity, and two million kids gathered for the preliminaries of a public broadcast audition program. Because the competition was so fierce, even young, pretty trainees who were great singers had a hard time debuting. Yet why did this CEO want a 25-year-old aspiring actress as a girl group member? Tell me that the name of the company and CEO. The cousin took out a business card. Just as I received it and began examining it, my phone began to vibrate again. It wasn't only once. Thinking it might be a call, I took out my phone only to find that they were messages. Appa, Imsanga. I heard that you were hit in a fight. Are you injured? Hyunjo Appa is apparently taking care of today's schedule for you, are you unable to come because you're hurt? This was the first message. The ones after came right after one another as though she was worried because I didn't reply. Are you really hurt? Did you go to the hospital? Are you okay? Appa. There were only a few lines of text, yet I felt like I could hear Lee Song has voice. How big did the clash where we each hit each other once get for her to be so worried? Especially her last message with just Appa, that one oozed with impatience and worry. Other people might think I was in a critical condition or something. Don't tell me she thought that I fought against Seventeen or was in a bloody fight against someone. I first asked for Kim Tai Wung in his cousin's understanding and replied back. While I was typing, Lee Song has name appeared on my screen. This time, it was a call. A sudden video call to boot. Chapter 106. Lee Sangha, hey, hey, is that Lee Sangha that Lee Sangha? Are you going to video chat with her? Right now. Kim Tai Wung stumbled up to stand when he saw my phone screen. Next to him, his cousin looked at my vibrating phone with a face full of curiosity. During this time, my phone kept ringing. Yeah, sorry. Let's talk after I take this call. Take it, take it. Also, let me get my birthday present now, Hyung Won. When have we ever given each other birthday presents? Hiding my torn lip by placing my hand on my chin, I took the call. The screen was filled with Lee Song Ha's face. With worried eyes, she quickly examined my face. Seeing this, I laughed. To be honest, this didn't feel bad. 
a placid girl worrying that I was hurt, that is. After confirming my face was fine, Lee Sangha let out a long sigh. Appa, are you okay? Of course, I am. Let's see. While his face might look fine, his body might be in tatters. Are you wearing a cast? Accompanied by familiar voices, the phone screen shook. Im Seo Young's face suddenly appeared as well as Lee Tae Hee and LJ. They were examining me with narrowed eyes. Seeing behind them, they were in the company practice room. It seemed that they went to the company for group practice when they heard the news about me and Lee Sangha called me as the representative. My body is fine, and I'm not wearing a cast. Just what did you hear? I heard that you were one-sidedly beaten up in a fight against Gun Young Appa. Rumors are spreading throughout the company. Who got beat? His fist only brushed me. Did the employees see that my lip was torn when I left? Just what rumors were spreading in the company without my knowledge. As expected, that traitor was of no help to me until the very end. Lee Tae-hee calmed the excited Im Seo Young and joined in. Just what happened? They suddenly say that you two fought and won't be coming to work today. We were worried that you were severely hurt that you couldn't move when Hyunjo Appa said he would be substituting for you today. The chief will explain in detail. The story is a bit long to explain through the phone. The reason why I can't go to your schedule is not that I can't move but because I have some matters to take care of today. Matters to take care of? Ah, uh, but Appa, where are you right now? Who is he? Im Seo Young blinked. Her gaze brushed past me. When I looked to my right, a red-cheeked bear was tilting his head while clasping his front paws. When the girl's gazes gathered on him, Kim Taewoong opened and closed his mouth a few times before quickly crouching. His ears were red. Ah, he's my. Wait. I'm Seo Young abruptly shouted. Her gaze looked like a guard who discovered an enemy. I just saw a woman's face in the nine o'clock direction. Kim Taewoong's cousin, who was blankly glancing at the screen from my left, gasped as she squatted down. Just what were they doing, those two? If they hide so obviously, then it seemed like I was secretly in a weird meeting. Sure enough, the girl's expressions became odd. I don't know what you're thinking, but don't. She's my friend's cousin. We were frightened that you were injured, but you were with your friend's cousin. A blind date. It's not. If it's not, then show us proof. My friend asked me about work, no, but why do I have to provide evidence? Astonished in mid-sentence, I looked at the girls' faces. There was nothing more to be said about him Seo Young, whose face was plastered with shock, but LJ's eyes were sharp, so were Lee Taehee's. As for Lee Sangha, if the other girls weren't moving, then I would have thought that the video call froze. She was still since a while ago. Im Seo Young hurriedly shouted. That, that is. It isn't the time for us to be dating. We're banned from dating. The ones who can't date are you, I can. I'm not some celebrity. Ah, you can't. Lee Sangha suddenly said while shaking her head. Why can't I? At my question, Lee Song has mouth opened and closed as though she was taken aback. It had been a long time since she couldn't control her expression like this. When Lee Sangha kept fretting for a few seconds, Im Seo Young joined in. Ah, uh, that's because if you are in a relationship, your family will be ruined. Society will be ruined. What kind of nonsense is that? I said while laughing. While Im Seo Young's nonsense was ridiculous, I was more astonished by Lee Sangha, who was diligently saying, that's right, you can't, ITLL be ruined, while nodding her head from the side. LJ and Lee Tae didn't bother to stop them, watching from the side as if this was amusing. Im Seo Young, who was speaking gibberish, suddenly shouted. You are. I don't know. Anyways, it feels like you're being snatched from us. What? Hey, wait, wait. I felt stinging gazes landing on my back at some point. Maybe it was because of their voices, but a few staff members were looking in my direction. There were too many eyes to continue this private conversation. Let's talk about this later. I hung up and put my phone down. Only then did Kim Taewoong and his cousin, who were crouching on either side of me, stand up. 
Now that I thought about it, I couldn't properly introduce him as my friend to the girls. While thinking this, my cheeks kept itching. Without me knowing, my lips had curled up and were trembling. Kim Taewoon stared at me blankly before saying. Hey, you idiot. I suddenly recalled the nonsense you said before. What? Think that you rejoined the army? Where in the army are there people like them, idiot? He sat back down with a dispirited face. Was that just now your usual conversation? Is that how you live? While working like that, you receive a salary and a car. Wow, damn but you were fine talking to four faces like that, amazing idiot. I have a mouth so obviously am going to talk to them. Or what? Should I use sign language? But are all celebrities like them? It's not like it's computer graphics, how could they look like that? Kim Tai Wung stared at his cousin sitting next to him. Hey, blockhead. The center. Center. There's nothing more to say, it's definitely a scam. Think that you would be amongst people like them. A baby octopus amongst mermaids. That CEO person, he definitely has other plans. His cousin snorted at him. Do you think him a fool? If it was a scam, had tried to rip money off me. Why would he pay money and make an album? That company has already debuted a girl group. While they are unknown in Korea, they are active in China and the Philippines. Also, if I also constantly have cameras pointing at me, I bet it'll be as pretty as them. 2. You won't, idiot. Quit dreaming. While they were cursing each other, I examined the business card I received from her. It would be great if the company was fine, but I had seen too many dirty things in the past six months to only be optimistic. There were more than 1,700 companies registered as an entertainment management company. There were more if you considered unregistered, illegal ones as well. Among them, countless of them used the entertainment management company as their front business and dealt with escort services in secret. I first asked whether team leader Park or reporter Park Wujong knew anything about this company. Next, I searched for information regarding the girl group that had debuted from that company. A message came quicker than I thought. From both of them simultaneously to boot. I clicked my tongue after reading the messages. Hmm, you see, that company. I asked around about it. Yes. His growling cousin immediately looked at me. How is it? They say they are okay, right? Right? She urged with eyes filled with expectation and hope. I thought that she was just excited from being scouted, but beneath that were unease and worry as well as a desperation, urging me to tell the company was okay. When I turned my gaze, Kim Taewoon was also looking at me with a serious expression. It felt bitter. The company had a lot of bad rumors. They released a single album with a sexy concept with 20-something-year-old trainees, who were desperate to debut due to their age. That was it. Then, with the title as a Korean girl group, they earned money by going to clubs in China. While there were only rumors regarding what went on during that process, if even one of them was true, this was a company people shouldn't even associate with. I told them while putting it as nicely as possible, but it was no use. His cousin's face was already pale when she heard that about the sexy concept and going around clubs in China. Her eyes looked like they would cry tears of sorrow at any moment. Hey, just think that you're lucky to avoid that pile of. He seemed to have become soft-hearted as Kim Tae-woong tried to comfort her, but. That CEO, ill eliminate him, that asshole. I boasted a ton to my mom and friends that I was going to be a celebrity. So embarrassing. What? Hey, right now's not the time to be in bar. Her reaction broke my expectation. The veins in Kim tae -wung's neck even bulged. Unconcerned whether her cousin was clasping the back of his neck or not, she kept looking at me with a sad expression. Um, chief. No, Appa. W.U. isn't recruiting any more trainees, are you? Nope, we aren't. Then, as a rookie actress. I can get you my profile right away. B.S. Get your head out of the clouds. Because of this, I. Kim Taewoon exploded, shaking the back of his cousin's neck. His cousin didn't give up and fought him back. 
the staff members' gazes also fell on me. After tossing them my keys and telling them to fight in my car did my surroundings finally quiet down. Was this considered ending it well? I walked towards the film shoot. While Kim Tai Wung apologized multiple times for bothering me with his cousin, I didn't regret coming here at all. My eyes instantly landed on Nam Joyun amongst the staff members preparing for the next shoot. He was helping them set up rails with a dry expression. His forehead, which he had cooled on the ride here, was beaded with sweat. Don't worry so much. Someone suddenly said beside me. When I turned around, a handsome man with a well-proportioned face was smiling at me. Your friend's cousin. Since she wants to be a celebrity rather than an actor, she'll probably give up after failing a few auditions. Only those who like acting endure until the end. His expression read, like me. As though wanting to let me listen, the man mumbled. Well it's a problem if you keep enduring when things aren't working out no matter how much you like acting. If you don't see a future, you need to throw it away and find a way to survive. The man's gaze lingered on Nam Joyun before turning to me. I am Lee Sung Hyun, a rookie actor. I came to leave an impression since I heard you're a WU chief. He continued by promoting himself. He talked about how he was currently cast as a minor speaking role in a commercial film and how he was carefully choosing a management company. He also handed me his business card, telling me to contact him if I liked his acting. I did as he said and asked the director's permission to watch the actors act. How much time had passed? A presence behind me brought me to my senses. What are you gaping at? Kim Tai Wung appeared with an exhausted expression. He followed my gaze and quietly exclaimed. Hey, that person looks like a real celebrity. Who? That person with the striped shirt. The person he was gesturing to was Lee Sung Hyun. It was true. Objectively speaking, the most eye-catching person among the actors acting right now was Lee Sung Hyun. That was why he was the lead. However, the person my eyes followed wasn't the lead but the one next to him. How about the actor next to him? Mr. Nam Joyun. Your preference? Well, I think he's doing well. But my eyes keep going to the lead. As expected, it seemed I was biased. And my bias was getting stronger. My ambiguous thoughts before seeing him act were now becoming more concrete and an impulse was growing in me. My lips were dry because I felt frustrated and sad and that it was a shame. There clearly was a role that suited him better. A role that could better complement his mood and acting skills. The countless scenarios and roles I had read recently crossed my mind. I felt like I was going crazy. Why was I like this? Even if I shook my head, this impulse wouldn't calm. Fine, let's think of reasons why I couldn't. What I had to prioritize right now was Lee Song has next project. I was running on thin ice, unsure whether her next project would be a success or not. To be fixated on a rookie actor at a time like this. I couldn't. Of course not. But what was I to do even if I felt it was a shame? Even if I received his profile, it was another matter whether the company would sign him or not. Since rookie actors were taken care of by Team 2, his profile would eventually be handed to the Team 2 leader. There was a question of if that person would look at the profile I recommend in a positive light. I could end up hurting someone who suffered from management company issues in the past. Above all, it was different from Lee Sangha, where I knew that she would be a success because I saw the future. I didn't have anything. I didn't have any hints on whether he would succeed as an actor in the future or on a project that I could bet on. Even still, despite knowing this, I really wanted him as an actor. My mind felt like it would explode from my complicated thoughts. Damn it, what should I do? Chapter, 107. Cut. Change your outfits, we'll be moving on to the next scene. As soon as the director gave the signal, the actors entered the resort to change their outfits, even Nam Joyun. I tapped the dirt with the tip of my foot as I looked at the resort entrance like a budding stalker. Nam Joyun's done with his scenes, right? Good God. I clearly heard his name over the loud commotions. Clicking my tongue, I perked my ears at the conversation behind me. Yes, the scene just now was his last. He's probably going to stay for dinner, right? 
tell him to help with moving the rails. Ah, uh, he probably can't today. The director told him to just go for today. What? We're already short on manpower, why would he send manpower away? We just need to give him a few 10,000 won as pay one. We don't even have enough budget for that. That's not it. It seems Lee Sung Hyun said that he would like him to leave. The woman's voice lowered. He said he bothered him, but that's just an excuse. A chief from WU is here right now. He wants to get closer to him, but that chief seems to be interested in Nam Joyun. That's why he's chasing him away. The voices gradually became more distant until I couldn't hear them anymore. Well, I already heard what I needed to. I leaned against a thick tree trunk and waited a few minutes until the actors, who had finished changing their outfits, left the resort. Ah, chief. Lee Sung Hyun was the first to discover me. He approached me with delight. The next scene will be much more impressive. It's a scene where I fall into a pond. Ah, uh, sorry. I have to go back to Seoul so I won't be able to see the next scene. Pardon? Uh, so, you're busy. The next scene is the real deal. I have an important meeting. While there was still time before the dinner meeting, there was no longer any reason to stay here. Leaving Lee Song Hyun, who felt it was a shame, I turned my gaze towards Nam Joyun. While standing, he downed a bottle of water before wiping his lips with the back of his hand. Mr. Nam Joyun. I heard that you were leaving now that you're done. Are you going to Seoul? Since it's on the way, should I give you a ride? Just as Lee Sung Hyun, whose gaze alternated between Nam Joyun and me, was about to cut in, Nam Joyun lowered his head and said. It'll be in your care. Lee Sung Hyun's expression just now was killer. The man wearing the baseball cap, who also came along, giggled. Well, who's he going to blame but himself? Good riddance, idiot. What are you saying? Nam Joyun, who had been drinking another bottle of water, asked. The man wearing the baseball cap simply shrugged. There's something like that, man. Anyways, why are you drinking so much water? That was what I wanted to ask. This was his third bottle since before we left. Was he easily affected by the heat? Should I turn on the air conditioner? Just as I was thinking this, I heard a sound behind me. The rumbling sound of a stomach. A very loud one at that. When I looked to the side, Kim tae Woon shook his head, saying it wasn't him. When I looked in my rearview mirror, the man wearing the baseball cap was looking at Nam Joyun. And Nam Joyun, with a slight frown, was rubbing his flat stomach. Hey, did you come with an empty stomach? I thought we would eat on set. Even while talking, Nam Joyun's stomach rumbled for food. He placed the bottle with not a lot of water remaining on his lips again. Overlapping his figure with an unfortunate neighbor who filled his empty belly with tap water might be going too far, huh? When was the last time you ate something? Did you have breakfast? There was no reply. You didn't eat anything today. What about yesterday? Still, there was no reply. The man wearing the baseball cap seemed stunned as he said. Did you use all your pay from your part-time job? You crazy idiot, you watched movies with your food money again, didn't you? What do you mean no? Do I not know you? Is this the first time? What movie were you fixated on this month? Ha, you alone are keeping the country's movie industry alive. How many times have I told you to wait for movies that you want to watch multiple times to come out on DVDs? Are you out of your mind? Surviving comes first, not those movies. Nam Joyun smiled faintly. I looked away from my rearview mirror and tapped on the steering wheel. So he starved himself to watch movies. Really, I was so stunned that I didn't know what to say. Kim Tai Woon, whose ears were perked towards the conversation in the back, whispered to me with a pale face. It's my first time seeing someone worse than you. No, I also spent my days in the theaters, watching multiple movies, without eating at one point, but that was because I had to watch them all at once since I didn't have much time. My situation was different from his. I was already going crazy because of my complicated thoughts. It was my fault that he didn't get to have dinner on set. Hey, bear. Open the glove box in front of you. 
With a doubtful expression, he opened the glove box. His eyes widened at the sight. What is all this? Man, do you carry around a convenience store? Take out a few. Those that seem filling. You're not the type to carry around snacks like this. Are you pregnant? It's not mine, you crazy idiot. They were Lee Song has. Since she started sitting in the passenger seat, my glove box was never empty. There were ones that I bought for Lee Songa and others that Lee Songa brought herself. She always ate them whenever she got in my car. She would eat two then give one to me, who was driving. Eat three, then give me another. I wasn't the type who ate while driving, but at some point, it became a part of my life. Because it seemed Lee Songa really enjoyed it. Either way, I felt a strange sense of guilt because I was about to give Lee Song his emergency food rations, which not even the other members touched, to someone else, as though I was committing a crime. While thinking that I should refill the glove box with the same snacks, I handed the bread and cookies Kim Tai Woon passed over to me to Nam Joyun. Eat this. I'm fine. You are already giving us a rid. Nam Joyun shook his head, but his body was honest. I heard his stomach roar now that it saw food. Only after suggesting it a few more times did he finally lower his head and accepted the snacks. Then he finished them up in a blink of an eye. I licked my dry lips and asked. Did you not think of quitting? Acting, that is. Many times. He replied with a parched yet calm voice. But I couldn't. Are you still looking for a company? Do you have any conditions? The mood inside the car became strange, especially the eyes of the man wearing the baseball cap, which kept moving around. It seemed like he barely managed to contain the urge to join in on our conversation. Nam Joyun's voice was still calm. I don't care as long as I can act. His words nailed into me like a wedge. As soon as we arrived in Seoul, I dropped the two actors and Kim Tai Wung off and immediately went to my apartment. Sitting in front of my laptop, I watched all the independent films Nam Joyun was cast in. Then I wrapped the reasons why I shouldn't that had made me hesitate and chucked them into the trash. Yeah, there was nothing impossible in the world. If it doesn't work, then I just needed to find a way to make it work. Let's think about what I had to do to make him my actor. Persuading the Team 2 leader was the most certain method. Having to meet the Team 2 leader because of him Juwon's contract had become an opportunity. Perhaps one that would never come again. Yeah, let's try to settle my bad relationship with the Team 2 leader today. Do you have any complaints about me? No, none. I lied with a smile. The Team 2 leader stared at me. He was giving me that look ever since I arrived at the restaurant. But you come here with a busted lip after fighting at work. You know how many billions of won this contract is worth, right? When it's not enough to only show him Ju won our good side, you want to advertise that our company's internal situation is a mess. I took care in wearing a suit, but it failed because of my face. Rather than settling our bad relationship, it felt like I was hated even more. I might be able to fill a truck with all that hate. He'll just say that I got hurt from crashing into something. Since I already told him Ju won you be here, I can't send you back. Team 3 really is a mess. Ha, huh, if we were talking about which team was a mess, yours would take the top spot. I smiled while hiding my thoughts. The one with a favor to ask needs to endure, damn it. Hey, don't you dare cause trouble today. Even if the Team 3 leader might gloss over your actions because he's soft, I'm not like him. The Team 2 leader scolded me for a long while before saying he was going out for a smoke to calm his burst of rage because of me. The room was quiet. The Team 2 and legal team employees, who gathered today for the meeting, glanced at me. As if they were infected by the Team 2 leader, the looks I received from other Team 2 employees weren't friendly. Don't worry about them. The man sitting next to me, who introduced himself as Chief Sung of Team 2, whispered. They are like that because the Team Leader scolded them, asking what they did while the newbie from Team 3 brought over an actor. The team leader is depressed these days because the issue with Sun Chai Young isn't being resolved. As usual, that woman was really of no help to me. I looked to my side while clicking my tongue. But why was this person acting so friendly? 
I had seen his face a few times at work. I remembered him because he gave me a good impression even though his eyes were narrow and they curled up at the end like a fox. Maybe it was because of his freckles. While I have never talked with him before, his voice strangely felt familiar. Please take care of me. Chief Sung abruptly said. For what? The contract today, if it goes through, then I might be assigned to him Ju Wan. And if it doesn't, he'll be assigned to Sun Chai Young. That's why I'm desperate. That really was worth being desperate for. It seemed he read the pity in my eyes as he continued. I'm not assigned to anyone right now. I was assigned to two rookies, but both their contracts ended. That's why I might have been pushed to Sun Chai Young, but I was put on hold because of him Ju Wan. I was lucky. I don't think I.D. work well with her. If a manager's compatibility with their actor isn't good, then the job becomes difficult. It probably wasn't a problem of compatibility. Also, who would be compatible with that woman? If things go well today, I will return the favor. So please help in making this contract go through. That was what I hoped as well since it was the only way to get the team two leader to be kind. He'll do my best since that's what I came here to do. I prayed that I'm Juwan's reaction would be okay. To be honest, if it wasn't for Mr. Sunwoo, I wouldn't have considered WU very much. I felt like I would become his fan from now on. I was worried because I'm Juwan's personality was famous for being picky, but what was this? The mood was peaceful from the start. There was no need for me to help. It was more than enough to talk about what happened during the previous recording. Because of this, the team two leader's face was filled with benevolence. Is that so? It seems Mr. Juwan was very impressed with our employee. I had some prejudice against WU, but after seeing Mr. Sunwoo, my impression of WU became better. His ability to bring good synopses to his actor and obtaining the opportunity for Neptune to perform while everyone was busy because of the accident. He was impressive. His detailed, handsome face smiled at me. Hmm, I didn't think I would become a fan, I already was one. The Team 2 leader rubbed his beard while listening before placing his hand on my shoulder. Chief Young is the face of our company these days. He's doing a good job because he was taught well by his superiors. Since all chiefs are good workers, don't worry and trust them. His nickname for changed from you to our employee and finally Chief Young. Im Ju Wan asked with round eyes. Chief Young. You were promoted already? Yes, yesterday. My promotion was probably partly thanks to you. At my reply, Im Ju Wan laughed. Congratulations. If it was partly thanks to me, then take care of me if we end up working at the same company. If it wasn't for Lee Songa, I would have asked you to be my manager. What a shame. It seemed the fact that I became a chief made I'm Ju Wan more inclined towards us. Soon, a member of the legal team joined in and became discussing the contract. Im Ju Wan requested a few other things that weren't in the contract like how he wanted to bring over his stylist and road manager. When I listened to their discussion after taking a step back, since it was a big contract, the number of things that needed to be adjusted on either side was no joke. The Team 2 leader usually nodded his head without hesitation. He looked like he would even get him the moon. Then I will examine the contract with my lawyer and get back to you. Of course you need time to examine it. Call us whenever it's convenient for you. Ending the conversation, Im Ju Wan left the restaurant with a smile. While they hadn't yet signed an exclusive contract, the mood couldn't be better. Even the gazes on me were much gentler. Seeing the Team 2 leader happily drinking his beer, I prepared to speak. This moment was the most optimal time to request something. First, I should open up by saying how there was a really good rookie who was too good to pass then ask him to take a look at his profile. Just as I was about to open my mouth, the Team 2 leader's phone rang. As soon as he answered the phone, his expression instantly took a turn for the worst. He yelled. What? What did you say? Are you crazy? So where is she right now? The Team 2 leader cursed continuously. The heated mood from concluding the meeting in success quickly froze as though it was submerged in ice water. Though I didn't know the specifics, I was sure it had something to do with Sun Chai Young because the Team 2 leader immediately called her after hanging up. 
While the Team 2 employees were gathered around the Team 2 leader and murmuring to each other, I threw around a hundred cakes at Sun Chai Young in my mind. Why did she have to at this moment? At this optimal moment? She's not answering. Ah, I'm going crazy. Chief Yoon, give me your phone. It seemed she wasn't answering his phone as he took another chief's phone and called her. However, even though the phone switched multiple times, it was the same. She didn't answer any of them. Anxiously clicking his tongue, the Team 2 leader's gaze eventually landed on me. Hey, give me your phone for a second. It'll do it. I know her number. I quickly took out my phone. Though I didn't have the slightest desire in calling Sun Chai Young, it was better than handing the Team 2 leader my phone. I had saved her phone number as a precautionary measure ever since she suddenly called me last time. As the crazy in this neighborhood. She probably wouldn't answer my phone since she didn't answer the team leaders or any of the other employees. While thinking this, I pressed the call button. Even though the team leader and other people were staring at me, they didn't look like they had high expectations. Yet, the phone stopped ringing after two times. What is it? Chapter 108 W. What a surprise. I was so surprised that I almost swore. What the heck? Why did she answer her phone? Did she need someone to curse? Hello? Hello? What the heck? It's definitely the hateful guy. Did she have my number saved as the hateful guy? Well, I won in that regar. I shook my head as I was about to escape from reality. Can't you hear me? I'm going to hang up if you don't answer in three seconds. Three, two, one, what is it? You said you were going to hang up. I quietly clicked my tongue before examining the faces of those in front of me. The Team 2 leader and the others were still looking at me. They seemed to think that the phone was still ringing. How would it look if, for whatever reason, Sun Chai Young, who didn't pick up when the Team 2 leader called, answered my call? Hmm, let's act like she didn't pick up. I hung up after deciding. Good. It looked natural. I was calmly putting away my phone when someone asked. Didn't you hear a voice before you hung up? Damn it, someone's ears were needlessly sharp. It seemed like a woman's voice. Doubtful gazes fixated on my phone. In return, my hand trembled. I thought I suddenly developed hand tremors, but it was my phone vibrating. While only moving my eyes to look downwards, I glanced at the name on my phone screen. The Team 2 leader approached me with suspicion. Who is it? Who do you think? It's the crazy in this neighborhood. The vibrations didn't stop, and the Team 2 leader seemed like he was about to snatch my phone away from me. It was too late to act dumb. MS. Sun Chai Young. Everyone's eyes widened as though they would pop out of their sockets. They were giving me such weird looks that it felt like I wasn't holding my phone but grabbing Sun Chai Young by her hair. Why is she never mind? Answer it first. Quickly. Before she hangs up. When I paused, the Team 2 leader quickly gestured with his hands as he urged me to answer the phone. I frowned and made a somber expression. While acting like I was very uneasy in answering this phone call, I answered the phone. Hello. What the hell? It is you. I thought I might be the team leader. Sun Chai Young mumbled as though she found this unexpected. Because everyone was straining their ears, the room became so quiet you couldn't even hear a single breath. The team two leader mouthing something. What was he saying? When I showed him a face that read I had no idea what he was saying, he hastily wrote a memo on his phone and showed it to me. Speaker phone. Ah. When I pressed the speakerphone button, Sun Chai Young's voice filled the room. Wait, did the team leader make you call me? Are you with the team leader right now? The team two leader swiftly shook his head. Then what? Why did you call me? What reason did I have to call Sun Chai Young? Damn it, there were none. The team two leader urgently wrote another memo and showed it to me. Ask her where she is right now. Just figure that out. Where are you right now? Why are you asking me that? I know, right? 
the Team 2 leader seemed taken aback as he repeated wrote and deleted memos on his phone. The other employees were mouthing words next to him. This wasn't some silent comedy film. Someone scribbled something on his phone and showed it to me. Because I want to see you. Because I wa. Was this guy crazy? I almost read that out loud. When I gave him a dumbfounded look, the chief made a face that seemed to recognize his mistake. It seemed that he only now realized that Sun Chai Young and I met on a single log bridge instead of a bridge of birds. 1. What? Hello? Hello? Why aren't you saying anything again? Why are you still carrying around this trashy phone when I told you to change it already? Because what? Sun Chai Young's speech and tone were no different from normal. From what I heard, it seemed Chief Zhou, who had reached his mental limit, shouted at Sun Chai Young, telling her to get off the van, and Sun Chai Young really got off in the middle of the road and disappeared. Seeing as she wasn't shouting, was she still outside? I couldn't any other noises though. Since the other people were still mouthing ideas, I decided to make something up. Because I thought I saw you. What? I thought I saw someone who looked like you just now on the street. Even I thought it was just baseless nonsense. The Team 2 leader's face flushed. It seemed he was anxious Sun Chai Young would figure the situation out and hang up. Feeling urgent, my mouth had moved on its own. After a moment's silence, Sun Chai Young snorted. I'm home right now. What similar person? Do you think a face like mine is common? Now really, the people around her were a mess while the heart of the storm was at home. I looked at the Team 2 leader. He looked like he was texting Chief Joe, but his face was clearly one of relief. It seemed like there was no reason to keep talking to her. Just as I was about to hang up after thinking that was it, Sun Chai Young continued to speak as though she was strangely happy. Stop beating around the bush and get to the point. The point? I'm telling you to stop wasting time since I already know what it is. I was wondering how long you would play your game of house, but have you finally come to face reality? You want to work with me? Ah, uh, my battery. I hung up. I didn't want to hear what she had to say through the speakerphone since it would undoubtedly be the continuation of the ridiculous proposal last time. I clearly refused that time. I really couldn't tell what went on inside her head. I completely turned my phone off just in case she called again. I felt people's gazes as they were taken aback, especially the Team 2 leader. Hey, you, too. I'm sorry. It felt suffocating. I continued with the most depressed voice I could make. I'm, I'm suffering from a stress disorder ever since the unpleasant clash with MS. Sun Chai Young in the past. Just hearing her voice makes my chest feel stuffy and as though I'm suffocating. It feels like my soul is being hit by a dump truck. The Team 2 leader showed a bitter expression. You should know my relationship with Sun Chai Young well enough. It's that bad? Listening to the phone call, it didn't seem that bad. It is that bad. It couldn't be worse. Still, you were able to talk with her. Hey, why don't you look after Cha? It was fortunate that the CEO took my circumstances into consideration when Sun Chai Young asked him to switch my assignment to her. If I was assigned to her, I might be going to a mental hospital instead of work. I used CEO Beck Hansung's name. Rather than bringing up Neptune and the Team 3 leader's names, this was probably more effective since it would be difficult for the Team 2 leader to blindly force me when even the CEO said he would leave the decision to me. Ah, uh, he did. The CEO. The Team 2 leader clicked his tongue as he looked at me as though it was a shame. I was worried that he might look at me in a worse light than before now that I straightforwardly refused his proposal, but it didn't seem like it. Well, it wasn't anyone else but Sun Chai Young. Even the Team 2 employees looked like they wanted to avoid this human natural disaster. The fact that Sun Chai Young built up a worse name for herself recently actually worked in my favor. The Team 2 leader clicked his tongue and patted my elbow. Then if a situation like this comes up again, could you at least? Without a doubt, when the meeting began, I was the one who had a request, but now, our positions had changed a little. I licked my dry lips. It seemed like the ideal opportunity to say what I had been waiting to say had arrived again. Understood, 
but team leader. I have something I want to ask. There's an unknown actor I'm interested in, could I show you his profile? Actor. Who? I gave the team two leader a simple introduction of Nam Joyun. Like how I had promoted Neptune to broadcast producers, good points about him flowed from my mouth. Though it looked like it was the first time the team two leader was hearing Nam Joyun's name, he seemed interested in what I was saying. Well, if your discerning eye is even half as good as the rumors, you won't bring up someone ridiculous. He mumbled before saying. Send me his profile. The next day, I found out Nam Joyun's phone number and received his profile. While we were talking for a short time on the phone, he didn't ask about the contract or try to strongly promote himself. All that returned as a polite greeting, saying how he was thankful that I thought favorably of him. I sent his profile to the Team 2 leader before jumping into my schedule, from settling the empty spot the trader had left behind to taking over as a chief. I was incredibly busy. I thought it would take longer before the Team 2 leader responded, but I received a call within a day, saying that he wanted to set up a meeting. The next time I met Nam Joyun was when I came to give him a ride to the meeting. In an alley with a few rays of sunlight, Nam Joyun walked down stairs that were as dry and worn as he was. He clearly looked like he paid more attention to his outfit than when we first met on set. His hair was combed, and he wore a grey dress shirt instead of the faded t-shirt. They didn't seem to be his own clothes as the dress shirt was too big on his chest and the slacks were so short that his ankles were visible. Um. Nam Joyun, who got in the passenger seat, had a difficult time speaking. I wanted to ask last time, but I endured it. Yes, you can say it. I nodded casually. Internally, I was anxious. I was constantly worried that maybe he had come with high expectations. While we were able to arrange a meeting smoothly, it wasn't certain whether he would be able to sign an exclusive contract or not. However, what Nam Joyun said next wasn't about the contract. Those scenarios, would it be okay to read them for a bit while we're driving? The scenarios? Yes, they are projects I'm seeing for the first time. His focus was on the stack of scenarios placed in the back. Feel free to. Though I can't show them to the public since they haven't started filming yet, it's fine if you read them here. Thank you. Nam Joyun lowered his head and held the scenarios in his hands. As though they were national treasures, he was very careful whenever he flipped a page. The change was like rain falling on a dry wasteland. With vivid eyes, they were only fixated on the scenarios. Even when we arrived at the company parking lot, he didn't mention the contract even once. His expression as he got off the minivan without the scenarios looked so sad that, if it wasn't for the meeting, I would have let him read them the entire day. I sent Nam Joyun to a Team 2 employee before going to my office to finish up my work. My hands were working quickly, but my progress was slow. I couldn't concentrate at all because of the meeting. Unlike Neptune, who I was assigned to as soon as I joined the company, I felt a sense of responsibility for bringing Nam Joyun here myself. Anyways, I straightened my nervousness and waited. I hoped the Team 2 leader would see something in him like I had. How strange. Someone suddenly said behind me. Fox-like eyes. It was that person. Chief Sung who treated me friendlily during the meeting with I'm Juwon. What is? It's, wait a second. This isn't a good place for whistleblowing. Whistleblowing? Chief Sung glanced at the employee in the office before gesturing outside with his chin. We immediately moved to the emergency stairs, where a shivering chill rubbed against our skin. Chief Sung brushed a step and sat down. I also looked at Mr. Nam Joyun's profile, but his profile wasn't one that was good enough to arrange a meeting. That's why I'm saying it's strange. His profile isn't good enough for a meeting. When I asked with a frown, Chief Sung nodded. That actor, he ended his relationship with his previous company with a lawsuit. There were circumstances behind that. It was a place with a lot of problems. The circumstances aren't very important. What's important is that it doesn't look good. Chief Sung explained while using hand gestures. We receive a ton of profiles from suggestions or that were brought over by casting managers. We are looking for actors worth signing an exclusive contract amongst them 
but that's not something that can be decided by one or two people. Unless the actor is outstandingly good, usually, we hold meetings in which we undergo a process of removing those that are less good. Removing? His reputation isn't so good, take him out. I heard he had surgery, remove him. Since they are all good actors, they get removed from the list due to trivial things. Ended his relationship with his previous company with a lawsuit? Of course, he'll be removed. That's why he wasn't someone who usually get a meeting in the first place. However, Nam Joyun was in a meeting right now. It's one of two things. The team leader discovered something special about Mr. Nam Joyun or he wants something. But I think it's the latter. Chief Sung scratched his chin as if indicating this was the key point. He definitely has something he wants from Chief Young. After the meeting, Nam Joyun came out of the meeting room. When I looked at the time, only 20 minutes had passed. Nam Joyun came up to me with the same expression he had when going into the meeting. I couldn't tell what they talked about from that expression. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. No need. I did it because I wanted to. He'll let you know as soon as I know the results. Nam Joyun smiled faintly at my words. Seeing this, I realized that worrying about what to do if he was disappointed after getting his hopes up was useless. He probably didn't have high hopes in signing with WU. The only one who did was me. Nam Joyun took a few steps then turned around to look at me. He'll buy you a meal when I get paid from my part time job. Also, could I continue to read the scenario I was reading before? When I nodded, Nam Joyun went back with a smile. Immediately after, the Team 2 leader called me to an empty meeting room as though he had been waiting for me. If what Chief Sung had said was true, then I could only think of one thing that that man wanted. While I was waiting while mulling over it, the Team 2 leader entered the meeting room, holding two cups of coffee. Though I did accept a cup, the coffee today looked like poison today. Preparing to reply to the Team 2 leader's words, I wet my mouth with the coffee. Just then, the Team 2 leader, who had been giving me a meaningful look, suddenly asked. Hey, what do you think about transferring to Team 2 now? Chapter, 109 Just what was this now? I thought he would talk about Nam Joyun first. Team 2 You originally wanted to be assigned to actors. If you still want to, there's a limit to what you can learn in Team 3. While the people there might be veterans in the music industry, the acting industry is a completely different ballgame. If you want to learn properly before it's too late, then you need to transfer quickly. The Team 2 leader said as though he was sincerely concerned about my career. To be honest, his words were quite persuasive since there were more times where Chief Lee Ban Jun's advice was more helpful than Kim Hyunjo's while we were filming the drama. Of course, if you transfer, you can still take care of Lee Songa like now. There are cases where chiefs take care of two to three people if they have the capacity so you can also experience taking care of another actor. Who was he trying to fool? Did he think I was fool ignorant of the world? That other actor, is it Sun Chai Young? Yeah, our top star who no one can handle. The Team 2 leader said while slowly rubbing his beard. Obviously, ITLL be too much for you to be assigned to both Lee Sangha and Sun Chai Young. He'll assign you a skilled chief to help you and share your workload. If you do this, you'll have my full support. His voice sounded kind on purpose. With an awkward expression, I said. Putting aside the fact that the relationship between Lee Sangha and Sun Chai Young is so bad that it can't get any worse, I don't like him s. Sun Chai Young. How could I work with her like this? Why can't you? It's just work. The Team 2 leader leaned towards me. His eyes shined sharply. I don't know why, but Sun Chai Young is interested in you. Just think of it as using that. I heard it as though he was throwing me in like a toy to placate the angry Sun Chai Young. Put everything else aside, and think about what will be more beneficial to you. Your career will be more robust, and they'll think of you as one of my own from now on. Ha, huh, that was the most ridiculous thing I heard all year. What think of me as his own? Either way, Im Juwan's contract was proceeding smoothly thanks to me, yet this man was trying to push me to Sun Chai Young. Maybe if we could maintain a relationship where we didn't bicker every time we saw each other, 
but he wasn't someone I could trust and follow from the start. I still vividly remembered how he pushed all the responsibility onto and fired the road manager during the Sung Dawan incident. Also, that actor you brought, depending on how you do. An unpleased expression flashed on his face. I could get you a contract right away. Is Mr. Nam Joyun a kind of reward? If I refuse your proposal, then there's no contract. From our meeting, our opinion is heavily leaning towards not recruiting him. Despite his lackluster profile, I called him for a meeting because he's the next actor this guy who's known for his discerning eye is fixated on. I was still disappointed after meeting him. Our mailboxes are filled with actors like him. On top of that, he filed a lawsuit against his previous company. My mind went blank. After clicking his tongue, the Team 2 leader returned to the point. In giving you a lot with this. That's why come to Team 2. Do you UND? The smile faded from the Team 2 leader's face when he heard me. Hey, if it wasn't for Chai Young, do you think I would listen to your circumstances and take care of you like this? I've taken your circumstances into consideration the best I can, which is why. While I am thankful for your words, I want to keep working in my current team. Meaning you should clean up your own mess. While I wanted to say that, I stored it away for another day. However, the Team 2 leader's face flushed with anger at my refusal. Agitated, he stood up. Like before and now, you are still someone who can't receive anything even when spoon-fed. How laughable. That was what I should say. Hey, running crew. Quickly load the open props in the van. The film set was being torn down after the filming was over. Nam Joyun was carrying boxes filled with props. His face, neck, and even muscular back were soaked with sweat. He wiped the sweat from his forehead with the back of his hand as he stretched his back. I just need to carry these, right? He asked while stacking a few boxes. When he finally noticed me, his eyes became round. Your friend said you'd be here so I came over. Why did you come all the way here? You could have just called and I would have gone to meet you. I was nearby so I came over to see you. He had to work to earn his food money so how could I make him skip a day? Then please wait over there for a moment. After I carry tea. ITLL be faster if I help out. We can talk longer the faster we finish. While carrying boxes with Nam Joyun, who was acting awkward, I went to the point. It didn't work out. Nam Joyun flinched while placing down boxes. The meeting. The results came out, but it didn't work out. After loading everything, Nam Joyun brought over a plastic chair from behind the film set and sat me down. Then he handed me a bottle of water and a roll of gimbap he obtained as he said. You could have told me on the phone. I wanted to tell you in person. It's okay. He roughly brushed away the dusty floor before sitting down. Don't stress it. It's not my first time experiencing this. I was happy that I met someone who remembered me from a project I was cast in when I was Yoon. Take this and give it a read. While chewing on a piece of cold gimbap, I handed him a scenario that I took out from my bag. It's a new project from Pan Production. I know their CEO well. There's a role I marked on there. If you like it as well, I can try to get you an audition. The more I talked, the more confused Nam Joyun's expression became. I don't really understand, but what are you? I am trying to entice you right now. To work with me. Nam Joyun began to cough as if something was caught in his throat. While smiling, I handed him the bottle of water. To be honest, I came after receiving the Team 3 leader's approval. I asked if he could let me take care of an actor outside work, making sure this didn't interfere with Neptune. There's no contract, and I won't be able to use WU's background, but ITLL be better than working on your own. While it's a bit embarrassing to say this, I hear that I'm quite good at my job. Nam Joyun let out a breath after gulping down half the water bottle. Various emotions arose in his barren eyes. As if he didn't know what to do, Nam Joyun roughly tangled his hair as he said. Why are you as a chief, you should have better candidates than me. It's not for you, but for me. I have something I want to confirm. Nam Joyun looked at me with eyes asking what I meant. Smiling faintly, I said. 
I wanted to confirm if my discerning eye is any good. Thud. Lee Sangha chopped down with a kitchen knife. The head of the small octopus on the cutting board was cleanly cut off. After filming that with the camcorder, I moved on. The other girls all had aprons and were working hard to make the kitchen a mess. They were asked to bring their own lunchbox for the program they were appearing on as a guest tomorrow, but I was concerned whether it was okay to hand this over to the staff. It was a complete crisis. When there were four girls living together, it was likely that one would be good at cooking. Sweating as she handled the rice, Im Seo Young shouted. Appa, please. Stop laughing. Cooking is all about confidence. See what you made and tell me it's not funny. I thought she said she was going to make a cat face with fried rice, but she made it look like a monster that would appear in nightmares. This is good for an amateur. If that's good, then the picture I took worthy of the Pulitzer Prize. Ah, uh, really? What? Do you think you can do better? Why do you think I can't? Im Seo Young halted. The other girls also stopped what they were doing and looked at me. Lee Tae-hee threw out the eggs she messed up trying to separate into yolk and whites as she asked. Do you know how to cook? Somewhat. Ah, uh, no. You said you don't cook when you're living alone. I remember you saying that you received side dishes from home and your brother's family. That's because it's a bother and I'm busy. How could I not know how to cook after living with four kids who ate like pigs? Th then do it. I put on plastic gloves. Suddenly Lee Sangha began hurriedly looking around the sink before handing me something. Appa, here. Put this on while you cook. It was an apron. A hand-sized one with a rabbit drawn on it. You can't get your clothes dirty. It's fine, put it away. It's probably better to cook without my clothes than wear that. Above all, LJ picked up the camcorder the moment you handed it to me. I turned a disappointed Lee Sangha away and handled rice for once after a long time. I put the fried rice in the lunchbox, formed it into a cat shape, then cut seaweed into its whiskers, eyes, nose, mouth. I was finished in a jiffy. Here, it's done. A cat, easy, right? Not at all. It's not easy at all. I helped the other girls with their lunchboxes a little as well. I didn't plan on it, but Lee Sangha kept admiring from behind whenever I did something. Stop staring. It's not like I'm doing something amazing. It looks amazing to me. Even if you flatter me, there isn't any for you. I only bought the precise amount of ingredients. That's not it. I'm not someone who's always hungry or anything. Lee Sangha mumbled. At her words, not just me, but all the other girls, who had been working hard on their lunchboxes, burst into laughter. Yeah, let's say that. Can you roll up my sleeves? Your sleeves. They keep sliding down. If your hands are dirty, then teeth. It'll do it. Lee Sangha gripped my forearm. Then she steadily rolled up my sleeves with a very serious face, as if she was some sleeve-rolling expert. Her soft, delicate hands brushed my arms. From my elbow, she gradually rolled my sleeves higher and higher. Stop. How high are you going to roll them? Up to my shoulders. It seemed unintentional as she blinked before stopping. I left the kitchen and held the camcorder again. The girl's expressions were bright. Maybe it was because of his betrayal or some other reason, but the mood had been a little strange since the traitor was fired. I didn't know whether they were hiding their complicated thoughts, but they looked no different from normal. Im Seo Young closed her lunchbox before saying as though she just thought of something. Right, Appa. You know. I think we've become too used to working with you. It was really awkward when Kim Hyunjo Appa came by himself last time. Maybe it's because we think of you as good luck, but it felt like we weren't doing as well either. It's troublesome if you don't do well. After handing over my duties, it'll only be coming to big schedules. Im Seo Young was shocked. The other girls were the same. Lee Sangha was the only one who looked fine. Why are you so surprised? I was promoted to chief. It'll be busy from now on. Th that's right. You're a chief now. 
I guess you can't be demoted. Of course not. My salary increased too. What are you going to do after throwing us aside? Before I could reply, in an excited voice, Lee Songa said. You're probably busy because of me. I have to go to China to promote the drama, set my next project and begin filming. Like while I was filming the drama, the two of us will have lots of work to do from now on. Hmm, right. Her face brightened at my reply. I suddenly recalled Nam Joyun, who I met earlier. While I wasn't assigned to him officially, they would probably meet each other from now on. While the other girls were singers, he overlapped with Lee Songa so I had to take special care, especially since there were cases where she was anxious I would be assigned to another celebrity in the past. I considered telling them but ultimately decided against it. She seemed to be in a good mood so I should tell her later. Also, she was holding a kitchen knife. Right, Sangha, were there any synopses you liked out of the ones you read? There are a few I enjoyed. Lee Sangha quickly rushed to her room. When I followed her, she handed me a few stacks of paper. The project I had a hard time picking was there too. While thinking that it was a relief, I looked at a few others before realizing what they had in common. They are all very melodramatic. You prefer these? They were fun. Flipping through each one, I halted on the last scenario. This one's a bit. It's a passionate melodrama. If you decide on this one, we probably can't read the script dialogue together. Surprised, Lee Song has eyes became round. Why? We read the script every night last time. I grinned as I added. I mean, I read this scenario as well. There's dialogue like I love you. I can't live without you, starting halfway. What's wrong with that? You'll have to read your counterpart's dialogue. Won't it be too funny to concentrate? Lee Song has expression became odd. It seemed she was imagining us reading the script together as her well-formed brows and lips twitched a few times. Soon, she broke the silence and asked. Why? Why is it funny? What was with her reaction? Chapter, 110 It felt like I had to use the 5WS to explain why it was funny. What I mean is that ITLL be difficult for us to get absorbed in those scenes. Think about it. If we can't get absorbed in our roles, ITLL be funny. If we can, then ITLL be awkward. Right? I thought about it, but it isn't awkward. IT, I can do it. Lee Sangha said confidently. However, her hand wasn't simply fidgeting with the scenario, it was crumbling it. Also, it seemed like she was trying to read my expression. Whenever her long, delicate brows rose, her black eyes would glance over my mouth, eyes, or forehead. A sudden sense of disharmony ran down my spine. The figure of Lee Sangha, who was especially friendly with me, slowly appeared in my mind. While I didn't have the sharpest senses, this was a bit chilly. Maybe should I probe her a bit? I used my rigid lips to smile as I asked. Sangha, are you perhaps? It's work so I have to do a good job. Li Sangha abruptly cut in. I am really confident in being able to focus, no matter scene it is. It's true. She emphasized with a nonchalant face. The chilling feeling that had slapped both my cheeks had disappeared without a trace. Was I excessively sensitive? Well, she was seven years younger than me. No, it's not that you won't be able to act. Appa, you'll be able to focus as you get used to it. So let's read the script together. It's better with you than the acting teacher. I need to practice a lot so that my next project is a success and I succeed as well. Uh, yeah. It'll do my best. At my reply, Li Sangha smiled slightly as she calmly organized the scenarios. Seeing her like this, my heart slumped down. It was a real relief that I didn't finish what I was saying just now. If I did, I would be embarrassed forever. I let out the breath I had been holding back as I shook my head. Let's not think about pointless things from now on. Oh my goodness. MS. Song has lips are amazing. They work with any color, right, chief? I nodded at the fussy makeup artist. They do. Really? Do they all suit me? 
Li Sangha asked as her eyes turned towards me. Yeah. What wouldn't suit you? A small brush with lipstick rubbed against her lips. Her lips, which had reddened after repeatedly putting on and erasing lipstick, were pushed by the brush. Between her lips, which were slightly open to make it easier to brush. There was no other way. Let's not look. I acted like I was looking around at the photo shoot set as I avoided looking at Lee Sangha. Damn it. I kept becoming conscious of her actions and words. I felt like I would go crazy. Was it because I thought such useless thoughts about how she might? Or did I have spring fever? Was my testosterone stirring? Chief. While I was pressing my temples, the person in charge of the photo shoot approached me. Since the lip product is promoting its lasting power that won't erase after eating, we have to film her eating. Should we prepare a bag she can spit the food out in after chewing? No, there's no need. Really? We were concerned because she's an actress. I don't know about other actresses, but Song has fine. Of course, the staff's concerns evaporated as soon as they resumed the shoot. Lee Sangha ate the crispy fried chicken thigh, cheese-covered lasagna, and a hamburger that was as big as two fists as though it was her first meal every time. She ate the food with gusto. Why was I so happy whenever I saw her eating like this? The model is amazing, but is this a lip product photo shoot or a food photo shoot? Even her eating amazes me. If she was my girlfriend, I would even empty my wallet to feed he, I mean, sorry, chief. I didn't mean it. The hair team assistant, who was spouting nonsense, shut his mouth the moment our eyes met. I relaxed my frown and looked back towards Lee Sangha. At some point, her food changed to a cream pasta. Wrapping a huge amount of pasta around her fork, she shoved it in her mouth. She wiped the cream on her lips with her fingers then licked her fingers with her tongue. That was all, yet my heart felt like it had suddenly jolted like an elevator. Was I crazy? Yua, that shocked me. I gasped. The scene just now would make anyone, young, old, male, or female, gasp. So it wasn't just me. What a relief. Well, it would be weird if someone could be normal after seeing that. There were times in the past when my heart jolted because she was so pretty and her atmosphere really suited my preferences. I also quickly brushed those thoughts away and returned to normal. When I calmed down, the photo shoot was over. I was leaving with Lee Sangha after saying our farewells to the cosmetic company, photo shoot team, and other staff members when Lee Sangha showed me the seven different lipsticks in her pouch as she said. I brought them since they asked me to use them to promote the product. Appa, which color did you like best? I liked the third one you tried on. My throat became parched when I recalled the previous events so I gulped down a soda. The third one ah, coral orgasm. I almost spit out my drink. Coral what? They sometimes name cosmetics like this as sex appeal marketing. After calmly answering my question, Lee Sangha took out the lipstick I had mentioned and rubbed it against her lips twice. It dyed her makeup removed lips. The tips of her lips rose beautifully. I also like this color. It looks like we have the same tastes. How interesting. I felt like I was going crazy. Placing Lee Sangha, who was in a good mood, in front of me, I slapped my cheeks. I had to get it together. It would be troublesome if I let down my guard. I felt like I had become Paul. The octopus that predicted the World Cup match results. Now really, do people in our company have nothing to do? Why are you all spectating someone picking a project they think will do well? Then why are you here? My actor pushed me here, telling me that we should consider the project he picks. The lounge was more crowded than ever. From familiar faces to people who I had never seen before, they came and watched me. Scenarios and synopses were uniformly spread on top of the table in front of me. Someone cheered me on, though I didn't know what he was cheering me on for. Anyways, he placed three soda cans in front of me like they were some sort of tribute. In front of me were Kim Hyunjo, the Team 3 leader, and the director. The Team 3 leader smiled brightly as he said. Just pick one, there's no pressure. There has never been a more uncomfortable moment in my life. Don't feel pressured and just choose the one you like. 
Is there one that you liked that didn't work out? At this point, you can consider it a skill instead of luck. That puts more pressure on me. My mouth was dry. After downing a soda can, I stretched out my hand. Expectations, disbelief, and interest, various gazes landed on my hand. I took out a scenario and synopsis from the pile of papers. The stack of papers in my hand felt heavy. It was the final moment. There were no signs of my vision going black this time as well. Suppressing my disappointment, I placed the two projects down. One was a supporting role in a 34 billion one one large-scale movie. The other was a lead role in a Korean-Chinese joint venture miniseries. These were the results of agonizing for sleepless nights. The murmurs grew louder. The two projects I picked were immediately handed to the director. Kim Hyunjo scanned the covers with his sharp eyes, while the Team 3 leader asked as if confirming. Those? Really? Those two? Yes. I think those two are the best. Kim Hyunjo let out a sigh after hearing my words. What a relief. What is? Do you know how nervous I was that you would push a ridiculous synopsis and say, this is the one, like before? Fortunately, we had selected those two as first and second choices as well. Well, objectively speaking, they were projects that were ashamed to miss out on. I feel like something big will happen. I know, right? That's good. The Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo said. The director got up and waved the two projects in his hand. He'll closely examine these two projects with the CEO. The CEO is very interested in the projects you chose this time as well. He went upstairs with a meaningful smile. I closely controlled by heart. The die had already been cast. All that remained now was to make the next project a success no matter what. WU Management Business Department Team 3 New Recruit, Lee Kuan Wu 26 years old He saw something during his first meeting with his superior, Chief Yung Sun Wu, on his first day. A terrifying thorny path welcomed by the sound of a devil playing a horn. The moment they met, Yung Sun Wu stared at Lee Kuan Wu's face for a long while. Then he smiled, saying, let's work hard together. His smile seemed like he would flop him down and whip him if he made a mistake during work. For a smooth work life, Li Quan Wu gathered information about Yong Sun Wu. When he visited the PR team to introduce himself, he was flooded with information. So Mr. Sun Wu is your superior. Oh, my. His first impression was scary, right? He looks like he has a bad personality, right? The PR team employees persistently egged him on when he replied late. Eh. If my superior was Mr. Sun Wu, I think I would be very uneasy. I might have thought about quitting. Geez, it's not good for my heart. You guys are having fun. Stop teasing the recruit. The PR team leader grinned as she joined in. Mr. Sun Wu's impression is very intense, but he's a good person. He's quick-witted too. Seeing how he treats Neptune, he's responsible and takes care of his own people. He takes action when necessary. Also, he's very talented. If you follow him well, your future might be as open as an eight-lane highway. Next, Lee Kuan Wu obtained information from the Neptune members. When Young Sun Wu had left the waiting room for a bit, I'm Seo Young smiled as she said. New recruit Appa and Sun Wu Appa really give off contrasting feelings. Yes. In terms of animals, you are like a large, very docile dog with your big build and drooping eyes. Then what kind of animal is Chief Young? As soon as he asked, the members, who were each doing their own thing, answered at the same time. Snake. Hamster. A commotion erupted in the waiting room. Shocked, I'm Seo Young jumped up and down. Lee Sangha, don't lie with such a brazen face. Euu, I got goosebumps. I'm not. What do you mean you're not? The only thing Sun Wu Appa has in common with a hamster is that they are both mammals. Im Seo Young shouted while rubbing her arms. Li Tae He and L J agreed. Yeah, a hamster is a bit. Hey, Sangha, do something about your eyes. Try taking them out and washing them. It's bad. 
It's not enough that you follow him around like a puppy, now you want to make him into a hamster and bring him around in your pocket. Sitting quietly, Li Quan Wu blinked. Li Sangha was the hardest to talk to amongst the Neptune members. Compared to Am Seo Young, whose friendliness rivaled that of the Women's Society president, Li Tae Hee and LJ weren't on the friendly side either, but Li Sangha stood out. She already didn't look human, yet her expression barely changed as well. She didn't talk much and gave off a cool, calm feeling. Rather than feeling a gap between them, it felt like Li Sangha was in a different world. Yet, when they talked about Yong Sun Wu, her expression changed multiple times in a moment. She would even smile. A dramatic suspicion crossed his mind. A suspicion that maybe they were in that sort of relationship. However, his suspicion crumbled like a deflating balloon the next day. They were driving to a different film shoot. Instead of Yung Sun Wu, who had other things to do, Kim Hyunjo sat in the passenger seat. While it wasn't on the same level as Yung Sun Wu, Kim Hyunjo's impression was quite bad as well. Kim Hyunjo told him. There are occasionally people who can't differentiate reality and drama, but don't even think about dating your assigned celebrities. If you're caught, you're fired. Even if you're really lucky, you'll be moved to another team. Kim Hyunjo made a throat-cutting gesture. Then he turned around and added. You girls don't forget either. We know, we know. Stop talking about it. You say it every time our manager changes. When Im Seo Young shouted noisily, Kim Hyunjo smiled like the devil as he said. It's not enough even if I say it a hundred times. Succeed if you find it unfair. How successful do we have to be? How successful? When you can tell the CEO to stop concerning himself with your personal life. Are you trying to keep us single forever? During this commotion, the other girls joined in as well. Only Lee Sangha was quiet. Li Quan Wu glanced at Li Sangha. She had her chin propped up on her arm, which was on the windowsill, as she looked outside. She was eating almonds. If there was something going on between her and Yung Sun Wu, then there should have been some sort of reaction, yet she was calm. Same as usual. She didn't look even slightly interested in the dating discussion. Li Quan Wu erased the various dramas between a celebrity and her manager that he had come up with last night. Then he thought. Like Kim Hyunjo said, dramas were dramas, and reality was reality. His thoughts shook once more the next morning. The Neptune members, who finished their morning workout in the gym attached to the company, were spread out, exhausted. When Lee Kuan Wu was handing each of them a sports drink, an unfamiliar voice approached from the locker room. That young Sun Wu from Team 3. Apparently, he's close with Sun Chai Young. Where did you hear that nonsense? I heard something happened to them and now they're practically enemies. I thought the same, but they saved each other's phone numbers on their phone and call each other casually. For Sun Chai Young, that's really close. Really? Who told you? It's not one or two people who witnessed their call. That's why Team 2 is trying to assign Sun Chai Young to Young Sun Wu. The chatting men swallowed their words when they discovered Neptune. When they left a changing room with quick steps, silence hung in the air where the members were. A silence, which prickled as though they were rubbing their skin on broken china. The moment Lee Kuan Wu added Sun Chai Young's name to his information on Chief Young Sun Wu, Im Seo Young glanced at Lee Sangha as she said. Really, that is the most baseless rumor amongst all the nonsensical rumors I've heard. Sun Wu Appa hates Sun Chai Young so much. I bet he hates her more than we, no, Sangha, you do. That's true. The other girls supported her, but the mood was gradually becoming odder. Ah, how annoying. Let's just ask Sun Wu Appa outright. With him Seo Young's lead, the other members got up and left. Lee Sangha also trailed along behind them. They didn't need to search for long. Young Sun Wu was on the phone, standing on the stairs outside the gym. Ah, did you just wake up? There's food in the fridge, so eat some before you leave there's only going to be lunchboxes or kimbap on set anyways, right? The Neptune members stood rigidly. Their faces, as they looked at Young Sun Wu, turned strange. Discovering them after, Young Sun Wu immediately hung up. 
a troubled expression flashed on his cold face. Frowning, he approached them. I understand what you might be thinking, but it's not my girlfriend. While I don't know why I'm explaining myself, it's not. Just an actor. After reading scenarios together last night, we ended up sleeping at my house. At those words, the girl's expressions became odder. As if there was no other alternative, Young Sun Wu clicked his tongue and said. Because I thought you, especially Sangha, would be concerned about this, I wanted to tell you when the time was right. To be honest, I've been assigned to another actor. Li Quan Wu unconsciously looked at Li Sangha. Then he saw it. The intense change in her expression that looked like a tornado had been tossed onto a calm lake. Chapter 111 While it wasn't the timing I expected, there was nothing I could do about it. Now that it had come to this, I decided to explain the situation regarding Nam Joyun. A few days ago, when I couldn't go with you for your schedule, I me. Yua. Im Seo Young suddenly jumped and shouted. Her pale lips opened and closed. She even pointed at him with her trembling hand. Tra, tra, tra. Tra. Traitor. My brain stopped working. I never thought I would be called that. H how could you do this? How could you, Appa? Wait. Calm down. Just what did? H how can I calm down in a situation like this? Look how you say it so nonchalantly. Appa, isn't this too too cruel? And they say there you can't trust anyone in the world. You not even human. Damn world. So what kind of situation was this? Why was she freaking out so much? Were my words something that could rile up a storm like this? I was certain that the girls were clearly shocked. Im Seo Young tightly held both my forearms and shook them while shouting about how I could have done this. If someone saw this, they might think that I sold my country off. Lee Tae Hee and LJ didn't look like they were going to stop her either. Instead, they were looking at me with severe expressions as though I had actually betrayed them. And Lee Sangha, why was she so mortified? While she didn't freak out like I'm Seo Young, her state was even more serious. Should I say it felt like she might flop on the ground and slam at it at any moment? Or that it looked like she might transform into an evil spirit if I left her alone? It seemed like she had something she wanted to say to me, yet for some reason, she seemed to be enduring it while crushing the plastic sports drink bottle in her hand. I glanced at Lee Sangha before asking. Why are you all like this? Say it so that I can understand why you're acting like this. Im Seo Young immediately shouted. I don't like Sun Chai Young. Same, but why are you bringing this up now? Liar. If you don't like her, why are you working with her? Who is? You. Me. I frowned. Im Seo Young paused. Her large eyes moved chaotically. Behind her, Lee Tae Hee and LJ had expressions that something was odd. Uh, Appa. Hey, stop it, dummy. I don't think he is. LJ grabbed the back of him Seo Young's neck and dragged her back. Lee Tae Hee asked. The new actor you're assigned to, it's not Sun Chai Young. No. Just where did you hear that from? That is. Laughing absentmindedly, Lee Tae Hee told me the whole story. Hearing it, I was more dumbfounded. I took out my phone and showed them what I saved Sun Chai Young's number, and this absurd incident came to an end. Seo Young, what did you say to me? What? Traitor. I'm not even human. It seemed my gaze felt prickly as I'm Seo Young flinched as she read my mood. Um, Appa. My mind went blank, thinking that you were really bewitched by Sun Chai Young. I really felt like the ground was collapsing. Since I wasn't in my right mind, can't you just act like you didn't hear anything? No way. Yua, I'm sorry. Im Seo Young dangled from my arm. Still, it seemed the misunderstanding was resolved as her expression as much brighter than before, even if she was stomping her feet. Lee Tae Hee and LJ relaxed their tense shoulders and watched Im Seo Young's behavior. The person I'm in charge of is Mr. Nam Jo Yun. He's an actor I met on an independent film set a few days ago. Since he's not in our company, this is my personal matter. 
When I brought up Nam Joyun, I observed Lee Sangha. Fortunately, I stopped her from turning into an evil spirit. She was gradually returning to normal, though her expression was still complicated. Our gazes met. She became surprised. Her eyes shook like earthquakes. Immediately, she lowered her head. No, she was covering her face with both her hands. Sangha, why are you standing there like that? Was it because you thought it was Sun Chai Young? And no. I'm Finn, it didn't bother me. No way it didn't, look at your face. Really, it's nothing. She pushed me away with her flustered voice. What kind of reaction was this? If it wasn't because of Sun Chai Young, then was it because of Nam Joyun? Since she was an actress and listened to me, I did expect that she would be more concerned than the other girls when I told her I would be working with another actor. Still, her reaction was just too strange. Tilting my head, I approached her. I could feel her agitation. Gripping the plastic bottle tightly, she stepped to the side. Then she hid between the new recruit, Li Quan Wu, who had been standing ready since a while ago. Why are you acting like this? Come over here. I can't. My face is really weird because I'm so uneasy. With the large recruit between us, we circled around twice like we were playing Catch the Dragon's Tail. Your face isn't weird even if you covered with plastic wrap. So come out. No. I can't have my face like this at a time like this. Behind the new recruit's shoulder, Li Sangha mumbled as if she was ruined. After circling around a third time, I said. Just what are you saying? What kind of time is it? There's something like that. It's important to me. I tried to understand her, but I couldn't. It was too much for my mental state. Should I just grab and pull her out? Just as I was thinking this, LJ asked. What are you two doing? Ask Sangha. It seemed that even the other girls found us dumbfounding as their expressions were odd. I let out a sigh and looked at the new recruit. Hiding Lee Sangha behind his back, he didn't move and simply blinked. Seeing him like this was so irritating that I unknowingly clicked my tongue. The new recruit became stiffer. Damn it. I was trying to maintain my image since he was my first junior, but it was ruined. Quan Wu, move aside. You can't. Don't move. Li Sangha immediately said. The new recruit, who was about to move aside, stopped in place. I told you to move aside. Ah, uh, you can't. Only Li Song has voice escaped behind the new recruit, who didn't know what to do. I had no choice. Just as I was about to pull her out, Li Sangha turned around and fled in the opposite direction. She entered the gym, almost slamming into the door. I, no, everyone including me stared at the swaying gym door. Why do you think she's acting like that? You're the Sangha expert. How would we know if you don't? LJ answered with narrow eyes. Beside her, Im Seo Young mumbled, Is it that day? Are her hormones going out of control? Go to her. I think ITLL be better if you went than us. Lee Tae said while smiling faintly. I nodded and walked towards the gym. Then I suddenly recalled something I wanted to say and looked at the recruit. Call the agency and check the standby time for today's university event again. Check if there are any changes. Yes, chief. Patting the recruit's wide shoulder, I added. Also, next time, if I tell you to move, move. I knocked on the women's changing room. Hurried steps halted. Sangha, what are you doing alone in there? In changing. Even though she was hiding, she replied quickly. Really? Then he'll wait, so come out when you're done. You can go on without me. I think he'll be around 30 minutes. Are you making your clothes? That is I think my underwears disappeared, so I'm looking for them. Her excuse was filled with determination to send me away first. Are you acting like this because I am going to work with another actor? A bit. Her voice flowed out hesitantly. You talked about scenarios and ate at your house. I was a little jealous that you seemed closer to him than me. It's okay. You don't have to worry. I won't bother your work. Sangha. 
so right now, I'm a bit, narrow-minded. No, you're not. It definitely is concerning. I felt a bit upset when you hid behind the recruit. Really? Li Song has voice, which crawled on the ground, perked up. When I thought about how her ears were strained behind the changing room door, a smile unknowing hung on my face. I checked my wristwatch and said. We have two hours before your next schedule, should we talk about scenarios in the van? While time is tight, it might be a nice change of pace if we're on the road. It'll go. The door burst open. Lee Sangha walked out wearing everyday clothes. Did you find what you were looking for? That was a lie. Let's go, Appa. We don't have time to waste. Subtly avoiding my gaze, Lee Sangha held my clothes and urged me. I grinned as I began walking. Lee Sangha followed after me with a bright smile. Director Sung of Well Made Production said. We received PBS's Wednesday through Thursday national broadcasting schedule. We already sold right to YKTV in China. As soon as production is done, ITLL be released in Korea, China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan at the same time. Next to him were the director and writer for the Korean Chinese drama Royal Family. Besides them, well made production employees, well dressed in suits, were looking in our direction. Of course, beside me were Kim Hyunjo, the Team 3 leader, and Lee Sangha. How did Mess Sangha feel about the first two parts of the script? Writer Jang, a woman in her forties wearing fancy earrings, asked. Unlike writer Hong Jumi of Cat Guardian Ghost, who was a beginner, she was a famous writer with constant hits for seven years. Apparently, she was paid 40 million won won per episode or something. As soon as their gazes focused on her, Li Sangha swallowed a piece of fruit and replied. It was so fun that I read it all on the spot. To be honest, I already read the script with Sun, Chief Appa. Since there are two lead couples, the story is abundant, and since it's romantic revenge plot, I was very interested in what happens next. She glanced at me as she spoke. When I nodded, indicating she was doing a good job, a relaxed smile hung on her lips. Li Sangha continued by admiring the characters until her composed expression lit with excitement. Writer Jang, who was constantly evaluating Li Sangha with her gaze, nodded. Director Wu, who's had a bushy beard all the up to his sideburns, asked the next question. Seeing M.S. Song has previous work, you seem proficient in English, how's your Chinese? Since your role is a global Korean actress, so there are quite a few Chinese lines. I can hold simple conversations. I received lessons since my time as a trainee. The director let out an exclaim of admiration when he heard her answer. The Team 3 leader added. These days, whether it's idols or actors, expanding into China is vital. That was true. That was why I was cramming English and Chinese lessons whenever I had the time to use later. Then when does Neptune plan on expanding its activities to China? We are planning on holding a fan meeting around the time Cat Guardian Ghost releases in China. The reaction in China is quite good since their album was a success and because of Song has drama. The expressions of those from Well Made Production became brighter. This felt good. Since the drama was produced beforehand, it was possible to adjust the schedule a little. If things worked out, we might even be able to film a movie concurrently. While I was thinking about our future schedule, Director Sung poured liquor in my empty glass as he asked. Chief Young. Do you know how many Korean Chinese dramas will be released this year? I heard that there were seven, including Royal Family. That's right. So damn many. Our project has to do the best out them. After clinking our glasses, Director Sung chuckled as he said. Please work hard to make our project as much of a success as Cat Guardian Ghost. Pardon? I heard about how Chief Young Sun Wu's discerning eye is unbelievable. That Chief Young's words might be more effective than placing a pig's head on a ritual table and praying for success. He only let me be after he heard that this drama would do well from my own mouth. Even after this, the mood of the meeting wasn't bad. Then, not long after, Lee Sangha was officially cast in Royal Family. The evening of the day Lee Sangha stamped to the well-made production contract, I brought Nam Joyeun to Pan Production. 
Do I look weird? Nam Joyun asked while we were in the elevator. You were staring at me. I wore clothes that suited the role since this was an audition. No, I was looking since it suited you so well. If we were to judge by how one looked the part, we might not even need an audition. They might say that I actually brought a criminal instead of an actor. Nam Joyun was standing, slightly leaning back, with his hands in his pockets. He wore a black hoodie that easily covered his small head, and his hair was slightly ruffled. His eyes were half-closed. His sharp chin moved irregularly as he was chewing gum. I unknowing exclaimed in admiration. The more I see you, the better you look. To be honest, I was interested in this role because it fit well with your atmosphere, but I was worried that you might not be immersed in the role because it was too crazy. You're more well-mannered. As soon as I said this, the elevator doors opened. Nam Joyun separated from the wall. Then he placed his arm on my shoulder and whispered like a man planning a crime. Don't worry, chief. It'll do well. The tips of his lips under the hood rose. I became human with age. Chapter, 112 Around fifteen people gathered in the large waiting room at Pan Production. The actors and their managers, who were vying for the same role, were looking at each other with wary eyes. A Pan Production employee's voice could be heard from outside the door. This is the waiting room. They'll call you when it's your turn so you just need to wait here, chief. Yua, that's awkward. I still find it awkward as well. Then we'll be waiting here. The employee's tone when he talked to the person known as Chief was very friendly. The people inside the waiting room watched the closed door. They looked nervous as if worrying that a top-ranked actor would be participating. Soon, the waiting room door opened. The one who entered was a man wearing a hoodie. Their gazes scanned his face. Who is he? It's my first time seeing him. Maybe he's unknown, don't worry about him. Various whispers leaked out. The eyes that flashed with competitiveness died down when they figure out that their new competitor was an unknown actor. However, the next moment, a tall man with an unordinary appearance entered behind the actor. While he wasn't an actor, a few instantly recognized his face. Isn't he that guy? From W.U.? He is, Manager Yung Sun Wu. What the heck? So he's a rookie actor W.U.'s training. When the whispering voices grew louder, Yung Sun Wu looked around the waiting room. The chatting people shut their mouths. When the two of them sat on empty chairs, a manager who was sitting in the corner approached them. You're Nam Joyin right? This industry is quite small. The unknown actor known as Nam Joyun replied. When Yung Sun Wu looked at them, Nam Joyun said. He's someone who worked at my previous company. Ah. Yung Sun Wu nodded while making a weird expression. The manager asked again. So Mr. Joyun is still acting. Is your company W.U.? The people listening in perked their ears. Under their gazes, Nam Joyun casually said. No. Then, why? When the manager glanced at Yung Sun Wu as he trailed off, Yung Sun Wu smiled as he replied. I'm personally following him since I'm interested. At those words, sighs of relief came out throughout the room. If he had a large company like WU backing him, then he would be a worthy competitor, but if there wasn't, then he was simply a common, unknown actor. Even the manager who struck a conversation with Nam Joyun revealed a smile of relief. Director Park was on the toilet for ten minutes now. The additions would start soon, but the poop that was coiled up in him for the past few days showed no indication of coming out. He squeezed his sphincter as he checked the time. How did you get someone like him? That guy's really bad at picking people. He had heard footsteps approaching, but a conversation suddenly started. Since you caused a fuss in our company like some crazy person, I thought that you would quit acting. Well, it's probably difficult for you to find some other job at your age. But do you think something good would happen if you keep sticking to this industry? I know, right? This bothers me as well as I stay in this industry. Constantly seeing people I hate. The second voice was dry, yet also contained a bit of cynicism. Director Park, who had been unintentionally eavesdropping, perked his ears. What? 
Idiot, what the idiot did you just say? You. What? You want to punch me again? If we ran into each other a while ago, we might have had some fun, but too bad. I can't leave a bruise on my face right now. The chief who you said is bad at picking people got this audition for me so I don't want to disappoint him. You idiot. Stop there. I have a knife in my pocket. I brought it as a prop for the audition, but like you said, you never know what kind of a crazy act a crazy person will do, right? The moment this threatening voice entered his ears, Director Park had a eureka moment the same time as his bowel movement. It hit me. It was like fate. Director Park mumbled like someone under a spell. CEO Kim Pansuk clicked his tongue. What fate? You said you didn't even see his face. He wasn't there when I went out. I should have stopped mid-poop. Don't be obsessed with an actor when you didn't even see his face. Just conduct the additions properly. CEO Kim Pansuk sharply glared at him. As the additions progressed, Director Park's expression gradually became worse. There were a few actors that CEO Kim Pansuk and other judges looked favorably upon, but that was it. Maybe it was because the voice, tone, and the dark, cynical mood from a few words left such a powerful impression, but the other actors didn't meet his expectations. Time passed like this when someone said, Next, Mr. Nam Joyun. Nam Joyun. CEO Kim Pansuk's eyes shined. He poked Director Park's side. Director Park, at least act sincerely with this person. Director Park flipped the profile over with an unsatisfied face. This actor is that guy. The one Lee Song has manager brought over. Don't tell me you unofficially decided without me or anything, right? Don't think about casting him by force. This is an important role. Of course, you need to pick an actor by his skills. Still, I'm saying don't make them feel disappointed by auditioning him half-heartedly. We owe Mr. Young Sun Woo a lot with Cat Guardian Ghost. Also, if that project didn't make a profit, we wouldn't have been able to start this movie. Okay, I get it. Let's see then. Director Park nodded his head with disinterest. Soon, the audition room door opened and two people entered. Director Park's gaze first landed on Young Sun Woo, who he had seen while browsing the internet. Among the actors who came to audition, his appearance suited the criminal role the most. Next, he turned to look at the actor who accompanied him. Director Park's eyes shined. He wasn't bad either. While he was quite handsome for a criminal, there was a wild aspect to his eyes. The outfit, which seemed like he picked out for this role, suited him well. However, the voice from the washroom kept echoing in his mind. Director Park licked his lips with regret. He hoped that that actor gave off this sort of mood as well. I am Nam Joyun. Please take care of me. The pen Director Park had in his mouth dropped. He opened and closed his mouth a few times before asking. Do you happen to have a knife in your pocket? When Nam Joyun tilted his head and took out the folding blade from his pocket, Director Park made a joyful expression. Then when Nam Joyun skillfully handled the knife while saying his lines, Director Park kept poking CEO Kim Pansuk in the side as he whispered. That guy, let's go with him. I was very dazed. The washroom? That's where the director became fixated on him. CEO Kim Pansuk looked as dazed as I was. Just what did Nam Joyun and the director do in the washroom for the director to pick him? Since my thoughts became weirder the more I thought about it, I shook my head. I should ask Nam Joyun when I leave. To be honest, as long as he wasn't terrible, we were planning on casting him in a minor role at least. We wanted to repay you for everything, but... CEO Kim Pansuk grinned in the middle of speaking. I think I might have to thank you this time as well. Thank you for looking at us favorably. Well, you aren't the type to bring along weird actors. You said he wasn't under W.U.? Yes, I am personally overseeing him. CEO Kim Pansuk gave me a strange look. I recalled how you brought M.S. Sangha for an audition a few months ago. No one knew M.S. Sangha then, yet who could have known she would be so successful in a few months? I didn't say anything and smiled. 
CEO Kim Pansook grinned as he said. I hope that I can say this again. About how anyone could have known Mr. Nam Joyun would be so successful. The press release has been sent, right? Yes, we sent it out and so did well-made production. As soon as the broadcast starts, articles about MS. Song has next project will pop up like crazy. The female employee of the PR team replied to Kim Hyunjo's question. The closer it came to the broadcast time, the more people gathered in front of the TV in the lounge. The Neptune members, who had been practicing in the basement, sat in the middle, and the new recruit, Kim Hyunjo, the PR team employees and I sat around them. Damn it. I wanted to see this broadcast quietly in my home. What is it? Is something going on today? From now on, where is broadcasting? Ah, the one that appeared on the news? It's today. Other employees gathered with interested faces. Someone might think the World Cup was on. The problem was that it probably wasn't only my company that was like this. My relatives were probably sitting with my parents in front of their TV as well, and the quadruplets probably brought their school friends over to watch at my brother's place. Even the internet was bustling. Talks about the incident died down with time, but because of today's broadcast, my name was being mentioned on social media and community sites. How did they edit it? I hoped it was edited with Neptune as the focus. Even now, my face burned so much when I walked down streets that I needed to wear sunglasses. Sometimes, it reached a point where I was confused whether I was a manager or a TV personality. I truly didn't need more attention than this. Quiet, it's starting. When team leader Park made a hand gesture, everyone quieted down. While fixing my gaze on the TV screen, I inwardly desperately hoped that my face didn't appear often. God damn it. Oh my, Mr. Sunwoo is second on the real-time search rankings. Wow, Mr. Sunwoo's name's on all the headlines of spam articles. The PR team employees were happily discussing something I didn't really want to hear. The Neptune girls were losing their minds laughing, and the employees gathered around us kept alternating between the screen and me while mumbling, I got chills. I lost count how many time chills popped up in the captions. Wow, look at the goosebumps on my arms. Chief Young, maybe you actually see something. How can you be like that? I don't see anything. That's an entertainment show. Which drama did Mr. Sunwoo choose for MS? Song has next project. Royal Family. They are probably still auditioning supporting roles, right? I might tell my actor about it. I felt like I would go crazy. For real. The show was edited to make me look like some superhuman that observed danger through my extreme senses and stopped the incident. On top of that, they brought up how I said Neptune would get first place on a music broadcast and how the drama and title track I pushed were successes, making it seem like there was really something to me. How could I go outside from now on? My future looked bleak. Sighing, I looked at the netbook on my lap. Before Seoul left me, I planned on escaping from reality by monitoring sites. We spread a press release as bait for today's broadcast to break the news of Lee Song has next project at the same time. But the headline of the main internet article was quite the spectacle. Lee Song has next project Royal Family, a promising project picked by mid ass hand Young Sun Woo Won. This time as well. What mid ass hand? The media manipulations for Lee Song has new project is cringy. It's understandable if you're watching from now on, where's broadcast? It's not cringy, but chilling. What chilling? Watch entertainment shows for entertainment, don't take them so seriously. But seriously, when you think about how things started going well for Neptune ever since manager Young Sun Woo was assigned to them, it doesn't seem like just an entertainment show. Next K, Cat Guardian Ghost, Lee Taehee's title track, they're all successes. Both entertainment shows he appeared on are hits. At this point, it's true his senses are amazing. Damn, if that's all true, isn't he using up the luck for the rest of his life? Buy a lottery ticket, man. It's not just that everything goes well, there are rumors that he's a demon at figuring out projects that will fail. Just keep the first part. Any more, and he must be possessed by a god. If royal family is a success, then he'll acknowledge he possesses mid-ass hand. 
I closed the window after reading a few comments. I wanted to see netizens' reactions on Lee song has next project, but there were more discussions about me. How long would it take for this to quiet down? No, would it even quiet down? Just as I sighed, the clamoring noises suddenly became distant. My vision went dark. The moment I saw the noisy static, my heart tensed. It was the future. The future I had been longing for while pondering over sleepless nights. What was this? Was it a future about the new drama? Considering the timing, this was most likely. I quickly examined what I could see. I saw a soju glass in front of me. I was at a bar. It seemed I already had a few drinks as a bitter taste swirled in my mouth. Because I had my chin propped up and was looking down, all I could see was the wood pattern table, half-empty bottle of soju, and what looked like fried chicken. I focused my eyes and ears to find anything that could be a hint. How can a person always succeed? There'll be times when you fail. I heard a voice that seemed to be trying to cheer me from across the table. It was a woman's voice, but who was it? I couldn't tell who it was because her voice was mixed with static. Just as I hoped she would speak a few more words, she said. It's not like royal family flopped because of you anyways. Chapter, 113 What? What would fail? I felt like I had taken a blow to the back of my head. I flailed in this shock for a few seconds before hastily regaining my senses. Now was not the time to do this. Figuring out why royal family flopped was the most important thing to do right now. If I knew the reason, I could look for a way to change the future. Tense, I waited for the woman's voice. A second was terrifyingly long. Say it. Right now. Quickly. The reason the drama flopped. That's it. Just as the woman opened her mouth and my ears were perked, my vision went dark again. Wow, Mr. Sun Wu. I think the impact of this will be quite large. Someone slapped my back. My static-filled vision abruptly became clear. A blinding white light was beaming down on me. The employees around me were chatting noisily, and M. C. O. Young and L. J. were reflected on the TV screen in front of me. When I willed it, my hand rose. I had returned to the present. What the heck? Was that really the end of the foresight? It ended like that? Why do you look so out of it? The female PR team employee shoved her flushed face towards me and asked. Is it because netizens will cause a commotion? Uh, wait. Royal family rose to fifth place in the real-time search rankings. People kept patting my shoulders and back as they talked, but I didn't have the leisure to reply. I was completely absorbed in my thoughts about the future I had just seen. As I hadn't been able to listen to it until the end, a question left my mind in a mess. Why did royal family flop? Just why? I didn't sleep a wink. I carefully read royal family's synopsis and script again. I meticulously checked all information regarding the drama, including well-made production. I still didn't know why this project would flop. If royal family was a stock, it would be the blue chippiest stock amongst blue chip stocks. It was a project well-made production, which produced a mountain of hit dramas and movies, worked hard on. Since the Chinese side was providing the capital, their production budget was so big that we would be filming overseas half the time. It was also headed by a producer known for his direction and a famous writer. The script's polish couldn't be better. They were also putting tons of work into casting, especially for the main face of the drama, the male lead. Yun Tae Young, a world star whose popularity reached the sky in China, was being mentioned a lot, and I heard that discussions were almost over and all they had to do was sign. On top of all that, the drama was completely produced beforehand. No matter how closely I examined things, there was no reason for it to flop. Only one thing remained. Either too many cooks spoiled the broth because of hardcore fans like in Mermaid Out of Water's case or an unexpected incident occurred like how the writer and director had an extramarital affair like in Time Slip's case. If that was the case, then there wasn't anything I could do unless I saw the future again. However, there was no guarantee that my future foresight ability would help me at an opportune time. Hindsight was 2020. 
Damn it, if I saw the future before we chose royal family, no, even if I saw it before we signed the contract. I was going crazy. Really. What should I do? I agonized over this while pulling my hair. How could I change the future? While I was doing this, my name reached first place on a portal site's real-time search ranking. Morning arrived, yet I hadn't straightened anything out. It was time to go to work. I quickly finished getting ready and took my phone. Messages were pouring in throughout the night because of yesterday's broadcast, and yet, it was still vibrating non-stop. I didn't have the leisure to go through all of them so I flipped through a few public contacts, but the contents were similar, asking me to contact them back because they would like an interview or discuss making an appearance on their show. Many were about how the internet was in a commotion after yesterday's broadcast. I had completely forgotten about the broadcast because I was preoccupied with thoughts of the stupid hint from the future and royal family. After thinking that I will look over them again when I got to work, I put my phone in my pocket. My odd day began when I met the woman living in the unit next to me. We had only greeted each other with nods before, yet she gave me weird glances before asking. Excuse me, I'm having a hard time because I haven't gotten a job for the past few months, they'll probably get one before summer, right? Ah yes, I hope you get one soon. While I wondered where this question suddenly came from, I didn't dwell on it long because of the chaos in my head and simply nodded, thinking, I guess she's really frustrated with job hunting. The next incident occurred when I entered a coffee shop so that I could down some caffeine and come to my senses. I was standing in line when I heard a woman and a man talking in front of me. Hmm, what should I drink? Appa, what do you think's tasty here? How would I know that? Am I Chief Young? I was shocked as I initially thought they were talking about me. Thinking that it was one of the countless Chief Youngs in Korea, the two turned around after ordered. Our gazes met. Yua, what a surprise. Oh my god. What the heck. Speak of the devil. I was also freaked out. Though I forgot to wear my glasses, I shouldn't be at the point where I cause that sort of reaction. What speak of the devil? Don't tell me the chief young they were talking about was me. It wasn't just them either. From the coffee shop employees to the customers sitting at tables, they were all looking at me. I kept hearing Young Sunwoo and Chief Young being mentioned in their murmurs. Something was odd. While there were people who recognized me, they were a minority with sharp eyes. On top of that, an even smaller minority amongst them actually acted familiar and struck a conversation with me even though I wasn't a celebrity. Yet, it felt like the majority of people were going to come at me. Was now, where's influence this great? Ah, uh, hello. Could I ask you something? I controlled my expression after hearing a woman talk to me with a face flushed with excitement. Ah, uh, yes. What is it? We're going to get married this year. What month do you think would be best to hold the ceremony? Why would you ask me? I was so dumbfounded that my concerns floated away. With the soon-to-be newlyweds as the start, people who seemed to have waited for this moment crowded around me. They began jokingly asking me strange questions as though they had come across a fun event. Almost fleeing, I ran to my van. I immediately went online. I doubted my eyes for a moment. My name was spread like cockroach eggs on social media, portal, and community sites. My name was inserted in posts and comments completely unrelated to Neptune and now, were. For example, like these. If you're curious, ask Yung Sun Wu. Do you think him Chief Young? Even my daughter-in-law doesn't know. Even Young Sun Wu doesn't know. Oh my god. What was this? Was this a dream? What was happening right now? I was blankly staring at my phone screen when my phone range. It was Team Leader Park. I heard her voice before I even placed my phone on my ear after accepting the call. You're on your way to work, right? Come quick. Quick. Oh, Chief Young. When I put my hand out for a handshake, a woman I was seeing for the first time massaged my hand as though it was made of gold. It felt like she would soon hug me and pat me on my butt. She's in charge of marketing over at Wellmade Production. Team leader Park smiled happily as she introduced the woman. When I sat at the table in a dazed state, Team Leader Park said. 
you have a good idea of what's going on online, right? I did see it on my way here. A fan in Neptune's official fan cafe made this and posted it on there. Other people began posting it elsewhere and it spread throughout the night. Team leader Park turned on her tablet and showed me what the fan had made. The title was Sorted Facts Regarding Neptune's Manager, Chief Young. Warning, you may wet your pants. From next case star, the person neatly organized all the projects I partook in and enclosed a description. The clip of yesterday's now, were broadcast couldn't compare to this. This was almost a research paper. It even included about how M. Seo Young's mother went to a shaman, the shaman's declaration that a snake biting good luck would arrive and to not let go of it, as well as the fact that I was born on the year of the snake. We had only mentioned it once in a magazine interview in the past. At the end of the post was the information that I was promoted to a chief position. Look at the comments below. Team leader Park scrolled down. What the heck is this? I wet and changed my pants twice while reading this. These are all true. Really? I want him to predict the results of the World Cup. This is real. I heard from someone I know that, because everything he touches turns out well, WU promoted him so that he wouldn't go somewhere else. Is he just unbelievably lucky? Or is he that talented? This could be the mystery of the year. While his talent must have played a part, most of it should have been luck. If he had the skill to pick out successful projects and songs, why would he be a chief? He should just found his own company and be CEO. But if his luck is that good, isn't that itself amazing? I want to ask him various questions. I feel like hell guessed the right answer. I also want to ask him questions. Your name spread like this and the situation has become like this. You saw how people began using your name like some sort of buzzword, right? Team leader Park looked like she had won the lottery. It isn't just the entertainment industry, your name is popping up in cultural, societal, and even political discussions. I don't think we'll fade in a day or two. I think ITLL spread like a trend. And we'll be fanning the flames so that it does. The woman in charge of well-made productions marketing joined in. Would you like to have a look at this as well? She flipped to another page on the tablet. It was pasted with excerpt comments from another website. What's the new drama Chief Young Sun Woo chose? Will that also be a success? It's royal family. If that's a success too, then ITLL really sends shivers down my spine. During Cat Guardian Ghost, they made up curious about the broadcast because of Lee Song has acting controversy, now they're making us curious whether this drama will be a success or not. Since the project you selected after Cat Guardian Ghost was Royal Family, our project is trending as much as you. At her words, team leader Park nodded as she added. People are curious about the drama before it's even started, doesn't how much anticipation they have remind you of Cat Guardian Ghost. That's why we're planning on using the same strategy for royal family. The same strategy. Raising the stakes like then. I felt like I was going crazy. I almost spat the words that had crawled their way up my throat. The situation this time was different from before. Royal family was going to flop. Thinking about how to raise the stakes wasn't the issue, it was figuring out a way to get off this sinking ship. The woman in charge of marketing said. We didn't expect this situation at all so there's a fuss at our company as well, talking about how we hit jackpot by just sending out a single press release. This really seems like the heavens are helping royal family become a hit. Well made saved marketing expenses because of Mr. Sun Woo and it looks like promoting this will be a breeze. Will nothing come his way if things go well? Of course, there will. We get tons of inquiries from potential investors when promotions are good. We might even be stacked with product placements. If Mr. Sunwoo can keep helping out like now, how can we take it all for ourselves? For your reference, Mr. Sunwoo already has a car. Team leader Park said jokingly as she winked at me. Damn it, it felt like someone jumped roping using my windpipe. Team leader Park tapped her tablet as she said. Also, getting to the main point. The press is making a fuss, asking for a few comments from you. It's about time for us to start sending additional press releases anyways. We are planning on adding one or two comments from you. It's okay if they are simple, 
what do you think? The woman in charge of marketing held my hand as she requested. If it's okay, I want to ask you something. What made you choose Royal Family as a project that will succeed, and how successful you think this project will be? I really felt like I was going hopping mad. How would I resolve this situation? Chapter, 114 Uh, Mr. Sun Wu. We have high hopes for Royal Family. Don't have high hopes. Chief Young. Mid-ass hand. Am thinking about buying well-made production stocks. Don't buy any. I heard stuff like this wherever I went. Whenever I heard that damn royal family, I felt like a hole was opening up in my stomach. However, the incident that took the cake was when I met him Ju Wan and Chief Sung at work. Chief Young, Mr. Ju Wan signed his exclusive contract today. Also, his first project at our company might be royal family. What did you say? The sub-lead role. We gave up on the male lead because they are apparently going to cast some amazing worldwide star. Even though he's the sub-lead, we thought that his screen time and story didn't lose out to the lead. The bigger Chief Sung's smile became, the more my soul crumpled. Im Ju Won shrugged his shoulders with a slightly excited expression. I heard that this drama is pretty much a ticket to becoming a worldwide star. The problem with my previous company was that they always got me crappy projects, but it feels like things are going well as soon as I join WU. If I get cast for the role, please take care of me. Oh my god. I had to do something about royal family. It had dropped from being a gold mine to a crap mine. I had personally picked this drama without knowing it would flop. I had to take measures to somehow change the future. I couldn't find the answer because something would pop up when I was about to think about it. Sun Wu, what do you call that daily? A newspaper called Daily Something called us asking for an interview. What should we do? Something like this. The reporter kept begging us. I didn't want to say anything I shouldn't so I told him I'd ask you and got his contact information. What should I do? Do I have to do an interview? No, mom, it's definitely nothing like that. Just give me his number, he'll take care of it. As soon as I hung up, I called the reporter's personal phone. I didn't know whether it was on purpose or not, but he didn't answer my phone. I sent him a text telling him to contact me instead of my home if he had some business. I checked the time intermittently when Kim Hyunjo, who was eating Kong, Duxu Won, said. A reporter called your home? Yes, I don't know who he is, but he seems to have nothing better to do. Hey, it looks like you've really gotten famous. It seemed like netizens lacked something to talk about or perhaps WU and Wellmade's marketing team's co-op strategy worked. These past two days were the peak of my fame since I had hair on my head. As soon as I hung up, my phone rang again. Damn it. Who is it this time? They won't even let you eat. This time, it's Mr. Huang Jae-hyun. Who? Huang Jae-hyun from now, were. Why is he calling? I didn't know either. I bitterly looked at my phone screen before answering the phone. Hello. Mr. Sun Wu. Mr. Sun Wu, it's been a while. We are currently recording the show. The other side seemed to be on speakerphone as I could hear the voices of other members mixed in besides Huang Jaehyun's. We are picking our allowance. Two choose either one or two. Pardon. One of them is nothing and the other is 100,001. Time is running out. We have five seconds, five. Save us. One. Or two. One. I picked whatever because they were in the middle of recording when I heard people scream from the other side. Yua, oh my gosh. It's 100,001. Mr. Sun Wu, amazing. He's the real deal. As expected of mid-ass hand. See. I told you we should use Young Sun Wu chance. It should have contained nothing, why did I have guess right? When I hung up after taking my fill of the members thanks, Kim Hyunjo was laughing while holding his stomach. Young Sun Wu chance. Hey, this is something of a dream to other celebrities, yet how did such a fortune land on you? Let me know if you ever want to become a celebrity. It'll assign a road manager to you. Even now, people are constantly asking me to ask you about it. 
No need. Kim Hyunjo grinned when I shook my head. Nothing I can do then. Don't worry. While it's a bit of a shame, there won't be anyone pushing you into it. Now that I thought about it, it was weird that no one told me to go on entertainment shows. It wouldn't be strange since, the more talked about I am, the more royal family and Neptune get promoted as well. I also suffered a bit back when Star Manager became a hit. As if he could see what I was thinking about, Kim Hyunjo said. The CEO personally said so. To not push it onto you if you don't want to. The CEO did? Yeah. That's why there are rumors spreading that the CEO is taking great care of you. I suddenly recalled something as soon as I recalled CEO Beck Hansung's leisurely face. What would he do if he was in my situation? How would he handle this situation? Kim Hyunjo continued with a more serious face. Why are you so serious? Do you feel pressure because you think things have gotten too big? I feel like I suddenly became Nostradamus. Even though it might be annoying and troublesome right now, just think of it as investing for the future and build up your image. Mid-ass hand. Whatever you choose will be a success. You can't make an image as good as this with money. If. Kim Hyunjo lowered his voice. Think about how beneficial ITLL be to have this image if you ever become an executive and propel your work or go independent and set up your own company. When I set up my own company, huh? I might be tempted if it was any other situation. Kim Hyunjo smiled as he continued. Also, to be honest, what's there to feel pressure about? The timing is perfect. Your next project is Royal Family. That was the precisely the problem. Royal family will be a mild success at least. Though the results might not be as great with regards to the investments, there probably is no chance of it flopping. I thought so too. Right now, if people searched my name on portal sites, royal family would appear as a related result. If I couldn't change the future and royal family flops, then I might even be called the poop hand. For someone who had an expression that read, of course, ITLL be a success, just how successful ITLL be is the question. During Cat Guardian Ghost or Neptune's mini album when everyone else was worried they might flop, you become so serious at weird times. That was because it was certain they would do well, because I made it so that they would. Kim Hyunjo patted my shoulder as he said. Just trust your choice this time as well. It was difficult to get out of royal family at this point. While there might be a way to convince I'm Ju Won, who was still discussing it, otherwise, Lee Sangha had already signed the contract. If she tried to call it off now, even ignoring the penalty for the breach of contract, it would leave a stain on her image as an actress. A top star would be frowned upon, there was nothing more to say for a rookie like Lee Sangha. If there was a method, it would be dropping out due to an injury. It would affect the filming schedule if she had to wear a cast on her arm or leg for a long period of time. She would be able to drop out from the drama without it being shameful. Appa, what are you doing in the middle of script reading? Lee Sangha asked while blinking her eyes slowly. I jolted to my senses. You crazy idiot, just what were you thinking? Sorry, I just thought of something crazy for a moment. Ah, I thought you were looking at my legs. No. So you weren't. I felt a chill run down my spine. Was I going insane after becoming absorbed in these thoughts these days? What cast? Uh, no. It's getting late, should we take a short break? Aren't you tired? I'm fine, but it seems you're tired. Let's end it here for today. I felt like my heart was being pricked when I saw her worried look. She was always chanting for script reading sessions, Yet this script reading session that we squeezed in due to our busy schedule was wasted because I couldn't focus. No, let's do some more. I just have a lot on my mind. Ill focus this time so. No, ill read it on my own at home. You can relax. Lee Sangha said as she took the script. Ill work hard, no, ill do well. I'm confident this time. After sitting in front of my desk all night, I went up to the rooftop of my apartment to cool my mind. Spring was almost over so even though it was morning, the wind was lukewarm. It felt like I was looking for a path in a thick fog. If there was no way to change the future, 
then was it time to take measure to recover from the fall. Discussions about the schedule for the 34 billion won movie were proceeding well. If her next project was a success, then she would be able to recover from a failed drama. However, it would be distressing if I just continued knowing that this path was doomed without taking any measures. On top of that, it would be a great waste of time. Also, my mind kept thinking about the dramas that we had to give up due to overlapping schedules when we chose Royal Family. It was even more frustrating considering this was a project we took from Sun Chai Young. Under normal circumstances, Sun Chai Young might have done this project. Even if it failed, it would have been Sun Chai Young's. My mind jolted when I thought about Sun Chai Young. When I thought about how much that woman would like it if this drama flopped, it felt like fuel was surging in my tired body. Yeah, this wasn't the time to be like this. I slapped my cheeks and was about to get off the rooftop when my phone vibrated. It was reporter Park Woo Jong. Chief. Could you give me a slight hint on who's likely to be cast for Royal Family's male lead? Of course, they'll publish it once the confirmation is released. I just want to write it in advance. Yu ha. I heard that the male lead was almost confirmed. Yoon Tae Kyung. A top star worthy of his name, he was one of the top Korean stars with an amazing popularity in China as well. He was someone who received a guarantee of 100 million won for just appearing on a Chinese entertainment show. Going down the stairs, I wrote a simple reply. Just as I was writing about how they would sign once they finished up their negotiations, the text on my phone became blurry. Did my sight go blurry because I was awake all night? Just as I was thinking this, the world was dyed black. I mean, who could have known? That the amazing male lead they spent a ton of money on to be their poster boy would crap all over the project? Static filled my vision. I had a glass of soju in my hand and could smell the oily scent of fried chicken. Also, the woman's voice I heard in front of me, they all felt familiar. Was this a continuation of the future from before? While engraving her voice in my mind, I inwardly shouted in delight. I felt like I had chugged a 3L soda down my throat just from the chance that I could find a hint from peeking at the future. If they knew about it before they signed, no, even if they knew before it aired, it wouldn't have ended like this. I think that Star Search purposely published it at that time to screw them over. To make the drama flop and hit them with a ton of compensation pay. The male lead so an actor, most likely Yoon Tae Kyung, ruined the drama. If he was going to ruin something, then he should have just ruined his own life. But what kind of trouble did he cause to make the drama flop? If I knew that, I thought I could change the future. The woman, no, I now knew for certain that she was reporter Park Woo Jong. I perked my ears at her voice. Just a little more. It would be great if she could be a bit more detailed. My vision went dark just as I thought this. No, wait, just a little more. Just as I felt that I was holding the glass of soju with all my strength, a strange voice brushed my ears like a stretched out tape recording. He's really crazy. A Korean star popular in China to do drugs of all things. As soon as I came to my senses, I missed my step on the stairs. Slipping down, I barely managed to land at the bottom. Though my head almost split open, my mood felt so refreshed I felt like I could fly. What could I say? It felt like the frustration that piled in my mind for a thousand years had been completely swept away. I took deep breaths to calm my excitement and called Team Leader Park. I organized my thoughts as I waited. So the male lead caused a drug-related problem, and the publication, Star Search, published that. Since the drama already airing, there was nothing they could do as it became a huge commotion. Hello. What is it at this time? Ah. I had something I wanted to ask you about. Team leader, when will Mr. Yoon Tae Kyung sign the contract? If I gave them evidence that Yoon Tae Kyung was doing drugs, the contract would undoubtedly fall through. It was a big issue in Korea, but the Chinese entertainment world was especially sensitive to drug-related crimes. If this was found out after they started filming, then the schedule would go awry since they would have to go back to casting again. Even if the drama was produced before it aired, they would have to shoot it on a time constraint. It would also become more difficult to adjust the schedule for the movie shoot as well. It would be best if I could stop it before they cast him. 
I was going to tell you when you came to work today, but it looks like the contract will take a bit longer. That was some welcome news. Why? Wellmade sent the synopsis to Park Dojin before sending it to Yun Tae Young. Apparently, it fell through because they couldn't settle on his pay, but it seems Park Dojin is interested in lowering his pay to join. Wait, then the male lead. They are currently deciding on Yun Tae Young or Park Dojin. My mind was spinning. So there were two candidates, and one of them screwed the drama over with drugs. How would I pick the right one between them? I had to know for sure to find evidence. I hung up and ran down the stairs. I needed to probe Star Search first. Chapter 115 Star Search Star Search It was an unfamiliar name. Though I had met, directly and indirectly, with hundreds of reporters during my work, and though there were dozens of names saved under the reporter category on my phone, I had never heard of a publication called Star Search. A scandal involving a top actor like Yoon Tae Kyung or Park Dojin, and it wasn't something cute like a dating scandal but a big deal like a drug scandal. For a small scale, unknown publication to publish a huge scandal like that? Just in case, I indirectly asked team leader Park and reporter Park Woo Jong if there were any rumors about Yoon Tae Kyung or Park Dojin, but there weren't any that would deal a blow to their image. There was nothing about drugs either. That meant that Star Search exclusively collected and published this scandal. I suppressed my questions and first searched Star Search on a portal site. I should at least know their address before taking any measures. There could be an article about me being crazy if I just blindly entered their office and interrogated them. I needed to think hard if I wanted to come with a decent plan, but thinking furiously was enjoyable compared to when I was gloomy with no straws to grasp at. But something was weird. No matter how much I searched, there wasn't a publication known as Star Search. It was the same when I searched through the Portal News category. A publication known as Star Search wasn't even registered. Did I mishear the company name? No, that wasn't possible. Then why wasn't it there? Team Leader, have you heard of a publication known as Star Search? I asked Team Leader Park as soon as I arrived at work. Team Leader Park gave me a surprised look. Star Search. What about that damn publication? Where did you hear about them? Her reaction assured me. Fortunately, it wasn't a non-existent company. I heard about them from a reporter I know, but I couldn't find them when I searched online. There wasn't a single article from them on the portal site either. Of course, they aren't on a national portal site. They are a publication specializing in paparazzi in Hong Kong. What? Where? Hong Kong. Yeah. Well, it is time for you to be concerned about overseas publications since Song is getting more known in China, so be more careful from now on. That place is much more cutthroat than here. They publish articles that we can't hear in fear of lawsuits without worry. Especially Hong Kong, it's worse than Hollywood. Wait, wait. Let me think for a second. If Star Search was a publication in Hong Kong, how could I approach them? It wasn't like I could get on a plane to Hong Kong right now, and even if I did, I wouldn't be able to communicate with them. There were tons of publications in the country, yet why did have to be one in Hong Kong? Team leader Park frowned as she continued to speak. Star Search especially doesn't like Korean stars very much so they write a lot of scandals regarding them. Those leeches. Of course, the more vicious leeches are the tabloids in this country that sell information and pictures to them. My ears perked at her words. Tabloids in our country sell information and pictures. Star Search isn't independently digging around. While many publications do that, since Star Search specializing in the paparazzi, they usually buy them. Most of the information regarding Korean stars in the country are sent from here. You see, there's a lowlife company that deals with Star Search. I immediately asked. Where is it? DM Media. When I searched up the name Team Leader Park gave me, a registered publication popped up. On their homepage, which had multiple adult ads, there wasn't even a common interview article. All they had were entertainment spamming articles, revealing celebrity photos, and provocative tabloid articles that only used initials. I looked around for a long time before I found their address. Diumchin District. 
It wasn't that far. Before I left, I went to find Kim Hyunjo and told him. Chief, I'm going to have Kwan Wu handle today's schedule and go meet with a reporter. A reporter? What reporter all of a sudden? Are you doing an interview? No, I heard that there was a bad news item. I wanted to check up on it since it seemed troublesome. Kim Hyunjo's expression became sour. Since it's you were talking about, it feels uneasy. Since it's not certain, he'll talk to you about it after I confirm it. I stated ambiguously. The scale this time was too big for me to discuss it without taking any measures, especially since I wasn't certain which of the two caused the problem. Yoon tae Young and Park Dojin were big shots whose contracts reached the billions of won, and well-made production and Chinese investors were also entangled in this situation. In other words, if I said something wrong and a problem arose, it would be a very serious matter. Okay, go check it. Call team leader Park or me immediately if there's something to it. Yes. I handed Lee Song his afternoon schedule to the recruit and immediately drove my minivan to DM Media's address. Hoping there would be an answer there. Jumson Building, Gazan Neighborhood, Junction District. Unit 301. The address was correct, yet I couldn't even the company, let alone an answer. There wasn't a sign outside the building, and Unit 301 on the information panels in the first floor lobby and elevator was empty. It was the same when I arrived at the third floor. There was something that looked like an office, but there wasn't a sign and the door was firmly locked. I couldn't even tell if there was someone inside or not. There wasn't even a reaction when I knocked. Even when I called the phone number on their homepage, it would simply ring with no one answering. I tried sending an email to the email address, but even that was immediately returned. At this point, I wondered if this even was a properly functioning publication. So this was a paparazzi company. How could I casually meet DM media reporters? I pondered after returning to my minivan and looking up at the third floor window, which had its blinds down. Then I decided to change my method. I entered the building again. This time, I took off my sunglasses and revealed my face. I planned on using myself as bait so that they would come to me since I couldn't find them. I hoped that I looked appetizing to the paparazzi. First, I went to the coffee chain on the first floor and ordered a cup of coffee. The employees and the customers recognized me. I had fled last time, but this time, I sat at a table. Once I responded friendlily to a customer who acted familiar as he approached me, more people started conversations with me. Slowly, news began to spread throughout the building, to the point where people on other floors came down to see me. Things were going as planned. If I kept at it, DM Media should hear about it too since they were a paparazzi company. After brooding over coffee for an hour, I went to the second floor Oriental Medical Clinic. My shoulders ached so it was a good opportunity. I received acupuncture, cupping, and electrotherapy and saw black blood clots. That was how I spent two hours in the building. I hadn't even seen the shadow of a paparazzi yet. Just as I was thinking of another way to approach them, my phone rang. It was an unfamiliar number. Hello. Excuse me, is this perhaps Mr. Young Sun Woo? It was an unfamiliar woman's voice. She sounded a bit flustered. Yes, that's me. You're the owner of the white minivan, correct? I'm sorry. I hit your van slightly by accident while parking. Oh ho. Was it this? I left in the middle of my physiotherapy and immediately went down to the parking lot. A young woman who was partly crouched and examining the back of my minivan jolted up. She wore a short skirt that emphasized her curves, slightly transparent coffee-colored stockings, and high heels. She gave off a different feeling from the female reporters I had seen until now. She was suspicious. Why would she hit my minivan when the parking lot was so empty? On top of that, she was a beauty. In fact, this part was more suspicious. What should I do? This seems like a new minivan. It'll pay the repair costs. I'm sorry. Well, if you properly fix it, then it's fine. Um, but. The woman brushed her hair behind her ear as she glanced at my face. After hesitating for a bit, she asked. Are you perhaps that person? 
the chief who manages Neptune and appeared on now, we not too long ago. I think you look like him, and you have the same name. The one people call Midass Hand. Though I wish the last part wasn't true, I am that person. The woman's expression brightened at my reply. Oh my god. It's my first time seeing a famous person. Her gaze was filled with excitement as she looked at me. My spine tingled because her gaze seemed like she was seeing a really famous person. The woman, who had been chattering about how she saw a bunch of clips of me on the internet and how this was so cool, soon asked. Um, excuse me. If you have time, could I buy you a cup of coffee? Coffee? I'm sorry for denting your minivan by accident and I'm a fan of MS. Lee Sangha as well. I saw every episode of Cat Guardian Ghost. Could you tell me a bit about MS? Lee Sangha. I absolutely won't tell anyone about it. Please. Her begging voice was overflowing with charm. Out of all the people I knew, Im Seo Young was the one who acted the most charmingly, yet even she wouldn't be able to compare to her if she was here. In a normal situation, a man would probably consider this as hitting jackpot, regardless of repair costs. They might even drink fish sauce readily. However, considering my situation, the more the woman clung to me, the more suspicious I became. I was almost certain at this point. Should I ask her bluntly now? Or should I dance to her tune? After thinking about which one would provide me with the most information, I decided to obtain what information I could get while drinking coffee. I couldn't fathom how they would react if I took a blunt approach considering they were a sly company that blocked all forms of communication. On top of that, I might really have to go to Hong Kong if I failed here so I proceeded more cautiously. Then let's have a cup of coffee since your song has fan. Thank you. Well, if she was an employee of the paparazzi company, then I should be thankful for taking the bait. The woman's name was Young Haisung though I couldn't tell if she was using her real name or not. Either way, Young Haisung led me to a small coffee shop across from the building. It was a cozy place with almost no customers perfect for conversing. The early topics of discussions were mostly trivial topics about our personal lives. I did my best to seem interested and humored her. Once the coffee cooled to an adequate degree, Young Haisung smiled purely as she asked. I saw the article regarding MS. Lee Song has new project. I hope that they film and air it quickly. Has the male lead not been decided yet? Netizens were chatting up a storm, asking who it is, but I haven't seen any articles confirming anyone. Yes, they haven't decided yet. ITLL be decided soon. Really? Who is it? Can't you tell me? Her eyes sparkled. A suspicion crossed my mind that she might be recording our conversation. She was also regularly checking her phone. I shrugged as I said. I can't carelessly tell people about it. There'll be a commotion if speculative articles pop up before someone is confirmed. I don't have anyone to tell this to. Who do the netizens think ITLL be? I asked instead of replying. Yung Haisung paused for a moment before answering. They've mentioned all the Korean stars that are currently resting right now. Isn't it Yun Tae Young? There's a good chance ITLL be Sung Dawan. I think ITLL be Park Dojin. She mentioned a few more names after that. However, unlike how she tried to read my expression when she spoke the first few names, the other names seemed to have been mentioned to fill out the selection. If DM Media handed information about drug abuse along with evidence to Star Search, then it meant they were chasing him for a while. It took a few months to get enough evidence for a love scandal so they shouldn't have been able to gather evidence so quickly on drug abuse, which must have been done much more secretly. Also, if they were still chasing around the actor in question, then they would undoubtedly know that he was in discussion to join royal family. I said with a smiling face. It's someone among the names you've mentioned. The person we're thinking about casting is the male lead. Uh, really? Yes, but there's a small problem so we're looking into it to see if it's okay to sign him. Yung Haisung flinched then quickly opened her mouth. A problem? What kind of problem? I really can't talk about it since it isn't a very good matter. ITLL be a big problem if rumors spread when we aren't certain. If it's bad, then is it a harmful rumor or something? 
Yung Hai-sung asked as if trying to glean any information from me. BR. Something vibrated. I thought it was my phone, but it was hers. After glancing at her phone screen, Yung Hai-sung jolted from her seat. Uh, it's my senior from work. It'll be right back after talking to him. Yung Hai-sung answered her phone as she went out to the vacant terrace. At the same time, my phone rang. The timing was truly strange. This person was a senior from work as well. I glanced through the glass window as I answered Kim Hyungjo's call. Yes, chief. Where are you right now? No, wherever you are, come to the company right now. Quickly. Just then, my eyes met Young Hyesung's through the windows. I didn't know why, but she was looking at me with a surprised expression. Pardon. In meeting some. Don't think about talking to a reporter and come back immediately. You're going to be in a bind if you talk to a reporter right now. Kim Hyunjo said while clicking his tongue. I think the uneasy news item you mentioned is this, but some crazy journalist trash published a scandal about Lee Sangha. What? A scandal? What sort of nonsense was this? Why a scandal all of a sudden? Did some crazy reporter try to pass off a fictional story as an article? Who's the other person? Who was there to be in a scandal with Lee Sangha? You. It's you. Pardon. I said it's you. Chapter, 116. A dating scandal with me. Sangha and me. If this was a joke, it wasn't funny. That's what I'm telling you. It was released without any notice. When I asked him a few more times because of how taken aback I was, Kim Hyunjo told me to check it myself and sent me a URL. When I clicked it, I was sent to an article. It was published a few minutes ago. Exclusive Lee Sangha, Secretly Dating Manager Young Sun Woo. Birth of a Celebrity Manager Couple. What a pile of crap. It wasn't a tabloid using initials or a speculative article. Our names were placed directly in the headline. I thought they might have posted a picture of Lee Sangha and me as evidence, but there wasn't anything like that. There were just a few lines of fiction. A fictional story about how Lee Sangha and my love secretly blossomed. There was a part about how Lee Sangha knew a lot of my personal information, like my birthday or hobby, during Star Manager. They also made it seem like her sticking to my back like a turtle shell foreshadowed our love. What dumbass wrote this kind of article? I immediately checked the author. Daily Fact Reporter Choi J. Moon. Damn Daily Fact. It was the publication that had called my home and requested an interview. I was wondering why they were annoying my family, so it was to write this crap of an article. The PR team is trying their best to manage the situation, but ITLL probably still spread quickly. Don't answer any calls from reporters, and immediately come to the company. I already told Sangha to cancel her schedule and come over as well. Kim Hyunjo groaned before asking. Hey, but don't tell me. What? About this article. That's not an article. It's nonsense. When I said this with a laugh, Kim Hyunjo's voice became lighter. I told him I'd come back to work immediately and hung up. At the same time, Young Hyesung, who came back from the terrace, sat down in front of me with smiling eyes. I cooled down what was burning up inside me with cooled coffee. If the woman in front of me wasn't there or if it wasn't for the paparazzi, I might have chucked my phone to the ground. I heard a courteous voice. Is there a problem? Your expression didn't seem very good while you were on the phone. A bit. It seems something good happened on your side though, seeing as your expression is bright. When I asked back, Young Hyesung's lips curled up slightly. Yes. Some new work came in. Ah, uh, work. But moving on, um chief, I have something I'm curious about. Her voice trailed on as if she was hesitating as she brushed her hair back. Her white neck was revealed below her jingling earrings. I could smell her sweet perfume even from here. Chief, do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't because I'm busy. My phone, which I had placed to the side, began ringing again. It would probably ring like crazy from now on. I muted my phone and shoved it in my pocket. The situation became urgent. 
now wasn't the time a long conversation. If things were going to crap, I needed a card I could use immediately. For example, the Korean star being discussed as our male lead was, in fact, a time bomb. Everything would go to if he was cast. This quality information and some evidence. I licked my lips slightly and asked. Ms. Yung Hai Sung, I also have a question I want to ask. I don't have a boyfriend. No, not that. Ah. I stared directly at Yung Hai Sung who bashfully blinked her eyes. Then I straightforwardly asked. Are you a member of the paparazzi? I quickly drove my car and returned to work. Unpleasant gazes landed on me. Was the scandal real? Is he really in that sort of relationship with Lee Sangha? If they were, how far did they go? Their gazes showed that they were dying to know the details. Nonsense was already spreading online. Perhaps it was thanks to the PR team's efforts, but the detail fact article came down immediately. Yet, social media was overflowing with screenshots made by quick-acting netizens. Lee Song has and my name were stuck in the real-time search rankings for a while now. Damn internet. Since the netizens were in a frenzy, other publications were constantly releasing spam articles as news. They were trying to get a piece of the pie since Daily Fact was the one who fired the shot, meaning they would be the first ones to be sued. I walked past them with a calm face. If I were to show my agitation, it would only serve to incite the shoal of piranhas. The fifth floor PR team office was no different from a contact center. Reporter Kim, what do you mean fact? It's a story fabricated to spin controversy about these two because they're trendy right now. A press release will be sent soon so don't waste your time and resources. We'll be distributing a press release soon. Yes, soon. Since people need to hear their side of the story. With one hand on their mice and the other holding their phones, Team Leader Park and the other employees were chatting away with agitated voices. Kim Hyunjo and Team 3 Leader gestured towards me from their table. I approached them and asked. Is the press release not ready yet? Isn't it best to express our side of the story as quickly as possible in scandals? Of course, even if we said that the story was nonsense, netizens would argue whether it was a fact or rumor. Still, it would be much better than spending our time doing nothing like now. This was because it would look like there was a delay in confirming the truth if our reaction was late. That would make the scandal seem even more real. The press release has been ready for a while, but we are waiting. What are we waiting for? Kim Hyunjo gestured upwards. Until we get a call from the CEO's office. The man responsible for the Daily Fact article is currently in his office. Just what was this? What did the Daily Fact reporter and CEO Beck Hansung have to talk about? Why? This isn't something that the CEO needs to personally take action for, right? It's just groundless nonsense. I wonder about that. The Team 3 leader said while crossing his arms. After talking with Daily Fact on the phone for a bit, he immediately set up an appointment and met with them. Seeing as even our legal team is in there, it seems he's planning on having Daily Fact make a correction. But will they? Kim Hyunjo asked as though they were in a meeting. Publications would rather be sued for defamation than release a correction. Saying how that would be embarrassing. Kim Hyunjo snorted as he kicked one of the table legs. Is it not embarrassing to write a fiction about a celebrity if they're bored? Don't they know how fatal a scandal is for a female celebrity? Those bastards. Why is Sangha taking so long? Try calling the recruit. At the Team 3 leader's words, I called him using my phone, which seemed to be bursting with calls and text messages. While waiting after hearing that they had just arrived in the parking lot, the recruit sent me a text. Chief, it seems that Sangha is very angry. After seeing the article, her mood is as cold as Siberia. I can't even start a conversation with her. Lee Sangha was angry. If the recruit noticed and told me about it, then it must mean that it was very noticeable. I frowned without realizing it. I was already enduring my urge to call Lee Sangha and ask if she was already since nothing good would come out of us calling each other right now. I waited for a bit while gripping my phone when Lee Sangha entered the office. Her face was chillingly stiff, 
so much so that it wouldn't be odd if it chipped and ice fell. I could understand why the recruit sent me that message. However, she didn't look angry to me. Rather, she seemed stricken with fear. Don't tell me she heard some nonsense on her way here. If I felt people's stares unpleasant, then, for a celebrity, a female celebrity to boot, their stares must have been much more direct. Or did she read some awful comment online? I should have told the recruit to not let her check her phone. I clicked my tongue as I asked. Were you surprised? A bit. Lee Sangha sat across from me. She normally would have sat next to me. Maybe it was because she was conscious of the scandal or acting cautiously in case Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader suspects, but she didn't even look at me. Since her current actions were even more suspicious, I tapped the table with my fingertips. ITL will be fine since the press release will be released soon. It seems the reporter wrapped me into this because there was no one else, but, that could actually have been better. If he had wrapped another celebrity into this, it would mean two companies would have to make a press release, making it twice as annoying. I laughed as if I was joking, and only then did Lee Sangha look at me and reply. That's true. I couldn't read what she was thinking this time. The team three leaders gaze alternated between Lee Sangha and me as he said. I'm asking for caution's sake, but there really isn't anything for me to worry about, right? Yes, it's all nonsense. Yes. Nonsense. I replied first, and Lee Sangha followed after while nodding her head. You have no hints about this scandal. None. It's a bolt out of the blue. Yes. A bolt out of the blue. Lee Sangha repeated once more. The Team 3 leader nodded. If there's something that crosses your mind, tell us right away. If a photo pops out suddenly. There's needs to be something for a photo to exist. There's nothing like that. Li Sangha, who had opened and closed her mouth, was late as she agreed. I added. It should be easy to photoshop a photo like Mr. Sung Dowen's incident last time. I'm with Sangha so much that we'll be in a two-shot whenever they point a camera at us. That's what I mean. It's obvious for a manager and his celebrity to be close yet it seems this happened because you both have such a close relationship. Some people in the company were concerned that it might be a little dangerous as well. While we are close, we aren't like that. And we won't be in the future as well. I said with a laugh. Lee Sangha nodded slowly. Just stay quiet in the meantime. Even if it ends quietly, a scandal is a scandal. Even when it's not, there will be people who think that there is fire where there is smoke and the paparazzi might follow you. The Team 3 leader nodded in agreement at Kim Hyunjo's words. Yeah. The Team 2 leader, that idiot, seemed to think this was an opportunity and went to ask the CEO if we should transfer you to his team. He seemed excited. Yeah, I knew that would come up. It was the worst case scenario I had thought of. Even if the scandal wasn't true, the company might not want to keep a risk as is. Although I expected it, I still ended up frowning. The Team 2 leader, I would screw him over big time one day. I clicked my tongue and looked at Lee Sangha. I couldn't tell what she was thinking, but she had a serious look on her face. To be honest, there were times when I thought about Lee Sangha in that way recently. I kept looking at her, suddenly thinking about her, and even though I told myself I needed to get it together or it would be troublesome, it wasn't easy. Still, I jolted to my senses because of this scandal. It would gloss over like this because I was the only one with a guilty conscience. If there really was something going on between Lee Sangha and me, I didn't even need to see the future to know what would happen. I shrugged while saying. It's just a nothing incident, why are people reacting like that? It makes me feel like I did something wrong. That's true, but we're just nervous. I guess I have no choice but to go on a few dates with a girl. The Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo chuckled lightly at my words. It finally looked like they cleared away all their suspicions. Do you even have a girl to go on a date with? Of course I do, I just don't have the time. Idiot, how lucky. Just what? We got a call from the CEO. Team leader Park's voice cut the Team 3 leader speech. The office became silent. 
As soon as team leader Park hung up after a short call, Kim Hyunjo asked. What did he say? They decided that Daily Fact would make a correction. And we're going to release a press release with that in two minutes. They are going to make a correction. What the heck? It seems things went well with the CEO. Anyways, it seems ITLL finally quiet down. And Sangha. Sangha. Lee Sangha, who was sitting somewhat gloomily, raised her head when team leader Park called her name. Yes. The CEO said for you to come up for a moment. I pressed the elevator button and glanced beside me. Lee Sangha stood still as she stared at the electronic display. It's probably nothing. Since there really wasn't anything, he'll probably just tell you to be careful of scandals and to not date anyone for the time being. If he says something else, just let me. Something like this will never happen again. Lee Sangha said while slightly biting her lower lip. I won't date anyone. It'll only work until I'm successful so. The elevator arrived at our floor. Lee Sangha looked at me while getting on the elevator as she continued. So I'm going to ask the CEO to not transfer you to another team. ITLL be more suspicious if you say that. He'll be thinking about that problem as well so leave that to me. You don't worry about a thing and just come back. He'll be waiting for you. I said while waving. Lee Sangha looked at me quietly until the elevator doors closed. I took my phone out once I confirmed the elevator stopped on the seventh floor. I called a phone number I had saved, and as soon as she answered, I said. M.S. Young Haisung. Should we make a deal? Chapter, 117. Just as I hung up the phone, the elevator to the side stopped accompanied by a mechanic sound. Did I press the button for that one too? When I looked inside, a person was already inside. He was an unfamiliar face to me, but seeing as his eyes widened at the sight of me, it seemed he knew who I was. Before the elevator doors closed, the man grumbled. Your company's great. It can instantly crush a honest article. He was the jerk reporter. As soon as I realized this, I jammed my arm between the doors. My company was good. An honest article. It seemed he was dissatisfied that the nonsense article he worked hard to write was going to be deleted, but if it was dissatisfaction, our side had more. I got on the elevator and said. Do you have any ill feelings towards Sangha or me? What ill feelings? I understand you're not in a good mood because of my article, that's my job. Also, a celebrity's every movement is newsworthy. It's not like you don't know this. Even if I acknowledge that there's nothing I can do about a celebrity's personal life being newsworthy enough to be an article. I just can't understand why you would publish an article of complete fantasy if you didn't possess any ill feelings towards us. The jerk frowned when he heard my words. I admit that I exaggerated a little, but it's not a complete fantasy. Then what part of your article is fact? Now, really. I'm already pissed at the fact I have to write a correction. Since the higher-ups are working out a deal, a powerless reporter like me has no choice but to do as they say, but why do you of all people act like you don't know? I already know what kind of relationship you have. Ah, uh, what is this relationship that I, the party involved, don't know about? You say that like you. The jerk began saying in an irritated voice before stopping. Then, with a flustered face, he looked at me and muttered. Air, then. Then. No, no. I really thought that the two of you were dating, but seeing your reaction, I realized that I might have been mistaken. If that's true, then what I wrote might actually be a fantasy. The jerk rambled incoherently before adding. To you. Although I waited in the lounge for a long time, there were no signs that Lee Sangha would be coming down. Did she have that much to talk about with CEO Beck Hansung? I was staring at the elevator when Kim Hyunjo came out from the stairs. Looking at me, he nodded. Did you tell Kwan Wu to drive Sangha home? Good job. Right now, it's best if. No. She hasn't come down from the CEO's office yet. What are you talking about? They were done talking ten minutes ago. Then where did she go? When I called her, her phone rang but she didn't pick up. 
There definitely wasn't an elevator that came down from the seventh floor. I sent her a message asking where she was before going up to the seventh floor. I couldn't find any trace of her. I opened the emergency exit door as well, but it was empty. Just as I was about to close the door, I discovered a familiar head on a stair landing. It was Lee Songa. She was tightly holding her phone with both hands and was crouched down as though she was embracing all the agony and suffering in the world by herself. It looked like she sighed as her slender shoulders moved up and down. Frowning, I was about to go down the stairs when I stopped. Lee Sangha was wiping her tears with her sleeves. After slapping both cheeks, she jolted up from her spot and ran down the emergency stairwell. Was she crying just now? Sorry, Appa. I was late because I had to go to the washroom. It seemed she actually went to the washroom as her face was clean. What did you talk about with the CEO? It was as you said. Be careful of scandals. Don't date people. Li Sangha replied with a faint smile. Was she acting in front of me? I thought she had no talent for lying because she would always be caught right after and tell the truth, but what was this? If I didn't see her in the emergency stairwell just now, I might not have noticed it. You. I swallowed my words. Employees were glancing at us. I couldn't say anything. It wasn't a good time to disappear somewhere with her either. Just as I thought I should order the recruit to take her home and call her later, Lee Sangha lowered her head slightly and said. I am sorry that I made things difficult for you because of the scandal, Appa. It's all my fault. What is it your fault? It's because of that reporter. If even if you aren't assigned to me, you will continue to be Neptune's manager. Also, they are going to assign you to an actor better than me. What? That's why if that happens, you don't need to worry about how I clung to you. So. What? I called her inside my minivan. Like always, she answered her phone after a few rings. Appa? There's no one listening now so continue what we were talking about before. I went straight to the point. Lee Sangha Intentional said in a calm voice. Though I clung to you so you wouldn't leave, there are other actors interested in you. Others besides Sun Chai Young. So. If they change who you're assigned to, they said they would assign you to an actor more famous and more experienced than me. So forget about how I clung to you. You don't have to worry about it. Just what did they talk about for her, who became nervous whenever the topic of changing teams came up, to say this? Although I knew this wasn't her true thoughts, I still felt emotional. It felt like the thing that had been proudly filling a part of me was deflating. Tapping the steering wheel, I said. Are you serious? Yes. Even though we won't be able to work on my personal schedule together, we can still work together through Neptune. Also, if I quickly become successful, I will take you, no, if you're alright with it, we can. Now look at that. Okay. I clearly heard your untruthful words so now tell me what you really think. These are my thoughts. No, they aren't. They are. What made you think this all of a sudden? Why? Do you not want to work with me? No. Her voice was deafening. A flustered voice that didn't know what to do followed. That's not it. It's not that I don't want to work with you, it's all my fault. I messed everything up. The scandal was because of me. So why is it because of you? Though I don't know what you talked about with the CEO, I told you to leave it to me because I had a plan. Pausing momentarily, Li Sangha said in a dragging voice. Even if you had a plan, it probably wouldn't work. You just don't know it, it's quite decent. It still probably won't work. The CEO saw the photo. Photo? What photo? The one that was going to be released after the scandal article but the CEO blocked. The Daily Fact reporter did say something about a deal. A photo of you and me? What do we have to hide? What kind of photo was it? After hesitating for a long time, in a voice that seemed like she was saying her last words, she confessed. When you were sleeping. When I was sleeping. I molested you. I was taken aback by this. Did I hear her correctly? What did you do? Moles. No, 
explain without using that word. So I did hear her correctly. Before, on the day we ended early in the morning, I touched your face while you were sleeping and a photo was taken of that. Why, no, though it is flustering, was there something on it? I, I also think I put my finger in your mouth. Oh, you did. Sorry, Appa. She said in a trembling voice like she was being executed after finishing her last words. Though I had countless things I wanted to ask her, I asked the most important question. The question I had held back last time. Sunha, do you perhaps Lee? A shout rang in my ears. A correction was published so was the scandal really a rumor? Jung Haisung asked while scooping the whipped cream off a brownie. Of course, it was. That's a shame. I was happy that something new came up. Although she licked her lips as though she was disappointed, she didn't seem to completely believe my words. Her gaze, looking at me, was filled with curiosity. Since it would do me no good talking to the paparazzi about my personal life, I immediately got the point. And the files? Ah, that. Jung Haisung's eyes narrowed. But how did you know that I was looking into a drug scandal? I was so curious about this that I couldn't sleep. I have a lot of friends with good hearing. That's strange. I also know a few people, and the only person who's especially close with you is reporter Park Wujong from G Today. This isn't something you can hear from a newbie reporter. Who could it be? I can't tell you that because it's a secret. I smiled brightly as I replied. Jung Haisung asked me a few more times before shaking her head, seemingly giving up. Then she took out a lipstick from her palm-sized purse. Here. What I wanted were the files. This is a USB drive. Ah. When I opened the lipstick lid, it really was a USB drive. I inserted it into my laptop to check and found photos I had been hoping for. Though these photos weren't absolute evidence, they were good enough for me to use. Since it could be leaked, don't save it separately on a phone or laptop. You don't have to worry about that. There aren't the best ones since you might hand them over to some other reporter. If I needed to gift a reporter a newsworthy item, I would have told them something I know. What good would it do for me if I made enemies out of the paparazzi? Well, now it's your turn. Jung Haisung twirled her fork as she said this. Look into Mr. Sung Dawen. This was the information that had the lowest risk yet highest leverage among what I knew. As expected, Jung Haisung's eyes glittered. Since he's a time bomb that could explode at any moment, ITLL probably be best if you looked into him quick. I added before putting the USB drive in my pocket and standing up. With a smiling face, Jung Haisung asked. But since we already handed Star Search the proper files and told them about the leak, they'll probably publish an article within a day or two. Then the discussions regarding royal family's male lead would fall through so is there a reason why you need those files now? I shrugged as I said. I want to show off. As soon as I arrived at work, I went to find Kim Hyunjo. Although Jung Haisung said it could take one or two days, I had to move fast because it wasn't certain. Chief, I have something urgent to tell you. What is it? Are the team leader and team leader park, no, is the CEO here today? When I asked this, a strange expression flashed on his face. He examined my complexion and said. Yeah, they are probably all in one room. The CEO's office. His office? A person from well-made production came. Even though a correction was published stating it was a mistake, it seemed they were concerned since it was a scandal. The timing was great. That's great. What is? What I want to talk about actually relates to them as well. Kim Hyunjo's expression became odd when he heard me. Hey, if you're going to talk about the scandal, just wait a bit. Young Hoon Hyung said he would talk to the CEO. I understand you feel frustrated and victimized, but rather than you personally taking action, it's better. It's not about my scandal. I have something I want to show them. Show them? Yes, this. When I took out the USB drive from my pocket and showed Kim Hyunjo, his expression became even weirder. His face showed that he thought my mental state wasn't very good right now. It's a USB drive. I inserted it into my laptop and showed him its contents. 
looking at a few photos while tilting his head, Kim Hyunjo's eyes suddenly widened. Then he opened and closed a few times before asking. Hey, is this? It's him. Oh my god. I immediately headed to the seventh floor. The Team 3 leader, having received a message from Kim Hyunjo telling him to come out right now because it was urgent, was waiting for me in front of the CEO's office. He came over and his gaze alternated between Kim Hyunjo and me before clicking his tongue. Yeah, so I understand you guys are frustrated. That's not it, Hyung. This is the matter at hand. I showed the Team 3 leader my laptop. A real scandal. The Team 3 leader looked puzzled at my words as he stared at the screen. Soon, his eyes widened. His expression was almost one of astonishment. Wait, is T. It is. Kim Hyunjo, who seemed quite out of it, said. The Team 3 leader's mouth opened. That's what I said. After staring at the screen, the Team 3 leader suddenly jolted to his senses. Lucky charm, you, how did you, know, is this real? Yes. Let's go in. The Team 3 leader swallowed his saliva, opened the office door, and entered first. I saw a few familiar faces through the open door. General Manager Sung from Well Made Production and their head of marketing. Across from them sat the director. Though I didn't know why he was there, the Team 3 leader was smiling next to him. And, finally, CEO Baek Han Sung. While the Team 3 leader was quietly informing the CEO, one by one, the other people's gazes fell on me. Finally, CEO Baek Han Sung looked at me as well. His composed face contained a faint hint of surprise. I took a big step into the office. Chapter 118 What brings you here when we didn't call you? The Team 2 leader was the first to ask. Since I was interrupting a meeting, he would have been more direct under normal circumstances. However, he looked quite happy like a person who was finally about to poop after being constipated. Seeing his smiling face, I could figure out what kind of discussion they were having. I turned my gaze and looked at the people from Well Made Production. An awkward expression flashed on General Manager Sung and the marketing head's faces. It was a different attitude compared when they were happy that promoting their drama would be a breeze when I became a hot topic. If I was empty handed, I would have felt slightly upset. Still, my lips turned crooked at my displeasure. Why are you here? I came to do my job. My job. I have something to show you regarding Sangha and Royal Family's incident. When I calmly said this, the well made production employees looked awkward. The Team 2 leader snorted. So calm at a time like this. Don't you know that you should lie low until things die down? Sit down comfortably. Don't just stand there. CEO Beck Hansung cut him off. He gestured towards me. Let's hear what he has to say. CEO. The Team 2 leader shut his mouth while unable to control his expression. It seemed he couldn't bring himself to contradict the CEO as he just gave me an unfavorable look. It seemed this person didn't like anything I did, no, it seemed he just didn't like me in general. Well, that feeling was mutual. I handed CEO Beck Hans on my laptop and sat in an empty seat. An uncomfortable silence hung in the air as he looked at the small laptop screen. At first, people glanced at my laptop out of curiosity, but it seemed they felt it was inappropriate to crane their necks to see as their gazes soon fell on me. Besides the director. He didn't care and craned his neck out to see it. The marketing head at Well Made Production explained their circumstances with an apologetic face. I'm sorry things became like this, Chief Young. While we benefited from you these past few days, scandals are double-edged swords. When a scandal breaks out regarding an actress, the drama's immersion might drop, and in extreme cases, the chemistry between actors may suffer. General Manager Sung smacked his lips and added. We don't think there will be any problem since a correction will be made, but our investors are quite worried considered the amount of money being moved around. If you have someone else take care of MS. Lee Song has personal schedule until things die down, we think ITLL be easier to persuade our investors. Of course, if it's something like that. The Team 2 leader's face brightened at their words. 
I could clearly see that he intended on using this opportunity to change Lee Song as manager completely and not until things die down. The Team 2 leader checked CEO Beck Hansung's reaction. CEO Beck Hansung was only staring at the screen with a delighted expression. It seemed the Team 2 leader took his expression as an approving one as he readily nodded his head. Since issues regarding scandals are laid out in the contract, it is only proper we handle it properly so that there aren't any rumors. It's not like this is our first time doing business with Wellmade either. The Team 2 leader chattered happily like a fish in water. We didn't even need a meeting for a matter like this. Still, isn't this a problem regarding WU's personnel? It's not like an actor is changing. All we're doing is changing the chief assigned to her. Well handle this without any hiccups through an internal meeting and make sure that something like this doesn't happen again. If the team leader says so, then we're relieved. Standing behind CEO Beck Hansung, the team three leader's brows wriggled. His expression read, he's enjoying himself. My expression was probably the same. However, neither of us cut into their conversation. Because there would soon be an entertaining scene. Well, don't worry about this matter any longer. You already have more than enough on your plate with trying to decide on the male lead. You need to hurry up and sign someone considering the filming schedule. General Manager Sung clicked his tongue and nodded his head. I was going to bring that up. When Yoon Tae Kyung and Park Dojin both said they wanted to do the project, we thought that we had hit jackpot, but choosing between the two is tough. The staff and investors are divided on who to choose. Of course, it's a shame to lose either one of them since they are both at the top in regards to global Korean stars. Amused, I perked my ears at their conversation. Since I already handed the evidence to CEO Beck Hansung, I no longer had to rush. I was also very excited to see their expression, especially the Team 2 leaders, when they learned that one of those precious actors would ruin everything. What are your thoughts, Team Leader? The Team 2 leader rubbed his beard at General Manager Sung's question. Yoon Tae Young has a good personality, and Park Dojin seemed like a good person as well when I had dinner with him last time. It's a shame you have to choose one of the two, but no matter who you choose, it's certain that the drama will be a success. That's true. Our concerns seem like complaints when compared to our peers who are having a hard time even casting people. What the heck were you saying when Ruin was dangling in front of you? I laughed along with them as they laughed in satisfaction. Ha ha ha. When the marketing head saw me laugh, she asked. How about you, Chief Young? Which one do you think is best? Why was she asking me? Did she think that I had no feelings because I was laughing at a time like this? When I showed my displeasure, she examined my expression, thinking that she made a mistake. Since she tried to retract her words and apologize, I simply shrugged my shoulders and replied. Well, it's fine. That was going to be my condition anyways. I think you need to undoubtedly cast Mr. Yoon Tae Young. The marketing head and general manager Sung looked at me strangely. The Team 2 leader had an expression that read, What nonsense is he saying now? Before suddenly frowning. He quickly stared at the laptop that CEO Beck Hansung passed to the director. Wait. Young Sun Wu, don't tell me that your job you were referring to just now was regarding Royal Family's male lead? It is. It is? Yes. I nodded while hoping my nonchalant expression would get his panties in a bunch. The Team 2 leader opened and closed his mouth as if at a loss for words, and those from well-made production looked taken aback. After glancing at them, the Team 2 leader tightly clenched the sofa's armrest. He looked like he would shout if they weren't present. Boiling with anger, he said. It seems you're mistaken because people around you call you mid-ass hand and tell you that you have good senses, but do you think this is something you can just come in and comment on? I glanced at CEO Beck Hansung. He too was staring at me. It was still difficult to figure out what he was thinking. If I were to guess, he seemed to be amused. Maybe something like, I wonder where someone like him came along. The Team 3 leader behind him was giving me an amused look as well. Since it seemed like they would let things slide if I rolled my tongue a little, I smiled and said. Well, like you said, this isn't something I can comment about, but I couldn't just let things be when the drama might flop at this rate. 
then even Sangha will be affected. What? Flop. If they cast Mr. Park Dojin, the drama might completely flop. Maybe it was because I said it so casually, but they all seemed to suspect they heard me wrong. While the Team 2 leader opened and closed his mouth like a bearded goldfish, General Manager Sung, who was first to recover, said in a serious expression. The drama flopping, what are you saying? Why would royal family flop? A scandal will break out. A scandal? If it's a scandal, then. While mumbling, a frown creased General Manager Sung's forehead. M.S. Lee Sangha and. That's a rumor. Also, how could a drama flop with a scandal like that? It's not like a dating scandal is something huge. It has to be at least a drug scandal for it to be huge. The air in the office froze. Their eyes went wide as they wore shocked expressions, especially the Team 2 leader. He was quite a sight. Enjoying his dumbfounded expression, I looked at the director who was holding my laptop. Astonished, the director asked. So the guy in these photos is really Park Dojin? Yes, it is. Oh my. A druggy lead in a Korean-Chinese project. If this broke out while we were broadcasting, then we would have suffered greatly and the drama would have been a complete failure. People in the office jumped to their feet. Then they hastily gathered next to the director. Whenever there was a click, their faces gradually grew more shocked. What what is this? Is this really that Park Dojin idiot? I, I think so. Even though it's blurry, the outline of his face and his facial features are. What do you mean I think so? M.S. Kyung Hee, did you know about this? If I knew, I would have told you already. This is my first time seeing this. This crazy idiot, he shouldn't have kept quiet about something like this. While General Manager Sung and the marketing head's faces alternated between pale and red, the Team 2 leader opened and closed his mouth with his gaze fixated on the screen. When he looked at me with confusion and disbelief, I simply shrugged. The director, having handed them the laptop, looked at me and said. Lucky Charm, where did you hear about this? Hmm, I'm also curious about that. CEO Beck Han Sung, who had been quiet all this time, added. The Team 3 leader also said. Yeah, how did you find this when not even rats or birds knew about it one? Even if rats and birds didn't know about it, the paparazzi did. I got it directly from the paparazzi. The director was taken aback by my words. The paparazzi. You received this directly from the paparazzi. You said you were going to meet reporters or something, so it was this? It looked like the Team 3 leader heard a few things from Kim Hyunjo. Hmm it seemed now was the time to show off. I was looking around to make sure there wouldn't be any problems because this was an important next project for Sangha when I came across some unpleasant information. I asked around and found this. Look at this wonderful charm. The director came up to me and patted my shoulder as he laughed. Just then, stammering, the Team 2 leader cut in. This this is really Park Dojin. You can't say with 100% cert. Since it seemed like he didn't want to face reality, I said with a brighter smile than before. These aren't the best shots. The paparazzi has better photos. They'll probably be published soon. If Park Dojin was cast, I think Star Search of Hong Kong was planning on releasing it when Royal Family was at its peak, but since this information was leaked because of me, they'll probably release it sooner. I told them what I knew. The color drained from the two well-made production people's faces, and when I mentioned Star Search, their faces went pale. They looked at me with gazes filled with various emotions then looked at CEO Beck Hansung. After a long time, they finally recollected themselves. Chief Young, CEO Beck Hansung, will contact you soon. After tightly holding my hand and asking for CEO Beck Hansung's understanding, they quickly ran out to the office. I heard the sounds of them on the phone growing distant. Something about stopping everything regarding Park Dojin's contract immediately and to keep a lid on it so that it doesn't leak to the press. To hurriedly schedule a meeting to resolve this before the investors are shaken by this news. Stuff like that. The only ones left in the office were CEO Beck Hansung, the director, Team 3 leader, and me. Also, 
a red-faced Team 2 leader staring at the laptop screen. The Team 3 leader smiled crookedly as he said. What? You had dinner with Park Dojin and he seemed like a good person. What good person? What were you going to do if we signed an exclusive contract with him? My, my. Just thinking about it sends chills down my spine. How can I trust your eyes now? The Team 2 leader couldn't utter a word despite being harshly mocked. Let alone arguing back, he looked more urgent to figure out a way to save his skin. CEO Beck Hansung tapped his sofa's armrest as he said. Team 2 leader. Yes, yes, CEO. Take your hands off Lee Song has matter now. Don't bring up changing her manager. CEO Beck Hansung said slowly yet firmly before looking at me and saying. Regarding Lee Songa, I don't think there'll be a chief better than Yung Sun Wu in Team 2. After a storm had gone by. Looking like he was running away, the Team 2 leader was first to leave the CEO's office. I felt refreshed. I hoped I didn't have to see him for a while. The director and the Team 3 leader chattered noisily. Of course, they were talking about me. I answered their questions as vaguely as possible and took my laptop and the USB drive. Then I looked at CEO Beck Hansung. He had been observing me for a while now. With a gaze that tingled my spine. I cleared my throat. I planned on telling Lee Sangha of today's victory once I received a definite answer regarding my position. This was because I had to sit her down in front of me and ask her a few questions. Just as I was about to speak. You two can go and do your work. CEO Beck Hansung said first. Chief Young, I hope you can stay behind so we can talk. It's been a while. Chapter, 119. This was our second meeting in private. He had asked how I knew about Sung Dawan's problem previously. It seemed like he would bring up something regarding Park Dojin or Lee Sangha. I did my best to prepare for whatever question he would ask. How old are you? I didn't expect this question. I'm 28. That's young. Any hobbies? I like watching movies and dramas. Why was he suddenly asking about my life? He asked me a few more random questions afterwards. CEO Beck Hansung's voice and demeanor were always calm. Yet, I answered with a straight back because he still gave off an imposing feeling. Do you golf? No, I have never tried it. Hmm, he'll introduce you to someone so try learning it. It's good if you do. Then of course I had to learn it. I had to go even if I didn't have enough time to sleep or eat. Bowing, I readily accepted his offer. Having already heard that those who held high positions in broadcasting companies and agencies discussed important details on the golf course, I had planned on learning it in the future anyways. I heard you refused to transfer to Team 2. Thinking this was the main topic, I clenched my clasped hands once before replying. It's exhausting if you don't get along with your superiors. That's also why I became independent. This was something I hadn't heard from his interviews. I plan to divide the management business department even further in a few years. He continued. There will be new teams. The number of team leaders will increase as well. I've been observing a few experienced chiefs to develop into team leaders rather than selecting people externally. Someone who is well connected. Someone who does his job well. And someone with skill and knows how to make deals. I nodded my head as I listened when CEO Beck Hansung didn't hesitate as he said. Just do as you have been. Then he'll give you a team of your own. Give me what? The answers I had prepared in my mind were swept away. I forgot to maintain my calm, relaxed expression as I looked at CEO Beck Hansung with a blank expression. My own team. CEO Beck Hansung smiled faintly. Yeah, your team. I went to the washroom as soon as I exited his office. I held on to the sink as I let out the breath I had been holding in. I vaguely remembered that CEO Beck Hansung talked about a lot of things including Lee Sangha, but there was only one thing that filled my head. My own team. My team composed of my actors, my celebrities, and my people. It was like a magic word. Just thinking about it made it hard to breathe as though I had just sprinted at full speed. 
I felt proud and moved when I received my business card with the position chief written on it, but the position team leader was one that felt incomparably distant to that of a chief, especially with my current experience. Get it together. I washed my hands with cold water and slapped my cheeks a few times. Just as I saw my dazed face reflected in the mirror, I felt like I stumbled and the world became black. I was sitting in a plush chair that seemed to bury me in its cushions. I was wearing an expensive suit and had my legs crossed with my hands clasped on top of my knee. My clear vision felt unfamiliar. So it was that. My fixed future. The future where I was the CEO of a management company. How long had it been? I heard that WU CEO Beck Hansung was your role model in the past. I heard a woman's cautious voice. My vision swayed and I saw the two women sitting across the table. They were Reporter Song and Reporter Park, no, Director Park. He was. My future self replied. It was moderately smooth and leisurely. I have never met him before so I'm curious what kind of person he was. Director Park seemed to reminisce the past as she said. He was one of the main role models of young people working in the management business. He was a self-made man who made his one-person company into a major one within ten years. The press loved him since he was a successful young businessman. Now that I think about it, CEO Jung seems quite a bit similar to him. Director Park's black lips curved upwards. I tilted my head. Is that so? Yes, you both have numerous similar traits. Ah, besides your impression. I suddenly recalled CEO Beck Hansung, who I had met in his office moments ago. My future self was similar to him. This perked my curiosity. I glanced around to see if I could see myself reflected on something. But why did you storm out of your role model's company? Storm out. I was surprised for a moment, but when I thought about it, it was obvious. I had to have left WU to establish my own company and become a CEO. But to say I stormed out rather than I left gave me a bad feeling. My future self replied. I didn't like his methods. His methods? I was young then so I must have become disillusioned while observing him. I felt disillusioned by CEO Beck Hansung's methods. I couldn't even begin to guess what had happened. I didn't even know if something like that would occur or not. I had already changed the present so much. The situation I was currently in compared to six months ago, and even I had changed immensely as well. The young Sun Wu being interviewed right now was WU's lucky charm, didn't become a chief at 28, and definitely wasn't told that he would be given his own team by CEO Beck Hansung. Director Park joined in. You regretted it after pompously leaving WU, didn't you? Of course. My future self said with a smile. I would have grown much more quickly if I had continued to work under CEO Beck. After leaving, I realized the cold hard truth. That this industry was filled with so many people who were black to their stomachs that CEO Beck was considered gray. What was he saying? It seemed like I wasn't the only confused as reporter Song asked instead. What do you buy gray? Back then and even now, this place known as the entertainment world dyes people black. The higher up you go, the harder it is to endure while staying white. But if you become too black, then you become trash like the pure star people. It's really difficult trying to stay gray amongst them. Ah, then are you currently gray? I felt the muscles near my lips move subtly. Then, with a low laugh, my future self said. Probably. A drop of water ran down my cheek and dripped from my chin. When I came to my senses, I was looking at my face reflected in the mirror. I was back in the present. I turned on the cold water, washed my face, and brushed my wet hair to the side. The future was odd the more I thought about it. The futures I had seen were always inhospitable, but they seemed like they wanted to tell me something. This time, it was ambiguous. Thinking about it intently for a bit before stopping. I didn't plan on storming out of the company right now anyways. Like what my future self said, staying in WU would allow me to become more successful more quickly than suffering on my own. This was also one of my new goals after I started changing my future. Only, a single sprout of doubt budded in my mind. My future self. 
what kind of person was I twenty years in the future? I became curious about that. I pressed the code in the keypad and opened the front door. It opened a few centimeters before halting with a thud. There was a chain. Who is it? If it's Sun Wu Appa, tell us your nickname. Snake, snake, what kind of snake? Stop speaking nonsense and open the door. It is you. I'm Seo Young opened the door wide with smiling eyes. You weren't trailed by reporters, right? There aren't any reporters outside, right? You have to be careful. If you slip up, the paparazzi might snap a picture of you. We're now a girl group whose every move is newsworthy. Do you have full makeup on in case someone takes a picture of you? My naked face is drab because I couldn't sleep due to our busy schedule. She then pouted her glossy lips. I looked at the other girls. Lee Taehee was slumped on the sofa, uncertain whether she was alive or dead, like always, and LJ was doing sit-ups on the floor next to her. We tried to stop her as much as we could. LJ said while wiping the sweat from her forehead. She's being such a pain. Dummy, who's curious about your every move? The only one among us that paparazzi will follow is Lee Sangha. Now that I thought about it, one person was missing. But where is Sangha? Did she leave? She's in her room. She was going in and out of it just moments ago. Im Seo Young tilted her head. She somehow always knew when you were coming so she'd be out here watching the front door, but why is she so quiet today? Hey, Lee Sun. When I'm Seo Young opened her door, a sound of something breaking resounded. Oh my god, what the heck? Are you okay? So sorry. I'm fine. Lee Sangha rubbed her forehead as she walked out. Her forehead was red. She didn't seem fine. What were you doing standing behind your door? I was on my way out. She replied as she glanced in my direction. She opened and closed her mouth a few times before firmly keeping it shut. She tottered out and took out a bucket of ice cream with her name written on it from the freezer. Then she crouched down next to the sofa and began eating it. Lee Taehee moved her arm to stroke Lee Song has hair. She's acting like that because she's stressed. Im Seo Young said as she shook my arm. Lee Songha bluntly said. No, I'm eating it because I want to. Like hell you are. Do you know how many meals you had since the scandal broke out? Yesterday and the day before, you ordered three night time meals instead of sleeping. She didn't sleep. When I asked, everyone besides Lee Sangha nodded their heads. She didn't sleep a wink. She didn't care much when the scandal with the punchline member broke out, but this time, it liked the world's ending. She would lie in the living room early in the morning, mumbling, dummy, dummy, she's like a haunting spirit. LJ and Im Seo Young clicked their tongues and said in a quiet voice. Lee Taehee got up from the sofa, came over, and asked. I heard that song has manager might change because of the scandal, when will it be decided? It already has been. Lee Song has shoulders flinched. Eyes wide, the girls asked. Really? What's going to happen? What do you mean what's going to happen? Of course, I'm still going to be assigned to her. Lee Sangha turned her head so quickly that I could almost hear the wind. Her eyes were wide like she couldn't believe what she was hearing. Her lips were slightly apart. She hastily abandoned the ice cream bucket and spoon she was hugging and came over to me. Really? Yeah. Ho how. I told you I had a plan and to leave it to me. To be honest, I had been slightly uneasy, but I didn't show it. I personally heard the CEO's response. Even in the future, you are an actress under my care. You're actress. Color flushed on her pale white face. Her eyes curved and her firmly shut lips squirmed upwards. I suddenly recalled what M. Seo Young had said. Her expression was exactly that of someone who heard that the world wouldn't be collapsing after they had been preparing for it. Also, she looked at me like I had somehow saved the world. It was an incredible expression. If this was a scene in a drama or movie, I would have immediately screen captured it and used it as my laptop and phone's backgrounds. Thinking about this, I recalled something I had to ask her. Sangha, I have something I want to ask you. 
Yes, ask me anything. The picture you mentioned. The color drained from her face. Avoiding the gazes of the other girls, we entered Lee Songha's room. Lee Songha resembled someone who was going to the guillotine. Hmm, so you touched my face. I think so. What do you mean I think so? Why did you do it? She glanced at my expression before gulping and saying. It was out of impulse. It was night, you were sleeping, and for some reason, I was curious about it that night. I wasn't in my right mind. That momentary impulse beat out my reasoning and lead to me doing that. I looked it up on the internet and apparently, this occasionally happens due to hormones. Hormones. Yes. It's all because of hormones. I looked at her with a dumbfounded expression, and she, who pushed her hormone-driven impulse story, avoided my gaze. Though it's because of my hormones, I am very sorry for molesting you. You can touch my face if you like. Don't say that anywhere else. ITLL cause a huge fuss. I want. I rubbed my chin a couple times before asking again. All you did was touch my face and put your finger in my mouth. It is. I saw the pictures in the CEO's possession. She flinched. She definitely flinched just now. I was waiting for her to confess on her own after taking the bait, but Lee Sangha kept her lips firmly shut before saying. There's no way that's true. That's really all. She didn't fall for it. I let out a short breath while asking. Sangha. You know, do you really not Lee? I don't. Lee Sangha shouted, cutting me off. She even shook her head. You really don't, right? I don't. Her voice was quite serious. No, it wasn't just her voice, her expression was as well. The way she looked directly at me was also serious. I'm not going to like anyone and just work. I'm not going to date until I become successful enough to take responsibility. That's why you don't have to worry about it. Li Sangha seemingly vowed before taking steadfast steps to her bed. She then quickly jumped into her sheets. Then I'm going to sleep now. Have a safe trip back. Okay, rest well. I came out to the living room as though I was repelled by something. Even though I clearly asked her and heard her reply, my head was slightly complicated. I decided to think about it on my way back and said my farewell to the girls. The girls saw me off at the entrance as usual. Looking around, Im Seo Young tilted her head and shouted. Lee Songa. Appa's leaving. There was no reply. What's she doing? She's asleep. The girls blinked when they heard. She's asleep when you're leaving. She is. The one who always sticks next to you. What the heck? You said she didn't sleep for two days. Don't wake her up and let her be. I waved and left their home. I continuously thought about it until I got in my minivan. My emotions were all over the place. Should I say I was relieved yet disappointed? Distracted? I glanced up the apartment building before clicking my tongue and starting my car. It seemed that my hormones were running amok today as well. As soon as it became quiet outside her room, Lee Sangha kicked away her blanket and jolted up. Then she propped her chin on her window and looked down. She saw a minivan parked under the streetlights. The entrance lights turned on and she saw a familiar head. Lee Sangha quietly looked out her window until the minivan grew so distant that she could no longer see it in the darkness. Chapter 120 A hurricane had landed. A gigantic one. Wow! Big news! Did you read the article published by Star Search? The one where Park Dojin was caught smoking drugs by the paparazzi? Who hasn't seen that? The photo evidence was absolute. Two women chatted while getting on the elevator. It wasn't strange. Park Dojin's drug scandal swept through the country and abroad as soon as it was published. It was a hot topic online and offline. There was something about a police investigation. Do you think he'll go to jail? There's a huge fuss about it in China. He's completely doomed with this scandal. I bet he would have to pay tens of billions of won in damages once he's cut from national and international s. We were almost pulled into it too. 
the content department was planning on signing him for a new proj. The whispering woman stopped talking once she glanced at me. She tilted her head as she looked at me. Her expression showed that she saw me from somewhere. Were sunglasses no longer enough? Did I have to wear surgical masks and hats like celebrities? The elevator soon arrived on the eighth floor. I checked the panel that read well-made production content production department and got off. As expected of a place that had been directly hit by a hurricane, everyone was unbelievably busy. I looked around when I heard a voice. Excuse me, I came to meet Director Sung. To show him our rookies. A female employee sighed when she heard the glasses-wearing man in his late thirties then she said. Do you have an appointment? That's not it, but I couldn't get in contact with him because he's so busy. I came over to say hello since I've also done a project with Director Sung in the past. If you just give me ten minutes, I just want to show him our rookies' profiles. If you leave me your contact information, he'll pass it on to him. He currently can't meet anyone because he's busy dealing with an internal matter. He even cancelled all the meetings he had scheduled today. The speaking employee glanced at me. And what is the purpose for your visit? I also came to see Director Sung, but he'll schedule another date then. I was about to turn back when the employee's eyes widened as she said. Excuse me. Please wait. Are you young? Chief Young. A loud voice erupted behind me. When I turned around, Director Sung, the marketing lead, and a few other employees were making their way towards me. The black beneath their eyes showed they were firmly struggling with the Park Dojin scandal. Director Sung placed his hand on my back. You should have called me when you were downstairs. Then I would have sent someone. Ah, I just came up because you were in the middle of a call. I was calming our Chinese investors. Let's not stay standing and go over to our meeting room. He gestured with his hand and led the way. Director Sung, I was in AAP Entertainment in the past. The glasses-wearing man hurriedly introduced himself. I came to introduce you to the rookies I've been taking care of for royal family. Ten minutes, no, if you just give me five minutes. Sorry. I'm too busy right now. Director Sung said while clicking his tongue. A male employee next to him joined in. Since the directing team casts for minor roles and extras, if you give us their profiles, they'll send them there. If the directing team finds anyone they like, they'll contact you. The glasses-wearing man clung and attempted to ask director Sung to lend him a bit of his time a few more times, but he handed the file containing the profiles to the male employee in the end. It's okay if it's a minor role with no dialogue. Please. The man bowed deeply. I coincidentally met his gaze. When I greeted him, a deep valley appeared between his brows. He looked at me for a moment with mixed emotions before greeting me as well. Then he turned around and left. Now, now, come in. When I entered a large meeting room, Director Sung personally pulled out a chair for me. Director Sung, the marketing lead, and the other well-made production employees sat across from me. All had smiling faces. Director Sung shook his head as he grasped my hand. I am truly indebted to you. If we cast Park Dojin, broadcasted the drama, and the scandal broke out then, we would have all been screwed. I was scared to death. Just thinking about it makes my vision go black. His stumpy fingers tap on the back of my hand. From now on, while we're proceeding with the project, let me know any time if you need anything. I will consider you as my number one priority. I made a wry smile inwardly. I smirked just thinking about how Director Sung would have treated me if I didn't tell him about Park Dojin's scandal in advance. It probably wouldn't be much different from the glasses-wearing man from before. No, since I was useful as a way of promotion, I probably would have been treated better than that. Anyways, every day in this industry was a roller coaster. Though it wasn't like I wasn't aware of that. I smiled as I said. Then, without refusing, should we talk? Then he'll consider that you consent to adjusting the schedule like so. Yes, don't worry about it. Seeing the readily nodding director sung, I said. Right, I also heard you were accepting demo tracks for the OST. We've almost received a hundred songs already. 
We need to pick good songs if we're going to line them up on the music charts. Did you decide on your lineup of singers? Not yet. We want to cast talented singers. He trailed off, seemingly having understood my intentions. I took out a USB drive from my bag and handed it to him. She's Lee Tae-hee, the leader of Neptune. She's really great at singing. Ah, uh, I heard Satellite. The one that's been stuck at first on the music charts for weeks now. Tae-hee's the one who wrote and composed that song. I thought it would be difficult for you to properly judge her singing talent because Neptune songs are divided into different parts so I added a few solo cover songs Tae-hee sang. Director Sung licked his lips as he received the USB drive. I think ITLL be great for marketing since she's in the same group as MS. Sangha. It's a waste to use her only for marketing. I'm not so stubborn as to ask you to give a track to someone without talent. Whoever the album lineup consists of, she won't drag you down. Listen to it with the music director and contact me if you're interested. I said smoothly. Director Sung's complexion brightened. Since he owed me a huge favor, had probably give me a track if I pushed him, but there was no reason to reduce his debt with this. Since the mood was positive, after setting things up like this, I was confident everything else would fall into place with her talent. Okay, let's do that. I have a lot of trust in your words. Director Sung said while laughing. I suddenly heard a vibration. The employees, who had been listening to Director Sung and my conversation, read the mood as they quickly checked their phones. I took out my phone to check whether it was mine as well. Sorry, it's mine. The marketing lead apologized. That moment, there was another phone vibrated. And another, phones vibrated here and there. The phone in my hand was vibrating as well. What is it? Did something happen? Oh my god. A scandal. Another scandal broke out. The marketing lead, who was the first to check, shouted. Director Sung was surprised like someone sick of scandals. A scandal? Why? Did Park Dojin do something else? No, it's not Park Dojin. Oh my god. What's this? I thought that Park Dojin scandal would be the biggest one this year. Why? A different scandal broke out. Who is it? The marketing lead glanced at me. I soon understood what scandal this woman was referring to. Sung Dowen. As expected. When I checked my phone, I was contacted by reporter Park Woo Jong, Kim Hyunjo, and a few others. When I checked the attached URL Kim Hyunjo sent me, it was an article with the word exclusive in huge letters in its headline. It mentioned Sung Dowen's dirty private life, one where he secretly attends sex parties and acted perverted. It also clearly summarized his problems with Pure Star, his previous company. Young Haesung, that woman. She was quick to investigate. Let's see. I had confirmed that his exclusive contract with WU had long since been dissolved. No one knew that I had figured out Sung Dowen's secret, and obviously, they wouldn't know that I made a deal with the paparazzi. Though the quick-witted CEO Beck Hansung did linger in my mind. While thinking this, I received a call. It was Yung Haesung. I excused myself from Director Sung, who was murmuring while reading the article, and exited the meeting room. I immediately answered the phone. It's Yung Sun Wu. The article's been published. Yes, I saw it. I swallowed my urge to say that I didn't expect it to be released so soon. Even though you said it was a time bomb that could explode at any time, I didn't know it would explode this quickly. Did you leak this information to them as well? That article. It was G today who broke the news. What did she say? I quickly checked the article. The site address and the press mentioned in the author line wasn't DM Media. There wasn't any mention of Star Search either. It was G today. The publication where reporter Park Wujong worked. I was curious if you leaked the information to that rookie reporter. That's not true. I clearly said. Did the new break out because it was naturally time to like in the original future? Director Park from the future didn't mention that the scandal was published by her publication. Then did the future change? Why? If it changed, 
I assumed it was definitely because of Jung Haisung. Why was it G today all of a sudden? Since it's already done, it'll take my hands off Sung Daoan's matter. Jung Haisung said in a mumbling voice. It seems that I gave you information that was too close to its expiry date. It wasn't a bad deal. We confirmed that your information is real and that it was even a huge deal. Let's help each other from now on. I want to be one of your friends with good hearing. I'd be happy too. Especially being friends with a reporter, more so if she was a member of the paparazzi that took quick actions. After hanging up, I called reporter Park Wujong this time. When I brought up Sung Dawan, reporter Park Wujong was restless as she said. I would have let you know if I knew about it ahead of time, but this isn't something we personally cover. It suddenly landed on our director's hands today and was immediately sent to the desk. I only read it after it was released. Really? Yes, it's true. After exchanging a few more words, I hung up. I heard people murmuring. When I looked around, people were talking about Sung Dawan with surprised faces in the meeting room and even the office through the hallway. I rolled my phone in my hand a few times. Then I brushed away all the thoughts that filled my head. When and how didn't matter. What would have inevitably gotten out had simply been published. But can MS. Sangha really not fit it in her schedule? If possible, as a regular member. Maybe it was because she was fully dressed up and in full makeup for the script reading session, but the producer couldn't take his eyes off Lee Sangha. Sorry. Her schedule is packed until later this year. I said while wetting my lips with coffee. The Americano from the coffee shop inside the PBS broadcasting station was horrible. If it wasn't for the fact that the producer had bought it, I wouldn't even put my lips on it. On top of that, Sangha specializes in acting and performances. To put her as a regular member in a talk show panel is a bit. But why? I saw the entertainment shows she was in when they aired and she seemed fine. She was just a guest and it worked out because the producers edited her parts well. She'll run out of material if she became a regular on a talk show. Lee Sangha glanced at me from the side while chewing on a gummy worm. Her expression showed that she was confident in entertainment and even culture programs, but in an internal meeting, we decided to have her abstain from TV appearances as much as we could. This was a world where they caught every single word people say and criticized them for it. It was uneasy to have Lee Sangha be a regular member of a talk show. Entertainment shows are Seo Young's specialty. If you put her with LJ, their chemistry is very good. Since they watch your show every week, they'll adjust well too. Then let's try an episode with the two of them as guests and decide whether to cast them as regulars after that. Also, there's a segment where they call celebrities they are close with, will they be able to call some high-level celebrities? High-level celebrities. Though Seo Jijun told me to use him once whenever we needed him, it was waste to use him for this. I'll ask Mr. Im Ju Won. They've been on an entertainment show together so they are familiar with each other. Im Ju Won's good. He went to WU, correct? He's even working on MS. Song has project. I glanced at my watch while replying. It was already 10.30 a.m. I told the recruit who was sipping hot chocolate at the table next to us. Lee Kuan Wu, take Sangha up first. There's still some time left, should we go already? Yeah. Since she's a rookie, it's best to be early. Veteran actors could arrive early as well. Go up early, Sangha. It'll come after the meeting. Okay, Appa. It'll save you a spot. Lee Sangha took her gummy worms and got up. When the two left the coffee shop, the producer licked his lips in pity. She was a delight to my eyes. There's a royal family script reading today, right? Yes. A script reading and a ritual one. Since the big Chinese investors continued to cause a commotion because of Park Dojin's scandal, we had to push the schedule forward. Apparently, there would be a poster shoot in China in two days after the script reading and ritual today. The four leads are M.S. Sangha, Im Ju Won, Yun Tae Kyung, and Seo Young Kyo. The cast is incredible. But it really is best for M.S. Sangha to go up early. Before she gets scolded. 
you have to be especially careful of Seo Yunkyo. I heard a few things while looking into it, but is it that bad? The producer was astonished at my question. Are you serious? She appeared on my program as a guest before, and I really had a hard time. Her fierce temper is no joke. She probably took down a few of her juniors. Well, Lee Songa was someone who even threw a cake at Sun Chai Young. Since she became used to dealing with the crazy at home without intending to, I didn't think she'd be shocked or discouraged by other actresses picking a fight with her. The producer continued with a meaningful expression. That's the trait of actors. I need to stand out the most. Especially since M.S. Sangha became an instant star from an unknown rookie, she'll probably be jealous of her as well. She's probably waiting for a chance to take her down a notch from the start. I was a bit worried. Should I have gone up with her even if we were a little late? Let's finish up this casting matter in ten minutes and go up. Nothing would happen in only ten minutes, right? Chapter 121 It was a reading room surrounded by mirror walls. This place was no different from a social gathering full of false pretense and wariness. Celebrities playing supporting roles sat around a center table with scripts, water bottles, and handmade cookies while managers sat on folding chairs near the walls. I heard Seo Yunkyo is in the basement dressing room. Why isn't she coming up? Lee Sangha isn't here yet. She's waiting to appear after her. She'll be less embarrassed then. Even though there are four lead roles, looking at the script, it looks like Lee Song has the main while Seo Yunkyo's playing the sub-lead. Doesn't this mean that she's been pushed back by a rookie? I bet she's ready to even snatch her soul. Ah, I bet the tension from their first meeting will be intense. Will there even be a fight? Do you think a young girl like her will be able to stand up against Seo Yunkyo? ITLL be fortunate if she doesn't cry in the washroom. I already feel sorry for her. Hey, but do you think she'll be so upfront when Lee Sangha has WU behind her? CEO Yunkyo doesn't lose company wise either. Excitement permeated their voices. They all had expectant looks. To see the spectacle that didn't concern them. Or more specifically, the psychological warfare between two successful actresses. Actors and managers glanced at the door multiple times. Just then, the door opened. Two people greeted them respectfully as they entered the room. They were surprised by Lee Kuan Wu's figure, which was larger than most security guards. They were surprised again when they saw Lee Sangha. Her looks were enough to surprise them, who were used to seeing celebrities. Amazing. There is a reason why advertisers call her a blue chip one. She's truly breathtaking. But the person she came with isn't Yung Sun Wu. The managers with various positions, such as road managers, chiefs, team leaders, whispered to one another. Was he kicked from being in charge of Lee Sangha because of the scandal? Her scandal was completely buried by Park Dojin and Sun Daoan's scandals. What a shame. I wanted to see the famous star manager once. What do mean a shame? I heard he's gotten full of himself after a little publicity. Uh, she's here, she's here. As if someone had pressed the mute button, the whispers came to an abrupt halt. A woman came in accompanied by two managers. Her face looked like it was drawn with a brush while she gave off an elegant aura akin to a maiden from a respectable family. She was called the goddess of award ceremonies as every dress she wore would become a hot topic. She was C.O. Yunkyo. C.O. Yunkyo walked in while people greeted her. She then stopped in front of Lee Sangha. M.S. Lee Sangha. Yes, senior. Hello. Lee Sangha bowed her head once more. Arms crossed, Seo Yunkyo glanced Lee Sangha up and down. A serious mood hung above this momentary silence. Everyone in the reading room perked their ears while pretending not to. Lee Kuan Wu swallowed dryly. The mood was strange. He recalled a drama he had enjoyed that was set in the entertainment industry. Someone would always try to start a fight in a situation like this. One which was accompanied by a high-level personal attack or splashing a cup of water on someone. Breaking the silence, CEO Yunkyo asked. Your one-piece dress is pretty. It's from designer Kim Suk Moon's seasonal collection, right? 
I don't know the name because I wear what's provided to me, but I think you're right. It was a normal conversation. Lee Kuan Wu was relieved, thinking that dramas were simply dramas. Don't wear it from now on. Co Yunkyo ordered. I wear his clothes often. So don't wear them. We can't have our outfits overlap while on a shoot. Designer Kim Suk Moon will probably prefer I wear his clothes than you. Do you understand what I'm saying? The mood chilled. Lee Kuan Wu's eyes moved rapidly. He thought that this was too harsh even if she was her senior, yet Seo Yunkyo's managers looked calm as though this was nothing special. The other actors and managers didn't look like they planned on intervening. Instead, they were busy stealing glances. Their faces were filled with expectations, wondering whether Lee Sangha would flee or become agitated and clash head on after being rebuked. When Lee Sangha didn't reply right away, Seo Yunkyo mocked. Why aren't you saying anything? Are you sad that I told you not to wear seasonal item you finally obtained? No, that's not it. Then do you have a problem with your senior's words? I was sponsored to wear this dress. Seo Yunkyo faltered. Sponsored? Designer Kim Suk Moon sponsored you. A low laughter broke out somewhere. Taken aback, Seo Yunkyo's expression suddenly distorted. Just look at how you look straight at me like that. I guess WU doesn't care about senior junior relationships. Or are idols all like this? If you are so confident because you think you got the main female lead, you're mistaken. It wasn't that I didn't get that role, I got this role because my image suits being the darling of a rich family. Then, walking past Lee Sangha, she said. Where did an idol like you roll in from? Lowering our level. Isn't that right? Her final question was directed at the supporting actors. The actors' eyes moved quickly. They were calculating how they should act so that their time on set would be free of troubles. The decision was quick as their future would be difficult if they were marked by someone like Seo Yunkyo. Concluding their calculations, the majority of actors gathered around Seo Yunkyo. Lee Sangha stood alone under people's glances. Stomping his feet, Lee Kuan Wu sent a text. Chief. Big trouble due to MS. CO Yunkyo. I wondered if something would happen in ten minutes. Yet it did. Apparently, it was big too. I ran up the stairs as soon as I received the text. I encountered a couple of familiar faces on the floor on which the reading room was located. Chief Sung, whose amiable character didn't suit his fox like looks, and Im Ju Wan. Im Ju Wan began running as well as he asked. Uh, why are you running? Are we late? No, I think something happened between Sangha and MS. Co Yunkyo. It started already. Chief Sung clicked his tongue as if he already knew. I opened the reading room door. Everyone simultaneously looked in our direction. I greeted them and quickly observed the mood. Fortunately, it wasn't the worst situation. When he said there was big trouble, I thought gummy worms had been thrown. The mood was a bit odd though. Pretty and handsome actors crowded around Seo Yunkyo like a queen bee and her admirers. Lee Sangha was sitting by herself. What was this? I had my concerns but did they cast her out so directly? Were they middle schoolers? Appa, I'm over here. Lee Sangha raised her hand up high and waved at me as if she thought I couldn't find her. Her hand was still holding on to her bag of gummy worms. I sat in the folding chair behind Lee Sangha and asked. Are you okay? About what? No, if you're okay, then that's that. I let her continue eating her gummy worms as I heard the whole story from the recruit. Once I did, I became certain. That this was worse than middle school. Incidents like this are common in this industry. Especially women. Their power struggles are so childish. Im Ju Wan, who sat next to Lee Sangha, said, clicking his tongue. Don't worry. I don't know how it'd be if you were by yourself, but you're with me. It'll help you out. As people in the same company, we should help each other out. He said dependably. Just then, the door opened and someone entered. He had a brazen smile and a well-built frame. It was Yun Taek Young. A celebrity amongst celebrities. 
At the appearance of this precious international star, who people desperately fought over to invite, the reading room became noisy. Greetings were exchanged in this heated atmosphere. Im Ju Won shook Yoon Taekyung's hand as he admired. It looks like you work out a lot. Ah, it's because the director said there will be a lot of scenes where he'll be shirtless. I've been taking care of my body by eating chicken breasts and smoothies after receiving the script. You have a lot of shirtless scenes. Yes, don't you? Smiling as though he was teasing him, Yoon Taekyung briefly scanned Im Ju Won up and down. Then he sat down a bit away from him. Now alone, Im Ju Won turned towards us. Then, in a quiet voice, he asked. That idiot disregarded me just now, didn't he? No, rather than disregarding you. Chief, why don't I have any shirtless scenes? Is my body no good? Im Ju Won asked seriously while rolling his short sleeve shirt up and looked at his belly. Chief Sung waved his hands as he said. There's no way that's true. You are the slim, pretty boy style while Mr. Yoon Tae Kyung has a manlier look. The way you show off your charms are different. Damn it. If I take care of my body from now on, I can get a six-pack too. Tell the director to give me some shirtless scenes too. Even though he said power struggles were childish, I'm Joan's eyes were ablaze. But it was a bit odd. People crowded around Seo Young Kyo. More people crowded around Yoon Tae Kyung. Lee Sangha and Im Ju Won were sitting by themselves. What was this sight which resembled two duck eggs floating in the Nakdong River? Chief Sung mumbled helplessly. The mood is progressing strangely. The mood continued to progress strangely. The director and chief producer of PBS's dramas entered once the reading room was full. Oh, our international star, Mr. Yoon Tae Kyung. I danced when I heard you signed the contract. I believe in you. Please take care of us. They patted the shoulder of their international star, Mr. Yoon Tae Kyung. Oh, our goddess of award ceremonies. M.S. Young Kyo, let's definitely have you wear your dress on the red carpet for PBS's Best Performance Award. If this project is a success, we won't disappoint you when it comes to awards. They held the hand of their goddess of award ceremonies as though it was made from gold. Although they shook Im Juwon's hand, there was a huge difference in their treatment. Their reactions were lukewarm when compared to Yoon Tae Kyung. At Lee Song has turn, their reactions became frosty. No matter who saw it, their attitude showed they weren't satisfied with the decision to cast Lee Sangha. When the director and chief producer left, Seo Yoon Kyo's nose shot up like Pinocchio's. Well-made production was the one in charge of selecting the cast. With a complicated expression, Chief Sung said. The broadcasting company might not be happy that they chose M.S. Songa over Sun Chai Young, who was their first pick. Still, there's no need to care about the broadcasting company. The ones who truly hold power in this current situation are different. Pardon? Isn't the broadcasting company the ones in power? The recruit, Li Kuan Wu, asked. Chief Sung shook his head. The situation is different for something like royal family. Well Made brought over Chinese investors so their production budget is huge. The script is good and they have a good cast. On top of that, they got Yun Tae Kyung. CEO Young Kyo has a decent following in China. Any public network will make room in their schedule for a project like this. Then is Well Made the ones with power? Or the actors? Yoon Tae Kyung or Seo Young Kyo? Chief Sung shook his head once more. Well Made needs to keep supplying resources to make the project a success. Actors hold power until they sign. Their positions change as soon as they sign the contract. Then the ones with power. Are the director and writer. I said nonchalantly. They were the two people who truly held power in this current situation. The veterans at the helm of this enormous ship. Also, between the two, the writer held the most power. The charm of characters would dangle on her fingertips, and she controlled the actor's screen times. Chief Sung's eyes narrowed as he added. That's right. You can ignore other actors and the broadcasting company. They are people who will change their attitude at the flip of a coin if this project is a success. The problem is writer Jang. 
Director Wu is the type to be faithful to the script. You have to get on writer Jang's good side. The staff entered the room as soon as he said that. Our attention focused on two people. One was Director Wu, who had facial hair from his sideburns to his chin. The other was writer Jang, who glitter more than usual as she wore a set of large pearl earrings, necklace, and ring. Other people seemed to have the same thoughts as us as people particularly gathered around writer Jang. We just got up to greet them as well. Ah, Chief Yong. Director Wu approached me with steadfast steps before hugging me. His coarse beard brushed against my cheek. I got goosebumps. I was surprised, but Li Sangha looked more surprised than me. Her eyes became as wide as saucers despite being calm when she was being left out. Director Wu whispered in my ear. I heard about it. That it's all thanks to you that we were able to take out hands off that mess before it was too late. Ah, that. I hoped that we could talk with a bit of distance between each other. I knew that this wasn't the right place to talk about Park Dojin because of all the listening ears, but this was a bit I thought this, but with a sudden thought, I placed my hand on Director Wu's back. I decided it was a good idea to show I was friendly with the director. Especially in a situation like this. As expected, people's stinging gazes fell on me. The actors and even the managers looked in my direction and whispered to each other. Why are they so close? How close are they? Questions like these flashed on their faces. We were hugging for a while when CEO Yunkyo, who had been giving us a strange look, smiled brightly as she clung to writer Jang. I heard you were the writer who cast me. Thank you very much. The role suited you very well. I wrote the script thinking about you. Writer Jang replied. CEO Yunkyo looked so happy she could jump in the air as she hugged Writer Jang's shoulders as if telling us to look at them. She then politely said. Since it looks like MS. Lee Sangha feels pressured from suddenly becoming a lead, it's okay if you give me more scenes or even give me most the scenes. It'll handle them all. Wow. This Queen Bee. That was too much. I parted from director Wu with a frown on my face when writer Jang looked in my direction. As soon as our gazes met, writer Jang's eyes slightly curved. Writer Jang brushed CO Yunkyo's hands off her shoulders and said, MS. CO Yunkyo. Am I a debuting writer? Only picking up bad behavior. How dare you ask a writer to increase your scenes? Chapter 122. A chill blew in the reading room. Her lips crooked, writer Jang said. If you're like this in front of me, I bet you grab new writers by their hair and swing them around. Writer Jang, that's not it. If you get bigger from this, I guess you'll bring the script after marking it with a red pen the next time we work together. That's not it. I just. Don't think about having your way with writers and the script and move me with your scenes. If you do, then it'll increase your screen time even if you don't want it. Do you understand? CEO Yunkyo made an awkward smile as she looked around. Those who looked at us with expectant gazes were now giving her the same look. What about you, Mr. Taekyung? Writer Jang suddenly asked. Having observed CEO Yunkyo get beat down first, Yoon Taekyung quickly made a polite smile. Me? I heard you wanted to talk about the script. Tell me your requests. I think there was some miscommunication. There aren't any requests, rather I wanted to tell you that the script was really great. I will act according to the script without a word. There's no need to be like that or it'll be known as a tyrant in this industry. That's. It's a joke. Smiling by only curling the edges of her lips upwards, Ryder Jang turned her gaze. Wherever her gaze landed, managers and cast members floundered to greet her. Since the two highest stars here had lowered their tails when faced with power, those beneath them shrunk back on their own. We need to stay alert. Chief Sung said after coming next to me. Since tensions between actors and writers become so taut during shoots, it seems writer Jang is planning on taking control from the beginning. Don't worry about me. Women in their thirties and forties like me. Im Ju Won made a boyish smile. His smile brought out women's maternal instincts. He had a scowl on his face just before due to being conscious of Yoon Taekyung, 
but he seemed to be in a good mood after seeing how Ryder Jang treated him. Of course, I'm not worried about Mr. Juwan. Chief Sung said with a flattering tongue as he looked in Lee Songa and my direction. M.S. Songa, you should be careful. I don't think you're skilled in the art of getting along with people. I can do it. Don't worry, Appa. I was extremely worried. Rather than being skilled at it, Li Sangha was hopeless in this art. She was fine during Cat Guardian Ghost. The relationship between the staff and the cast was extremely good, and everyone sympathized with her since she was receiving millions of hate comments thanks to her acting controversy. I didn't have many thoughts then, but I abruptly realized that that was a heavenly place rarely seen in the drama industry. This place was situated in reality. A place with strict power dynamics and psychological warfare. She's coming. Smile. Chief Sum whispered. It seemed it was our turn as Ryder Jang was walking towards us. People moved back to open up a path. It was like the miracle of Moses. Chief Sung licked his lips and poked my side. If the mood is very bad, what if we try getting friendly with Director Wu? It looked like the director had a very favorable impression of you. If the mood is bad, then I guess we have to. I said while glancing at director Wu who other actors were greeting. I would be relieved if writer Jang was at least half as friendly as director Wu. Didn't she smile slightly when she saw me before? Just trust me, Chief Yong. It'll make her warm up to us. Im Ju Wan confidently whispered to me before taking a step forward. Writer Jang. Thank you for casting me in such a great project. From now on. I wasn't the one who cast you, Mr. Ju Wan. That was the director's suggestion. Im Ju Wan, who had told me to trust him, instantly crumbled. Of course, I agreed because I thought the same. She added as she looked at Lee Sangha. Lee Sangha made a 90 degree bow. Hello, Ryder Jang. It's been a long time. But since the press causes such a fuss about you, it feels like I'm seeing you again after meeting you yesterday. This woman seemed determined to drive a thorn in every greeting. Did I really have to try and cling to Director Wu? The other cast members who had suffered were looking in our direction, especially CO Yunkyo, whose eyes shined. She looked expectant, hoping that Ryder Jang would embarrass Li Sangha like she did her. However, it seemed Ryder Jang wasn't interested in Li Sangha. She immediately walked elsewhere. Towards me. She approached closer. Just as I considered stepping back, she grabbed me with outstretched arms. Ryder Jang. Wait. Just once. Pardon me. I wanted to wait until everyone left after the reading session, but I felt urgent. What? Kind of nonsense is that? Wait for what? She felt urgent. Everyone was looking at me from behind Ryder Jang's shoulders. Everyone. Even Lee Sangha stood frozen as she looked at me. Her eyes were so wide open that it felt like her eyes could pop out at any moment. Im Ju Wan silently asked while opening and closing his mouth. What was happening? I was very curious about this myself. I pushed Park Dojin as the male lead. Ryder Jang whispered. I almost crapped all over my script. Ah, uh, okay. Uneasy, I looked at my fortune, and apparently, am currently caught in three years of misfortune. That's why I wanted to receive some luck from you. It could drive away bad luck. It was not enough that the Neptune girls treated me like a talisman, now I could drive away bad luck. Just as I thought this, hairy arms stretched out behind me. Am also caught in three years of misfortune. Damn it. Director Wu whispered as he hugged me from behind. Director Wu, you already did it once, why are you doing it again? There are a lot of eyes watching. As a man, I'm fine, but isn't it a bit weird if a man and woman are hugging each other like this? What do you mean man and woman? He's my nephew's age. Go away. I'll receive your bad luck. I'm the one directing so let's drive away bad luck together. Yeah, okay. This was all fine and well. But could they not whisper next to my ear? I felt like I would die from chills. Writer Jang, Director Wu, could you let go of me first? 
I raised my arms to get out of being the patty wedged between two hamburger buns. Then I stopped after meeting Chief Sung's gaze. He was smiling with narrowed eyes. His smile contained his hopes that the royal family shoots might become very comfortable. Beside me, Lee Kuan Wu was staring at me with his mouth agape. It was my first time receiving such a gaze full of respect since becoming his superior. Also, there were people muttering to each other with expressions that read, what kind of relationship do they have to hug each other like that? It looks like he's not only close with the director but with the writer as well, and should I have introduced myself and gotten friendly with him earlier? CEO Yunkyo had a furious expression. Seeing this, I brought my arms back down. Well, what was wrong with driving away bad luck or being a hamburger patty if it was beneficial to me? Without hesitation, I gave up my body for the future. This is MS. Lee Sangha who is playing the role of the top star Lee Sohee. Hello, please take care of me. Lee Sangha got up from her chair and greeted them when the director introduced her. People clapped with smiles on their faces. While they looked amiable at a glance, whispers here and there were quite far from being amiable. Even CEO Yunkyo is clapping. Even though she tried to bring Lee Sangha down a notch before. What can she do when the director and writer are looking at her? I heard CEO Yunkyo holds on to grudges. I bet she'll pick on Lee Sangha when the director and writer are gone. But it looked like Young Sun Wu was really close with the director and writer. Wouldn't that concern her enough to not act out? They probably won't intervene unless it impacts the shoot. This is something settled between actors. The actors whispered to each other. This was the same for the managers at the back. What kind of relationship does Young Sun Wu have with the director and writer? Did he know them before? His connections are gold. How great, damn it. The director and writer won't pay special attention to WU actors because of their friendship, right? Like giving them all the good lines, shooting another take, or even providing them with another reflector. Would Yun Take Young and CEO Yunkyo's companies stay quiet if their actors are discriminated against? The managers looked in one direction. It looked like Yun Take Young and CEO Yunkyo's managers were having the same concerns as they were discussing with each other while glancing at people from WU. The whispers continued even after the reading session began. The actors clapped when Yun Tae Kyung and Im Ju Won said their lines and admired with wide eyes when it was Seo Yun Kyo's turn. Wow, amazing. She has the ability to boast. She really seems like a lady from a rich family. She's just acting like she is in real life. Apparently, her family is very well off. But I bet Lee Sangha is probably lacking in terms of acting compared to her. Someone began to compare the two. The number of whispers increased. Why? I saw her previous drama, and she seemed good. She's only done one project. It could be that she was lucky. It might be the best acting or project of her life. It's not like it's uncommon to see actors fail after being successful in one project. On top of that, it looks like ITLL be difficult to adjust to her role this time. Lee Song has role was a Korean star at the peak of her popularity. She was a top star famous in her industry for doing whatever she wanted, and her initials were brought up in editorial tabloids because she caused frequent incidents. It would be difficult to express such a character in a charming or appealing way. As soon as it became Lee Song has turn, their gazes openly landed on her. There were some who were purely interested in her acting abilities, but there were many who were jealous about how she became famous through one drama and now took a lead role. They seemed to hope that Lee Sangha would mess up her lines with terrible acting. Amidst their attention, Lee Sangha finally began to read her line. Everyone became silent. People who were curious, expectant people, and even CEO Yunkyo. M.S. Yunkyo, she might not be good with romance. That's difficult without experience. An actress sitting next to CEO Yunkyo humored. A few added. That's right. As a young girl, she's probably only had childish relationships. This is an argent one sided love. She needs to play a top star who used to do whatever she wanted before crumbling in front of love, would she even know those emotions? No matter how much she analyzed her role, wouldn't she be licking the surface? That's right. On top of that, 
would she have even experienced a one-sided love with a face like that? A ritual was held in the basement studio immediately after the reading session. A pig head was placed on the ritual table. Actors and staff members took their turn to bow in front of the smiling pig head, praying to the gods of TV ratings and success. I was watching Lee Sangha slide a money envelope in the pig's mouth when writer Jang approached me. I definitely plan on repaying you, Mr. Young Sun Wu. But this is separate from Lee Song has issue. You remember what I said to M.S. C.O. Young Kyo, correct? That their scenes will increase depending on how well actors suit their roles. Yes, I do. I'm serious about that since that's how the project will succeed. What I'm saying is, if M.S. C.O. Young Kyo is better than M.S. Lee Sangha, then I will give her more screen time without a doubt. Do you perhaps not like Song has acting? The reading session was a success though. Yun Tae Young, Seo Young Kyo, and Im Ju Won. Amidst these talented lead actors, Lee Song Ga shined the brightest in my eyes. Other people looked like there was nothing bad to say about her acting, and director Wu liked her acting as well. Writer Jang looked like she liked it too. No, her acting was good. It seemed she worked hard to analyze the script as well. Yes, she kept working on it ever since she received the script. She completely adjusted to the script. However, writer Jang trailed on before adding as though it was a shame. I hope that actors would show me something beyond the script. Beyond the script? Like an ad lib? It doesn't necessarily have to be that, just that they fly off the page. Writer Jang rubbed her pearl necklace as she continued. The character called Lee Sohee. I originally thought about M.S. Sun Chai Young for that role. Everyone objected because she had such an innocent image, but in my eyes, I felt like she would suit the role very well. Pull it off really realistically. She saw correctly. If Sun Chai Young did it, she might have acted with everything she had. I turned my gaze to look at Lee Sangha. She got a plate of food and was heading towards me before getting stopped by Director Wu. She was slightly frowning after drinking some of the sacrificial alcohol. Seeing this, I mulled over Ryder Jang's words. Maybe it was because she was being compared to Seo Young Kyo and Sun Chai Young, but my insides felt hot. I thought about it over and over again. How could Lee Song has acting fly off the page? Your outfits, accessories, and carry-on bags are all sponsored so pay special attention to the cameras. Especially Lee Sangha. Don't forget to show your bracelet when you brush your hair back. Let's spray you with face mist one more time so it doesn't look like you have makeup on. Even though it was morning, the airport was full of reporters and fans who had come out to take pictures. The Neptune girls were listening to their stylists while holding their own carry-on bags. Why was it so complicated when only a few pictures would be taken? Especially Lee Sangha, almost everyone she wore was sponsored. Appa, Appa, this feels like we're going on an MT1. Im Seo Young chattered on excitedly as looked around. Seo Jijun was expected to arrive soon to promote Cat Guardian Ghost. Maybe that was why it felt like an MT like Im Seo Young said. Why isn't Seo Jijun here yet? Isn't he taking the same plane as us? He'll call him. Someone brought out their phone when the fans, who were already loud, waving their hands at us, suddenly began screaming. Seo Jijun's popularity was incredible. Admiring this, I turned my gaze. Ha! Huh. What's this? Chief Sung's eyes widened. The other staff members were murmuring in surprise. The Neptune girls were causing even more of a fuss, especially I'm Seo Young, who excitedly said how it felt like we were going on an MT. Her face instantly soured. I also rubbed my eyes in case I was seeing things. The person walking towards us while wheeling her carry-on wasn't Seo Jijun. It was Sun Chai Young. Chapter, 123. Why is Sun Chai Young here? What's going on? Opening and closing his mouth, Chief Sung looked at me. Why are you asking me? Ah, I thought that you might know. Your relationship is quite. Our relationship isn't good. I don't know why she's here. While we were frozen like people witnessing a tornado, the airport was in a clamor thanks to the unexpected top star. 
Fans waved their hands as they asked her to look their way, and photographers were pressing their shutter buttons. Sun Chaeyoung leisurely waved her hand at them. As she briskly walked towards us. I think she's coming over here. I know, right? No matter how I think about it, it seems like she's here to see Chief Young. How can you tell when she's wearing sunglasses? She's probably coming here because of the safety lines set up around us. Company people and security are gathered here as well. I said but, for some reason, I felt like she was coming towards me as well. A tornado. What's going on? Why is she coming here? Is she going to start a fight again? Im Seo Young's eyes ignited as she glared at her with her hands on her waist. Try starting a fight. I dare her. And if she does, what? Do you think you'll win a fight against Sun Chai Young, you dummy? It's fine. There's four of us. She can't do anything in front of greater numbers. Well win. Im Seo Young said confidently, puffing her chest. Even while chiding her, LJ stood next to her. Lee Tae followed suit and stood next to her. No, Lee Tae eyes were too calm to say that she just followed along. They did have a big grudge on Sun Chai Young due to the matter with Lee Sangha. Lee Sangha and me behind them, they set up a crane wing formation around us, and Lee Sangha looked around. Silently igniting her fighting spirit. Sangha, what are you looking for? It's nothing, Appa. I just felt like my hands felt empty. Just leave them empty. What if she does something to you? Ill prepare. Don't. Don't prepare. There are reporters everywhere. Lee Sangha made an awe. Expression. It seemed like she would actually hold something to throw if there weren't any reporters. It wasn't like Sun Chai Young did anything yet, but it seemed like she reflexively grabbed something to throw when she saw her face. Like Pavlov's dogs. Our surroundings became quiet. Those who knew the circumstances had uneasy expressions. They looked like they were worried something would happen and whether they should set up a human barricade so the reporters didn't notice anything. Fortunately, I was able to stop Lee Sangha, but there was someone else who was full of fighting spirit. Im Seo Young barked like a courageous puppy protecting her home. Come at us. If you want to fight. Hello. Sun Chai Young greeted us with a smile. So with a smile. The girls froze at the unexpected action of the tornado in front of them. The eyes of staff members, who were watching with bated breaths, widened. Sun Chai Young casually took off her sunglasses. Her gaze brushed past mine. Just as I thought the glint in her eyes seemed oddly emotional, Sun Chai Young smiled once more and greeted by saying. To Chief Sung. Then, as though she didn't see me, she went to the side. She greeted the other staff members before sitting down on a bench slightly away from me, surrounded by security guards and her stylists. Rather than being angry, I was dumbfounded. She was so obviously ignoring me. Why is she like that? Is it because of the reporters? Maybe. She's thorough when it comes to her image. In front of me, Im Seo Young and LJ whispered to each other while glaring at her. Chief Sun blinked his eyes as he asked. Chief Young, did you fight with Sun Chai Young recently? That's nothing new. There's never been a time we haven't been fighting since we first met. No, but still, she's so obviously only ignoring you. Why is she like that? I don't know either. If the person in question doesn't know, who does? No one knows what she's thinking. She's Sun Chai Young. As if he obtained a deep realization from my words, Chief Sung nodded his head. Im Ju Won, who stood a bit away from me, came up and admired. Wow, I only got to see Sun Chai Young Sun Bae Won at award ceremonies, but she's even more amazing up close. I really hope I get to work on a project with her later. Don't say stuff like that. You're going to jinx it. Chief Sum whispered in fright. Im Ju Won shrugged. Why? I heard she has quite the personality, but she's still my ideal type. Her pure, lovely aura incites a man's protective instincts. That was the best nonsense I've heard all year. While Chief Sung worked on chipping away at Im Juwan's adoration for Sun Chai Young, Kim Hyunjo, 
who had returned after calling the staff in China, looked like he had a heart attack when he discovered Sun Chaiyang. Ah, damn. I almost needed an ambulance instead of a plane. Kim Hyunjo interrogated the chief from Team 2, who followed behind Sun Chaiyang. What's she doing here? So that's I don't know. God damn it. The chief from Team 2 mumbled with a gloomy complexion. Seo Jijun had to delay his flight due to personal matters which was why we were going to cancel the ticket, but Sun Chai Young suddenly said that she would take his seat. I'm here to fill in under the team leader's orders. I couldn't even pack a single pair of underwear because I was in a rush. Why is she going to China? Does she have a schedule there? She has a photo shoot in Beijing. Next week. If it's next week, why is she going now? I don't know. She said she'll go on this plane. While actors are a breed that acts on whims, Sun Chai Young really takes the cake. Kim Hyunjo frowned as he asked. Don't tell me she in the same hotel as us. She isn't, right? If you don't reserve a head for GHB. The owner of that hotel was in a fuss, wanting to have a meal with Sun Chai Young. Kim Hyunjo brushed his face. So did Chief Sung and I. The majority of those who heard their conversation had the same expression. Only the Navim Im Ju Won and a few staff members were happy, thinking how lucky they were, not knowing that their good fortune could be a disaster. Im Ju Won smiled as he said. It's really like what M.S. Im Seo Young said before. This feels like an M.T. Like hell it does. Only one good thing came out of the arrival of the tornado Sun Chai Young. Last to arrive, Seo Yunkyo's expression crumbled. The actors from Cat Guardian Ghost and Royal Family would all depart at different dates, but it just happened that our schedule coincided with Seo Yunkyo's. As soon as I heard this, I was worried that I needed to be alert on the plane, but I didn't have to worry any longer. Seo Yunkyo was imposing in the beginning. She came towards us, Lee Sangha to be exact, with an expression that read she wanted to discipline her since the director and writer weren't here. However, she freaked out when she saw Sun Chai Young behind her. Ah, uh, hello, Sun Bei. Though Seo Young Kyo was older, Sun Chai Young had many more years of experience and was on a completely different level than her. Maybe it was because she fell behind Sun Chai Young, but Seo Young Kyo bitterly greeted Neptune and seemed very cautious in front of Sun Chai Young. When Sun Chai Young greeted her back with a slight smile, Seo Young Kyo, who had been reading her expression, rejoiced. Her eyes filled with the desire to use this opportunity to get friendly with Sun Chai Young. Seeing her wag her tail at Sun Chai Young, she seemed like a chihuahua instead of a queen bee today. I worked with Sun Bei in the past. Do you remember? Ah, uh, you did. I usually remember most actors I work with, but I'm not sure. Ah, uh, I was an extra at that time. That's probably why you don't remember. I played your classmate in a flashback. But I heard that we'll be staying in the same hotel. Sun Chai Young put her sunglasses back on and nodded. I want to get close to you, but there never was an opportunity until now. You don't go to celebrity meetings and are only close with celebrities in your company. You're so mysterious. Mysterious? She sounded like a chihuahua chewing grass. I wanted to film Royal Family with you, but it's a shame. Though it's only for a few days, please take care of me. Seo Yunkyo chattered on while sticking to Sun Chai Young with the same face she hugged Ryder Jang with not too long ago. Quietly looking at this, I thought, what a crappy two-shot. Sun Wu. I was looking at the clouds outside the window when Kim Hyunjo, who was sitting beside me, called my name. Yes, Chief. It seems like Sun Chai Young is staring at you. Me? I turned around. Sun Chai Young was casually looking at a magazine. No, she's not. She is. She's been staring at you for a while. It seemed like she might have been glaring. I exchanged a few words with Kim Hyunjo before abruptly looking behind me. My gaze directly met Sun Chai Young's. Sun Chai Young's right eyebrow raised slightly. Then her lips, which didn't have any makeup on, moved silently. Why are you looking at me? Was she an elementary schooler? I turned my gaze back since I didn't want to have a childish fight when I saw a round head in my sight. 
Li Sangha, who was sitting in front of Sun Chai Young, was stretching her head out as she looked at me as if telling me to look at her. When our eyes met, she smiled slightly. Maybe it was because of Sun Chai Young's sudden appearance, but Li Sangha was acting a little strange since a while ago. She was obviously very conscious of her, acting like a nervous animal whose territory was invaded. As expected, nothing good came out of sticking the two of them together. I had to prevent them from meeting as much as possible while we were at the same hotel. While pondering for peace, our short flight ended and we arrived at Beijing Capital International Airport. I counted the members of our group once we got off. Since there were seven celebrities, the number was incredible as we included the staff. We were about to move as a group after I finished counting when the staff who went to inquire about the situation at the airport and our transportation returned with flustered expressions. They were accompanied by people from the airport and security guards who were wearing black suits and had receivers in their ears. Apparently, there are many more fans than expected at the airport so we can't leave like this? They didn't expect such a large crowd so they only dispatched a few security guards. There could be a safety incident at the slightest slip-up. Are there that many people? They told me a few hundred people gathered. Apparently, the outside of the airport is packed. What? Did they think Yun Tae Kyung was coming? Kim Hyunjo said while frowning. Worried about a situation like this, we decided to have Yun Tae Kyung travel in secret. Since he was to appear on a few Chinese entertainment shows while he had a schedule in China, I heard they asked the broadcasting company here to send him a private jet. Yun Tae Kyung was at a level where airport surroundings would freeze if he appeared. I read an article that stated almost a thousand people gathered last time. It was to the point where the Chinese airport had to personally escort him. What? Then who did they come to see? Is it Seo Yunkyo? Or Seo Jijun or Sangha they probably don't have the popularity. News of Sun Chaiyang might have already spread. The chiefs, including Kim Hyunjo, tilted their heads as they discussed. The staff member said. They think we need to leave secretly though the VIP exit. They said they are dispatching a limousine and security guards to that entrance. There are people lurking there as well so they ask that we stay here while they finish preparing. Yua, amazing. I only saw foreign fans crowding airports in articles. Excited, I'm Seo Young held my arm as she stomped her feet. Appa, Appa, but won't there be at least one or two people here who came to see us? What do we do if they are waiting for us while holding signs? They might be disappointed if we leave secretly. What if we just leave through the exit? It definitely doesn't seem like there will be any safety accidents if we leave. LJ added while shrugging her shoulders. As if they heard us, the staff exchanged a few words in Chinese with the airport employees. Then they looked at him Seo Young and LJ and nodded. Yes, they said you can leave there shouldn't be anything to worry about. That's good, but it's a little sad. Im Seo Young said with a complicated expression. You must be happy that you can go early. Seo Young Kyo suddenly said. Smiling, she glanced at us, especially Lee Sangha, before asking the staff. So how long do we have to wait here? Though it looked like she was annoyed at a glance, her shoulders were raised. Ah, if you're in a hurry, you can just go too. Seo Young Kyo stopping in mid-hair brushing posture. I could see her eyes rapidly moving back and forth. Me? Me? Yes, M.S. C.O. Yunkyo. If you are busy, you can go. It's fine. Those words gave her another blow. She stood blankly for a few seconds before hurriedly putting her sunglasses on. Even if she did that, we could see she was red up to her neck. A few staff members became red too. To endure their laughs. Uh, they said Mr. Im Juwon can leave too. The sense of loss is amazing. Im jealous of international stars. Im Juwon licked his lips as he looked at Sun Chai Young. To be honest, if this was all because of Sun Chai Young, then it was amazing. No one knew she was going to China until just before our flight, yet hundreds of fans gathered at the airport during our short flight. I thought this was only possible for popular male actors like Toon Tae Young and boy groups like Blackout who had tons of diehard fans. MS. Sun Chai Young, 
please use the VIP passage. As expected, it was because of her. Everyone nodded at his words. Even though her face was so flushed it seemed she was plastered with blood, Seo Yunkyo seemed to have recovered as she, once again, stuck next to Sun Chai Young and flattered her by saying how she was different and whatnot. Just then, the staff said. NMS. Lee Songa as well. Uh, Songa? Why? Everyone looked surprised. I was the same and so was Lee Songa. In fact, Im Seo Young poked her cheek while asking if they were talking about her. The staff and the airport employees nodded simultaneously. Yes, MS. Lee Songa. Chapter, 124. Uh, why? Im Seo Young asked with a dazed expression. Apparently, a significant number of people gathered are fans of Cat Guardian Ghost. Cat Guardian Ghost? Fans of that are here. The staff replied friendlily, but it lacked a sense of reality. I knew that Cat Guardian Ghost was being positively received in China. However, it was so well received that hundreds of fans gathered, giving her no choice but to leave secretly through the VIP exit. When it hadn't even been officially released in China yet. First, everyone who will take the normal exit, please go ahead. The staff urged us as if he was frustrated by how we were murmuring to each other in surprise. Kim Hyunjo came to his senses and gathered Neptune and Lee Kuan Wu. Besides Sangha, the other members will leave through the normal exit. If there are a lot of people, then there will be reporters. This will be a good opportunity to promote them. I will also leave through the normal exit. Im Ju Won said after him. I want to feel like an international star even if it's like this. Yes, Neptune and Mr. Im Ju Won. M.S. C.O. Yunkyo. I will go through the VIP exit. C.O. Yunkyo said with her chin raised. Then, as if making an excuse, she added. I was a bit shocked from the hardcore fans the last time I came. Then do that. Soon, the majority said they wanted to cosplay as international stars and disappeared through the normal exit. Only a few people remained. I rolled my eyes as my gaze alternated between Lee Sangha, Sun Chai Young, and Seo Yunkyo. The ones who remained were a ridiculous bunch. As soon as we exited through the VIP exit, Lee Kuan Wu messaged me. Chief. This place is no joke. It felt like his dying message. Anyways, I understood that the situation at the normal exit was no joke. I didn't know how he took it, but a slightly blurry picture was attached to his message. It was Neptune passing through the crowd with frightened faces. They could even use this as a poster for a zombie movie. I glanced at the signs people were holding and found one with Lee Song has name on it. Sangha, look at this. Your name's right here. I looked at her because I didn't hear a reply, and she was lost in her own thoughts. I thought she was still stunned, but that wasn't it. Her clear eyes were fixed on Sun Chai Young's back as she walked in front of her. It seemed she was still on high alert. By herself. Sun Chai Young, who I was worried would start a fight, didn't even look in our direction as she walked. Sangha, what are you doing? Can you hear me? I can. I'm listening to you. Uh, okay. So what did I say just now? To be honest, I only heard your voice. It was too quiet. She said honestly while reading my expression. While she wasn't comparable to Sun Chai Young, she was still very difficult to understand. While she was in a situation where she might ascend as an international star in one go, in this situation that was like winning the lottery for a celebrity, she was thinking about something else. I still can't believe it. Lee Sangha calmly said as she looked at my phone screen. I was the same, but I can after seeing the photo. Good lord. A staff talked about what he had heard from the airport employees. There was quite a solid fanbase of people who pirated the drama, but once promotions really began with YTV releasing a trailer and clips, it really began to spread. Fans of the drama are working hard online to make the drama a success. YTV was the online platform that bought rights to Cat Guardian Ghost. They started the fire, and the fans poured oil on it. That's why the Cat Guardian Ghost cast's popularity is rising to international star levels. 
I feel like this'll be huge. The future I had seen was the same. Cat Guardian Ghost's lead and supporting actors became international stars overnight. Has the day arrived? We already informed the PR team about the situation so we should hear back from them soon. Once we arrived at the hotel, I needed to discuss this sudden situation with Kim Hyunjo. Eh, I feel like you're exaggerating. What if they fall? CEO Yunkyo casually said. While her tone was light as though it was a joke, irritation and nastiness were clearly visible in her eyes. She looked like she wanted to say, what a joke. Do you think anyone can be an international star? She was like this for a while. Since the staff asked Lee Sangha to use the VIP exit. I heard there was a law of conservation of nut cases. Was she all up in a fuss because Sun Chai Young was quiet? MS. Lee Sangha wasn't a lead role anyways, right? CEO Yunkyo said while glancing at Lee Sangha. Maybe the fans outside are waiting for Mr. CEO Jijun. Because they think he arrived with us. Ah, there definitely were a lot of people who came for Mr. CEO Jijun. The staff member added as he gave a knowing smile like he knew she would act like this. But a mess. Lee Song has popularity is at the level of the lead actors. I saw the drama, and Young Haewon's character is just so charming. Her acting was great, and above all, her looks were amazing. The staff coughed as he glanced at Lee Songa. I felt like the surrounding temperature rose because Seo Yunkyo glared at us with such a heated gaze. A limousine is waiting for you outside the door so you can get on right away. The staff member told us as he stopped at the exit. Right away. Or else they might chase you in taxis. Chinese fans are especially hardcore. You need to leave before they catch up. Yes, thank you for guiding us. I replied. The chief from Team 2 was busy on the phone for a while now, and CEO Yunkyo's people were busy whispering to each other. Everyone put on their sunglasses. I put one on Lee Sangha as well. An amazing sound erupted. One I couldn't tell whether it was a scream or a shout. Over here. We were led to a security guard who shouted at us in poor Korean. When I looked in the noisy direction, ten or so security guards were blocking people. They shouted Sun Chai Young and Lee Song has name. A few, realizing that Seo Ji Jun wasn't here, cried out, shouting things I couldn't understand. Though I knew Chinese fans had a fanatic side towards Korean stars, seeing it in person, their spirit was no joke. I saw quick-witted people rush towards us at incredible speeds when they heard the commotion. Get in quickly. The staff shouted. Two long limousines were waiting nearby. Sun Chai Young and the Team 2 chief got in the first one, and CEO Yunkyo's party, which consisted of four people, got in the second one. With no other option, I got in the first limousine with Lee Sangha. As soon as I closed the door, the limousine drove off in a hurry. I let out a sigh after sitting down on a plush seat when something felt strange. The car was going backwards. Looking at it again, the seats were set up to face each other. I clicked my tongue, thinking the mood would be wonderful throughout the ride. You, sit in front of me. Sun Chai Young said while taking off her sunglasses. Before I could, Lee Songa asked. Why? I dislike looking at both of you, but I hate you more. She finally seemed like the real Sun Chai Young. I was concerned she might erupt like the calm before the storm. This actually made me relax. I changed seats with Lee Sangha and sat in front of Sun Chai Young. This was probably better than having Sun Chai Young and Lee Sangha face each other. Even with a glance, I could tell there were simply too many throwable objects in here. The air was tense as though it would explode with a single spark. The Team 2 chief was the one who broke the silence. Um, MS. Chai Young. I received a call from the agency that handles your Chinese activities and he said the owner of the GHB Hotel's wish is to have a meal with you. If you give him a bit of your time, you'll receive a lifetime stay at the hotel as a presen. I want. Sun Chai Young said without batting an eye. This isn't some weird meeting. There won't be any alcohol. He just wants to have lunch. It's not my first time in this industry. There's no just wanting to have lunch. If we have lunch, 
Hell want to have dinner next time. Then Hell want to go for drinks. The Team 2 chief licked his lips and tried to persuade her. The company won't stand it if he acts like that. But this person really isn't trying to pull any tricks. He's purely your fan. Tell him he'll have a meal as a group in a restaurant. Don't set up a private meeting. Also, if I receive things like lifetime stays and stuff and rumors spread that I can be bought, don't you know things will be even more troublesome and dirty? I get it. Then let's do that. You know. If you're going to say the same thing, then don't even bring it up. You're only wasting your breath. Sun Chai Young said in a temper before closing her eyes. It seemed the thing he wanted to talk about was the same thing as the Team 2 chief shut his lips. His thick double eyelid eyes moved up and down. Then he stopped and looked at me before grinning. I felt like I was on a state visit. It was my first time riding in a limousine, but I couldn't even describe the hotel we arrived at as luxurious. Before I could fully admire the awe of a five-star hotel, a crowd of people rushed towards us. They were hotel employees, dozens of security guards, and employees of the Chinese agency affiliated with WU. After receiving more than enough greetings I could handle, we went up to the seventh floor. Familiar faces bustled in this wide, glittering hallway. They were the ones who went through the normal exit at the airport. I discovered Kim Hyunjo, Lee Kuan Wu, and Neptune and approached them. You arrived before us. We just arrived as well. We pushed our way through a war zone. Kim Hyunjo said with an exhausted face. Im Seo Young, whose face was red with excitement, snatched Lee Sangha, telling her that she was almost stomped to death when they left through the normal exit and how people were calling out Lee Songha's name. She also asked about what the VIP exit was like. Seeing her chat without rest, I unconsciously examined my surroundings. Aren't we being too loud in this hotel? It's fine. The hotel completely emptied the 7th and 8th floors. They vacated it for us. Yeah, they did. That's why everyone's in a fuss trying to choose their rooms. They vacated two floors for us to use. Was this common? Kim Hyunjo shrugged as he said. It's probably because of Yoon Tae Kyung. They sometimes do this for true top stars. Apparently, crazy fans sometimes hide in the rooms so they vacate entire floors for complete security. The treatment of international stars when they go to China was incredible. I had only heard stories about it. Seeing it in person, I wondered what kind of world we lived in. Leaving our bags in our rooms, I went to the eighth floor with Chief Sung. Royal Family's director Wu and the production staff from Well Made Production had arrived ahead of us to look for good filming sets. I greeted director Wu, whose eyes were sunken from drinking all night, I met with the production staff. After exchanging a few words, I was about to go back down to the lower floor. I want to ask something from the two of you. A staff member with her long hair in a ponytail held us back. M.S. Sun Chai Young's here, and Mr. Seo Jijun will be arriving soon. I nodded, the production staff member asked with begging eyes. Could you ask them to make a cameo appearance? A cameo appearance? Yes. We were about to call WU because we needed a cameo for a top star part. ITLL be the best if MS. Sun Chai Young and Mr. Seo Jijun make an appearance. It was late into our first night in China. I didn't even have time to breathe because we were so busy organizing the schedule. There was the Neptune fan meeting schedule. There was also the Cat Guardian Ghost schedule that would take place in seven regions, starting in Beijing then to Guangzhou, Shanghai, Hong Kong and others. We also had an imminent photo and first filming for Royal Family as well. Putting how busy it was aside, the schedules were so complicatedly tangled that organizing it without any mistakes was a difficult task. Still, I greeted people with a smile thanks to Cat Guardian Ghost's popularity and the entire day felt like the night before a celebration. I even drank in the bar in the end since today was a good day. I saw the people from Huai TV off and tried to sober up outside. Then I went up to the seventh floor again. It seemed other people had already entered their rooms as the busy hallway was now quiet. Only one person, Sun Chai Young, slowly walked back and forth in the hallway. Like she was looking for something. 
Our eyes met as I passed her. No, I thought I passed her, but Sun Chai Young came back after taking a few steps. Why didn't you tell me? She was doing her best to ignore me the entire day, yet what was this now? Tell you what. I heard the Royal Family Production Company wanted me to make a cameo appearance. But why didn't you ask me? I heard you already refused. Definitely. When I asked the company, they said it was fine if the actors agreed. That was why I played a game of rock-paper-scissors with Chief Sun. Since I got goosebumps just thinking of asking Sun Chai Young to make a cameo appearance, I wanted to drop my chances by half. It was my first time playing such a nerve-wracking game of rock-paper-scissors. It was also my first time celebrating my win. While I received a positive reply from Seo Jijun, who was in Korea, I heard Chief Sung went to ask Sun Chai Young personally. I heard he was refused immediately, in less than a second. I recalled Chief Sung's soul-deprived face when Sun Chai Young stomped her heels on the floor. If you asked me, I might have said yes. Well then, will you? I won't. Chapter, 125 I sobered up immediately. I thought this every time I met her, but she really is a crazy. Then that's fine. You're going to end it like that? I started walking again, yet Sun Chai Young asked from behind me. It's the end. You said you aren't going to do it. Don't you have to ask thrice in situations like this? Did she think she was Jugal Young one? I didn't want to compare her to the quadruplets, I really didn't want to compare her to them, but she was worse than when they were preschoolers. A five-year-old that surpassed the naughty fours too, making me want to give her a beating. Still, at least they were young and cute. Why would I ask you to do something you don't want to do three times? Why should I waste my time like that? Everyone does it like that. Not just thrice, they even ask thirty, even three hundred times. I don't. Why? I could change my mind by the time you ask me a third time. I say this again, but she really is a crazy. I was the one who drank tonight, but why was she the one who seemed drunk? What did she want from me? Did she want me to cling to her with tears in my eyes, begging her to make a cameo appearance? Was she doing this to see me like that? Perhaps she thought that this was how I should act since people had always begged to get her to accept their requests, but she thought wrong. This cameo appearance wasn't that important to me. Even if it was important, my answer might have been the same. I don't plan on asking you again. Why? Maybe it'd be different it was someone else, but I don't want to ask you. Sun Chai Young glared at me in chilling silence. I could see her clench her slender jaw, which looked like it could fit in one hand. Would she try to hit me like before? Yeah, I was exhausted from being wary of her all day. If she was going to explode, sooner was better than later. I was thinking about how I should protect my own cheek as Lee Sangha wasn't here to take my side and throw a cake. Fine then. Let's talk about something else instead. She unclenched her jaw and her expression calmed. Sun Chai Young nonchalantly suggested we talk about something else. Talk. Us. Don't you have anything to say to me? Last time. MS. Sun Chai Young. I cut her off. Why did she want to talk when our relationship would only get worse the more we talked? Sun Chai Young's voice poured out into the quiet, chilly hallway. My project, my commercial, she took her share from me. Did I grab her hair because of that? I didn't do anything to her. Then, since she took her share, aren't we even? Let's assume we are even. I shook my head and said. If we are going to talk, shouldn't it start with an apology? An apology? It's not like what happened didn't happen all of a sudden. Because of you, Sangha could have. As soon as I mentioned Lee Song has name, Sun Chai Young's eyes flashed fiercely. What do you want me to do to her? I don't do things like that. Why not? It's always been like that. I stared into Sun Chai Young's eyes before turning my gaze. What did I hope to get from still talking to her? I sighed. Just then, I saw someone standing in front of the elevator behind Sun Chai Young. At first, I thought it was Lee Sangha, but it wasn't. It was Seo Yunkyo. She was leaning against the wall with the elevator buttons and staring directly at Sun Chai Young and me. 
she had a wine bottle in her hand. Sun Chai Young followed my gaze and frowned when she saw Seo Yunkyo. It seemed she had no thoughts of arguing with me in front of others as she walked toward Seo Yunkyo. Sun Bei. I came because I wanted to have a glass of wine with you. Seo Yunkyo stuck to Sun Chai Young like a flea. She looked like she already had a few drinks as her high heels swayed. I want to get close to you and also have some things I want to ask you about. If you have time. I'm tired. Sun Chai Young said without even looking at Seo Yunkyo. Seeing Seo Yunkyo lick her lips, I turned around and went to my room. I needed to sleep early since tomorrow would be the start of my merciless schedule. My body was tired from drinking, but my mind was also exhausted thanks to Sun Chai Young. I really wanted to bury myself in the King Size Hotel mattress. If you see someone, you should greet them. The manager and the celebrity are the same. Was today some special occasion? Today's cancer horoscope must be this. Beware of crazy bitches. It looks like you don't have a good relationship with Sun Chai Young Sun Bei. You both raised your voices and stuff. It also seemed like she didn't have a great relationship with Lee Songa, right? Of course, Lee Songa isn't the type to be adored by sunbays like me. Seo Yunkyo, who had come up to my nose, said while smiling brightly. Her eyes, which were drooped like she had a few drinks, was overflowing with malice. Lee Songa, that girl, did she sleep with someone? What did you say? She suddenly got commercials and dramas, big ones at that, when she's just a rookie who had one successful drama. It doesn't make sense if there isn't anything. She didn't do anything of the sort. What do you mean she didn't? I can tell just by seeing the situation. Her quietly whispering voice dirted my ears. My throat heated up. Hey, M.S. C.O. Yunkyo. I heard that CEO Beck Hansung supporting her without hesitation, did she sleep with him? Or, since you had a scandal with her, did she sleep with you too? Wow, so young yet hardworking. They say pigs only see pigs. Is that how you work? I scowled, and CEO Yunkyo flinched in fright. Then, twice as angry as before, she shouted. What? What did you just call me? Pig? You? Free. Yeah, you. Because people treat the two of you like stars, do you really think you are one? You acted like you were so close to the director and writer last time too. If your celebrity is as stiff as a block of wood, then you should be the one bowing for her, yet you're worse. She poked me with the tip of the wine bottle. My mind went blank. How long had it been since I was so angry? Hey, you should know your place. You're just a manage. Thud. Hit on the back of her head, CEO Yunkyo fell towards me. She took a few teetering steps back before collapsing on the hallway floor like a puppet whose strings were cut. Isn't she a crazy? Sun Chai Young tapped CEO Yunkyo's side with her toe. She didn't even react. Was she dead? You talked back to me so well, yet why were you just taking it from her? Sun Chai Young asked while staring at me. You didn't want to talk with me but I guess you wanted to talk with her. I was about to do something, but before that, just what? I hit her, why? Are you going to say something again? No, I might have hit her as well. When I examined her, she was breathing well and seemed fine considering she was mumbling something. But what did I have to do to make this a perfect crime? How much of a pushover were you for someone like her to tell you to bow or not? You'd be dead if you were my manager right now. No, there wouldn't even be cases like this from the first place. Are you listening to me? You aren't listening to me. What are you thinking about? How to handle this trash? Why handle it? Sun Chai Young took out her phone and called someone. Call the security. This person, what's her name, anyways, is drunk and wasted on the seventh floor hallway. She hung up after saying what she had to say then looked up at me with her arms crossed. Then, with a grim voice, she said. I was going to say this before, but you did wrong to me too. Wrong? You lied to me. When you called and I asked where you were, you said that the team leader didn't make you call me or that he wasn't next to you, 
but you had me on speakerphone with a bunch of people listening in. I didn't even know that and I. Sun Chai Young cut herself off and suddenly shouted. You should apologize to me too. That did happen. Sun Chai Young didn't even wait for my reply and turned around. Why am I doing this? So annoying. Then she walked off. Cat Guardian Ghost Li Song has arrival paralyzed a Chinese airport. Li Song has set to be an international star of the next generation, received a green light for activities in China. Cat Guardian Ghost begins broadcasting, video site accumulated over 50 million views. Yung Sun Wu, the mid-ass hand who made Li Songa an international star, how far will his impact go? Team leader, I saw the articles you sent me. They are all good, but what's the last one? What do you mean? It's a hot topic in Korea right now and you became a hot topic along with it. Team leader Park laughed refreshingly on the other end. I heard the PR team wasn't able to leave and have been holding consecutive meetings for the past few days. Maybe it was because it was all good news, but there was delighted clamoring in the background. Due to Park Dojin and Sung Daoan scandals breaking out one after another, Chinese investments wavered, and a lot of people in our industry was worried about it. Worried that the popularity of Korean culture would falter as well. But the mood's flipped now that Cat Guardian Ghost's a hit. The company is celebrating right now too. Although I don't know how much of a commotion it's causing in Korea, it can't compare to here. Saying this, I glanced at the promotion event. There were the lead and supporting actors including Lee Sangha and Seo Jijun and director Shin Taekyun and writer Hong Jumi, who I saw for the first time in a while. The key individuals who created Cat Guardian Ghost were replying to interview questions on the brilliant lights. Everyone looked astounded. Though, they couldn't help but be. This was an event originally scheduled to host reporters and around a hundred fans, but they suddenly changed the location and made it ten times bigger. Apparently, fans bugged the crap out of the host, YTV, for this, asking them when they would see the actors in person if not now. The result was around a thousand fans filling the seats. At this moment, Lee Sangha held the mic. Cheers erupted. When Lee Sangha began speaking fluent Chinese prepared ahead of time to promote the drama, the fans went crazy. Although I had been to tons of events back home, I had never been to one with such a passionate atmosphere. In fact, it was this passionate when we went to perform for the army. Really? The reactions in China are that amazing? Can't you hear the fans screaming? It's crazy. We've been surrounded by security since arriving in Beijing that we've only gone back and forth between locations. We can't go outside because of the number of people. Oh my god. It's not just Jijun but Sangha as well. Team leader Park asked again and again as if she couldn't believe the situation. I was the same. It was so severe that I couldn't sleep even while lying completely exhausted on the hotel bed. My chest strangely felt overwhelmed, and my hands and feet felt so itchy I kept pacing back and forth in my room while looking at Beijing's glittering nightlife outside my window until dawn. I looked at Li Songa, who was standing on the stage. Although I could tell she was a little excited, she looked quite bold. Yes, Song has also been receiving a lot of positive reactions. It's crazy here. It's a spree of happy events. Thanks to that, Neptune's popularity has risen and it seems their album is selling quite a bit. That's why Chief Kim is busy adjusting their fan meeting event. If Neptune does well in China, then we're extremely fortunate this year. First, we need to use this hype to fix Jijun and Sangha as international stars. Send me all the sources you read and hear. Yes, I'll ask the press. Get your hopes up. I'll make it so you think, so this is what you call returning home in glory, when you arrive at Incheon Airport. I'm from MMTV, while you're staying in Beijing, we wanted to invite MS. Lee Sangha to our program. Chief. Chief Young Sun Wu. I'm a Korean producer making a Chinese entertainment program. What are MS? Lee Song has plans on appearing on Chinese entertainment shows. If nothing's decided yet, could we talk? Wait. I'm the Beijing correspondent for a national paper. Could I interview? Just five minutes. Mr. Young Sun Wu, please give us your comment. 
I was held up for almost 30 minutes going to the washroom and back. I was able to get away from the Chinese media with my lacking Chinese skills and body language, but the problem was those who approached me by speaking Korean. Correspondence from some paper or other. Korean producers and writers who Chinese broadcasting companies outsourced to create shows. We are continuously organizing her interview schedule and broadcast appearances so well contact you through our Chinese agency once we're done. Please contact us before the Chinese media. After receiving a pile of business cards, I barely managed to go behind the stage when I saw Chief Lee Bangjun giggling at me. Wow, Young Sun Wu, you're so popular. Go outside, Chief. I bet you'll get your soul sucked out of you. I'm just Seo Jijun's manager while you're famous. But maybe you'll become famous in China as well. Chinese people like superstitions. They love lucky people too. No thank you. I waved my hand, and Chief Li Bangjun held his stomach and laughed even harder. This man wasn't in his right mind. Chief Li Bangjun quickly began chatting with someone from Huai TV. They had met not so long ago, yet they were so quick at making friends that they seemed like brothers already. They were now talking about going out for drinks and whatnot. Chief Yung Sun Wu. A neat man wearing glasses struck a conversation. I greeted him before Ah, he was from the Chinese agency WU had contracted. Although he was Chinese, he was so fluent in Korean that there was no problem with communicating. I think MS. Lee Song is going to have a lot more activities in China from now on, we might see each other often. That might be the case. Please take care of me. We should be the one asking you. How about getting a drink someday? We greeted the other chiefs before, but it's your first time here. It'll lead you to a good place. Yes, please let me know. While I was talking to one person and another, the promotion event ended. Next to Seo Jijun, who was wearing a suit, Li Sangha tightly held the hem of her dress as she made her way down the stage. Since it was her first time wearing such a long dress that dragged on the floor and because she wanted to come here, it was funny seeing how unsteady her steps were. Walk slowly. You might trip on your dress. Appa, I didn't mess up on any of my Chinese lines. I was preparing to compliment her, but I was suddenly hugged. By Seo Jijun. Why were there so many people who wanted to hug me these days? Hey, Chief Young. How was I out there? You were great, but please let go. Reporters are taking pictures. We were being serenaded with camera flashes. Li Sangha stood agitated like she had been cut in line. Hey, aren't I your manager? Chief Li Bangjun came over with a dumbfounded expression. If you're so moved that you're going to hug someone, you should be hugging me. They said if you devote yourself, you'll be worn out. I became an international star thanks to Mr. Sun Wu. Just wait a sec, you're next, Hyung. Chief Li Bangjun chuckled. I don't want to be second. Sangha, stop standing there like your mother's been snatched away. Should we hug as people who've been abandoned? I don't want to. Ha, huh, I knew you'd say that. Chief Li Bangjun giggled when he was immediately rejected by Li Sangha. I tried to push Seo Jijun away, yet chuckling, he said. Mr. Sun Wu. You remember how I told you that I would repay the favor once? Yes, I'm holding on to it for when I need a really big favor. Add one more, no, two more. It'll repay you threefold. I guess I should let him hug me since today was a good day. Hey, you're giving away blank checks with no precaution. You don't even know what hell ask from you. I have to be generous. I'm an international star now. I left Seo Jijun and Chief Li Bangjun, who were having a laugh, and went to the waiting room with Li Sangha. Due to there being too many press correspondents and unknown people approaching us, security had to stick close to us until we arrived at the waiting room door. I went into the room with Li Sangha and examined the inside. I was checking to see if there weren't any hidden perverts or cameras. Come out when you're done changing. I'll be waiting outside. I was heading to the door when something suddenly pounced on me from behind. Something smooth, soft, and warm. Then my forehead immediately banged against the door. Screaming in silence, I clasped my forehead with my hands when Li Sangha, 
who had clung to my back, almost like a piggyback, became shocked and got off me. Appa, Appa, is your head okay? Your forehead's red. It's not cracked. I, I don't think it's that bad. Just what were you? Astounded, I was about to turn around, but a security guard outside knocked on the door. I heard him ask if there was something wrong and if he should come in so I quickly told him everything was fine. Behind me, Lee Sangha said in a whispering, quiet voice. I tripped over my dress. Sorry. You were clearly on the other side rather than tripping, it's almost like you flew. No, I tripped. She read my expression and added as if making an excuse. The dress was the culprit. Lee Sangha and I were extremely busy. It seemed like the other Neptune members were touring Beijing, but that was like a dream for us. It wasn't enough that we were following our schedule by the minute, we had to cram practicing the royal family script into our sleep time. Then, the filming of Royal Family finally began. I think the sunbed is in the camera frame. Please double check. We finished setting up the cocktails in the pool bar. The film set was an outdoor hotel swimming pool that reached the peak of luxuriousness. The cast were Lee Sangha and the numerous extras recruited here. And Seo Yunkyo joined the mix on top of that. Damn it. I was looking around at the swimming pool while waiting for Lee Sangha to change into her swimsuit when Seo Yunkyo was coming over wearing a gown. It was my first time seeing her since handing her over to a security guard after she collapsed in the hotel hallway. How much of that day did she remember? Excuse me, what swimsuit is Lee Sangha wearing? It seemed she blacked out. A bikini? A rash guard? Monokini? What is she wearing? Why are you? Chief Young. Hearing a voice calling for me, CO Yunkyo cursed under her breath before quickly putting on a smile. When I turned around, I saw Director Wu, who exposed his hairy chest, approach me with open arms. Chief Young, I heard you got the cameo appearances. What to do when we're the ones always receiving help? It's nothing. Please get a good scene. This will be a beauty even if I shoot it with my feet. The outfit is a swimsuit. Ha. Huh. I didn't hear anything about Seo Jijun wearing a swimsuit. Then was he on set with us? Just as I thought this, Seo Yunkyo, who was giving me an unpleasant look, suddenly brightened. Then she raised her hand up and waved. As though she met someone who was on her side. Sunbei. Chaeyoung Sunbei. Chapter, 126. People parted like the Red Sea. Sun Chaeyoung walked through the path. Her white swimsuit peeked out from her loosely tied bathrobe. Wow, I don't know if we can even film because of MS. Chaeyoung. Director Wu said while looking around. The film crew and extras were staring at Sun Chai Young with faces that showed they could die right now with no regrets. In the corner, the security guards were busy scuffling with the spectators who were taking out their phones. Seo Yunkyo, who now resembled a chihuahua, was wagging her tail at Sun Chai Young. Sun Bei, it's our first time meeting since the airport. Are you making a cameo appearance? I guess she really didn't remember. I was waiting to meet you again all this Tim. Do you not remember me? Sun Chaeyoung tilted her head and asked. For someone who struck the back of another person's head, she seemed too nonchalant. We remember. Not long ago. In the seventh floor hallway. You were drunk. We saw each other then. With me? Uh, I blacked out that day. CO Yunkyo's eyes shook. She was so taken aback that even her stuttering voice cracked. Not caring about her, Sun Chai Young left while talking to director Wu about the camera angle. Hey, look here. Seo Yunkyo abrupt swung her head towards me. I heard you were the one who discovered me that day. Was Chai Young Sun Bei there as well? She was. D did I say something improper in front of her while drunk? Ah, uh, something improper. Did I or not? Quickly tell me. Seo Yunkyo shouted stomping her feet. You did. Rather than saying something improper, I think it's like you showed off your true self. WH what did I say? That's you said some very offending and unpleasant words. 
I slightly frowned and shook my head. Saying stuff like who slept with who you said things that would make people never want to associate with you ever again so I can't say anymore. Really? really? Just thinking about it feels like it's dirtying my ears. C.O. Yunkyo's face paled. What did you say for her to be like that? Lying on the sunbed, Sun Chai Young asked while glancing in her direction. C.O. Yunkyo was looking at us while looking like a nervous chihuahua that had made a mess. Well, it wasn't too far from the truth. Since it was true that she said some very insulting words in Sun Chai Young's presence. Though her target was me. But I thought you said you weren't doing a cameo. I didn't come because of you. The director was just mistaken. Sun Chai Young said as she put her sunglasses on. I was wanted to say something, but simply opened my mouth a little and stopped. I was at a loss for words. There were too many times where I tangled with Sun Chai Young that I didn't know where to start to untangle. No, to be honest, there wasn't a reason to nor did I want to. Although I was the one who brought up apologizing, her terrible past was still vivid in my mind. Even if she apologized with utmost sincerity, I wondered if I could talk with her like nothing happened. Not seeing her would be most comfortable, instead of constantly being entangled with her. Just as I thought this, Sun Chai Young said. I came here for me. Is that so? Okay. That's fine. I was about to turn around when she continued. It's embarrassing. A lot of people at work know that I wanted to work with you, but if you are disregarded out in society and people swear at you, what do I become? It makes it seem like I have a crappy eye for people. Anyways, that's why I came. But you handled it on your own. Sun Chai Young looked at Seo Yunkyo again and shrugged. Then she exhaled and brushed her hair to the side. She touched the back of her neck, which looked slender enough to fit in one hand, then grabbed the sunbed's armrests a couple times. She also opened and closed her mouth a few times as if she was beating around the bush. I couldn't see her expression because her sunglasses covered half her face. Last time. Sun Chai Young began to speak. I heard hurried steps behind me. Appa. It was Lee Songa. Her bathrobe was tightly wrapped around her like someone had rolled her up in a blanket. All that was exposed were her flawless, milky white arms and legs. The gazes that had previously focused on Sun Chai Young now fixated on Lee Songa. There weren't just one or two faces that were enchanted. Another scuffle broke out between the spectators and security guards. There seemed to be a bigger commotion than before. Who amongst them would know? That, at this moment, the peaceful swimming pool was, in fact, a war zone. I took some deep breaths. Since I was stuck between two people who always cause trouble when together, every hair on my body was alert. Making all sorts of preparations wouldn't be enough. Appa, I changed into my swimsuit. It seemed she didn't notice Sun Chai Young. Unlike her usual self that was unconcerned with her surroundings, she was conscious of her surroundings as she said. When I changed into it, it was a bit. A bit? I think it's too racy. It exposes so much skin. The stylist Yunis said it was fine, but I wanted Appa to tell me how it. While Lee Sangha was hesitantly talking while fiddling with her fingers, Sun Chai Young suddenly got up from her sunbed. What an amateur. She took off her sunglasses with one hand and untied her bathrobe with the other. The next moment, her bathrobe slid down her shoulders. Then she clearly revealed her white bikini. Sounds which seemed like admiration or screaming erupted around us. My gaze also drifted to her for an instant. Only for a moment. Just a moment. Why are you here? Li Sangha asked in a monotone voice. Her gaze, which alternated between me and Sun Chai Young, looked serious. Why? Did you rent the entire swimming pool? The film crew did. I came to make a cameo appearance. Can't you tell? Sun Chai Young said while placing her hand on her hip. As she glanced up and down at Lee Sangha who was wrapped tightly in her bathrobe. It was clear that her actions disintegrated the last bits of Lee Songha's rationality. Her wariness of Sun Chai Young, which continued since she met her at the airport, exploded like a grenade thrown without its safety pin. I'm not an amateur. 
Li Songa energetically untied her bathrobe. Then, as if showing off, she placed both hands on her hips. She wore a black monokini that was prepared for her top star Li Sohi role. I understood why Li Songa said it looked racy. Just judging purely by exposed skin, Sun Chai Young wearing a bikini had more. However, the monokini Li Songa wore was designed with intersecting strings, it was oddly. Stop it, you crazy idiot. Now was not the time for this. This was a battlefield. A battlefield. I forced myself to look away. Wow, the mood's great. Have the two of you already gotten into your roles? My heart quickly relaxed when I saw the Harry Director song. Fortunately, Lee Sangha and Sun Chai Young entered a ceasefire at the director's appearance. Director Wu made a frame with his thumb and index fingers as he looked in our direction, smiling in satisfaction. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps Sun Chai Young's cameo appearance would have a positive effect. Writer Jang said that she wanted actors to fly off the page and feel more realistic. Maybe writer Jang would be satisfied looking at this scene. The scene looks good. Amazing. Director Wu said with a smile. I think this'll work great. I already finished editing it in my head. That great. It's the very important first scene. When I replied, Director Wu looked at me with a sly expression. About that, Chief. Yes. I think it would be wonderful if you also made a cameo appearance. Are you really going to do it? A cameo? A makeup artist asked while tapping my face with a compact. I have to. If it's a scene with Sangha, then her airtime will increase and the director said he already finished editing it in his mind. My face was already out there. I didn't think it would cause a huge incident because I made a cameo appearance for a couple seconds. If Lee Song has first scene would be longer and increase its impact from this, then it wasn't something I couldn't handle. After changing into an outfit, I approached Director Wu. Director Wu and the well-made production staff were gathered in front of the monitor. I looked at the screen from behind as well. Lee Songa, Sun Chai Young, and Seo Yunkyo were talking to each other. The site in front of me was busy with reflective panels, lights, a camera on rails, a boom mic, and a jib camera that moved in the air, but the scene reflect on the screen seemed like a completed drama. There was a tremendous power struggle going on between two very prideful top actresses. And an aloof heiress who couldn't stand it and cut in. I observed the screen while thinking of their roles. Ing. Well start from the beginning again. Director Wu raised his voice while clicking his tongue. M.S. Yunkyo, what's wrong? Unlike his happy appearance, he looked completely unsatisfied. Why are you so dispirited? Are you not well? No, director. He'll do it properly this time. Sorry. Seo Yunkyo bowed apologetically. Seo Yunkyo, who had a gloomy complexion, talked with her similar unhappy manager. Not long after, the cameras began rolling again. However, Director Wu's expression still didn't look bright. It's not bad, but maybe it's because the other two are so eye-catching. She seems to lose out. Rather than losing out, it's more like she's squashed by their presence. A production producer from Well Made Production added in a quiet voice. When M.S. Sun Chai Young and M.S. Li Sangha are saying their lines, the moods overflowing with tension, yet when M.S. Seo Yunkyo joins in, it completely deflates. It's no use even if I give her directions. We might have to cut some of her lines and reduce her screen time. She was really good during the reading session. Maybe she's not the type that does well in front of the camera. She might be. Well, it's fine. The scene is abundant with just the other two. The conversation went over to a more exciting topic. MS. Li Song has acting is very realistic. She's a monster rookie. The rumors about her acting skills were so glamorous that I only believed half of it. This industry is known for exaggerating, but seeing her act in person, it feels like the rumors didn't go far enough. It's like Li So He from the script is standing there. The corners of my lips happily curled up. The production producer admired. As for M.S. Sun Chai Young, 
there's nothing more to say. I heard writer Jang originally wrote Lee So Hee while thinking about Sun Chai Young. She did. When I heard it, I thought her image didn't suit the role, but seeing her now, it might have been great if we went with her as well. Especially when comparing the two next to each other. Her cameo role feels livelier than the lead actress. Just look at how much experience she's had. Even though M.S. Lee Sangha isn't doing a bad job, M.S. Sun Chai Young is just so. Someone poked the production producer's back. Turning around, the production producer jolted from her seat upon discovering me. Chief Young. That is what I meant wasn't that. It seemed my expression didn't look very pleased considering how nervous the producer was. She did her best to compliment Lee Sangha, saying how she was speaking nonsense just now and that Lee Song has acting skills were top-notch. I controlled my expression and nodded. Then I pondered while observing Lee Sangha moving in the screen. Since I was a cameo now anyways, I needed to boost Lee Sangha as much as possible. How should I go about doing that? Chief Yun will go in for this scene. What kind of role am I playing? I can't prepare if you don't tell me. Director Wu patted my shoulder with his thick hands. It's better if you don't prepare. If amateurs prepare for and think about their roles, it becomes too plainly obvious that they are acting and ITLL look awkward. We're going to film your reactions without and dialogue so don't feel pressured. Ah, uh, okay. Your role will be MS. Sun Chai Young's manager. Oka pardon. MS. Sun Chai Young's manager. Ah, uh, please wait for a moment. While I stood rigidly, Director Wu approached Lee Songa and Sun Chai Young. Both their faces become strange when they listen to Director Wu. Then they looked at me. Lee Songa was obviously taken aback. She felt like Lee So He just moments before, yet what did he say for her to act like this? Sun Chai Young had an expression that made it difficult to tell if she was smiling or frowning. Just what was going on? Director Wu soon called out to me so I came over. Li Sangha flapped her mouth like she wanted to say something. Director Wu requested. Since it's a cameo scene, M.S. Sangha and M.S. Chai Young, you can ad-lib as much as you want. Let's make it as realistic as possible. Just say to yourself, I'm the craziest in this industry. Although it might be uncomfortable for you to say rude things to each other because of the seniority between you two, just close your eyes and bear it. Uncomfortable. Director Wu looked at me and added. Also, Chief Young just needs to react realistically. The rest will be taken care of by the actresses. Director Wu asked one thing from me. To approach them like I had been looking for Sun Chai Young. Then to leave it to the two actresses. I waited for the director's signal as I watched Lee Sangha and Sun Chaeyoung act. Just then, the director gave me the signal. Gulping dryly, I approached the two who were arguing. Multiple thoughts crossed my mind. My steps should be quick since I was supposed to be looking for Sun Chai Young. Damn it, but why did I have to be Sun Chai Young's manager? I couldn't get in my role. Just as my foot stepped into the camera frame, Sun Chai Young cheerfully grabbed my arm. Good timing. Come over here. Do you know what she just said to me? She pointed at Lee Sangha with one hand and dragged me with her other. Dazed, I looked at Lee Sangha who was blocking Sun Chai Young's path. What happened next went by in an instant. A cocktail splashed on my face and a cold lemon wedge slapped my cheek. Then I heard Director Wu's voice. Ing. Chapter. 127. The lemon wedge slid down to my chin. I threw it off and brushed my hair back. It was wet everywhere I touched. When I licked my lips, I tasted alcohol. Uh, what do I do? Appa, does it hurt? Lee Sangha was rubbing my face with the sleeve of her bathrobe. Even though her movements were hasty, she was careful like she was touching a wet chick. Since there weren't just one or two people looking at us, I pushed Lee Song his hand away and wiped my face with the back of my hand. It doesn't hurt, but Sunha. Yes, yes. I thought I told you to discuss with me if you wanted to throw something. Even though she said her hands felt empty and even if it was out of reflex, I had thought that our promise would take priority. 
When I stared at her, Li Songa nervously said. I know, I'm sorry, Appa. But the director. The director. When I looked at the production team, director Wu was replaying the film scene while talking with the production staff and assistant director. Soon, director Wu jolted up from his seat and came over. Chief Young, your reactions were amazing. We were able to clearly capture your surprised and flustered reactions. See, I told you that you only needed to react. If you knew you'd be splashed with alcohol, you wouldn't have made such an expression. So director Wu ordered her. Sorry for giving you this role after asking you to make a cameo appearance. M.S. Chai Young's presence is too big that I thought we needed at least this much action for Mr. Sangha to win their power struggle. Since everyone at home knows your relationship with M.S. Sangha, the scene will also be comedic. It's okay. As long as you got it. And here I thought Lee Sangha couldn't control her instincts and threw it at me. I was going to tell Lee Sangha that she did a good job before pausing. If the scene came out great, why was it NG? Before I could ask, Director Wu said. M.S. Chai Young, your actions and ad libbed lines were all great. There's nothing more to say. Sun Chai Young's lips curled up slightly. The problem is M.S. Sangha. I don't think we can use any bust shots of you. My eyes unconsciously widened. It was NG because of Lee Sangha. They wouldn't be able to use a single cut. Director Wu frowned as he said. Your gaze was great for the previous scene, but this time, the tension in the air crumbled. It was clearly obvious you were hesitant when splashing the cocktail on him. Why are you like this suddenly? Is it your first time in a scene like this? Is it difficult to splash a cocktail on someone you're close to? No, it was my mistake. I flinched without knowing you'll do it properly this time. Lee Songa replied while biting on her lower lip. Director Wu nodded and placed his hand on my shoulder. Chief Young's reaction was perfect, but since there's a three-shot and an angle where a camera is filming over your shoulder, you are always in the frame. Would you mind doing it again? I nodded at the apologetic Director Wu. I had already been worried that Li Sangha didn't feel as realistic as Sun Chai Young, who was only making a cameo appearance. If the mood changes from this scene, if it makes the viewers look at Li Sangha more than Sun Chai Young, then why not? It's refreshing and nice. It's tasty too. Other actors and dramas were hit with kimchi, flour, and stuff, so cocktails weren't so bad. When I said this while licking my lower lip, Sun Chai Young's eyes narrowed. Then she revealed a crooked smile. You like this? Then should I ask her to throw a cake at you next time? That feels much worse. I'm satisfied with just watching. I trailed off mid-reply. A few steps away, Lee Sangha was constantly conscious of us. She was burning to know what we were talking about. Although it was the director's order, she felt sorry and guilty for splashing a cocktail on my face and for getting a NG. Which was why she felt she couldn't join in our conversation. These were probably her thoughts right now. I decided now wasn't the time to leave her in that state and talk to Sun Chai Young so I immediately went over to her. Then I comforted Lee Sangha, who was feeling down from the NG. Sangha, don't worry about the NG. Just do it without worrying about me. Yes, yes, Appa. It'll do it perfectly this time. There won't be a third time. Li Sangha said resolutely. Ing. Again. Li Sangha was taken aback with a flustered face, but Director Wu immediately shouted. Again. And, Q. Sun Chai Young tightly grasped my arm and dragged me over. This time, I observed Li Songha's expression without a care for the cocktail flying at my face. I understood why the scene was no good. While acting, Li Sangha seemed to embody her role to the point it was worrisome, but this wasn't the case right now. The one who stood rigidly while holding an empty cocktail glass wasn't the audacious top star Li Sohi. It wasn't the celebrity Li Sangha who people mistook for being cold and unapproachable. She was the Li Sangha that I knew. The Li Sangha who held my sleeve and slightly pulled on it and rustled in the passenger seat while handing me jellies or chips. That was why the scene was no good. 
multiple takes all resulted in NGs while I was thinking about what to do. Cocktails splashed on my face that many times, and Lee Sangha firmly embedded herself into a state of disorder. At first, she didn't know why the scenes were no good, but after checking the scene on the monitor with the director, she looked even more surprised. If I excluded the time she was flustered and forgot all her lines, she never had such a hard time with acting. It seemed she herself was frustrated and nervous that she couldn't act the way she wanted to as she was at a loss at what to do. Why can't I do this? Why? While the next cocktail was being prepared, Lee Sangha poured water into the used, empty cocktail glasses and threw their contents in a frenzy. She returned to her role quite a bit. The snap in her wrist was also relentless. The problem was that she relapsed when the shoot began. It seemed she couldn't immerse herself in her role because of me, should I talk to director Wu again? But that man's expression didn't look great. Don't tell me the entire scene would be cut. I thought about it while drying my hair with a towel when I heard the staff members whispering behind me. Why is she like that? Apparently, she almost never made any NGs when filming Cat Guardian Ghost. Was it because she never had to ad-lib and strictly follow the script? I told you not to listen to those apparently's. MS. Sun Chai Young and the manager are the ones suffering. Putting the manager aside, I bet she's nervous about MS. Sun Chai Young's mood. How many times did she mess up in the exact spot of the scene with her great sunbae? It's great that she isn't pissed. This is worse than the scene with MS. C.O. Yunkyo. I know, right? If this continues, will MS. Lee Sangha have a mental breakdown? Then this scene is cut. We are using an incredibly expensive film to make the footage pop since it's our first scene and there's a cameo appearance. We're just burning money like we're throwing out cocktails. I glanced at director Wu. He was scratching his sideburns as his eyes were glued to the screen while shaking his head intermittently. He looked like someone who expected something spectacular but suffered a total loss. On the other hand, CEO Yunkyo looked like she was enjoying this situation. Previously, she looked like she was about to dig her own grave and lie in it because of what happened with Sun Chai Young and how she messed up the first shoot, but now, she was lying on a sunbed, drinking cocktails jubilantly. She was glancing at Lee Sangha while whispering to her manager, but it was obvious what they were talking about. They were probably hoping that Lee Sangha messed this shoot up so that her scenes would decrease and that she would leave a bad impression on the director and Sun Chai Young. If that happened, they would be joyfully toasting with their cocktails. Just thinking about it made my insides twist. Sangha. When I approached her, she flinched in surprise like a guilty person. I looked around before saying in a quiet voice. Don't feel so pressured. It's normal for a rookie actress to mess up. You're just making mistakes because there are a lot of spontaneous parts to this shoot. That's why you should just relax and remember how you calmed Reed Lee Sohee's lines during practice. Yes, I'm sorry. Appa. You're soaked because of me. I'm fine. Getting splashed with cocktails isn't bad once in your life. It's already your fifth time. It's fine, I feel like a lead in a drama. You got splashed five times because of me and got grabbed five times. Li Sangha mumbled in a gloomy voice as she stared at Sun Chai Young. She was oddly quiet. I thought that, like Seo Yunkyo, Sun Chai Young would be beyond irritated and personally attack Lee Sangha. She was simply looked at us with crossed arms. I took my eyes off Sun Chai Young and lowered my voice. If you still can't get into the role, think that you're splashing Sun Chai Young instead of me. You said that your hands felt empty. You remember when you threw a cake and a snowman's head at her, right? Recall the rage you felt back then. Rage. Narrowing her eyes, Li Sangha snatched and downed the other cocktail on the pool bar in an instant. She brought the glass down with a thud. Then, with clenched fists, she said. I think I can do it properly this time. I got a feeling. Just then, Director Wu approached us with a frowning face and said. This is our last take. If it's no good this time as well, we're moving on to the next scene. This was our last chance. People who heard director Wu's words murmured. They seemed interested in whether this final take would be okay or end up as a NG again. 
CEO Yunkyo looked like she needed popcorn. Damn it. Let's not look in her direction since it angers me. Anyways, everyone was watching us. If the take resulted in a NG again, then her image as a talented rookie actress she gained while filming Cat Guardian Ghost would be tossed away. Also, the events of today would follow her around throughout the shoot. I swallowed dryly and looked at Lee Sangha. Don't misunderstand. Sun Chai Young suddenly said. About what now? A cameo appearance is an appearance, but I'm doing this because my screen time might be cut out completely because of her. Saying this, she steadfastly walked to Lee Sangha. Then she whispered something in her ear. What was she whispering about? I couldn't hear anything even though I perked my ears. The surrounding gazes began to lock on them. Although there were quite a few people who were trying to act like they were coming closer and perking their ears, since I, who was closer, couldn't hear it, they obviously couldn't. Their secret conversation ended quickly. Sun Chai Young casually returned next to me, and Lee Sangha stood rigidly with a tight grip on a newly made cocktail I couldn't clearly see her expression because her head was slightly lowered. Just as I was about to ask Sun Chai Young what she said. This is our last take. And, Q. The murmurs quieted down immediately, and Lee Sangha swiftly raised her head. That's it. I inwardly yelled in delight when I saw her expression. Her chilling face that seemed to have frosted over. However, her eyes were burning in fury. A Lee so he like gaze. She looked like she could eliminate. Do you know what she said to me? Sun Chai Young pulled my arm while saying in an irritated voice. At the same time, Lee Sangha swung the cocktail glass without hesitation. Her emotions looked good. The snap of her wrist was good too. So was her spirit. I confirmed as a lemon wedge slapped my cheek. This was, without a doubt, a good take. That moment, Lee Sangha forcefully pushed me aside. Then she suddenly grabbed two cocktail glasses in each hand and swung them. Without me as a shield, Sun Chai Young was completely soaked by her attack. You! Sun Chai Young screamed. You, are you crazy? Li Sangha didn't seem to even hear her as she threw away the empty glasses. Then she reloaded with new ones. Madness lingered in her eyes. It was to the point where I was confused whether she was holding cocktail glasses or Molotov cocktails. That's enough. Do you to fight right here and now? Is that it? I could hear Sun Chai Young grind her teeth. Then, with a dazzling smile, Li Sangha replied. Woof, woof. Pushed aside, I blankly watched the scene in front of me. Sun Chai Young grabbed Li Songha's hair first, and Li Sangha immediately grabbed Sun Chai Young's head with both hands. Sun Chai Young's yells and Li Songha's barks mixed together and rang throughout the swimming pool. Fighting in close quarters, the two splashed into the pool. People hastily retreated from this disaster. The quiet pool had, in mere moments, devolved into a mess. Seeing this, I suddenly recalled what director Wu said before. He said he wanted to see a M the craziest in this industry attitude. There it was. Director Wu's but heaved up and down. His beard that ran down his sideburns to his chin trembled. His eyes, which were as wide as brass bells, and his thick hands holding a rolled-up filming script were shaking. He observed the screen with excitement. Most drama writers hoped for their characters to jump off the script. And directors hoped for acting that exceeded their own directions. In front of him right was a heated performance that exceeded his expectations. Director Wu wasn't the only one who was surprised. The production, directing, camera, lights, and audio staff were all hypnotized by the fight in the pool. CEO Yunkyo, who had hoped for Lee Song has terrible performance, couldn't close her agape mouth, and the spectators, who were in an uproar to take pictures while avoiding the security guards' gazes, stood stiff, only moving their eyes. A well-made production employee broke the silence and admired. Wow! God damn! Their energy is amazing! Director Wu raised his hand and cut him off. Then he began quickly ordering the staff. We keep rolling. Have the jib camera chase them and get a full shot. Boom mic. 
audio director, we're going to use all their ad-libbed lines so try to preserve as many as possible. If we leave it for post-recording, ITLL eliminate this amazing scene. The audio director checked that the boom mic was above the pool and gave him a thumbs up. I think we'll be able to preserve almost all of it. The two actresses are no joke. They are saying some aggressive ad-libbed lines without rest, yet their pronunciation is clear and steady so your ears pick them up easily. Good, good. Director Wu licked his dry lips and said. Get one camera on Chief Young Sun Wu's reaction. His reaction is great. Immediately, a camera got a close-up of his face. With a face full of confusion and amazement, Young Sun Wu was looking into the pool that was splashing about. His expression was clearly recorded by the camera. A staff member, who had been staring at the various closely arranged screens, pressed her chest and whispered. Oh, my. Even as a spectator, I can't help but hold my breath. Even if we consider Chief Young Sun Wu's reaction as real, MS. Sun Chai Young and MS. Lee Sangha are incredible. So realistic and lively. It feels more realistic than a real fight. Consider yourself lucky. Do you think it's easy to see a something like this? An ad lib scene like this is rare even in the movie business. They looked possessed. Their cooperation is amazingly good. You might even doubt this is all ad-libbed and think they've rehearsed it a hundred times. I bet no one would believe that this was all ad-libbed even if we showed them the tapes. I mean, even their pronunciation is precise. That means they are thinking about how they should deliver lines in this situation, just amazing. How could they improvise something like that? That's why they are actresses, man. That's why they are professionals. The two actresses' performance didn't end even as the faces of everyone gathered in the swimming pool flushed with excitement and their mouths were dry from admiration. Just then, Director Wu's signal rang out. Okay. Cut. Chapter, 128. The moment the OK signal came down, my heart thumped. I gulped my dry saliva as I looked at Li Sangha and Sun Chai Young. The two were still grabbing each other's hair and collars. They won't ignore the director's signal, will they? They'll let go soon. Of course, they will. Did you two not hear him? Why aren't they coming out? I think they are still grabbing at each other's collars. Why are they like that? They didn't let go. What a mess. Damn it, damn it. What should I say to the staff? Korean stars A and B got in a real fight during an ad lib scene. Just as this tabloid headline struck my mind, Lee Sangha and Sun Chai Young let go of each other. WH, ah, thank you for your hard work. Thank you. Lee Sangha was first to bow to the staff. I couldn't hear the signal. Water got in my ears. Sun Chai Young said after. The staff surrounded them as soon as they go out of the pool. Wow. This scene was amazing. It was the best ad lib ever. They weren't ad-libbing. Even though I knew you were acting, my heart was pounding. They weren't acting either. I think people will go crazy if we make a promotional clip out of it. Let's tell them that this was an ad-libbed scene at the end and word it this way, they are real actresses. This is what ad-lib is. This is what professionalism looks like. Bullshit. I barely managed to swallow the word that had crawled up my throat. Anyways, it was great that we were done. Holding my chest, I was about to go to Lee Sangha, but people blocked my path. They were Director Wu, the production producer, and other production staff. Chief Young. Director Wu's face was red. I felt steam would rise from his head if we opened its top. Why was this man so excited? It was my first time seeing him push forward like a bulldozer. Did you decide on a next project? Do another one with me. Sangha. Today's the first royal family shoot, why are you asking about her next project? Now that she's an international star, she'll receive a ton of great projects from now on, right? That's why I need to get a head start. MS. Lee Sangha and MS. Sun Chai Young, let's do a project with them as leads. The chemistry between the two is too good to end it with this cameo appearance. What chemistry? 
At a loss for words, I laughed. The well-made production producer talked this time. Her eyes were lit with excitement. A movie, how about a movie? The Chungnyeo International Film Festival is a complete sausage fest these days, a two-female lead project will be fresh. With those two, if we grease up the investors a little, investments will pour in. Action. How about an action flick? If their acting can be this vigorous, I think they'll be able to do action scenes. That's a great idea. Let's produce an amazing project and aim for the Cannes Film Festival. Put it away. Dramas, movies, and the Cannes Film Festival. If you left those two together for more than a day, where you'll be headed won't be the Cannes Film Festival but the police station or emergency hospital. I will reject this from now on. My stomach ached just from putting them together for a cameo scene, to work on a project together for months. I would get holes in my stomach. So many that it would look like a beehive. With the smile of a capitalist, I replied to director Wu and the production producer, who were each holding one of my arms. That's good. If you have a good script or scenario, please show me any time. It's too early to decide on her next project right now, and ITLL be difficult to come up with a schedule that'll work with both of them. I will talk about this as positively as I can with Sangha. Thank you, Chief. No need for thanks. It wouldn't happen anyways. As soon as I entered the hotel restaurant with Neptune, people's gazes landed on us. Despite the fact we were quite a bit away from other people as our table was surrounded by other reserved tables, people stopped butting and stared at us, especially Lee Sangha. Their butts lifted up and down as they wanted to get closer to us. The hotel didn't allow autographs and photos for our convenience and safety, but it seemed like we would be crowded with people already. They looked like they were dying to hear what we were talking about. It was better if they didn't. Really? Hey, you really fought with Sun Chai Young? During a shoot? This was what they were talking about. Li Tae held Li Song has chin and turned her head left and right. Even though she seemed disinterested in everything, she was a leader who would take charge when it came to her members. Even now, there was a slight frown on her face. Sangha, let's see your face. Are you hurt anywhere? Nope. Only a few hairs were pulled out. And water in my ears. You really pulled her hair and fought. I heard it was no joke. I didn't pull her hair. Li Sangha brazenly said. Yup, she didn't pull her hair. Instead, she grabbed her head and neck. When I stared at her with crossed arms, Li Sangha stealthily avoided my gaze. As if parched, Im Seo Young downed her water in one go. Anyways, you fought against that witch, right? Who won? Huh? I think I did. Oh yeah. I was thinking about getting LJ to tackle her in a pinch, but good job. Am I a Pokemon, dummy? LJ hit the back of him Seo Young's head and asked Lee Sangha again. You really won. I kept losing, but I think I won at the end. I won. She looked proud. She was like this for a while like an animal that had fought and beat a challenger in her territory. She proudly puffed her chest while occasionally glancing at me with glittering eyes. Was a spoil of war. And who won? No matter who saw it, it was a draw. Right, now that I thought about it, I had something I wanted to ask her if I got the chance. Sangha, I have something I'm curious about. Yes, Appa. What is it? Ask me anything. During the shoot, what did Sun Chai Young whisper in your ear? What did she say for a fight to break out right after? Lee Sangha fiddled with her glass of water and avoided my gaze again. That's a secret. You said I could ask you anything. Only that's a secret. There are reasons why I can't say it. Hmm, so it's a secret. I recalled the first day the quadruplets lied to me. I leaned towards her. What is it? Tell me. I can't. Just tell me a little. I'll forget it as soon as I hear it. Ah, uh, I can't. Especially to you, I can't tell you. That makes me more curious. Curling the corners of lips into a smile, I asked again. You can't say it, especially to me. That makes me sad. Why? 
Will I be angry if you told me? Ah, uh, no. That's not it. It's actually. Snake. Just as Lee Sangha was about to open her coral lips, Im Seo Young suddenly waved a napkin in front of my face. Like a matador but calling out to a snake instead of a bull. Snake. Snake. There's a snake here. How could there be a snake here? People are going to be in a frenzy if they hear you. You're the snake. Oh my god. What in the world? Snakes like you got Eve to eat the apple. By slowly tempting her. What kind of nonsense is that? But were you Christian? Nope. While Im Seo Young placed and pushed the napkin on my face, LJ clicked her tongue and said to Lee Sangha. Hey, you're the one who said it was a secret, yet you were getting sweet-talked in ten seconds. I wasn't even aware of it. My mind turned blank for a second. It's because you're out of energy. Eat this. Lee Tae gave her sweet ginseng jelly. Never one to refuse food, Lee Sangha opened one up and tossed it into her mouth while still avoiding my gaze. Should I wait for another chance when the other girls were away? Just as I thought this, LJ gave me a sneaky look. Before, you were a harmless snake, but after shedding your skin a couple times. A couple times? It seems like you're becoming an Asian tiger snake one. Glossing over the snake part, why? From all the species of snakes, am I an Asian tiger snake? Why not? Do you know how fatal their venom is? Hiding your schemes with a smiling face makes it seem like you're becoming more like CEO Beck Hansung as well. Everyone else stared at me when they heard her words. Sliding her slender finger along the blade of a knife, LJ added. Don't become too much like him. I was about to open my mouth to reply. Chief Yung Sun Wu. Then I turned around, I saw an unexpected person. CEO Yunkyo glanced at the Neptune members before saying. Let's talk. In private. Since she said in private, I thought it would only be the two of us, but her two managers followed behind her. Maybe it was because they were conscious of other people's gazes, but their expressions didn't seem dangerous, only it was clear they didn't have a good impression of me. What was this now? It was my first time in a situation like this since graduating high school. Well, there's no need to go far. Let's just talk here. I said, stopping in a place where I could still see the restaurant entrance. CEO Yunkyo calculated the distance between the people in the restaurant and us. Having concluded that they most likely wouldn't be able to hear them, she then opened her mouth. You said that I said some things in front of Sun Chai Young Sun Bei when I was drunk, right? Did she remember? Since what I said wasn't wrong, I comfortably replied. Yes, you did. How ridiculous. Hey, Look here. How dare you just watch it happen. If I'm making mistakes while drunk, isn't it good manners to try to stop me, call my managers, or settle the situation somehow? Good manners. Even amongst all the nonsense I've heard, this took the cake. Who was she to talk about manners? I did try to stop you, I did, but you wouldn't listen to me. I also didn't know the chief in charge of you either. It's team leader. Not chief. The weasel standing to the right of Seo Yunkyo cut in. Was he a team leader? I guess I was mistaken since this trip to China was my first time meeting him. Like I heard, your manners are a bit lacking. That's what I said. He's completely different from his image on TV. They must have edited and broadcasted him acting all innocent. Oh, boy. I was already at a loss for words from what he said, but Seo Yunkyo took it a step further. Maybe you didn't try to stop me but just watched in delight. You probably don't have a good impression of me as well. Since I said some mean things to Lee Sangha as her son Bay. So I'm asking if you just watched to screw me over. All happy inside. Right? Nope. Well, if Seo Yunkyo really did say those things to Sun Chai Young instead of me, then I obviously would have watched in delight. But since that didn't happen. What do you mean no? I'm right, aren't I? I really. Then you should have stopped me. How can I meet Chai Young Sunbei now? The answer seemed to be already decided, and they just wanted me to admit it. She said she wanted to talk, 
yet why were they picking a fight as a group? Her relationship with Sun Chai Young was screwed, her first shoot was a mess, and Lee Songa, who she disliked, was applauded by the director and the staff. Was that why she was venting to me? Since Lee Songa barely reacted when she bullied her, was she trying to bully me, her manager, and soothe her temper? I frowned before relaxing. From afar, Lee Songa and the other girls were staring at us with lit eyes. They looked like they would come over holding knives and forks if I had a bad expression. I couldn't let them do that. Seo Yunkyo was weak to the strong and strong to the weak. Maybe if it was Sun Chai Young or Seo Jijun, who were considered bigger stars than her, but if they came over and joined the fight, there would be no way Seo Yunkyo would back down. Instead, she might even yammer away more excitedly. There was no need for more people to be involved in this mess. I forced a calm expression and said. Maybe you can read minds, but there's nothing more I can say if you keep saying that I did when I told you I didn't. What is it that you want from me? Since it's partly your fault, you take responsibility. What are you going to do about this situation? The hell it is. Looking at them, they were the type of people who would make you bow lower if you bowed down even once. Since human words didn't work, I guess I needed to bark too. Responsibility? Me? Why would I? What did you say? It looks like you're venting the fact that you screwed up your dear relationship with MS. Sun Chai Young, but if you're angry, don't vent on someone else, and instead, just drink some more. Ah, uh, is alcohol too much? Now really? Absurd. Who do you think you are? The one who finds this absurd is me. It's best if you lower your voice. Nothing good will come out of others hearing you. Anyways, if it's something regarding MS. Sun Chai Young, I had no confidence or methods in taking responsibility. Go to her personally and settle this yourself. Look here. I am looking. U F. Stop, Young Kyo. People are watching. The weasel, who called himself a team leader, stopped Seo Yunkyo, who was pointed at me in agitation. Then he took a step forward and scanned me with his eyes. Mr. Young Sun Wu, it hasn't been a year since you've started, right? What the heck? Was it his turn now? It seems you're still knave to the ways of the world, but you can't continue as a manager for long if you keep acting this way. If you plan on quitting after a bit, then keep acting that way. Seeing as he didn't plan on stopping his nonsense spouting celebrity, I could tell they were all the same. At a loss for words, I could help but laugh at seeing CEO Yunkyo's triumphant expression behind her team leader and chief. It'll take care of my own business. I don't think you can. Mr. Young Sun Wu, there are quite a few unpleasant rumors about you. There are also people who don't have a good impression of you either. People around you smile since you're on a roll and everything you do is a success, but what are you going to do once you slip up? I understand that you're young, hot-blooded, and stubborn, but am worried about your future as a sunbay in the same industry. That's why I'll take care of my own business. My sunbay will worry about my future so you don't have to. You really are frustrating. I told you that he is. And how much have you seen me? I was more dumbfounded by the chief who supported the weasel team leader. The world was vast and there were many crazies. How many were there for three of them to group up like this? What do they teach you in your company? Is there no sunbay that teaches you things like this? What about a sunbay? A voice, dripping with irritation, suddenly sounded out behind me. When I turned around, Kim Hyunjo and Lee Kwan Woo were making their way here. Kim Hyunjo's thick dark circles reached his chin from how busy he was in China, making his face look incomparably spooky. Behind him Lee Kuan Wu was anxiously moving his eyes, a shame considering his large build. I was going to watch a little longer, but it seems you were talking about me. Ah, you're Chief Kim Hyunjo, right? There was a problem with how he was working. So nosy. I don't know why you're so concerned about what a company is teaching its employees. It's not like I wanted to concern myself if your company's affairs. I taught him, so what? What's wrong with him? If I were to compare him with those trash-like managers I've seen until now, he's pretty much a masterpiece. Kim Hyunjo said while tapping my shoulder. 
Seo Yunkyo snorted as she joined in. What masterpiece! Does your company not teach their people about having an upright character? To hear the words upright character from her mouth, I felt like it was just dirtying the word. Look here. You should teach your employees probe. Seo Yunkyo, who was raising her voice, suddenly flinched. Then she looked behind me with round eyes. Her petty team leader and chief were also looking in the same place with flustered expressions. I could tell without looking. People's murmurs grew louder. I heard girls suppressed screams, and above all, when I talked to him on the phone before, Kim Hyunjo told me he was coming down with other people. When I turned around, it was as I expected. Seo Jijun and Chief Lee Bun Jun. And Im Jo Won and Chief Sung. I saw familiar faces. What, why are they suddenly? Stuttering, the flustered CEO Yunkyo glared at me. Since it looked like she was asking if I purposely told them to talk here because I knew others would be coming down, I gave her a big smile. Of course, I did it on purpose. Chapter, 129 Oh, Chief Yong. Chief Lee Bun Jun tapped his hefty belly as he came over. You left long before us, but what are you doing here? What's going on? Same thing we see all the time. Seo Jijun hung his arm on Chief Li Bunjun's shoulder as he laughed. Relieved that the mood was more easygoing than she expected, Seo Yunkyo quickly transformed her am screwed expression into an impatient chihuahua's. Her wagging tail was more vigorous than when she was in front of Sun Chai Young. Now that my relationship with Sun Chai Young is a goner, let's get close to Seo Jijun. Her eyes were filled with such desires. Seo Yunkyo was about to say something when Seo Jijun casually said. Ha, huh, so embarrassing in another country. Hey, why are you embarrassed? Because you're both Korean. We have the same last name as well, Hyung. And our last name isn't common. 1. That's true. It must be a little embarrassing. Although they didn't specifically mention who it was, it was clear who they were referring to. Seo Yunkyo's face reddened. It's not like I don't understand what you're feeling. His one cheek bulging, perhaps because of candy, Im Ju Won clicked his tongue. His sullen gaze landed on Seo Jijun for a moment before returning. Act in moderation. It's pitiful if your jealousy becomes excessive. The whites in her eyes bloodshot, Seo Yunkyo shot a look at the weasel team leader. Though it looked like she was asking for help, the team leader was currently being ripped apart by Kim Hyunjo. In fact, Chief Lee Bun Jun and Chief Sung also added a few things. And I, well, I just watched. Since everything was proceeding as expected. In the end, the weasel team leader and chief dragged Seo Yunkyo, who was trembling in rage, and fled as if escaping. I waved my hand at them because Seo Yunkyo was looking back at me with a furious expression. Well, could this be considered a pleasant conclusion? You had it tough. Kim Hyunjo slapped my back. I encounter all sorts of incidents while all the way here in China. These incidents are frequent as you work. You know the saying, fight between children become fights between their parents. Fights between celebrities become fights between managers in this industry. You'll probably be in more tough fights from now on. That's scary. Those who can't handle it all quit, and in the end, this industry becomes bustling with those skilled in psychological warfare. I used to be innocent too, just this industry made me like this. ITLL be difficult for a flower cultivated in a greenhouse like me to endure this world. I said jokingly, but Kim Hyunjo became serious. What are you talking about? You're meant for this industry. Definitely. Young Sun Woo is a promising talent. Chief Lee Bun Jun nodded with a serious expression. I bet 501 that he'll endure this industry until he's being called CEO. I call and raise it 501. CEO Jijun said, giggling. Let's go inside. The girls are waiting. I was saying while glancing inside the restaurant before stopping. The girls, who had been staring at me with big, bright eyes, were paying attention to something else with awkward expressions. In front of him stood a well-built man in a suit. Holding Lee Song his hand. Who the hell was he? With no time to think about it, I entered the restaurant. 
Then I grabbed the unknown man's arm. Appa. The girls looked relieved when they saw me. Seeing them like that, I grabbed him even more tightly. Who are you? The man was Chinese. As soon as he was grabbed by me, he stuttered in Chinese before retreating back when he looked behind me. Hearing noises behind me, it seemed that the others came in right after me. Just then, Im Seo Young waved her hands and said. Yua. It's nothing weird, Appa. It's not. Li Taehee calmly explained. This person's son is eight years old and is apparently a huge fan of Sangha. Since he was having a tantrum about getting her autograph, he came to ask if it was okay to receive one autograph. We refused everyone up until now so we were concerned there might be problems if we made an exception for him. Then why was he holding her hand? Ah, he wasn't holding her hand. She was receiving a present. Fu Ling Bing Wan. Li Sangha opened her hand to reveal a round, flat pancake-like snack. I let out a short sigh. My body must have reacted first because I had seen a ton of fanatical fans rushing over. The man was so surprised that he was hiccuping. I asked Li Tae He, who was the best at Chinese among the members, to translate and apologize to the man. We also decided to give him a signed CD in secret. That was how we settled the problem. Im Ju Wan stared at me as he said. Chief Young, why didn't you scare Seo Young Kyo with that scary expression? Then I bet she would be too scared to pick a fight with you next time. You're really S.C.A. Im Ju Wan stopped mid-sentence and look around. Then he suddenly began laughing. He was laughing even while coughing, seemingly having almost choked on his candy. At this rate, he might end up crying. Laughing, he said. With a group like this, I bet we will have no more trouble dealing with fans. Do you know about the bouquet effect? Wasn't it used for idol groups? If a few pretty idols grouped together, they would look much prettier than being on their own. But why was he bringing that up now? This is exactly the opposite of the bouquet effect. Since we have a group of scary-looking people, we look ten times more menacing. Im Ju Wan gestured to Chief Sung. Look, Chief Sung looks like a fox that's more prickly than sandpaper. As if acknowledging it, Chief Sung's eyes narrowed into crescents as he smiled. And Chief Kim looks like a walking zombie. Chief Lee looks like a bandit when he's expressionless. Also, this large manager just has droopy eyes. If he wears sunglasses, Hell look just like a gangster. Im Ju Wan, who looked at Kim Hyunjo, Chief Lee Bang Jun, and Lee Kuan Wu in order, lastly held my shoulder. And Chief Yong is unrivaled. A big shot amongst scary looking fellows. Neptune held their bellies and laughed when they heard him. Seo Jijun had already been laughing so hard that it made one concerned about his breathing. Really? ITLL be difficult to gather a group like this. Well, it's not like I don't agree. Just by looks, the celebrities weren't that far off either. Lee Sangha and LJ looked aloof, and Lee Taehee usually had an indifferent expression. Seo Jijun was the embodiment of a cold, city man. Im Ju Wan was slick and handsome but felt thorny. To be honest, the only one who looked pure and innocent among us was Im Seo Young. When I said this, the chiefs laughed up a storm. I was worried that the mood would be awkward since it was our first time gathering like this, but I was worried for nothing as our table was constantly bustling with laughter like a team that got along really well. While laughing with them, I suddenly had a thought. I hoped that the team I made had such a good atmosphere. It's Nam Joyun. A warm, dry voice rang in my ears. Leaning against the restaurant entrance, I said. It's me. I was having dinner but called because I thought of you. I could hear staff bustling around in the background from the other end of the phone. Are you filming right now? It seems I'm bothering you while you're busy. It's fine. I am waiting on set. How's the atmosphere on the film set? I couldn't go so I'm dying from curiosity. I couldn't stick with Nam Joyun due to circumstances, but I planned on being there when they started filming. They just had to start the day after I went to Beijing. It's fun. Getting ready, acting, and even waiting on set. 
It's been a long time since I've worked on such a large-scale commercial film so it's interesting as well. Nam Joyun's voice heated up when he started talking about the shoot. The corners of my lips unconsciously rose when I felt his faint excitement. What kind of reactions did the staff have when they saw Nam Joyun act? I admired it multiple times while we were reading the script together and I was watching him practice. It was enough that my confidence in my discerning eye reached the skies. Damn it. I wanted to see it with my own eyes. Nam Joyun acting in front of the camera. Are you lacking anything? I already have more than enough. Thanks to the stylist and makeup artist you introduced me to, I'm having a comfortable time filming. Also, the director and production staff are treating me very well. That was good. Without a company or a manager next to him to take care of things, I was most worried that a complication would arise on set. I wouldn't have had this worry if Nam Joyun signed with WU. Thinking about the Team 2 leader made me frown. If this movie is a success, then. I swallowed my next words. He was someone who was turned away after an interview. I didn't want to give him false hopes. It's nothing. Don't starve, and make sure to take care of yourself. You don't need to worry about me. You must have more than enough on your plate in China. I resolved myself while listening to Nam Joyun's subdued voice. If this movie was a success and Nam Joyun's performance was acknowledged by others, then I would take proper action. I couldn't continue this vague relationship. I turned my gaze while thinking about officially working with Nam Joyun. I saw Neptune and the others laughing and chatting. I laughed silently. I could faintly see the outline of my team. I looked around while being guided by an employee. I heard it was a luxurious bar operating on a membership system. The decorations were as extravagant as the hotel. The soundproofing was perfect too. We passed a few rooms as we walked down the hallway, but all I heard was the employee and my footsteps. Soon, the employee stopped in front of a black door. When I opened the door and entered, I couldn't help but gape. Although I've visited various bars while working, this was my first time seeing such a luxurious room. From ceiling to floor, the entire room was an odd mixture of black and red. The dim lights above floated around like the aurora lights. Did the alcohol taste exceptional if you drank in a place like this? I licked my lips as I looked around. The table was already set with alcohol and side dishes. Yet there was no one here. I heard that he had already arrived and was waiting for me. Did he leave for a bit? Just as I sat down on a sofa that felt amazing. Hello. WH what a surprise. When I turned around, someone raised their body from the seat of honor, which had been covered by the table. Perhaps he had been lying down all this time, but his always cleanly brushed hair was slightly disheveled. The man searched the desk then put on his newly found glasses. He was the employee from the Chinese agency contracted with WU. His name was. We met last time. I am Li Liang. Ah, uh, I am Yung Sun Wu. Thank you for coming here today. But why is there so much alcohol if it's just us two? I asked, glancing at the table. I was planning on getting on good terms with him after a few hours of drinking and learning a lot about how the Chinese entertainment industry ran. We couldn't drink all of this even if we spent all night here. I had heard that the Chinese like to treat people extravagantly. The corners of Li Liang's lips curled up. Of course, we can't drink this all by ourselves. People who will drink with us will arrive soon. Just as he said this, the door opened once more. When I saw fluttering Chong Sam 3, the world suddenly became quiet. My vision was clear and static free. This place looked vintage yet different. I was with director Park and reporter Song. Even after I realized I was in the future, my mind was a mess for a moment. My attention was still on the red Chong Sam I last saw. I couldn't be like this. I suppressed the thoughts that floated in my mind. My priority right now was what kind of information I could glean from this future. My future twenty years from now. If I were to see the future again, I had hoped to learn whether Lee Song has drama or Nam Joyun's movie was a success or not. It looked like that would be difficult from this fixed future. Then what was it this time? 
I was closely examining everything in sight when my gaze suddenly turned to the side. Then the holographic window floating on the table slid in front of me. Looking at it up close, it was filled with difficult to understand letters and numbers. Then what looked to be photo evidence was attached at the bottom. It's here. My future self spoke. The people who helped me stand here today. People who helped me stand here today. I focused my eyes as much as possible. I wanted to examine the photo as much as I could before my gaze turned away. Although I didn't know that he meant just now, either way, there was no doubt that they were related to my future self. There were young people and people who seemed quite old. And there were familiar faces as well. Him. A middle-aged man wearing unusual glasses. Although he aged a bit and he looked a little different, he was the Chinese agency employee, Li Liang, who I had just seen before. And next to him was the Team 2 leader, who now had grey hair. Damn it! There was one more person. He left a favorable impression and had a picturesque smile. He looked like the traitor. No, wait. He didn't look like him but was an older Choi Gunyang no matter how I looked at him. What was going on? What kind of damn group was this? Were they the people on my lives blacklist? I was blankly looking at the hologram when my future self smiled and said. In other words, they are my team members. Chapter, 130 How is it? I heard a low voice. The hologram was nowhere in sight. In front of me were women in fishnet chongsams. The fabric split below their waist, revealing their milky white thighs. The sounds of fluttering fabric, two women sat beside me. Should I pour you a glass? Or do you? Please. I stopped her awkward Korean. The woman skillfully filled a glass with ice and alcohol and handed it to me. I downed it right away. The strong liquor burned my throat as it flowed down. Another glass. The empty glass was filled once more. After repeating this three times did I finally come to my senses. I let out a stuffy, unpleasant breath and looked to my side. Li Liang, much young that in the hologram, was looking at me. Let's think about this. First, he said that they were people who helped me stand here today. Then they were my team members. To call the team two leader and the traitor my team members. How did my original self live to make a team like that? Today's enemy is tomorrow's comrade. Was that it? No, it wasn't. Since the me existing in that future was different from my current self. My relationship with the traitor might not be so bad that we would call each other idiot or asshole. Also, there wouldn't have been any bad incidents with the Team 2 leader. Still. Even if they weren't my enemies, they weren't the types of people you would want to work with. Rather, they were people who should be on a blacklist. Wait. Don't tell me the other faces in the hologram were similar to the Team 2 leader or the traitor. I gave Li Liang a suspicious look when he made an odd expression and said. It's my first time seeing such a reaction. Do you lean that way? I placed women on either side of you, yet you're only looking at me. That's not it. I just suddenly recalled something important. I answered while looking next to me. Young women clung next to me with smiles on their faces. To bring scantily clad women in a place where he wanted to get close to me. And women who seemed to be Lee Song has age to boot. Now that I thought about it, the backup manager for Sun Chai Young did mention the Chinese agency while we were in the limousine. About how the hotel owner wanted to have a private dinner with Sun Chai Young or something. Was this their goal? To bring Lee Songa in a place like this? If that was the case, forget the alcohol, I needed to get up. Just as I thought this, the woman on my left said in awkward Korean. It seems you aren't happy with us. Your face is scary. Li Liang laughed and added. They want to be celebrities. They normally don't show up in places like this, but I asked them to come today. I heard that you have a great eye for things. Like people and projects. I'm just lucky. Whether it's luck or skill, the results are what's important. Aren't you the person who brought Li Songa, who was unknown at the time, to instant stardom? As he said Lee Song his name, he let go of his glass. It looks like none of you are star-worthy. Leave us. 
Li Liang gestured. The women quietly left the room. There were only two men present like before. In a quiet voice, Li Liang said. There is someone interested in the entertainment business. That person seemed very interested when he heard about MS. Li Songa. That's why I asked to meet with you. I wanted to give you a good proposal. Yes, what is it? I nonchalantly asked while getting ready to get up. Do you have any thoughts on becoming a CEO? I lift my butt halfway before halting. If you have any thoughts on becoming independent, I just wanted to let you know that there was a good investor here. Just what kind of situation was this? Of course, I knew he would bring Lee Sangha up, but he wanted to invest. In me? Where are you right now? Are you outside? Yes, I had to do something. Personal matters. Who else knows you're in Korea? Only those from the movie company, who we are meeting to adjust Song has schedule, no. I'm going back to China tomorrow so I decided not to tell anyone to quietly handle matters then return. I replied as I walked onto the film set. It was noisy. The staff and extras were bustling as they prepared for the shoot. The heated atmosphere touched my skin. My mind, complicated with matters in China, gradually calmed. I heard team leader park again. Good job. You know that the press is waiting for you because of Cat Guardian Ghost's popularity, right? If news that you're here is leaked, then they are going to be in a frenzy, trying to interview you. If you don't want to be bothered, wear your sunglasses wherever you go. I already am. Big ones at that. I wore a suit since it was my first time here, but wearing sunglasses on top of that made for a strange appearance. Fortunately, there were many more the extras, who were dressed up more strangely than me, so I didn't stand out. There wasn't anyone who recognized me either. After walking around the large movie set twice did I finally see him. A man wearing a slim, white t-shirt and jeans. It had been a long time since I last met him. Nam Joyun. I purposely came here without telling him so he should be surprised, right? Just as I thought this. So. You want us to just go? A high-pitched voice erupted in front of me. She was the stylist I had asked to handle Nam Joyun's outfits. I mean, who comes up with a schedule like this? This isn't the first or second time you made us wait in vain. Even yesterday, you made us come at three in the morning and wait all day in the heat without putting him in a single scene. Are you Nam Joyun's manager? I'm his stylist, why? When she said this, the man let out an irritated sigh. The mood was weird. I stopped and perked my ears at their conversation. What can I do about the schedule changes? Things like this happen frequently due to the situation on set when filming movies. Even top stars wait and pretty much live on the movie set so why are you in such a fuss? That's not what I mean. People might think he's some Hollywood actor. Who was he to talk like that? Assistant director. Ah, the assistant director. But why was the assistant director talking like that? The stylist shouted while thumping her chest in frustration. It's not that we are complaining about waiting. The problem is that this only happens when they are filming Mr. Nam Joyun's scenes. Other actors are proceeding as scheduled, but only his scenes get cancelled. We come out and wait every day yet isn't it ridiculous he's only been in two scenes? There's nothing we can do since we are changing the scenario. If you can't bear it, why don't you bring it up with the film distribution company one? I'm extremely busy right now, god damn it. Aren't you supposed to let the actors know if the scenario has been changed? My head turned cold. What I had anticipated while coming here was seeing Nam Joyun in front of the cameras. My head was tingling. I heard people murmur behind me. What's going on? Does Nam Joyun have no scenes today again? It seems like it. How many days has it been? If it was me, I would have left. Nam Joyun's acting was really amazing. How sad. Being powerless is his sin. It wasn't just one or two people. People here and there were mentioning Nam Joyun's name. I wasn't sure if he was aware of this, but Nam Joyun was trying to calm his stylist down. I heard his voice. Il talked to him. In a subdued voice, he asked the assistant director. 
Then when should we prepare for the next scene? I don't know yet. Just wait. Then when can I receive the changed scenario? They'll let you know when I get it so just wait. It's crazy how busy I am right now. They'll let you know when I hear anything, no, but do you not even have a manager? He does. I said while walking up to them. Nam Joyun and the stylist's eyes widened when they recognized me. I stopped in front of the assistant director and took off my sunglasses. The assistant director, who had been giving me a strange look, became shocked when he saw me. I didn't whether he was shocked because he recognized me or if my expression was just really bad. Beside me, Nam Joyun opened and closed his pale lips. Chief, what about? I came back because of a meeting. I came here to surprise you, but I'm the one who's surprised. I replied then asked the assistant director. Where is Director Park right now? I grabbed the doorknob to the trailer before looking back. Nam Joyun and the stylist, who were following me, stopped in their tracks. My minivan is in the parking lot so I think it's best if you stay there. Nothing good would be said in this trailer anyways. I handed Nam Joyun the keys. Holding the keys, Nam Joyun opened his mouth a couple times. However, he ultimately closed it. Seeing him standing rigidly like that, a burning feeling surged in my belly. He came out every day, yet he was only in two scenes. What did he say the last time I talked to him? How it was fun. How he was working comfortably. Why didn't you? My voice became hoarse. I swallowed the words that had made their way up and instead let out a sigh. Well talk in a bit. First, let me figure out what exactly is going on. I burst open the trailer door. Who is it? You're not allowed to come in huh? The eyes of the man who blocked me popped. When I scanned the trailer, my eyes instantly landed on Director Park who was sitting on the sofa reading the scenario. He also recognized me as his but stopped mid-stand. Uh, you're Mr. Young Sun Woo from WU. Chief Young, correct? Yes, hello director. Taking a seat in front of the director, I said. I came over to see whether Mr. Nam Joyun was doing well or not, but it seems that there's a problem. I heard that only he hasn't been in any scenes due to changes in the scenario. What is going on? An awkward expression flashed on Director Park's face. That is the situation's changed significantly since the beginning. He let out a sigh before continuing. The budget for this project was originally three. Five billion one. I know. But then Ace, Air, you know Ace, right? The distribution company? I nodded. Of course, I knew them. They were one of the top five biggest film distributors in the country. They contacted us. Director Park began rambling on and on. So basically, it started with the distribution company contacting them, having apparently taken a liking to Director Park's scenario. Director Park and Pan Production, who were already having a hard time finding a good distributor, immediately jumped on this opportunity. Up to this point, it was worth celebrating. To make a movie a box office success, it depended on how many and how long it was in theaters. Also, as a large distributor, the movie would be screened in many more theaters. The problem occurred after this. Ace gathered a bunch of investors so our originally three. Five billion one budget could become more than a ten billion one. A ten billion. Do you know how much a film's quality can improve with that kind of money? Director Park chattered excitedly but coughed when he saw my expression. Anyways, as you know, with the increase in budget, our break-even point also increased proportionately. That was why Ace proposed we adjust the scenario to be a hit at the box office. They were particularly worried that, um, Mr. Nam Joyun's role was too big. So. You know how important star power is when making a national movie a box office success, right? From marketing, heck, even posters have the cast's faces on it. Anyways, that's why we decided to bring on some expert writers to adjust the scenario a little. I'm very sorry for Mr. Nam Joyun, but the success of this project is what's most important so there's nothing I can do. I would like to see the edited script. That is. If you have started filming then, even if it's not complete, the script should be somewhat laid out. 
show me that at least. Director Park sighed. As though things were becoming troublesome. Then he passed his tablet to me. It's not complete yet. I quickly skimmed through the edited scenario. It didn't take long since there wasn't much to read. I tossed the tablet onto the table and laughed. It was ridiculous. Mr. Nam Joyun's role dies in the beginning. I said cynically. Director Park, who at least had an apologetic expression, frowned. Originally, Ace told us to pay Mr. Nam Joyun the penalty for terminating his contract. They wanted us to take him out and cast a more popular actor. I told him we couldn't do that so we are putting all this time in editing the scenario. Nam Joyun's role became a minor one that died in the beginning. The role originally meant for Nam Joyun was given to another actor. I was so dumbfounded that I couldn't help but laugh. Director Park's expression distorted even more. But you, Chief Young Sun Wu, aren't even Mr. Nam Joyun's real manager. They'll personally explain and apologize to him. He'll play a minor role this time and once this project is a hit, it'll definitely put him in a good role. No thanks. You said the distribution company said to pay the contract penalty and kick him out. Do that then. I got up and said. He won't do this film. Chapter, 131. W8. Wait. wait. Director Park got up after me. Chief Young, how can you get up like that? They'll talk to the distributors again so don't get so worked up and sit back down. Let's talk it over while drinking some iced coffee. Okay. Just what kind of ploy was this? When I frowned, Director Park said. What? Did you think I'd cling to your pants? What to do? I don't have any plans on doing that. Mr. Young Sun Wu, you aren't that great of a person. Ah, I must have scratched his pride. He was a great director who was filming a 10 billion won movie. Also, Nam Joyun, he's not that great of an actor. Even though his role has been reduced, I planned on giving him a few lines. Don't you know that this is an amazing opportunity for an unknown actor's filmography? I felt worse than being sworn at. It felt like someone was stomping my precious thing in the dirt. I suddenly recalled the audition. I clearly remembered his smiling face as he hoped we would work together, happy with Nam Joyun. I had thought we had met a good director that day. To think he was someone who revealed his true character when faced with money. God damn it. There are tons of actors who will want to replace him immediately once I make a couple calls. And there'd be a truck full of managers asking me to cast their actors. Are you not going to do this movie? How great. You're so full of yourself. I recalled the saying that I had become sick of hearing since working in this industry. Endure even if it's unpleasant. If possible. Cooling my head, I thought, did I have to endure this? Soon, I made my decision. Sorry, director. It's a 10 billion won film so, of course, we need to put up with it if it's for the project. No matter how small the role, we'll be grateful and work hard. Even if you say that now, it's too law. It seems you were hoping for this kind of reaction. Director Park gave me a stupid look before his face distorted. I don't plan on acting like that. It works out since both of us don't plan to. As a softie, I might have been in a difficult situation if you clung to me. What? You idiot. Idiot. You're just a manager, chief at best, yet you dare lash out at a director. Because broadcasts are inflating your ego by calling you a star manager, do directors look like pushovers to you? Do you not know how fast rumors spread in our industry? Are you not going to do any films in the future? Director Park snorted. You work in a big company like WU and Lee Sangha becomes bigger day by day so it seems like you're not afraid of anything, but what about Nam Joyun? The curses that rose up to my throat stopped in their tracks. Nam Joyun. I thought about Nam Joyun, who loved acting and wanted to act so much that he said this damn movie set, where he was disregarded by the staff and sympathized by others, was fun and not to worry. Whether he's good at acting or not, which director is going to cast an unknown actor with a history like him? Acting like this, you are crushing his acting career. Do you know that? If you're confident to take responsibility. 
Just then, the trailer door burst open. Nam Joyun entered and locked the door behind him. Chief, come over here. Yes, you might get hurt. Get hurt? Before I could even finish my thought, Nam Joyun pulled my arm. Even though he had a slim figure, his strength was incredible. Instantly, I was pulled to the entrance, and Nam Joyun turned his back on me. His back looked fierce, unlike his usual self. I unconsciously gulped dryly. Thud. Just as I thought Nam Joyun calmly grabbed the patio chair, the chair instantly crashed on Director Park's table and rolled away. Crashing sounds pierced my ears. The patio table and glass cups shattered in pieces. Stepping on the shattered glass, Nam Joyun grabbed the corner of the table. With an incredible sound, the table was slammed into the corner of the trailer. The stacks of paper fluttered in the air and slapped a blank director Park's cheeks as they fell. Air are you crazy? You idiot, just what are you doing? Then director Park shouted at me. Chief Young. Mr. Young Sun Wu. Why aren't you stopping him? Ah, uh, I have some things to think about continue what you were doing. What did the WU legal team employee say? That if my celebrity caused an incident, the first thing to check was whether there were any cameras. As long as there wasn't any physical evidence, they would be able to take care of it. Let's see it doesn't seem like there were any cameras in the trailer. Relieved, I leaned my back against the trailer door. What? Where do crazy bastards like you come from? Nam Joyun. If rumors about this spread. Spread the. Nam Joyun said, standing in front of Director Park. What? What did you say? Spread rumors that the idiot named Nam Joyun burst into your trailer and threw your table and stuff. Rumors about me are already so bad that something like that won't even leave a mark. So do what you want. His voice was calm, but his words were threatening. Although I could only see his back, it seemed like he had a fierce expression as well, seeing the mad Director Park flinch back in fear. However, if I hear that you spread rumors about the chief. Nam Joyun took something out from his pocket. It was the folding knife I had seen before. The one that he had brought to the audition. He unfolded and folded the knife. Just like when Director Park shouted that he passed in excitement. The folding knife moved skillfully in his hand. To Director Park, whose eyes were trembling, Nam Joyun said in a hoarse voice. I don't know what he'll do. Yo you crazy idiot. You're not a gangster, yet it's not enough that you wrecked havoc in my trailer, you dare threaten me? Don't even think about acting in this industry. Do you think you'll sit still while you act like this? By any means, I will. Don't sit still. I said instead of Nam Joyun. I don't plan on sitting still either. Sorry for showing you such a poor appearance. You were shocked, right? Nam Joyun, who was sitting in the passenger seat, said. Of course, I was shocked. Even though I look like this, I lived my life protected like an orchid. I said jokingly. Because Director Park's nonsense still rang in my ears, I might unconsciously step on the gas if I didn't actively try to calm down like this. After tapping the steering wheel, I looked beside me. Flames were surging inside me, yet the person in question, Nam Joyun, lowered his head and was fussing with his pants. What are you doing? There are tiny pieces of glass on my pants. M.S. Su Jong got these for me. Glass? The stylist stuck her head out from the rear seat with the same fierce expression she had when arguing with the assistant director. At least in this van, I wasn't the only one who was angry. What happened in the trailer for glass to get stuck on your clothes? Did you really mean it when you said poor appearance? Oh my god. Did the director throw a glass cup at you? The one who threw it was this person though. I feigned ignorance, but the stylist erupted in anger. Don't tell me you just took it. Chief Young, say something. Do you know how much Mr. Nam Joyun was pushed around while you were gone? How is someone as meek as him survive in the entertainment industry? M.S. Su Jong. Nam Joyun called her name, but she snorted and continued to speak. Even though people aren't treated like people if you're not famous in this industry, there's a limit to that. They treated you horribly, yet you endured it again and again to be in the movie. 
It was so frustrating seeing you like that. Ah, so frustrating. The stylist beat her chest. I almost stepped on the gas again. Whenever I try to say something, you always say, MS. Su Jong, it's okay, they'll deal with it, deal with what? When I told you to tell Chief Yong, you kept telling me not to. MS. Su Jong, please stop. Nam Joyun's voice lowered. The stylist opened and closed her mouth, but Nam Joyun shook his head. After dropping the frustrated stylist in Yuido, I drove towards Han River. The grassy field was packed with people. I parked my minivan in a moderately quiet place. Then I opened a drink that I had bought at a convenience store as I said. You said you became human with age. Nam Joyun looked confused. Last time, when I asked you if you were okay with the crazy idiot role in this movie. You said that you would do well and to not worry. That you became human with age. To be honest, I didn't believe you. I'm quite familiar with things getting thrown around, but it was my first time seeing a chair and table be thrown. I took a sip of the cool drink then asked. When you could act like that, how did you endure it for so long? I went straight to the point. Nam Joyun looked at me with an odd expression. You should have told me. Did you not trust me? Because the director and large distributor were pushing you around and going on about a 10 billion one movie, did you think there was no point in telling me? That's not it. Then why didn't you tell me? I didn't know things like that were going on and thought everything was going well. I'm the one who persuaded you, saying that I was good at my job and to work together with me. I'm also the one who introduced you to this damn movie. I was extremely embarrassed but also angry. I was frustrated at Nam Joyun who didn't say a word about it and just endured their treatment of him. I pitied him because he endured all that because he so dearly wanted to act despite his unfortunate circumstances. He endured it for so long, yet he ended up slamming a table in front of the director. Because he was worried Director Park would spread bad rumors about me. I crushed the empty can in my hand. You're going to hurt yourself like that. Just as he said this, the soda tab ripped off and its sharp aluminum edge scratched my palm. Red blood began to flow. It flowed down my wrist and dripped onto the steering wheel. Nam Joyun took the empty can and tossed it in the rear seat then examined my hand. He took out a band-aid from his worn wallet and handed it to me. Why do you carry that around? It's a habit. I awkwardly put the band-aid on with my left hand when Nam Joyun quietly said. It's not that I didn't trust you. I couldn't tell you. I didn't want to disappoint you. Nam Joyun's voice became even quieter. I'm not sure myself, yet you said that you liked my acting. You helped me even by asking favors from other people. You even got me an opportunity to be in a movie. That's only natural. I really wanted to do well this time. Nam Joyun revealed a bitter smile. I'm someone whose lives already messed up as it is, and it's not my first time failing. But that's not the same for you. Nam Joyun, who had been looking directly at me, lowered his gaze slightly. I didn't want to be the first failure in your management career. What? Failure? You've never failed since you've started working in this industry, if you didn't involve yourself with the unlucky me, today's incident wouldn't have happened so you can stop. Nam Joyun said bitterly. As you saw, my luck is terrible. Don't worry, my luck is terribly good. Nam Joyun's eyes bulged at my words. Did you not hear it? The rumor that everything I touch is a success. That's. So don't worry. My luck is terribly good so if we calculate the negatives and positives, we'll still end up in the green. Nam Joyun's expression became complicated. Just then, a ringtone rang out. It was my phone. When I checked the screen, it was the female employee of the PR team. As soon as I answered, the female employee rattled on. Mr. Sun Wu. Mr. Sun Wu, where are you right now? Where are you? At Han River. I have some personal matters. Check the internet right now. Articles about you are being published like crazy. As if he heard her voice, Nam Joyun took out his phone. Just what is? Nam Joyun's expression became rigid. 
I quickly scanned content on his screen. Articles that have been published for less than a minute were popping up like crazy. Their headlines were similar. The mid-ass hand that brought Lee Sangha to stardom, Young Sun Woo's next movie. Young Sun Woo, who created an international star, returned temporarily because of a new movie. What kind of movie is it? Will Young Sun Woo's new movie be a hit? The film industry is turning its focus on it. I don't know where the rumor started, but the distributor known as Ace is charging forward in a frenzy. They are using your NMS. Song has names to promote their movie. Just what is going on? No, first, tell me if this is fake so that we can. Ah, uh, I already told Team Leader Park, but it seems you didn't hear about it yet. She paused when she heard my words. Just let it be. I'm the one who started it. Pardon? What did you say? Nam Joyun's eyes bulged as he looked at me. I smiled and said. I set this up on purpose. Chapter 132 Crazy Bastards How dare they! Eyes blazing, Director Park puffed his cigarette. An unpleasant smoke dispersed in the air. He looked around for an ashtray, but all he saw was the broken furniture, the aftermath of the havoc. Surging in rage again, Director Park chucked his cigarette stub away. Just then, his phone, which had tumbled underneath the sofa, began to vibrate. Seeing the caller, Director Park's expression distorted. Yes, what is? I got a call from Mr. Sun Wu. I heard you decided to break Nam Joyun's contract. Pan Production CEO, Kim Pan Suk, shouted. Ah, damn it. After causing trouble here, he tattled to you. Director Park, you eventually. Damn it. I tried to keep Nam Joyun since you said we could never cut him from the film, but they were the ones who kicked this film away and left. I'm the one who's pissed. Mr. Sun Wu isn't someone who would act like that. Just how badly did you treat Nam Joyun for? How can I see Mr. Sun Wu's face in the future? Director Park's lips twisted. They'll try talking with Mr. Sun Wu again, so you. Ah, uh, geez, you're going to yell my ears off. Stop interfering. What did you say? Isn't what happens on set the director's jurisdiction? I endured it all this time because you let me produce my film just from looking at my scenario when I was down in the dumps, but you're going too far. This is a 10 billion one movie. A 10 billion. CEO Kim Pansuk's voice cut off. A heavy sigh broke the silence. Kim Pansuk said in a persuading tone. Director Park, you're making a big mistake right now. You're blinded by the 10 billion one. If you keep going like this, the mood on set will be a mess and your scenario will in tatters in the distributor's hands. Are you wary of the Ace Distribution Company? What? Since they introduced me to big investors and the budget increased a ton, are you worried that pan production won't get as big of a cut? CEO Kim Pansuk's breaths became rough at Director Park's mocking words. They say you can see the deep into the water but you can't fathom a person's heart. I'm taking my investment out and let go so go find another production company. Do that then. The loss of a few billion one doesn't even tickle me now. Crazy idiot. Holding those two words back, CEO Kim Pansuk hung up. The trailer became quiet once more. Director Park slumped into the sofa and rubbed his cut lower lip. He held another cigarette in his mouth. After inhaling a couple times, Director Park called someone. It's me, team leader. About what we talked about before. About Nam Joyun. Ah, uh, that. How did it go? The voice on the other side nonchalantly asked. That idiot decided to get out of the project completely. Once we reduced his role and showed him who's boss on set, he couldn't endure it and scrammed. Director Park tapped his cigarette ash without care and perked his ears. He didn't hear a reaction, but the slow breathing sound that sounded out had traces of satisfaction. Really? I thought he was the type who wouldn't give up since he was doing independent films for a long time. Well, he's good at acting so if he did well, he might have shined eventually, but his temper is trash. That idiot is never going to be successful. You not signing him was a great decision. After shamelessly flattering him for a while, 
Director Park added. Chief Young Sunwoo came over and the two of them wrecked havoc before leaving, that man's a crazy one too. Really? That must have been quite a sight. A low laughter rang from the other side. Just as Director Park opened his mouth to say something. Director. Someone came to see you. The assistant director knocked on the trailer door. Director Park pulled his phone back and asked. Who is it this time? Apparently, he's a reporter. He wanted to see the film set and interview you. Hearing it was a reporter, Director Park's eyes bulged. Tell him he'll be there in a sec. Shouting that, Director Park took out his phone away and went straight to the point. So, um, team leader, now that the troublesome problem has been settled, if this project is a hit, I am planning on a large-scale blockbuster for my next project. I already have a scenario. If I could cast a top star like Mr. Seo Jijun or M.S. Sun Chai Young. Let's see the scenario then. Thank you. Director Park bowed to the air. After hanging up, he hummed as he stood in front of the mirror on the wall. His brightly smiling face was reflected on the shattered mirror. He straightened his back and tidied his tangled hair. The door to his trailer shook again. Director. Director. Please hurry up and come out. As usual, you're always lacking I'm coming out. Director Park swung open his trailer door. He saw three reporters carrying laptop bags and cameras behind the assistant director. I'm from Entertainment Movie, are you the director? That's correct. If you let us know ahead of time, we could have prepa. I'm sorry for coming suddenly, but would an interview be okay? Of course, of course. If it's going to promote my project, of course, I have to. Director Park replied with a smile when questions began pouring in. What is your relationship with WU's Mr. Young Sun Woo? Pardon? Who? Did Mr. Young Sun Woo contact you first after seeing your scenario? Who is the actor in Mr. Young Sun Woo's care? I heard he's an unknown rookie, could we hold a joint interview with him as well? Wait, what? Dumbfounded, Director Park stumbled backward. Beside him, the assistant director was blinking with the same expression. The film crew and extras began to gather one by one. The reporters stuck to Director Park. Director, please give us your comment. People all around call Mr. Young Sun Woo mid ass hand, and the projects he chooses garner significant interest because of him. Everyone working on the movie must be really grateful to Mr. Young Sun Woo, how do you feel? Would a joint interview with Mr. Young Sun Woo be difficult? Director. Director Park flinched in surprise. The phone in his hand was vibrating. The caller was Ace Distribution Company. A sleek, foreign car rolled into the parking lot. Director Park swallowed his saliva. Two men in suits got out of the car. They were the film business general manager, who made his film a 10 billion one project, and the marketing team leader. The general manager approached him with a broad smile. Director Park, why didn't you let us in on such important news? That's general manager. If you had such a good asset like him, you should have immediately told the marketing team. Don't you know how much royal family benefited from using Mr. Young Sun Woo? Team leader Lee, we can get as much as them, right? Of course, in fact, the timing is better for us. The marketing team leader laughed while waving his tablet. Since Cat Guardian Ghost and Lee Songa became huge hits in China, there's a ton of attention on Chief Young Sun Woo for bringing someone to international stardom. On top of that, our associates are all in China so reporters are in a frenzy. Whatever we say now will be trending. I gave some comments to reporters, and their reactions were very heated. I bet the investors must be enticed as well. Of course. They are already nibbling the bait. Good, good. Director Park. Yes, General Manager. But, um. Although you are busy filming, please cooperate with us. If we are able to promote properly and save on marketing costs from the beginning, all of it will go to the production budget. Team Leader Lee, what did you say you needed? First, we need to hold an interview with Chief Young Sun Woo and the director. You said Chief Young Sun Woo did interviews for Royal Family, right? Ask him about it. 
he gets to promote his unknown rookie as well. Since it's a win-win situation for all parties, why would he decline? Let's work on this later. Director Park, there is no problem with doing an interview, right? There is a little. The general manager stared at Director Park. Director Park smiled awkwardly as he said. Problem. The untouched coffee had become cold. Having explained what had occurred a few hours prior, Director Park examined the faces of those in front of him. The general manager and team leader were whispering to each other with serious expressions for a while now. Comforting his parched throat, Director Park gulped down his cold coffee. Bring him back. Director Park spat his coffee at the sudden words. Pa pardon? Mr. Nam Joyun, bring him back at all costs. Whether we double his contract or give him a bigger role, spare no cost in comforting Mr. Nam Joyun and Mr. Young Sunwoo and get them to do the movie again. The team leader said. His voice and expression were incomparably serious. Taken aback, Director Park hesitated in his seat. But, do we really have? Did Ace want to take Nam Joyun out? That was before this situation broke out. Do you know how many articles about this are being published? If you don't bring Mr. Nam Joyun back, things might take an extreme turn for the worse. Can't we just explain to the press? That there was misinformation. When they are publishing articles about mid ass hands choice and stuff, do you think we'll be able to handle to aftermath if we tell them it's not? Above all, it's not like Mr. Nam Joyun left on good terms. The team leader frowned. If Chief Young Sun Woo does something crazy like saying he pulled out because he thought this movie would flop, the press will have a field day with that. Then do you think the investors will sit still? No, mid ass hand and all that. That's all because he's lucky. Who really believes that? We all know that the reporters are joking when they say that. Don't tell me that investors will. Director Park. The general manager cut in with a frown. To people who invested tens of billions of won, this isn't a joke. That's Mr. Nam Joyun and Mr. Young Sun Woo. Bring them back no matter what. If you can't do it, Ask CEO Kim Pansook of Pan Production. Since they worked on Cat Guardian Ghost together, they should be quite close. Director Park's complexion became gloomy. The general manager issued an ultimatum. Move quickly. If things don't work out and the investors pull out, we will have no choice but to take our hands off this project as well. The weather's good. I said, looking at the blue sky out the window. Nam Joyun stared at me. His jaw was locked for a while now. I keep getting calls. The director, assistant director. Don't answer them. I already received more than 40 texts. Don't look at them. I think the incident has become too big of a deal. Same with the reporters. Of course, it should when I worked so hard to fan the flames. I said while looking down at my vibrating phone. Nam Joyun's phone wasn't the only one going crazy. My phone was too. In fact, I was even contacted by people in China, saying things like you said you were going to quietly take care of business and come back, but how is this quiet? Or why do you start up a storm wherever you go? Though missed calls and texts were piling up like crazy, I let it be. I only made a couple important calls. I took out two cans I bought from the convenience store and handed one to Nam Joyun. Just relax and wait while drinking soda. Is it okay to just stay like this? The reporters are in a frenzy so doing nothing is actually better for now. I don't know what you're thinking. Nam Joyun let out a sigh. Then he rested his head on the headrest and opened the can. I lightly clinked my can with his and said. I'm thinking about how far I should go. Sorry. A cloud slowly rolled in the blue sky. A mild early summer breeze blew in through the half-opened window. Should I stop at a good place or go all the way? I mumbled, closing my eyes. But, you know. Yes. I came to know this once I entered this industry, but it seems I'm the type to hold grudges. I lazily opened one eye and saw Nam Joyun's dumbfounded face. The corners of my lips unconsciously rose. I keep wanting to go all the way. Director, Nam Joyun, this guy, isn't answering his phone. WH what do we do? 
What do you mean what do we do? Keep calling him. Director Park and the assistant director's urgent voices rang out. Their expressions were more of a mess than the trailer. Seeing as he isn't answering even when I use a different phone, it looks like this idiot went dark. Chief Young Sun Woo isn't answering either. Did you send him a message? About talking in person? You brought up his contract money as well, right? Of course, I did all of that. He ignored all of it. Motherfucker, idiot. Damn it. The news had to break out at a time like this. Director Park swore. Pressing his phone on his ear, the assistant director asked. What do we do if Nam Joyun doesn't come back? Director, won't our film get cancelled? Don't jinx it. Director Park rubbed his anxious face. Then he said. If we lower our heads first by saying him well revert his role back and forget what happened in the trailer, they'll follow suit and won't take it too far. Why will they? Young Sun Woo, that idiot. He has no choice if he thinks about Nam Joyun's acting career. It's a significant role in a 10 billion won movie. If he doesn't come back, where will Nam Joyun go? Will there be a director that'll give Nam Joyun better conditions than me? Hanging up, I got back in the minivan. Should we go now? Nam Joyun, who was looking at the sunset with a complicated expression, turned his head. Where? It's almost time. Time. I told you I came because of a meeting. I've been mediating a movie on top of Royal Family for Sangha. A 34 billion won blockbuster. They've been dragging it on for a while, but now that her popularity has surged as an international star, I think well signed soon. Ah, uh, then he'll get off here. I stopped Nam Joyun just as he grabbed the handle. Come with me. Starting the minivan, I said. Instead of a 10 billion one film, I'm going to try and get you a 34 billion one one. Chapter, 133. Quick correction with the film budget. The film Nam Joyun was in originally had a 3. 5 billion one budget. When Ace swooped in, it became a 10 billion one. And the new movie has a budget of 34 billion won. Ah, my stomach hurts. Damn it. It hurt so much I could die. 1. It was the meeting room of the movie production company, SBE Films. The project producer tossed his tablet aside. The middle-aged man with his eyes glued to an actor's profile, director Choi sung -won, sitting beside him smiled with wrinkled eyes. If you have a stomach ache, go to the washroom. Director Choi. That's not what I mean. Does it hurt a lot? Then go to the hospital. I'll handle the meeting on my own. That's not it. I have a stomach ache because of this. The project producer pushed his tablet to Director Choi Sungwon. Director Choi looked at the screen. The headline was written in huge letters. Young Sun Woo, the man who made an international star, temporarily returns to Korea for a new movie? What kind of movie is it? Damn it, we already planned out a promotion strategy around Chief Young Sun Woo. You should have released an article before they did it first. They haven't signed the contract yet. I was going to ask him during our meeting today and release it right away. Our reporters were all waiting. The red-faced project producer gulped down a glass of cold water. Director Choi rubbed his wispy beard as he said. Then why not release articles now? The other film is already sucking all the benefits, what do we become if we break the news now? Well be sidelined. Also, we look like we're trying to suck up whatever's left. So humiliating. Then don't release it. Hyung, just keep looking at the profiles. Don't make me burst. The project producer gnashed before raising his cup. It was empty. Damn it. The project producer swore as he beat his chest. It wouldn't be strange if he collapsed from oxygen deprivation. Director Choi sung handed him his own cup and said. Movies only need to be good. Promotions are a minor issue. Are we in the 90s? All projects need to be good. Huge box office successes are created by pouring money into promotions. We poured 8 billion into marketing this time. It's that important. That's why Ace is pouring articles out about this. 
the project producer emptied director choice cup in one go and grumbled. Chief Young Sun Wu, I didn't think of him like that. So mean. Now what's wrong with him? We decided to meet with us today but gives the articles about his new project to some other project. Morals still exist. He went too far. He should have at least told us before the articles went up. The project producer didn't finish his sentence. It was noisy outside. He saw a man in a suit outside the clear glass door. He walked straight towards them as he took off his sunglasses, revealing sharp, cold appearance. The female employee who guided them to the meeting room entered first. The guests have already, should I prepare coffee? What coffee? Bring cold water. The project producer frowned. That guy's an actor. Director Choi abruptly said. What actor? He's Chief Yung Sun Wu. Wear glasses if you can't see. No, not him, the one behind him. The project producer turned his gaze. He finally saw an unfamiliar man behind Chief Yung Sun Wu. He had a handsome face, a good body, but as someone who had met almost all the top stars in the country, he wasn't especially eye-catching. Is he a rookie from WU? Where did you see him? It's my first time seeing him. It's my first time too. How do you know he's an actor when it's your first time seeing him? I can tell just by looking at him. He has the aura. What aura? Put your glasses on. The project producer pushed his chair back and got up as he said in a grumbling manner. A contract is a contract, but I can't stop myself from saying something because of how much it hurts. The project producer had a sour look on his face. It was expected since he would have seen the articles plastered on the internet. Just as we sat down, he said in a clear voice. I saw the articles. Ah, the articles. I replied while rubbing my chin like I didn't know what was going on. I can understand Ace Distribution Company breaking the news since they wouldn't have wanted to lose such a big marketing opportunity, but still, we just haven't signed, didn't we already have a verbal agreement? The project producer continued while trying to suppress his temper. Of course, we can't ask you to only help marketing our movie or anything like that, but morally, this is a bit awkward in our perspective since we had a lot of plans regarding marketing. I know, right? I wonder why they published those articles. I said nonchalantly. The project producer's eyes bulged. His expression was asking what I was saying. Nam Joyun, who was sitting quietly next to me, stared at me. With an awkward expression, or at least I tried to, I said. We decided not to be in that movie. Not be in the movie. The project producer stared at me with a foolish expression before hastily looking at his tablet. Wait, wait. I don't understand. Then why is Ace releasing these articles did they just make a media ploy without talking with you? If we did, I would have done an interview like I did for Royal Family. The project producer leaned forward. Then all the articles being published right now are incorrect? Yes, that was why I wanted to discuss this issue with you. I thought it would be best to act after discussing with SBE Films. Like you said, we only need to sign the contract. Uh, yes. Wait, that's quite an upright thought, please wait. He mumbled as his eyes quickly moved in their sockets. Then he shot out of his chair. He opened the meeting room door and shouted. Producer Park. Contact MS. Min Jong from the PR team. Quickly. Pardon. Right now. Right now. It's urgent so tell her to come. No, no. It'll do it. The project producer bolted out of the meeting room. Then, within a second, he opened the door again and stuck his head in. Coffee. It'll get you coffee so please talk with the director for a bit. I saw the employees rushing about through the glass door. Turning my gaze, I looked at the middle-aged man sitting next to the producer's now empty seat. His graying hair and beard, gentle wrinkles, on the outside, he looked like a friendly neighborhood uncle, but there was no one in the film industry that didn't know his face. Choi someone. He made a brilliant debut, winning the Rookie Director Award 15 years ago. 
you couldn't count all the director awards he had won throughout his career with two hands, and he was the double 10 million director having created two mega hits that had audiences of more than 10 million people. He was one of the top directors in the nation. If Lee Sangha wasn't confirmed for his next project, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to sit in front of him and talk. And whether I properly utilized this opportunity depended on my future actions. I looked beside me. Nam Joyeun was looking at me. Even though he was suddenly brought here, he looked trustworthy. I wet my throat with the coffee an employee had brought me. I have something I want to talk to you about. If it's about PR, I don't know anything. Director Choi Sun-won replied with a smile. It's not about PR but casting. Ah, uh, casting. There's an actor I would like to introduce you to. The director's gaze turned next to me. Nam Joyun bowed as he greeted him. I am Nam Joyun. Their gazes met in midair. Director Choi Sun-won, who looked at Nam Joyun with an unreadable expression, asked. Is he grouped with mess? Lee Songa. If it's about business, why don't you try persuading the producer? It looks like you are quite helpful in promoting the film and MS. Lee Sangha is currently at the center of attention so you should come to an agreement quickly. This is unrelated to WU. Of course, I am not trying to bring him on as an add-on. Director Choi Sun-won looked like he didn't expect this. We came because we didn't want to persuade a film company but you, director. I placed my hand on Nam Joyun's shoulder and said. Not with business but with acting. A phone vibrated. Who is it? Is it Nam Joyun, that idiot? Ah, uh, no. It's Ace's marketing team leader. The assistant director said in a hoarse voice. Director Park vented by kicking objects in front of him. The wrecked trailer became even messier. What do we do? Director, are you not going to pick up? There's nothing I can say even if I pick up. What do I say if I pick up? Do I tell him that those bastards have gone dark and I haven't said a word to them yet? Just let him be. He'll contact them once we finish talking with Nam Joyun. Director Park said while pacing back and forth with an anxious face. Again. Refresh the page again. Are there any new articles? The assistant director picked up the tablet. His face was also stiff with nervousness. After tapping the screen with his stiff fingers a few times, he suddenly became surprised. There are articles. What? Did Jung Sun Wu, that idiot, do an interview? Director Park hastily came over. The assistant director, who had been looking at the screen with a gloomy face, slumped his shoulders. Ah, it looks like a spam article. He didn't do an interview. I almost had a heart attack. Director Park rubbed his chest. He slumped down on the sofa and mumbled. The idiot hasn't done an interview after going dark huh? Why hasn't he? Why do you think? Even after making such a mess, he doesn't plan on seriously leaving this project. Director Park's lips twisted. He's dragging this on to screw me over, that shrewd idiot. I assess that it. If these bastards were really planning on not doing this movie, they would have already gone and talked to the reporters. Yet, they are quiet. They're saying they have the upper hand. After making me fret and fume, they will take us back once they get everything they want. If that's it, then it's a relief. What's a relief? When I have to bow my head at those bastards. Just then, a phone began vibrating again. Director Park's expression distorted. This is driving me crazy. Is it Ace again? It looks like a message. One second. The assistant director quickly checked his phone and his eyes popped. Director, I found Nam Joyun and Chief Young Sun Wu. Did they contact you? What did those bastards say? They didn't contact me, but Pan Production's youngest producer contacted me. Pan Production? The assistant director nodded. Yes, apparently, they are meeting CEO Kim Pan Suk right now. I truly don't have the face to see you. CEO Kim Pan Suk said with a gloomy expression. I was about to reply when the office door swung open and Director Park rushed in. It seemed he ran up the stairs as he was panting. He looked around the office, and when he spotted us, 
he quickly came over. Director Park, why did you come here? You said you didn't want my measly investment. CEO Kim Pansook said with a frown. Flinching, Director Park scratched the back of his neck as he smiled gently. CEO, I will properly apologize for my words later. Like you said, I must have been crazy for a moment. I became too high-strung from thinking about the project these days. I started this project with full trust in you, how could I go anywhere? The more he spoke, the colder CEO Kim Pansuk's expression became. After examining his expression, Director Park coughed and looked at me like the issue with Nam Joyeun and me was more urgent. Alternating between us, he came over to me. Oh, Chief Young, why could I get a hold of you? Because I didn't answer. Director Park's face became rotten at my reply. If he was handed an axe, it felt like he would immediately strike my head. However, it was only for a few seconds. His face reverted to its awkward smile again. It was an uncomfortable smile, like he was wearing a mask. Yes, of course, you must have felt offended. I was very regretful when you and Mr. Joyan left like that. No matter how much the distribution company told me to reduce Mr. Joyan's role, as a director, I should have refused. What a joke. That was what CEO Kim Pansuk's expression read. It must be the same for me. I negotiated with the company. We're going to revert Mr. Joyun's role to how it was, no, make it even bigger. Also, it looks like my assistant director offended you and I apologize for that as well. Director Park looked at Nam Joyun as he said this. With the same mouth he told him to not even think about acting in this industry again. Director Park. There are always complications while making a movie. Like how there are contractions before birth. Just consider it like we drove away bad luck and cover up what happened in the trailer. That will be a little difficult. I said while getting up. Director Park's eyebrows twitched. His stabbing gaze followed my movements. Accompanied by a short click of his tongue, I heard Director Park's voice. I came and apologized like this. Is there something else you want from me? If there is, tell me so we can come to an agreement. If we're being honest, it's not like you plan on not doing this film either. Isn't that why you aren't doing an interview refuting the articles and at the production company? Let's resolve what we can and do an interview together. That's not it. I picked up the trash can next to the table. We came here for this. I emptied the contents of the can in front of Director Park. Ripped paper piled up on his ankles. Just what is? The contract. W.H. Watt. Standing foolishly for a moment, Director Park quickly rummaged through the paper shreds. After piecing together a few of them, his face paled. His clenched hands were trembling. He looked up to me with a face full of confusion and rage. I told him once more. I told you that we aren't doing this movie. Chapter, 134. Producer Park, please get me two copies of the contract. Director Park said as he threw the paper shreds in his hands away. Producer Park Suk Young, who had been observing the situation, widened his eyes. The contract? Yeah, Mr. Nam Joyun is going to sign a new contract. I snorted. Hearing his nonsense was funny. Stretching his bowed back, Director Park laughed like I did. Then he tapped my arm. You did well in ripping this up. I was thinking about increasing his pay and signing a new contract anyways. Producer Park, what are you doing? I told you to print the contract. You don't have to. I said with a smile. CEO Kim Pansook, who stood up to jump into the conversation, lost his chance and closed his mouth. Then, faltering, Producer Park Suk Young's gaze alternated between me and Director Park. Why would you print a contract without reason? You're just wasting ink. Chief Young Sun Wu. Are you acting like this to gain something? If a director bowed this much, you should at least give him some face. Do you not think of the future? Are you going to keep this unpleasant mood when we're filming? I think you are misunderstanding something. Misunderstanding? I believe I properly conveyed my thoughts. We have no plans on continuing with this movie. We aren't trying to gain anything from you either. Director Park's aura became fierce. 
He acted like he would give us his kidney just moments ago, but now he looked like he wanted to rip my kidney out and chew on it raw. He approached me with this threatening aura. Nam Joyun silently took a step forward. D Director, Ace keeps calling us. The assistant director cut in. This is the fifth time. They are texting me to answer the phone, what should I do? I told you not to answer. Director Park shouted before glaring at me. Chief Young, you're unexpectedly the type to hold long grudges. It seems that way. If your grudges last this long, then your life will become tiresome. As a chief, you should be concentrating on managing your contacts, yet what do you hope to gain from acting like this to a director like me? I told you rumors spread quickly in this industry. You should look to the future. Are you not planning on working in this industry for a long time? Why were there so many people worrying about my future these days? I can't take it anymore, you idiot. Are you threatening someone in front of me? CEO Kim Pansuk cut in, huffing and puffing. His already large body coupled with the scowl on his face gave off a murderous feeling. However, Director Park didn't even look at CEO Kim Pansuk as he mocked. I'm not threatening him, just warning, no, giving him advice. As he works in this industry, he'll be faced with worse situations than this, but what is he going to do if he breaks off relationships every time he's faced with situations like this? I turned my gaze from the two arguing men and looked to my side. Nam Joyun's face became murkier since Director Park mentioned spreading rumors about me. Table throwing once was enough. Even if there weren't any cameras, there were too many watching eyes here. Like you said, ITLL be best if not to make enemies if I'm not confident in handling it. When he heard me, Director Park turned to me with a bright face. That's it. There's no need to hate EA. But I plan on handling it this time no matter what. Do you think I would act like this without even that much determination? I wondered for a long time. Should I endure it or not? Should I go all the way or not? Was this situation one I could handle or not? Only after wondering and pondering on it did I finally act. And well, I didn't think I would regret this decision. You're being reckless. You crass. It seemed he now understood that he was wasting his time trying to change my mind, Director Park's face turned red. His oppressing aura crumbled, and anxiety took its place. Just then, the nervous assistant director cut in. Director. I think you really have to pick up the phone this time. It seems like something happened. Hey, do you not understand me? I told you not to pick. A phone abruptly began to ring. This time, it was mine. Just as I was taking out my phone, another phone began to ring. This is the CEO's phone huh? What's this? The pan production employees mumbled with dazed faces. The phones of other employees began to vibrate and ring. The regular phone on the desk even began to ring. It was almost like a choir. I know from experience, but this is one of two things. I said to Director Park, whose eyes were shifting rapidly. It's either incredibly good news or incredibly bad news. I looked at my phone screen. It stopped ringing. Instead, a message icon lit up on the screen. I checked the message and smiled. It seems to be good news for me. Director Park hastily took out his phone. Soon, his face distorted with confusion. Mid-ass hands new movie was noise marketing to promote a movie. SBE Films Confusion, Young Sun Woo and Lee Song has next project is director Choi Sun Won's new movie. Just what is going on? Two movies claiming to be Young Sun Woo's next project, which one is right? 10 million director Choi Sun Won's new project. Incredible cast. 30 billion one blockbuster. Good, that's it. The project producer was satisfied with the articles popping up one after another. MS. Min Jong, keep sending out press releases. Go go. I'm sending it to all the entertainment reporters I know. They usually take a few days to read press releases like this, but they are checking it instantly. It's heating up. The PR coordinator replied as she rapidly typed on her keyboard. What about real-time search rankings? It probably made it up there, right? With this momentum, it should be up there soon. 
the situation is hilarious, and it's not even a comedy. Ha, huh, how is the marketing team at Ace going to handle this? They probably feel like they've been struck by lightning. She giggled before suddenly asking. If we really want to drive a wedge into this, we need Chief Young Sun Woo to do an interview. Not one where you just add a comment to a press release but an interview with reporters. Hell do it, right? Just wait a bit. Chief Young told me he'll contact me as soon as he handles some urgent matters. The project producer said while tossing his phone up in the air. The PR coordinator subtly asked. But apparently, Chief Young ended things with the other movie on bad terms. I don't know the details. It seems that way. This situation is one where someone first spread the rumor, articles published, then Ace rushed over in excitement at their luck. Thinking about it now, it's like their people dug their own graves. So I'm just hypothesizing, but... What is it that your intro is so long? Those graves, what if Chief Young set them up? Were there any rumors about it? The project producer shook his head. No. I mean you must have looked into the source of the rumor yourself. I did. And? I don't know. If things got this big, usually you'd expect rumors about the source amongst reporters, but it's completely quiet. I asked the reporter Chief Young Sun Woo is apparently close to, but it's not her either. The PR coordinator licked her lips like she was going to die from curiosity. The project producer scratched below his ear. Well I don't think that's the case, but if Chief Young Sun Woo had a hand in this, let me know. If you look at it, there are a lot of people who have the ability to do something like that, but people who actually go through with it are rare. Also, if someone like that becomes successful, nine times out of ten. What the heck? Why is it so loud out here? Did a war break out? The mumbling project producer turned around. Director Choi Sung-won was walking out of the waiting room. Oh, director. Are you done thinking? Mostly. Then let's talk. About what? The project producer came up close and poked the director's side. While I was outside, what did Chief Young Sun Woo, that unknown actor, and you do? What did you do that you were thinking so hard? Director Choi sung -won didn't reply and simply rubbed his beard. Yeah, reporter Kim. Don't publish the article now. I'll call you back later. The situation is a bit complicated. I'll call you back once it's settled. The pan production employees were having a hard time as they clung to their phones. CEO Kim pan -suk and the assistant director were also in similar situations. The only ones who weren't on the phone were Nam Joyeon. Director Park, and me. Director Park tapped his phone furiously with his stubby fingers. His face turned red, then blue, and was now black. I could tell what he was seeing. Are you? Mumbling, Director Park suddenly turned his gaze. His hand then clamped on Nam Joyun's shoulder. Nam Joyun frowned. Mr. Nam Joyun. Are you going to throw it all away? Did he change his target because he couldn't get through to me? Are you just going to sit still? You need to persuade Mr. Young Sun Woo. Having spent ten years as an unknown actor on the bottom rung, you should know better than anyone else how big of an opportunity this is. Are you just going to kick away this golden opportunity? Isn't it a shame? It is a shame. Nam Joyun replied. That the scenario met a bad maker. At his calm words, Director Park's expression crumbled into nothingness. Nam Joyun approached me. Since the contract is settled, let's go. No need to listen to these harsh words any longer. As he said this, he secretly pushed my back as if urging me to leave. However, we were stopped before we could take two steps. No, where the hell do you think you're going? Though I don't know what kind of things Chief Young Sun Woo told you, you are an unknown rookie in the world of commercial films. Director Park shouted frustratedly. The whites in his eyes reddened in agitation as his eyes rolled non-stop. Chief Young, you shouldn't act like this if you really care about Mr. Joyun. What are you banking on? For W.U. to help you. Give up on trying to use Lee Songa as leverage. Mark my words, W.U. will never help Mr. Joyun regarding this matter. I have no plans on asking W.U. for help. 
then you know that I, my movie, is the best you can get for Mr. Joyun. Is he going to go back to independent films and help move luggage around? Or is there someone who can offer the same conditions as me? Is there? Is the, what? His ear-piercing shouts halted as his lips simply flapped. The pan production employees who were busy on the phone and even the nervous assistant director stared at me with faces asking me what I meant. I looked down at my vibrating phone again. It was SBE's film project producer. If it's director Choi Sung-won's new 34 billion won budget project, the conditions are incredible. With a strange expression on his face, director Park stuttered. Th that's Lee Song has film. Director Choi Sung-won gave us this opportunity. To obtain an opportunity to appear on Director Choi's project is a dream for most actors. I think words like golden opportunity are more suited for things like this. Director Park's face became even stranger. Just then, the assistant director paled as he grabbed Director Park's arm. Director. Ace said that if you don't answer the phone, they might actually take their hands off our proj. For a moment, Director Park's eyes moved furiously as he thought through the situation. The situation was accelerating to the worst possible. However, it wasn't like there was impossible to turn it around since Young Sun Wu himself hadn't yet done an interview. If he could get Nam Joyun to sign his contract again, the events of today would simply be something in the passing. The media, which was in an uproar, and even Ace would quiet down. As long as he persuaded them somehow. Somehow. If persuasion, reason, and threats didn't work, there was only one option left. Though he wanted to avoid it, it was his only option. Director Park bit the inside of his lip. His face crumbled. Should the assistant director and I kneel and beg? Ha! Huh. Would that be enough? Director? The assistant director's eyes widened. Director Park licked his dry lips and said in a slightly heartbreaking voice. If you two leave, I don't know what will happen to the film. There are so many people tied to this project. If there's an investment problem because of you two, then what are we to do about all of them? What about the extras who live paycheck to paycheck? Mr. Joyun, you should be aware of the situation on set, right? Director Park looked like he was about to kneel as he clung to us. If you want, the assistant director and I will really kneel so please think of the others and continue working on the film. No, could you please continue working with us? He begged as he looked in front of him. Although he wasn't phased by threats or shouts, Nam Joyun's eyes now trembled. Director Park inwardly became relieved. Like he expected, Nam Joyun's heart was wavering. Maybe it was different in movies, but someone kneeling in real life was rare. Since he added the film staff into the mix, it would be stranger if his heart didn't waver. While it hurt his pride, it was worth it. Thinking about this, Director Park looked to his side and was shaken. Young Sun Wu was staring directly at him. Ah, Director, now that I think about it, I have something I want to ask you. As ask me anything. About what you said just now. How W.U. will never help Mr. Joyun. He asked in a strangely soft voice. What do you know for you to guarantee that? Chapter, 135 I had never gone hunting before. However, I imagined that a beast caught in my trap would be like that. Director Park, who had hidden his black heart and feigned hardship, was now palpitating. I, I don't know what you're saying. What did you say I said? Mark my words, W.U. will never help Mr. Joyun regarding this matter is what you said. His cheeks trembled. I was curious what you meant by that. What meaning? It just came. It has nothing to do with W.U. Although he said that, he was too flustered to control his facial expressions. The fact that he said that it had nothing to do with W.U. sounded like it very much had something to do with it. What was it? What did he know for him to guarantee that Nam Joyun would never be supported by W.U.? Someone at W.U. who met Nam Joyun. And had a bad impression of him. There was only one person who came to mind. Let's see. If he knew that an actor he rejected, especially one introduced by me, who he hated, obtained a significant role in a movie, then he might be bothered by that since it would mean his judgment was off. I bent my waist and whispered into Director Park's ear. 
Did our Team 2 leader say something? Director Park flinched in surprise. His eyes trembled rapidly. His reaction was no different from a confession. You know him, right? The incident this time. I am a movie director, of course, I know all the team leaders at WU. Director Park cut me off and waved his hand. It seems there's a huge misunderstanding, but what I meant was whether WU would look after Nam Joyeun when he has nothing to do with them and they have so many people to take care of. No, rather than talking about this, Lo let's settle the contract first. Seeing as he changed the subject, it seemed like he would spill easily. Well, obviously, he would be more scared of a team leader than a chief like me. Like they say, it's a small world. I thought about how I could get him to open his mouth while silently staring at his face. Ask. Persuade. These didn't seem like they would work. Threaten. Although I couldn't say for sure, it was worth trying. The timing just happened to be right as well. I suddenly recalled how I threat teacher Shim Kyung Take. It surprisingly wasn't a big deal. And threatening the punchline member afterward was even easier. The. Just as I was about to speak, my phone in my hand vibrated. I glanced down and stopped once I checked the screen. Lee Songa. That moment, it felt like something creaked to a halt. Then a breeze flowed through my dark, stuffy mind. I was looking at my screen when someone clung to my other arm. Director Park's voice struck my ears. Should I really kneel? Huh. Just say it. Stop it, Director Park. Why are you putting them in such a tough spot? CEO Kim Pansook grabbed Director Park's shoulder with his pan-sized hand. Why are you bothering me when things are going well? What do you mean things are going well? Mr. Nam Joyeun is in talks with another project. We can adjust for that. Mr. Joyeun, you're going to continue with the movie, right? Right? Director Park now clung to Nam Joyeun's arm. His face was cloudy, seemingly worried about the film crew and cast's livelihood, yet he said. I want. His voice was resolute. Mr. Joyeun. This isn't a problem where you can say stuff like that so easily. Mr. Joyeun, are you going to abandon the film crew and cast, who were your family until this very morning, just because you have another opportunity? Director Park shook CEO Kim Pansuk's arm to the side and asked again, but Nam Joyeun shook his head. Seeing him like this, I let out a short sigh. I cleared my complicated mind and did what I had to. Director. He turned to look at me with eyes full of expectation. Like you said, Mr. Nam Joyeun is still an unknown rookie. I think juggling two overlapping schedules will be difficult for him. Then I hope your project is a success. Director Park's face soured as he looked at me. What sort of expression was I making right now? I lightly bowed and turned my back with no regrets. Damn bastards. If there's a problem with investments, it's all your fault. Director Park. You're really. Mr. Sun Woo, please go. Held back by the pan production employees, Director Park continued to curse. Well see how successful you get. It'll be watching you. It'll be successful. Without a doubt. I repeated in my mind as I shut the door. Long fingers tapped the sofa armrest. Soon, CEO Beck Hansung turned his gaze away from the synopsis. The project looks good. Let's go with this. Yes. Then we'll proceed with this. The waiting team 2 leader quickly replied. Although his business was finished, he acted like he was still drinking his half-full cup of black tea as he examined the CEO's expression. While the Team 2 leader was looking for an opportunity to speak, the director, who was looking at his tablet across from him, laughed as he said. Why is it that our lucky charm is always popping up in the entertainment section? I can't tell who's the celebrity anymore. Since it's been brought up, about Young Sun Wu. The Team 2 leader picked up the conversation and stealthily joined in. Did you know that he brought an actor over while finalizing the SBE film shooting schedule? The Team 3 leader mentioned it a while ago. Apparently, he's someone our lucky charm has his eye on. Even if it's his actress project, it was a company matter. Isn't it a problem if he brings someone not affiliated with us to a place like that? 
this sort of behavior is unthinkable in my team. He personally made clear that it had nothing to do with W.U. It's cute that he's so determined. Cute. Either way, the fact that he cannot distinguish between private and personal matters still stands. The Team 2 leader said. Leisurely setting his teacup down, the director said. Why are you so fixated on him? It's because I'm worried. I said it from the beginning. If you let him be, he's definitely going to cause a huge problem. Say that when he actually does. Unable to hide dislike aversion any longer, the Team 2 leader was about to get up. How was he? CEO Beck Hansung casually asked. Who? The actor Young Sun Woo brought. I heard you personally interviewed him. How was he? Air Nam Joyun is his name. The Team 2 leader said, but mid-air. He cleared his throat. His acting isn't bad since he did independent films for a long time, but that's it. He doesn't have that special aura of an actor. He's not an actor we should keep with an exclusive contract. Really? There wasn't any other reason. CEO Beck Hansung asked with a smile. The Team 2 leader frowned. There are tons of unknown actors who are as good at acting but are younger, better looking and have more potential than him. Even the new rookies we signed on this time are much better than him. Confident, the Team 2 leader added. I have a great eye for actors. Do you not trust me? Oh, the great eye which said Park Dojin was someone of great character. Director. Why are you bringing that up again? He was fine when I saw him. Yeah, let's go with that. The director smiled brightly as he nodded. Face now red, the Team 2 leader looked at CEO Beck Hansung. One saw something in an actor while the other didn't. CEO Beck Hansung leisurely perched his chin on his hands as he said. I wonder whose eye is the real deal. Chief. I turned around. Nam Joyun was looking at me with a worried face. It seemed my expression didn't look so good. Nam Joyun patted my shoulder awkwardly. I was just thinking about something. I'm fine so no need to worry. How can I not? You were caught up in my problem the entire day. In this situation, your problem is my problem. Also. I considered if I should tell him that the Team 2 leader may have played a role in the hardship he suffered but decided against it. There was no need to tell him more bad news on a day like this. Forget the past and focus on this. I handed him a thick envelope. It was the scenario of director Choi Sun-won's new movie. Nam Joyun's face alternated between complicated emotions. He accepted the envelope with both hands. He held the envelope so tightly that his veins bulged. He even looked determined. Let's be successful. Nam Joyun's fixated gaze on the envelope rose to look at me. The edges of my lips curled upwards as I said. Let's show them how successful we become. I will work like this is my last. Are you going to die? Why would it be your last? You said you wanted to confirm something. When I tilted my head, Nam Joyun continued. The day you came over and proposed we work together, you said you wanted to confirm if you had a good eye for actors. I did. So I will work like this is my last. I do not want to disappoint you anymore. Meeting his resolute gaze, I smiled faintly. I wanted to say this before, but I think you should stop calling me chief. Then. No need to be so polite, young. 1. Nam Joyun's eyes widened. Then he smiled at me. After dropping Nam Joyun off, I returned to the company. I went up to the PR team on the fifth floor with coffee when I suddenly took out my phone. Now that I thought about it, I didn't contact Lee Sangha after texting her that I was in a meeting because I was so busy. I pressed the name in the list of missed calls. After a message informing me that it was a roaming call, it began to ring. Was she busy? She always answered by the second ring, but this time, the call ended before she answered. It was the same the second time I tried. I wanted to hear her voice. I pressed my contacts thinking about calling Lee Kuan Wu or Lee Tae Hee when someone said. It feels like you're the busiest person in the company. I stopped. The Team 2 leader was walking over from the other side. 
I know, right? I'm quite busy. I casually replied after putting my phone back in my pocket. From what Director Park said, it seems you were quite busy too. Director Park. He tilted his head as he nonchalantly smiled. Why would Director Park talk about me? Pretending. Still, I clearly saw it. The instant his eyes trembled. My lips became crooked. It felt like poison was spreading in my mind. Then I suddenly saw the future I had seen not too long ago. The scene where my future self looked at a picture of the Team 2 leader and called him his team member. I had various thoughts after seeing that. How did I originally live for me to make a team with the Team 2 leader? Maybe the team he was referring to was a blacklist. Maybe I didn't have any unpleasant encounters with him, only seeing his good side. But another thought took root right now. Perhaps my future self was. Someone who it wouldn't be strange to be in a team with the Team 2 leader. I suppressed the thought that swept my mind and entered the PR team office. Whether my thoughts were complicated or not, I had a job to do right now. The office was noisy for some reason. The employees were chatting around a table. I approached Team Leader Park, who was tapping on her keyboard all by herself. I'm here, Team Leader. I also brought coffee. Thank you. The entire day's hectic, but I'll be able to get through it with this. Team Leader Park smiled while accepting the coffee. We need to prepare for the interview SBE wants. You should think of a few comments. Yes, how the situation with Ace. It's chaos. Let them throw all the face they've built up until now. This is what happens when they say it's true without a single word from us. Did they think they could push around our PR team? Team Leader Park said, puffing her chest. I laughed. When I turned my gaze, I discovered two unfamiliar faces in the middle of the group of employees. They were a good-looking man and woman. Looking at their faces, they were celebrities without a doubt, but I had never seen them at work. Who were they? I saw the woman first, and when I turned to look at the man, the world spun. There was so much static that it difficult to see properly, but I could clearly tell where I was. The jib camera moving above me, and the camera rolling on the rails. The lights were shining so brightly they hurt my eyes. The audience's cheers and applause pounded my ears. And a man accepted a flower bouquet on the stage. It was an award ceremony. I was standing amongst the staff, looking up at the stage. The man hugging the bouquet said into the mic. To a lacking actor like me. In tears, his voice cut off for a moment. The master of ceremony's quick action filled this gap with applause. Soon, after barely managing to contain his tears, the man said. Thank you very much for giving such a huge award to a lacking actor like me. Hey, are you listening? Team leader Park's voice brought my mind out of its slumber. The static was completely gone. I clearly saw the two people surrounded by the PR team employees. The two were greeting everyone with bright smiles, but the man soon met my gaze. He suddenly stood up and approached me. It seems he's coming over to introduce himself. It's your first time seeing them, right? Who are they? They seem like actors. They are. They are the new rookies the Team 2 leader selected not too long ago. Team Leader Park tapped my back as she asked. What do you think? Do you think they'll do well? Chapter, 136 Like an illusion, a brilliant light shined down in front of me. The man had arrived right in front of me without me realizing. Below his tall nose, his nice-looking lips opened to say. I am Song Yinho, a rookie actor. It was that voice. The one that was in tears. I am 22 years old. Please take care of me. You are the most handsome amongst the rookies I've seen this year. You're exactly the Team 2 leader's type. Team leader Park said with a laugh before pressing my back again. What do you think? Tell him that you think he'll do well. You're the highly influential mid-ass hand. Even if it's the same compliment that everyone else says, won't it feel different coming from you? Yes, I think you'll do well. My voice was surprisingly normal. Even though a bomb went off in my mind. Thank you. I'll do my best from now on. Okay, 
do your best and get the rookie award. He'll promote the heck out of you in the press. Team leader Park and Song Inho chatted friendlily. I simply went along with them. My mind was filled with a single thought. The future I had seen just now. To be exact, Song Inho who was giving his acceptance speech. While I couldn't be certain due to the static and makeup, he looked the same as he did now. The scene took place in the near future. Was it the rookie award? This year? Or the next. My stomach began to boil. What I need right now, what I desperately wish to see was the future of the people in my care. Neptune's future, the success or failure of Lee Song has next project, and above all, whether Nam Joyun succeeded as an actor or not. Those were the futures I wanted to see. Why did I see the successful future of a rookie who I had never seen before? And he was selected by the team two leader to boot. How should I use this information? Bring me results. The team three leader said, having called me to the outdoor smoking area as soon as I was done my interview with the reporters. Results? The actor you're fixated on. Nam Joyun. My head became dizzy once more. Various thoughts pushed their way into my mind. The team three leader continued. Director Choi someone's project, you said his role in that will be quite small. Since he's a rookie in a commercial film, that's fine too. Only, even if it's one scene, it just needs to be impactful. He said while exhaling cigarette smoke. From what the director tells me, it seems the CEO is somewhat interested in that fellow. CEO Beck Hansung was. Then a contract. Don't get ahead of yourself. The team three leader shook his head. The rookies the team two leader selected this time, the woman's him hire him and the other is Song, Song something. He's Song Inho. Yeah, him. The team two leader said that they were much better than Nam Joyun. The CEO seems interested since the team two leader and your opinions are divided. He wants to know whose eye to trust more. I. Yeah, discerning I. Isn't that what's most important to a management company? Selecting rookies is the team two leader's concern, but if yours brings back results before his, then he won't be able to utter a single word. The edges of his lips curving upwards, the team three leader continued. The director was having a blast telling me about this. It seems like the news will quickly spread throughout the company. People might even start betting. Then the team three leader looked at me. To be honest, I'm curious as well. I saw Nam Joyun's profile a few times, but I couldn't see anything special. He patted my shoulder. Still, it's worth trusting your eye for things. My throat felt dry. I swallowed my saliva. My throat still felt parched. So bring me results. Then I can make what you want happen. What should I do? Left by myself, I looked down at the city shining in neon lights as I thought about it. There was no doubt that Song Inho received an award at an award ceremony. Whether that was a rookie award or not, it was a successful result since there were tons of actors who never got invited to ceremonies like that. If I don't change the future, I would see that future in real life. What would happen to Nam Joyun? What lay in Nam Joyun's future, which was currently covered in a thick fog? The ground seemed to shake. Would director Choi Sung-won be able to capture what I saw in Nam Joyun on film? Then would he leave a strong impression on people? If that didn't happen what should I do if my eyes were wrong? And if that was why I couldn't see Nam Joyun's future? What if this movie wasn't a success? Then the team two leader would raise his chin up high, saying that he knew this would happen. It would be worse if Song Inho even received an award. If CEO Beck Hansung loses interest in Nam Joyun, would there ever be another opportunity? Would the possibility of me taking care of Nam Joyun in WU be lost? Something sprouted inside and took root deep in my heart. How should I use the information I have to benefit me? What should I do to change the future for the better? If if I blocked Song Inho's path? Since there were two rookies, if I made it so that the team two leader focused on the actress or what if I made a move on whatever project Song Inho would do? What if I gave it to Nam Joyun? Then wouldn't the person accepting the award at the award ceremony be Nam Joyun instead? My mind jolted to its senses. 
chills ran down my spine as though I was drenched in ice water. Even the tips of my fingers felt numb. Oh my god. Just what was I thinking? Bro one, have you ever threatened anyone before? I asked while twirling the remote in my hand. My brother, who was reading a book that was as thick as the Bible, answered. I don't know, why? If you were to threaten someone, how do you think you'll feel? He took his gaze away from his book. I thought it was weird for you to suddenly come here when you're so busy. There's something going on isn't there? I'm asking how you think you'll feel if you threaten someone. Hmm, I guess it won't feel good. I tossed the remote on top of the rug and brushed my hair back. If threatening someone isn't difficult and obtaining things I want through it doesn't faze me. Or if I naturally come up with extreme methods when I need to solve something, that's a bit dangerous, right? Why? Did you threaten someone? I didn't know that I was the type to hold long grudges. I made someone almost lose it today. He clung to me, asking me to forgive him, but I left without looking back. And it was easy. I didn't feel anything. I clenched my hair and ruffled it vigorously. I might really become a bad person at this rate. A piece of trash. Grandma said so. A voice abruptly joined in. When I raised my lowered head, I saw the quadruplets large, clear eyes looking down at me. What did Grandma say? Grandma said that you were so busy taking care of us because we suddenly popped out when you were in middle school that you did stray to the bad side and became an upright person. She said you might have become a scumbag if it wasn't for us. A scum, Grandma said that. Grandpa even called us lucky charms. He said we are wonderful grandchildren. Ah, even Grandpa. Four heads bobbed up and down. My stomach hurt just moments ago from worrying about the future and a vague sense of anxiety, but I was shocked for another reason right now. Bro, was I like that? I always thought I was well behaved when I was young. You weren't well behaved. My brother said as he took off his thick glasses. Is this Shuenzi too? Was I destined to be a bad person? What's the problem? He touched my ruffled hair. His eyes, which bore no similarity to mine, curved into a smile. You didn't grow up to be a bad person, and you just need to not become a bad person in the future as well. I had a nightmare. I didn't remember it clearly, but it felt an unpleasant feeling. I let a sigh under my blanket. What time was it? If I wanted to catch my flight, I needed to get up early. I fumbled around looking for my phone when I felt that the blanket felt unfamiliar. My blanket didn't feel or smell this good. This blanket seemed like it had been dried under the sun yesterday. I heard young children talking outside my blanket. Ah, right. I came over to my brother's house. Also, Nuna, our uncle is a master at rolled omelets. He's really good at them one. That's right. Did you try them? They're really big. He's really good at Korean pancakes as well. But he doesn't make them as often now. He said it was a pain. Right. His love for us chilled once we started elementary school. What were they doing? I took off my blanket. Four familiar heads were gathered below my bed with my phone in the center. Their milky, chubby cheeks wriggled as they continued talking. Then I heard some familiar voices mixed in with their voices. What are you doing? The kids jumped up as soon as I asked. Uncle. We didn't answer it on purpose. It kept ringing so we came to turn it off thinking it was an alarm, but it was a phone call. We were going to wake you up after saying hi to the unis. But then the talk dragged on. There's four of us and four Nunas so we understood each other. Just what were they saying? Bring it over. I sat up and put my hand out. Jewel handed me my phone without hesitation. I was met with four pairs of eyes when I looked at the screen. What the heck? Appa. Open your eyes. Im Seo Young said with a bright smile. They are open. What was going on so early in the morning? I was blinking my dry eyes when LJ, who was next to Im Seo Young, suddenly said. Put something on first. We can see everything. I immediately looked down. I was wearing a grey short-sleeved shirt and shorts. 
It was a joke to wake you up. Yeah, I'm wide awake now. Thanks. LJ laughed with a satisfied expression. The quadruplets were giggling as well. I put my phone away and tidied my hair a little. I picked it back up once I looked a little more presentable. The members were looking at me like meerkats. Why did you video call me so early in the morning? Is there a problem? We couldn't contact you at all yesterday. Our schedule ended early this morning. Im Seo Young yawned after fussing about how she didn't get much sleep. Lee Tae-hee calmly said. When do you arrive? It'll be taking the 11A. Flight there. While answering, I examined their faces. Although it had only been a day, I wanted to check if they were doing all right. Im Seo Young and LJ were as high-spirited as ever, and Lee Tae-hee was lethargic like she was out of energy. And Lee Songa. Her head was peeking out from behind Im Seo Young and LJ. Her mouth moved like she had something to say to me. Appa. Her one word felt like a warm breeze. Appa, are you going to marry before you're thirty? Accompanied by some nonsense. There's not much time left. You'll be thirty in a year and a half. Yeah, thank you for reminding me of my age. But what are you saying? Marriage? Grandma said so. A voice suddenly joined in from below my bed. Was this Dej Vu? The quadruplets examined my mood as they spoke out. Last time, Grandma said that Uncle needed to marry before he becomes 30. That's right. Mom was already hoping that a celebrity might come and sing at the ceremony. Also, that Uncle might marry a celebrity. Cut it out. I stopped the kids from talking. Then I looked at my phone again. As soon as our eyes met, Lee Songa said. The trend is to marry late these days. 31 or 2, 35 even marrying when you're in your 40s is fine. Right? The other girls each added. Uh yeah, when people are living until they're 100, 40 is still young. People in our industry usually marry late. I bet he won't be able to marry early anyways. LJ shrugged as she hammered in the last nail. Why are you so certain? Why can't I marry early? Just look around you. Around me? Hyunjo Appa, single. The team leader is also single. In fact, even the CEO is single. She was oddly persuasive. Now that I thought about it, it looked like I was single 20 years from now as well seeing as I didn't have a wedding ring on my finger. Don't tell me I really want Mary until I'm over 40. When I thought about this, I suddenly laughed out loud. Why are you laughing all of a sudden? Uncle, why are you laughing? On the screen and beyond it, eight heads tilted as they looked at me. I kept laughing as I said. Because it's so silly. Just yesterday, it felt like I was fighting with some unknown assailant when I thought about the future. What kind of person would I be? How bad would I become? Even when my brother said those words to me, inwardly, I was frustrated, worried if it really was that easy. That was just yesterday. Yet, today, I'm wondering if my future self was married or not. Appa, what's wrong? Lee Sangha asked with a worried expression. I probably had a strange expression on my face. The others were staring at me as well. It's nothing. My soul felt like it was rotting. Rotting? Yeah, but I guess I should say it feels a little cleansed now. Laughing, I told them I would see them soon. I stretched after hanging up. Then I got to my feet. I had a lot of things to do. Let's not dwell on it. If becoming a bad person was my future, then I wouldn't stay put and let it. Chapter, 137 An Action Yes. Many people are hotly anticipating director Choi Sung-won's new project with its unbelievable cast. The Korean disaster film Blockbuster Alive began several days ago. Weekly Entertainment went on scene to get a peek. And now, we'll be interviewing the lead actors. Producer. Producer. A panting production assistant shouted as he ran between the film crew members. Hey, hey, can't you see we're filming the opening shot? Producer, Lee Kiwan said he can't do the interview. The Weekly Entertainment film crew were shocked by this sudden news. 
Soon, the head producer and reporter rushed to the lead actor's managers. Lee Kiwan's heavy set manager clicked his tongue as he said, You heard that today's film schedule has changed, right? But the scene they are filming now is an emotional scene for the lead actors. We can't have Lee Kiwan lose his immersion by doing an interview. Team leader, then what about after the scene? We don't know when well ends since there's a night scene too. Well definitely do an interview the next time you come. We have a live broadcast tomorrow. If you do this suddenly, then our segment is ruined. You're going to do interviews with other actors anyways. I'm sorry. The manager bowed then left. Frantic, the production staff hurriedly went to other managers. Mr. Lee Kiwan isn't going to do the interview? Then I don't think we can either. Our Nuna has to focus for that scene too, and I don't even dare bother her right now. We were going to do it since other lead actors were going to do it, but now that's a bit. The producer's face had paled from the stream of refusals. The reporter, camera director, and the lighting director gathered around and grumbled. How petty. Even if they are top stars. How can they treat us like this on the day of the interview? Are they looking down on us because we are a freelance production? Ha! Huh. Will we have anything for tomorrow's broadcast? Shouldn't we change our segment? When it's tomorrow? We have to squeeze out and broadcast whatever we have. How can we fill the entire 20 minute segment with what we have? Can't we ask the assistant director to try and persuade the actors? I bet he won't. He looks incredibly busy right now. As the weekly entertainment production team were ripping their hair out, a staff member shouted into her walkie talkie while running. Makeup is done for MS. Lee Songa. Costume team, please come check. The reporter immediately said. We haven't been rejected by MS. Lee Songa yet, right? I don't think she'll do it either. Still, wouldn't someone at Lee Song has level give us an interview? She's a rookie. The producer clicked his tongue in astonishment at the production assistant's words. At Lee Song has level. Even if she loses out in terms of level, she's currently the hottest topic right now. Cat Guardian Ghost Craze has been going on for two months now. Even though the drama is over, the Chinese are still crazy about it. She's not the Lee Songa of the past. From the rumors, I heard she's not the temperamental type. That was before she became popular. Once they do, 9 out of 10 change completely. Either way, let's go over there and beg. We can't let the segment fall through like this. Holding on to this sliver of hope, the weekly entertainment production staff began to move. Just as they discovered the white minivan she was in, a man got out of the driver's seat. Ha! Huh. That person's chief Yung Sun Wu, right? Right. He is. The camera director mumbled while looking at Yung Sun Wu's face. He looks heartless. I think we'll be rejected as soon as we bring it up. No, I think we'll be rejected before we can even bring it up. He doesn't have a lot of experience despite how famous he is, right? It doesn't seem like he's 30 yet either. Why does he feel more intimidating than other team leaders and directors? Right? It feels intimidating to go talk to him. I don't know why, but it is. Perhaps it was due to his cold exterior or because he was known as Midas Hand, a figure who had been mentioned constantly by the press two months prior, but Young Sun Wu gave off this strange feeling that other managers didn't have. After taking a deep breath, the producer walked over to him. Chief. I am producer Lee Cholson of Weekly Entertainment who contacted you previously. Ah, uh, hello. I heard that other actors have cancelled their interviews. The producer bit his lip. Um, we can finish our interview in five minutes so is there any way? Will only song has interview be broadcasted? The producer's eyes bulged at his calm reply. I is an interview okay? Of course it is. We already promised to do it. Thank you. We were worried that we would have to throw the whole segment out. The producer gestured to the staff with a face that seemed to have just grabbed a lifeline. The reporter, production assistant, and staff gathered immediately. While they were quickly taking out their cameras and lights, Young Sun Wu, who was rubbing his chin in thought, said. But will you be fine with just Lee Song-has interview? 
I remember it being a 20-minute segment. You won't be able to show any scenes because they aren't allowed so all you have must be the couple shots of sketches on set. That is well try to reduce the length of the segment. Since it's like this, why not just fully focus on Sangha? The producer, who had been sighing, abruptly raised his head. If you do, they'll try to give you as much interview time as I can. Our PR team can send you any material regarding Neptune or China. Although director choice someone will be a bit tough, I can arrange a few staff members to give you some comments as well. The producer's eyes moved quickly as he thought over it. Soon, after quickly making a call, he nodded. Well embed ms. Lee Song has name in huge letters at the top of the screen. That's great. Young Sun Wu's lips curled upwards. Uh, producer. Producer. Look over there. The production assistant caused a fuss as he called the producer. The producer turned around, wondering what else had happened, when he stopped. It really was worth making a fuss. The camera director and lighting director next to him were astonished. Oh my god, there's no need to worry about our ratings if we just show her. So this is why directors who have worked with Lee Sangha constantly talk about her. She's the real deal. Amazing. Lee Sangha followed behind Chief Yung Sun Wu. Her straight hair, half of which was tied up, fluttered in the air. She didn't seem to have any makeup on, yet everyone's attention focused on her. She wore a crisp, gray blouse with a white ribbon tie, a fully buttoned, neat blazer, and an H-line school skirt. When Yung Sun Wu stopped, Lee Sangha came out from behind him and smiled. Hello, I am Lee Sangha. Of course we know MS. Lee Sangha. Your school uniform fits you dangerously well. The reporter smiled friendlily as he handed her a wireless mic. It feels odd wearing one after such a long time. Could you start by introducing your character? She's Lee Yianwu, a high schooler. Uh, she's an elegant lady who grew up in a strict, prestigious family. Her dream was to be a gymnast, but she had no choice but to give it up due to her parents' opposition. A calamity struck one day as zombies suddenly appeared, and she does her best to try and survive. You must have prepared various things to get into Li Yi and Wu's role. If there was anything difficult. Li Song has expression suddenly turned solemn. Her eyes became gloomy. It was terrifying. For the month and a half since I returned from China. The reporter also became serious as he perked his ear. I couldn't eat any snacks. I couldn't anything I wanted to eat, and my trainer planned out a meal plan because I needed to build muscles to have the figure of a gymnast, but the food wasn't something a human should eat. I usually filled the Venn glove box with snacks, but even those were snatched away. I was so hungry and sad that I couldn't sleep properly. Li Song has eyes glistened with tears as she looked off into the distance like someone who had suffered the cruelest torture in the world. The reporter consoled her with an awkward expression on his face. The director filmed this scene while barely containing his laughter. After a few more questions, the reporter placed the bait. There are a lot of actors appearing in this movie, is there one that you are particularly concerned about? Yes, there is. She answered immediately. The reporter and producer exchanged glances as they silently shouted in delight. She had an actor she was concerned about. This was a bait that viewers couldn't help but be interested in. Whether it was an actress or an actor. Could you tell us who it is? Lee Sangha was about to reply when she abruptly stopped. Then she looked at Young Sun Wu who was watching her nearby. After asking for the producer's understanding, Young Sun Wu approached her. Lee Sangha said something to him in a voice so quiet it wasn't picked up by the mic. Young Sun Wu shook his head. Producer, I'm sorry, but it seems like we'll have to skip this question. Pardon? It's not like we were going to come out with a provocative headline. He's not as famous as you might think. Also. Young Sun Wu added with an odd look. He hasn't filmed his first scene yet so it's too early to mention him like this. The ENG camera one moved. The film set was a worn down apartment. An enormous blue screen was set up around the building to add computer graphics later. More than a hundred crew members and extras crowded the area. Director, 
please film some of those extras. The ones dressed up as zombies over there. They look so real. I'd be terrified if I saw them at night. There were people whose skin of their faces had ripped off, revealing the facial muscles underneath, and even those whose intestines were dangling outside. Everyone was busy taking selfies before the shoot. It apparently took five hours per person to cover their face in silicon and apply special effect makeup. To be honest, I thought it would be a Hollywood knockoff since it was a Korean zombie film, but this gets my hopes up. The weekly entertainment staff whispered to each other. The assistant director, who wore a walkie-talkie around his neck, approached them. You know that you cannot film the actual scene, right? Yes, we do. We will only take a full shot of people getting ready for the scene and a few reactions from the crew during Lee Song has seen. Please don't cause a disturbance. Today's shoot is very important. Understood. Ah, but how much of the scene will Lee Songa be in? Considering she was comfortable doing an interview, it doesn't seem to be too important. The assistant director frowned. That's not true. This is the most important scene for Lee Songa. I didn't want to admire these jerks since they didn't give us an interview, but they really are amazing. The energy is incredible since they only cast top stars. We needed to film this. On top of cracked and crumbling concrete, Korea's top actors were immersed in acting with full film makeup and outfits. Frankly, what are we going to do if we save that kid when it's difficult for us to take care of ourselves? So you want to leave the kid there? He's crying. He's going to die like this. Someone shouted while someone else cried tears of pity. They even began grabbing each other's collars. It was mayhem. They were on a man-made set with an enormous blue screen. There were tons of cameras and crew members. People surrounded them as they watched with interest. Even though the environment made it difficult to immerse oneself into the scene, the actors acted as realistically as possible. A camera chased this breathtaking scene in one take. That's a bit it's reasonable that they rejected our interview for this. It really is an emotional scene. But is it not an emotional scene for Lee Sangha? She's so quiet. Her looks are the best, but she doesn't stand out amongst those actors. Maybe it's because of her lack of experience. Lee Sangha stood rigidly amongst the aggressively moving actors. Completely straight with her eyes slightly lowered. This made sense considering her character's background. A flower that grew up in a strict family. However, she was too calm. Only Lee Sangha seemed like she was displaced from this devastating situation surging with disaster and conflict. They said this was an important scene for her, but is she fine with just that? Maybe that's her role. But she lacks any presence. Doesn't she need to prove her skills in her next project? That's true. Only then will people stop saying she's a one-hit wonder or that cat guardian ghost was the peak of her acting career. But this is a bit is she having trouble acting? Maybe she can't get into her role because of her interview with us. As they discussed with worried faces, they glanced at Chief Young Sunwoo and were shocked. Even though he should be the most worried about this, his expression was too calm. Rather, he was smiling as he watched Lee Songa act. That moment, an angry voice erupted from the set. Do you think I'm some sort of psychopath for wanting to leave? We can't even enter that apartment, yet how are we supposed to save that kid on the fourth floor? But, let's first make a plan. A man, playing a minor role, left the crowd of aggravated people. Shaking his head, he walked next to Lee Sangha. Then he wrapped his arms around her shoulders, almost in an embrace. How do they still not understand the situation when the world is becoming crazier by the second? Don't worry, you won't be in danger as long as you stick with me. It'll go. A calm voice, unfitting of the situation, spoke out. Under the agitated people's gazes, Li Yianwa said. I will bring that kid. Are you crazy? The apartment is overrun with those monsters, zombies, or whatever they are. Li Yianwu gently pushed the man aside and unbuttoned her school blazer. After taking off her vest as well, she undid her ribbon tie and placed it on top. She then untied her ponytail and retied it higher up. Lend me your knife. Ha! Huh. Th this? 
Another minor role handed her his knife with a flustered expression. Li Yianwu placed the knife under her skirt and ripped the right side of her skirt up to her thigh. She did the same to the left side. With a few unhesitant swipes of the knife, she revealed her milky yet firm thighs. The surrounding people made a commotion. Handing back the knife, Li Yianwu looked up. Her resolute gaze landed on the fourth floor. I can bring him down without entering the apartment. Chapter 138 As soon as the cameras began rolling, a tense air hung in the film set. Stunt staff got in position on the ground and on the crane. The jib camera was rolling in the air, and a cart carrying a camera rushed down the rails. And Lee Sangha, she stood on top of the AC unit hanging outside the apartment. Her waist and thighs were supported by wires. Is she about to climb up the building? The reporter blankly mumbled. Want a stunt person take her place after she just acts as if she will? Or will they just take close-up shots now and film the rest on another set? While the weekly entertainment staff were discussing, Lee Sanda bent her knees. Then she kicked off the AC unit and jumped up. They gulped. At the same time, her small hands gripped the rusty banister on the second floor. She then began to steadily climb the building. To a higher banister, to a higher AC unit. Extras, dressed up as zombies, flailed their hands through each window. Li Sangha narrowly avoided and slowly yet surely made her way up. So that's why they set it up so that she wanted to be a gymnast. To film scenes like this. It doesn't even seem like she's being pulled up by the wires either. She really is climbing her way up. What do you think she wore underneath her skirt? The producer smacked the back of the production assistant's head repeatedly. The reporter admired the scene as he said. But doesn't it seem like she really learned gymnastics? Like look at her actions. She did learn it. A staff member who wore his baseball cap backwards suddenly joined in. He was the staff member Chief Young Sun Wu asked to comment on Lee Sangha. The weekly entertainment staff quickly picked up their camera and handed him a wireless mic. The staff coughed and continued. She worked hard to learn it because she wanted to do her own stunts. She went to a gymnastics coach to learn too. And parkour and climbing. The one where you climb inside a building. Apparently, she learned those too. All of them. While alternating between filming her drama on top of that. I heard she went back and forth between China and Korea during weekends. I saw her schedule, and it was incredible. Chief Young, who balanced that schedule, is hardcore, and Lee Sangha, who actually handled it all, is even more incredible. Oh, oh, oh. The production assistant leaped up and down. Isn't that dangerous? The staff member hastily turned around. Lee Sangha lost her grip on an AC unit while trying to avoid a zombie's hand. Her slender body crashed onto the banister below. Then she powerlessly fell into the veranda. Th that. It's an act. After saying this, the staff member laughed. See how the camera is still following her movements. It's all an act. The weekly entertainment staff quickly looked around. The jib camera was hovering over the veranda Lee Sangha fell in. The action looks incredibly real, right? We were all surprised during the rehearsal. We thought she would be seriously injured. The amazed staff gestured to them. Come over here. He led them to monitors director Choi Sun-won and other cast members were gathered in front of. The weekly entertainment crew cautiously and quietly stood behind them. The staff member whispered. You see the monitor showing the one shot, right? Look at that. Their gazes focused on it. The scene of Lee Sangha getting back up and climbing again was clearly reflected on the screen. At first, it looked like she was barely making her way up, but her actions soon looked visibly lighter. There was no hesitation in her steps. Staring at the screen, the camera director blinked. She's trembling. Li Song has shoulders, arms, and even her fingers were trembling. You're right. Is that also her acting? I think it's half and half. Even if there are wires and mats, how scary do you think it is? Her chin is trembling too. Is she crying? They stopped speaking at some point. 
The camera, which tilted up from her trembling shoulders, captured her face. She wasn't crying. Lee Sangha was smiling. A face messily mixed with fear and euphoria. As though she couldn't contain how happy she was climbing up a wall. Good. Director Choi Sungwon had a pleased smile as his gaze focused on the screen. Even the other actors behind him cried out. My God. Look at her expression. How can she express the feeling of being suppressed finally breaking free so well? It's incredible. Did she experience a lot even though she's young? Unless she has family issues like Lee Yianwu, there's no way she can express that feeling so clearly. Didn't she do an interview with a smile just now? How can she get into her role so quickly? Does she have a switch? Should I tell you something more amazing? Before we started filming, she was mumbling something with a serious face. I thought she was memorizing her lines, but it turns out she was mumbling how she wants to eat ice cream. Oh, that girl makes this veteran anxious. Even veteran actors commented. Director Choi Sungwon shouted, cut. In satisfaction and said to the actors. You were all great too. It's no good if we are similar, director. The actress Park Seryoung grumbled. I'm being paid much more than her so I need to be much better than her. Director, my one shot before, could we refilm it? I want to try saying my line a bit more quickly. Lee Kiwan said while scratching his chin. Director Choi Sungwon's eyes curved into crescent moons. Of course you can. If an actor is dissatisfied with his scene and wants to redo it, of course, he can. Look at her. She's so happy. Park Seryoung mumbled with a dispirited look. Lee Sangha was smiling happily as she dangled from the wires on the fourth floor while waving at Chief Young Sun Wu, who was looking up from below. Seeing this, Park Seryoung suddenly said. Director, the second villain appearing on scene 24. You said he was also Chief Young Sun Wu's actor, right? The actor's gazes gathered on director Choi Sung Wan. Even the weekly entertainment crew perked their ears at this new information. That's right. Is he also like her? I don't know. I haven't been able to confirm myself. Director Choi Sung Wan said as he looked at Young Sun Wu in the distance. I wish he was. A zombie disaster blockbuster. I can already smell its failure. Just don't attempt to screen it in the States or ITLL be an embarrassment for the entire country. Watching American dramas would be much better than pay 10,000 won on this. Stop it. His frowns deepening, SBE film CEO waved his hand. The other employees attending the meeting looked gloomy as well. The PR team employee shook her analysis as she said. We expected this sort of reaction considering the genre. We did expect it, but it still hurts. There are other reactions. My analysis resulted in very polarizing opinions. The PR team employee began reading again. With the trustworthy director Choi Sung Wan and a slew of trustworthy actors on board, it could be incredible. I heard that the budget was over 30 billion won, I can't wait. Such a large scale movie, I bet more than 10 million people will go watch for sure. Stop, stop. The CEO waved his hand even more intensely than before. The other employees looked so gloomy that clouds seemed to form above their heads. The newest employee of the planning team, who was sitting at the end of the room, whispered to the employee sitting next to him. What's with this mood? Isn't it good if there are good reactions? They said that they couldn't wait. That's what's scarier. The planning team employee replied with a frown. If the audience is expecting a perfect movie, we've only broken even if we deliver a perfect movie. It ends up becoming an okay movie. If we want to satisfy an audience like that, we need to give them a movie beyond perfect, and that's not easy. Also, if the movie quality is lower than perfect. The employee trailed his words. The eyes of those who heard him became hollow. The CEO slapped the table and said. Let's not worry about it right now. We just need to make it a success. And in the worst case scenario, we will still break even. Marketing is going smoothly, and we have director Choi Sung Wan and a great cast, how could it flow? His speech, which started confidently, slowly crumbled and finally crushed completely. 
what do we do if it flops? It's a disaster. All the scenarios we are prepping will be put on a halt. The CEO laughed dispiritedly at the project producer's words. Just then, the project producer slowly raised his hand. CEO, I'm sorry to tell you this at this time. If you're sorry, don't say it. The budget. Don't bring up the budget. Don't. The director said he needed a bit more. Just a little. People groaned when they heard this. The CEO's hands shook as he shouted. Why isn't the budget enough? We've poured all the money in it, yet how could it not be enough? It's because of the computer graphics. Apparently, they need to hire more people for the visual effects team. We brought over our team working in China. Are they not enough? Almost half the scenes require CG. The current team has already been separated to fill positions, but we still don't have enough. What should we do? Should I tell him that we don't even have enough even if he kills us? Hey! You! The CEO barely managed to take deep breaths after his outburst. Tell him that we got it. And don't let the fact that we talk about this slip on set. The director and cast must be feeling a ton of pressure, we can't add to that and have it influence the project. Yes. The project producer immediately replied. The glaring CEO said in a hoarse voice. Tomorrow's set visit with investors and foreign sales agents, the preparations are perfect, right? That's our only avenue for more money. Tomorrow's scene will be a full shot of the cast. Since it's a large-scale, dynamic scene, it should be worth spectating. They brought on almost a hundred extras dressed up as zombies as well. The scale is obviously large considering how much money we're pouring into it. They already know who's starring in the movie as well. I wish there was something that could entrance those fellows. The CEO rubbed his temples as he mumbled. We don't have that extra factor. Joyun. Nam Joyun. Nam Joyun, who had just changed into his movie outfit, turned his head. Kim Hyun Sup, the actor who pressed his baseball cap down on his head, gestured to him. The actors and staff who worked on the independent film were gathered around him looking at a phone. Nam Joyun picked up his bag and went over there. Weekly Entertainment is showing what they filmed on set. Nam Joyun looked at the screen. At the top was the subtitle International Star, Lee Sangha, and the set of the hot topic, Alive. They just finished showing an exclusive interview with Lee Sangha and they showed sketches of the set. The independent film cast and crew sighed at once. The scale is amazing. The size of the blue screen is as big as a building. That means they are going to paste the entire background with CG. Oh damn, look at those zombies. That looks like fun. Even if it's tough, working on a set like that must be worth it. When will I get to star in a film with those actors? Just think they live in a different world than us. It's only painful for you if you're jealous. What's a different world? The assistant director joined in. There could be a day when we work on a set like that. No one knows the future. Even Mr. Nam Joyun here is appearing on that film. Didn't you say tomorrow would be your first scene? Right? He said while placing his hand on Nam Joyun's shoulder. The staff and actors congratulatory, jealous, and even unpleasant gazes focused on him. Just then, an interview of a crew member began to play. She worked hard to do her own stunts. She went to a gymnastics coach to learn, even parkour and climbing. She really prepared a ton. But Mr. Joyun, do you not have to prepare for anything? Someone asked. The independent film director licked his lips and added. It's really great that you keep coming on time for shoots, but I'm a bit worried as well. This could be the opportunity that changes your life. It's not enough to focus on that film completely, yet your time is being taken up by us. Maybe his role doesn't need to prepare for anything. A piercing voice shot out from amongst the actors. Mr. Sung Hyun. Why are you like this? What? If he doesn't have a big role, then he doesn't have much to prepare. Lee Sung Hyun shrugged before leaving. A few actors glanced at Nam Joyun before following after Lee Sung Hyun. The heated mood cooled. 
The remaining people examined Nam Joyun's expression, but there wasn't any change. Nam Joyun continued to watch the screen. The assistant director patted Nam Joyun's shoulder. Don't worry about him. And you said you're playing a supporting role? Then it's a success. That's right. Just think of it as learning from the big boys. Be directed by the famous director Choi Sun-won. There must be a ton of top stars there so have a look around. But, can you get me Park Seryoung's autograph? Lee Kiwon for me. I'm a huge fan. If it's okay, Lee Songa for me. My daughter sings their songs. The set quickly became noisy again. After taking a sip from a water bottle, Nam Joyeon took out his phone. It vibrated, indicating he received a text. After checking its content, he sent his usual reply. Kim hyun -sup tilted his head behind him and asked. What? Is it Chief Yung sun Mu again? What is he saying this time? That hell come pick me up tomorrow before the shoot. Nam Joyeon said, laughing silently. That young man's really genuine. At first, I thought he would stop after a couple of visits, but he's been helping you out for the past few months. Seeing as he cares about you even though he has an international star like Lee Sangha, he must. Kim hyun -sup narrowed his eyes. Been your mom in your past life. This is parental love. Shut up. But, you know, I'm a bit worried since you're acting like normal. Kim hyun -sup said while scratching his neck. Are you really preparing for your shoot properly? Although summer had fully arrived, the morning wind was still a bit chilly. A young man wearing varsity jacket ran into a gym. I think a celebrity lives near here. I saw that person outside. Who? Why, that manager. Young Sun Wu. Uh, yeah. That person. How did you guess right away? A few people inside the gym laughed simultaneously. A muscular employee swept a mop along the floor as he said. His actor works out in our gym. He's close with our manager. He came by frequently for the past two months. You must have missed him because you're new. Wow. An actor. I want to see him. When does he usually come? He comes at night when he has a shoot and comes whether it's day or night on days he's free so you should see him soon. Get me a towel from the cabinet behind you. The university student approached a tall cabinet. When he opened the door, he was met with two chilling objects. They were someone's eyes. You're. Idiot. What the hell? The university shouted as he backed away. He even tripped over his feet and fell on his butt. The people who had been flashing glances his way fell back laughing. The student pointed. W.H. Who is this person? And what is he doing in there? You said you wanted to see him. The employee laughed so hard that he began coughing. The shocked student quickly looked back at the cabinet. The man who had been standing straight in the cabinet walked out. Although the student didn't know how long he was in there for, his steps were wobbly. His eyes, which formed a frown as though they weren't used to the light, still shined in a cold light. The student's shoulders trembled without knowing as he slowly approached the employee. Yua. That man, what was he doing inside? He doesn't do anything. He just stands in there all the time. All the time. Apparently he needs to do it for his acting. There are times he's in there overnight. The student paled. Is he crazy? It looks like he might be mentally ill. No, his eyes weren't normal. Right? The employee shrugged. Just then, the gym door opened, and young Sun Wu entered. He lightly greeted the people there and walked over to the man leaning against the cabinet. Hyung, were you in there again? Just for a bit. A few minutes. I told you to stop doing this. There are other ways so there's no need to keep doing something so dange. I won't do it again. The man smiled faintly at young Sun Wu, who clicked his tongue in worry, and said. I think I can play my role properly now. Chapter 139 a rotten arm shot out. This was only the start. Zombies poured out from the building entrance. Zombies even jumped off the roof and through the shattered windows. 
the party of survivors narrowly got in a delivery truck. The tires spun in place against the shattered concrete. Dust filled the air. The tsunami of zombies charged at the survivors. What are you doing? Drive. Quickly, quickly. At this rate, we're all going to die. Shouts, screams, and the roars of zombies jumbled together. It's quite a sight, isn't it? The production producer said with a bright smile. It's difficult to see something like this in a film from our country. The group of people in suits stretched their necks out to watch the monitor. They were from corporations that had or were planning to invest in Alive as well as sales reps that exported Korean content overseas. It's really thrilling. ITLL be amazing to see this on the big screen. Right? ITLL be quite a sight seeing this after they've added music and retouched the scene. The zombies look realistic. It really shows a lot of money went into this. I was worried because it would release at the same time as Hollywood blockbusters, but this might be worth competing against them. Positive comments continued. The production producer was all smiled as he said. The cast is top-notch and so is their chemistry. The monitor displayed the party of survivors fighting desperately against the zombies. The marketing employee from SBE Film, Kong Min Jong, added. It's only possible to cast such actors because it's director choice someone scenario. You can't cast a lineup like this just by waving money at them. You know that, right? There's nothing more to say about the actors. They are all top stars. They also sell a ton of tickets. I hope the movie poster is a full shot of the cast. Making sure their faces are visible. The production producer and marketing team employee smiled at the scent of money. After the long escape scene was over and while the investment team was meeting the party of suits, the production producer stepped back and wiped off his smile. They've opened their pockets, right? Kong Min Jong chewed on her red lips. Yes, their reaction isn't bad, but it's not as much as we expected. Ah, damn it. The producer pulled his curly hair. The CEO told us to knock their socks off. It seems they expected this much. I thought that seeing the shoot would push us beyond expectations, but I didn't expect their reactions to be lukewarm from seeing around 100 people dressed up as zombies. With this sort of reaction, ITLL be difficult to squeeze more investments from them. Is there some other way? We pretty much have no other way to get money than this. What we can show them what did you say the next scene was? Scenes 24 and 25. It has Lee Kiwan and Lee Sangha as well as the appearance of an unknown actor. The production producer replied. A complicated sigh followed after. Kong Min Jong quickly flipped through the scenario she had held under her arm. Soon, she too sighed. Damn it. I know. The unknown actor appearing in this scene, it's him, right? That's right. The rookie chief Young Sun Wu brought on. Kong Min Jong closed the scenario and asked. That actor, what is he doing right now? The minivan's doors were wide open. A strange mood hung in the air. Lee Sangha was staring at the passenger seat with eyes dripping with longing. To be precise, she was looking at Nam Choyun, who was sitting in the passenger seat. To be even more precise, she was looking at the lunch box in his hands. Under her uncomfortable gaze, Nam Joyun had a difficult expression. He handed her his lunchbox. Would you like some? No, I don't steal other people's food. She refused with a sorrowful face. Nam Joyun's lunchbox was filled with thick grilled short rib patties and side dishes. There was even a fried egg on top of the perfectly cooked multigrain rice. Lee Sangha looked down at her unique lunchbox. It had pieces of chicken breast and greens around it with no dressing. She had been eating this for the past two months. Tormented by it, Li Sangha secretly asked. Then should we trade a single bite? Two of my chicken breasts for a quarter of the short rib patty. You can just eat it. I can't eat all of it anyways. Li Sangha held her breath back. You can't eat all of this. How can you not eat all of this? Not eating much has become a habit of mine. Nam Joyun said while scratching his neck. Lee Sangha looked at him. Her wary gaze had completely disappeared, instead, 
she looked like she was looking at a comrade whom she would even share half a bean with. Hey, you can't. Her stylist quickly intercepted just before her chopsticks touched a patty. Sangha, I'm going to tattle on Chief Young. Hurry up and eat your food. This isn't food. Li Sangha grumbled in a gloomy voice. This is feed. Dogs eat better than this. I heard that Chief Young got up early in the morning to personally make it for you. Li Song has eyes widened. If you're not going to eat it, pass it here. Let's have a taste. It's mine. Li Sangha hastily took possession of her lunchbox. Her stylist giggled. Then she whispered to Nam Joyun. I'm letting you know now because the two of them had a scandal, but you can consider Li Sangha as more of a fanatic. A fanatic? She has this pseudo religion she believes in. Call the Church of Young Sun Wu. Nam Joyun cracked a smile. Just then, Li Sangha, who had been gazing at her lunchbox like it was a treasure box, blinked. She had been staring down at her lunchbox like she was going to wolf it down, yet she suddenly put her chopsticks down. What? Why? Are you not going to eat it? Li Sangha smiled happily as she replied. If I touch it, the heart will be destroyed. Heart. Where's the heart? Look closely. From here to here. A heart. Her fingers outlined a crooked circle. It was the shape of the veggies surrounding the pieces of chicken breasts. The stylist examined her lunchbox with a strange expression before looking at Nam Joyun. Does that look like a heart to you? She asked with her gaze. Nam Joyun shook his head. How is it? Does it taste okay? Young Sun Wu asked as he suddenly got in the minivan. Li Sangha was surprised, and because of it, the lunchbox in her hands lurched. Li Sangha quickly looked back down at her lunchbox before she despaired like a person who had lost her country. Ah, she kills me. The stylist rolled over laughing. A faint smile hung on Nam Joyun's lips as well. Only Young Sun Wu looked at them with lost eyes. Chief Young Sun Wu's actors. Kim Min Jong said as she looked at the white minivan in the distance. Don't even have a sliver of tension. I know, right? They are the only ones that seem like they're on a picnic. The production producer agreed with a dispirited laugh. Considering they are about to do an emotional scene, they are excessively easygoing. Even if we give Lee Sangha a pass since she's the type to get in character quickly, that rookie, Nam Joyun what gall on his first day to boot. Kim Min Jong clicked her tongue as she came to a decision. It'll bring the investors somewhere else. Pardon? Still, ITLL be difficult to convince the investors with. The next scene is one that could be almost completely edited out depending on the shoot. If we disappoint them by showing a rookie we're not confident in, it's worse than not showing them the shoot. Kim Min Jong resolutely said. It's better not to show the investors the next scene. Can't we watch the next scene before we leave? Kim Min Jong's smile crumbled at one of the people from an investment company's question. Team leader, there isn't much to see in the next scene. I heard that, but I'm still curious. It wasn't just one person. Other people were curious as well. Kim Min Jong barely managed to smooth out her frown as she asked. What are you curious about? The actors aren't leaving after finishing their shoot. Sorry. They are apparently going to leave after seeing this scene. Kim Min Jong and the production producer hastily turned around. Starcraft Vans 1, as well as other vans, were still parked despite their actors having finished filming for the day. The two also saw actors gathered behind the director's chair, talking with director Choi Sung Won. Their expression crumbled. Scene 24 was an inside shoot. A monitor reflected Lee Sangha and Nam Joyun, who were checking positions. The actors who were done filming for the day were sitting in the chairs with their names on the back as they looked at the monitor. Each of them had a bag of chips in their hand. He looks different from what I expected reading the script. Since Lee Sangha leaves a strong impression from head to toe, I thought he'd be similar. But he looks normal. Obviously, People like Lee Sangha aren't common. Director Choi Sung Won chuckled when he heard them discussing like middle aged women at a laundromat. Why are you all like this? Putting pressure on him. 
we're going to leave after checking the beginning. We just want to see how he is. Let us see. Little old me wants to feel some thrills. The actors said as they planted their butts in their seats. A few steps away, the investors whispered. Nam Joyun. I thought I'd know his face even if his name was unfamiliar, but it's my first time seeing him. His role also has quite a few lines. Isn't his popularity too low? Right? There are much better actors I know. Let's talk to SBE Film after the shoot. Their voices were tinged with dissatisfaction. The production producer and Kong Min Jong, who overheard their conversation, let out frustrated sighs. Looking around, Kong Min Jong went to a man standing with his arms crossed. Chief Yong, there are a lot of people watching. That seems true. Chief Yong Sun Wu nodded. We aren't worried about MS. Li Songa. We already know she's great at acting and have seen how hard she worked preparing for her role. However, we are a bit worried about Mr. Nam Joyun. Kim Min Jong's eyes narrowed. Can we believe in him? They both worked hard for their roles. He said with a meaningful smile. So please believe in them. Gazes with various thoughts focused on the monitor. Just then, the slate smacked together. The living room was a mess. A child flopped on the floor sniffled. The female high schooler Lee Yianwo checked up on the child with quick glances. She did this while her hands moved all the objects blocking the way to the bathroom. A man's faint voice seeped out from behind the slightly open door. This was the only place to hide because the front door was broken. At first, I thought people trapped a monster in here from the sounds. How could people leave someone here alone? I couldn't ask them to bring me along when even the lives of perfectly healthy people were at risk. The weak voice gradually gained strength. It was bearable. It's a bathroom so there's a toilet, water from the sink, and they left some food for me. Soon, the objects in front of the bathroom door were completely cleared. Just as Li Yianwu stretched her hand out to grab the doorknob, the door flung open. Li Yianwu retreated in surprise. The man, who she had been talking to just now, was standing at the entrance. I thought I'd die like this. The man smiled brightly like someone who had been rescued from hell. The hallway was quiet thanks to all the zombies having gone outside. Li Yianwu took the lead. She held the child with one arm and hung a bag with foods like instant noodles and canned hams and other necessities. A man limped behind her. He too was carrying a heavy bag. What broke the silence was when they discovered someone approaching them from across the hall. Mr. Oh, Yi and Wu. Why are you, did you remain as well? Jang Tae Young, a well-built man in his thirties, came over with a surprised look. A young woman stuck behind him with slumped shoulders. I escaped with Jin Ju, but we ended up having to hide. How about you? I found a few other survivors on the higher levels so I came to save them. I also found one. Here. Jang Young abruptly turned his gaze. The hand tightly gripping his clothes fell away. The woman, who had followed behind him as though she would be in trouble if she didn't keep up, stood still with a pale white face as if she saw something terrifying. Th that person. It's him. The crazy guy I told you about. Her trembling finger pointed at the man standing behind Li Yianwu. He eliminated people. We trapped him. The moment the flustered Jang Tae Young hesitated and the moment the man's lips curled upward, Li Yianwu acted as quick as lightning. She threw the bag she was carrying and ran with just the child. She managed to take five steps by the time the man caught up and pulled her long hair. She let out a suppressed groan. I wasn't crazy. The man said, seeing their shocked faces. Some things are inevitable in situations like this. That was all. Yi Enwu. You idiot. Let her go. Jang Young finally overcame his shock and began running towards him. The man flung his bag. It smashed through the window in the hallway, and shards of glass fell. Li Yangwu crouched her body. Seeing this, Jang Young stopped for a moment. The man snatched the child away from Li Yianwu. Burke. Burke. 
the child's frightened cries leaked from his mouth. Grabbing the child by his collar and sitting on the window sill, the man said. After being trapped in that cramped, damp, and dark place for so long I feel like I might actually be crazy now. I feel suffocated like I'm still in there. He didn't look angry. He wasn't threatening or mocking them. At a glance, the man's expression seemed no different from before. He seemed calm like this was just a normal day. However, something was different. His voice, eyes, everything about him felt disturbing. The young woman, who had taken a few steps back, turned around and fled. The man looked outside the open window and mumbled. How long will it take to go down to the first floor? Will thirty seconds do? I'm throwing in thirty seconds. If you're quick, you should be able to catch him. Just what are you? One, two, three. The man began to count. When he reached seven, Li Yianwu, who struggled as her hair was tightly held by the man, shouted. Go. Mister, go quickly. Damn it. Jiang Taeyang, who was hesitant, unsure whether he should charge at the man or run down, turned around with a distorted expression on his face. His footsteps quickly grew distant. The only ones remaining in the hallway was Li Yianwu, the man, and the crying child with snot dripping from his nose. The man counted past twenty. Li Yianwu charged at him, clung to him, and even pleaded, but he didn't react to any of them. The man finally reached thirty. And still, Jiang Taeyang hadn't come out of the building yet. The man said as if this was troublesome. He runs slower than I expected. Don't do it. Wait, please wait a lit. Before Li Yianwu could finish her words, he tossed the distressed, crying child out the window. The marketing team employee, Kong Min Zhang, took a few steps back. Only then did she take in her surroundings. The vision widened, and she heard someone gulp. She slowly moved her eyes. Director Choi Sungwon was looking at the monitor with shining eyes. The crinkling sounds of chip bags had stopped long ago. Even the actors who were talking with each other had shut their mouths. It was the same for the investors. They all looked entranced as they stared at the monitor like an audience staring at the screen in a dark theater. Within this seemingly black and white scene, the only one moving was Chief Yong Sun Wu. He observed people's reactions. Kong Min Jong exhaled the breath she had been holding. Chief, about Mr. Nam Joyun. I wish he didn't have any interviews with reporters before the movie releases. He looked back at her. Interviews. We are going to remove him from marketing material as well, and we won't put him in the trailer either. Slowly, Chief Yun Sun Wu's lips curled upwards. Kong Min Jong gulped before saying. That actor, I wish the audience met him for the first time on the big screen.